Three Sarst. Advertisement. When leaving, Luo Yun, who was growling with hunger, stole a chicken from a villager's house. Following the path, Luo Yun trotted all the way to the foot of the nearest hill next to the nearby village. Finding a big tree in a good location near a stream, Luo Yun handled the chicken with ease, then found a fragrant leaf to wrap the chicken in, wrapped it in yellow mud, and threw it into the fire to make a beggar's chicken. While the chicken was being cooked, Luo Yun sat on the root of a nearby tree and lit a fire before calming down and thinking carefully about his current situation. After experiencing the shock and confusion at the beginning of time travel, Luo Yun has now calmed down and accepted this fact. He didn't expect that such a time travel thing would happen to him one day. As for the reason behind this time travel, Luo Yun was too lazy to think about it, and there was no need to think about it. Instead of thinking about these messy, useless things, it is better to think about how to survive in this world. This is the problem before us. First of all, he is not in Hokage, but in One Piece. If he were not Hokage, the world of One Piece would be completely different. With the words of One Piece Roger after his death, the era of great pirates began. People rushed to the Grand Line to find the great secret treasure One Piece. The protagonist is Luffy, a rich second-generation passionate young man who doesn't want to inherit his grandfather and father's family fortune and starts his own business. Advertisement. For him now, he first needs to determine what year it is. If it was before Luffy went to sea, it would be great. If Luffy had already gone to sea at this time, it would be very embarrassing. Although he knew the direction of the story, it was of no use if he didn't have the strength. There are many powerful people in the world of pirates. Not only pirates and official forces, but also private forces have many hidden bosses. Fujitora and Green Bull are the two representatives. They are not famous at all, but they have admiral-level combat power. You it's not scary to say it's scary. There are a lot of fools like Luffy. If they don't do this or that for you, they just start doing it. If they don't have the strength to make calculations, they are looking for death. He is not the main character Luffy. He fights monsters and upgrades all the way. He has gone from a newcomer to a strong player in just a few years. Even if he has two Sherry Nons, it still takes time to improve his strength. Only by determining what year he was in could he plan some things. There were currently two things in front of him, one was to determine the year, and the other was to become stronger. It's okay to make sure you are old enough. If you want to become stronger quickly, you must first find a famous teacher. Having a good master to guide you can avoid many detours. What do you want to say to master? Of course it would be best to find Pluton Rayleigh, who can still be among the top combatants without the ability of Devil Fruit. Conqueror's hacky, physical skills, and swordsmanship are among the best in the world, and he has rich experience. You can see the results of Luffy after two years of training. Rayleigh is a very good teacher. Advertisement. But now Rayleigh is probably still working as a co-aider at Sabayati Archipelago. He goes to the casino when he has nothing to do and sells it to himself when he loses the bet. His current position is the East Blue, and he still doesn't know how far to go to the Grand Line, let alone the Sabayati Archipelago, which is in the middle. After thinking about it, he might as well forget it. Speaking of East Blue, I do have a good teacher, the equally legendary marine hero monkey. D. Garp. This old man was even more pervert, putting an end to the two pirate overlords who ruled the Grand Line, Kaido, and Big Mom. Decades ago, he was Garp's younger brother. Without the ability of Devil Fruit, a pair of iron fists is invincible. If there is a perfect armament Haki in the One Piece world, it is Garp. Teijetsu and Haki are definitely at the top. If you don't look at it, Garp turns out to be such a loser. After two years of training, Garp has grown into a capable naval headquarters colonel. But if he wants to become a disciple of Garp, he has to be related to Marine, which means he belongs to Marine. It's not that Luo Yun wants to be a pirate, but he still has to consider joining Marine at the beginning. Thinking about it, Luo Yun suddenly laughed at himself. What was he thinking about? Even if he wanted to become a disciple, others would not accept him. Advertisement. Now it is certain that he needs to find a village. At least he needs to settle down first and then plan the next thing. It is impossible to sleep in the open air like this every day, eating one meal and not finishing the next. I need to change my name first. The name Luo Yun can no longer be used. It seems out of place in this world. What should I change my name to? After all, you can't be careless about your name. In future fights with those strong players, when people call for your name, your name can't be bad. It must be loud and clear. It is best to reflect your own Sherry Non characteristics. After thinking carefully for a while, Luo Yun finally came up with a full name that seemed good to him. Sastu, Sas, Sas. D. Luo Yun, yes, I will use this surname from now on. I am Sassy, D. Luo Yun of the D Clan. The moon star is rare? In a world without industrial pollution, the sky would be clear at night, with a crescent moon hanging high in the night sky and stars twinkling all over the sky, as if a Milky Way was flowing through it. Luo Yun was thinking about the situation at the moment. Time passed quietly. The beggar's chicken placed in the fire was already cooked. The lowest outside had been burned for too long and cracked, making a clicking sound. Advertisement. Three sarsed. Advertisement. When leaving, Luo Yun, who was growling with hunger, stole a chicken from a villager's house. Following the path, Luo Yun trotted all the way to the foot of the nearest hill next to the nearby village. Finding a big tree in a good location near a stream, Luo Yun handled the chicken with ease, then found a fragrant leaf to wrap the chicken in, wrapped it in yellow mud, and threw it into the fire to make a beggar's chicken. While the chicken was being cooked, Luo Yun sat on the root of a nearby tree and lit a fire before calming down and thinking carefully about his current situation. After experiencing the shock and confusion at the beginning of time travel, Luo Yun has now calmed down and accepted this fact. He didn't expect that such a time travel thing would happen to him one day. As for the reason behind this time travel, Luo Yun was too lazy to think about it, and there was no need to think about it. Instead of thinking about these messy, useless things, it is better to think about how to survive in this world. This is the problem before us. First of all, he is not in Hokage, but in One Piece. If he were not Hokage, the world of One Piece would be completely different. With the words of One Piece Roger after his death, the era of great pirates began. People rushed to the Grand Line to find the great secret treasure One Piece. The protagonist is Luffy, a rich second-generation passionate young man who doesn't want to inherit his grandfather and father's family fortune and starts his own business. Advertisement. 
For him now, he first needs to determine what year it is. If it was before Luffy went to sea, it would be great. If Luffy had already gone to sea at this time, it would be very embarrassing. Although he knew the direction of the story, it was of no use if he didn't have the strength. There are many powerful people in the world of pirates. Not only pirates and official forces, but also private forces have many hidden bosses. Fujitora and Green Bull are the two representatives. They are not famous at all, but they have admiral level combat power. You it's not scary to say it's scary. There are a lot of fools like Luffy. If they don't do this or that for you, they just start doing it. If they don't have the strength to make calculations, they are looking for death. He is not the main character Luffy. He fights monsters and upgrades all the way. He has gone from a newcomer to a strong player in just a few years. Even if he has two Sherry Nons, it still takes time to improve his strength. Only by determining what year he was in could he plan some things. There were currently two things in front of him. One was to determine the year, and the other was to become stronger. It's okay to make sure you are old enough. If you want to become stronger quickly, you must first find a famous teacher. Having a good master to guide you can avoid many detours. What do you want to say to master? Of course it would be best to find Pluton Rayleigh, who can still be among the top combatants without the ability of Devil Fruit. Conqueror's Haki, physical skills, and swordsmanship are among the best in the world, and he has rich experience. You can see the results of Luffy after two years of training. Rayleigh is a very good teacher. Advertisement. But now Rayleigh is probably still working as a co-aider at Sabayati Archipelago. He goes to the casino when he has nothing to do and sells it to himself when he loses the bet. His current position is the East Blue, and he still doesn't know how far to go to the Grand Line, let alone the Sabayati Archipelago, which is in the middle. After thinking about it, he might as well forget it. Speaking of East Blue, I do have a good teacher, the equally legendary marine hero monkey. D. Garp. This old man was even more pervert, putting an end to the two pirate overlords who ruled the Grand Line, Kaido, and Big Mom. Decades ago, he was Garp's younger brother. Without the ability of Devil Fruit, a pair of iron fists is invincible. If there is a perfect armament hacky in the One Piece world, it is Garp. Taijutsu and Haki are definitely at the top. If you don't look at it, Garp turns out to be such a loser. After two years of training, Garp has grown into a capable naval headquarters colonel. But if he wants to become a disciple of Garp, he has to be related to Marine, which means he belongs to Marine. It's not that Luo Yun wants to be a pirate, but he still has to consider joining Marine at the beginning. Thinking about it, Luo Yun suddenly laughed at himself. What was he thinking about? Even if he wanted to become a disciple, others would not accept him. Advertisement. Now it is certain that he needs to find a village. At least he needs to settle down first and then plan the next thing. It is impossible to sleep in the open air like this every day, eating one meal and not finishing the next. I need to change my name first. The name Luo Yun can no longer be used. It seems out of place in this world. What should I change my name to? After all, you can't be careless about your name. In future fights with those strong players, when people call for your name, your name can't be bad. It must be loud and clear. It is best to reflect your own Sherry non-characteristics. After thinking carefully for a while, Luo Yun finally came up with a full name that seemed good to him. Sastu, Sas, Sas. D. Luo Yun, yes, I will use this surname from now on. I am Sassy. D. Luo Yun of the D-Clan. The moon star is rare. In a world without industrial pollution, the sky would be clear at night, with a crescent moon hanging high in the night sky and stars twinkling all over the sky, as if a Milky Way was flowing through it. Luo Yun was thinking about the situation at the moment. Time passed quietly. The beggar's chicken placed in the fire was already cooked. The lowest outside had been burned for too long and cracked, making a clicking sound. Advertisement. Three sars. Advertisement. When leaving, Luo Yun, who was growling with hunger, stole a chicken from a villager's house. Following the path, Luo Yun trotted all the way to the foot of the nearest hill next to the nearby village. Finding a big tree in a good location near a stream, Luo Yun handled the chicken with ease, then found a fragrant leaf to wrap the chicken in, wrapped it in yellow mud, and threw it into the fire to make a beggar's chicken. While the chicken was being cooked, Luo Yun sat on the root of a nearby tree and lit a fire before calming down and thinking carefully about his current situation. After experiencing the shock and confusion at the beginning of time travel, Luo Yun has now come down and accepted this fact. He didn't expect that such a time travel thing would happen to him one day. As for the reason behind this time travel, Luo Yun was too lazy to think about it, and there was no need to think about it. Instead of thinking about these messy, useless things, it is better to think about how to survive in this world. This is the problem before us. First of all, he is not in Hokage, but in One Piece. If he were not Hokage, the world of One Piece would be completely different. With the words of One Piece Roger after his death, the era of great pirates began. People rushed to the Grand Line to find the great secret treasure One Piece. The protagonist is Luffy, a rich second generation passionate young man who doesn't want to inherit his grandfather and father's family fortune and starts his own business. Advertisement. For him now, he first needs to determine what year it is. If it was before Luffy went to sea, it would be great. If Luffy had already gone to sea at this time, it would be very embarrassing. Although he knew the direction of the story, it was of no use if he didn't have the strength. There are many powerful people in the world of pirates. Not only pirates and official forces, but also private forces have many hidden bosses. Fujitora and Green Bull are the two representatives. They are not famous at all, but they have admiral level combat power. You it's not scary to say it's scary. There are a lot of fools like Luffy. If they don't do this or that for you, they just start doing it. If they don't have the strength to make calculations, they are looking for death. He is not the main character Luffy. He fights monsters and upgrades all the way. He has gone from a newcomer to a strong player in just a few years. Even if he has two Sherry Nons, it still takes time to improve his strength. Only by determining what year he was in could he plan some things. There were currently two things in front of him. One was to determine the year, and the other was to become stronger. It's okay to make sure you are old enough. If you want to become stronger quickly, you must first find a famous teacher. 
Having a good master to guide you can avoid many detours. What do you want to say to master? Of course it would be best to find Pluton Rayleigh, who can still be among the top combatants without the ability of Devil Fruit. Conqueror's hacky, physical skills, and swordsmanship are among the best in the world, and he has rich experience. You can see the results of Luffy after two years of training. Rayleigh is a very good teacher. Advertisement. But now Rayleigh is probably still working as a co-aider at Sabayati Archipelago. He goes to the casino when he has nothing to do and sells it to himself when he loses the bet. His current position is the East Blue, and he still doesn't know how far to go to the Grand Line, let alone the Sabayati Archipelago, which is in the middle. After thinking about it, he might as well forget it. Speaking of East Blue, I do have a good teacher, the equally legendary marine hero monkey. D. Garp. This old man was even more pervert, putting an end to the two pirate overlords who ruled the Grand Line, Kaido, and Big Mom. Decades ago, he was Garp's younger brother. Without the ability of Devil Fruit, a pair of iron fists is invincible. If there is a perfect armament hacky in the One Piece world, it is Garp. Taijutsu and Haki are definitely at the top. If you don't look at it, Garp turns out to be such a loser. After two years of training, Garp has grown into a capable naval headquarters colonel. But if he wants to become a disciple of Garp, he has to be related to Marine, which means he belongs to Marine. It's not that Luo Yun wants to be a pirate, but he still has to consider joining Marine at the beginning. Thinking about it, Luo Yun suddenly laughed at himself. What was he thinking about? Even if he wanted to become a disciple, others would not accept him. Advertisement. Now it is certain that he needs to find a village. At least he needs to settle down first and then plan the next thing. It is impossible to sleep in the open air like this every day, eating one meal and not finishing the next. I need to change my name first. The name Luo Yun can no longer be used. It seems out of place in this world. What should I change my name to? After all, you can't be careless about your name. In future fights with those strong players, when people call for your name, your name can't be bad. It must be loud and clear. It is best to reflect your own sherry non-characteristics. After thinking carefully for a while, Luo Yun finally came up with a full name that seemed good to him. Sass to, Sass, Sass. D Luo Yun, yes, I will use this surname from now on. I am Sassy. D Luo Yun of the D-Clan. The moon star is rare? In a world without industrial pollution, the sky would be clear at night, with a crescent moon hanging high in the night sky and stars twinkling all over the sky, as if a Milky Way was flowing through it. Luo Yun was thinking about the situation at the moment. Time passed quietly. The beggar's chicken placed in the fire was already cooked. The lowest outside had been burned for too long and cracked, making a clicking sound. Advertisement. 3. State your name. Advertisement. Luo Yun woke up with a start. When Luo Yun saw that the beggar's chicken had been prepared, his stomach, which had been hungry for a long time, immediately began to growl unsatisfactorily. He took the beggar's chicken out of the fire with a nearby branch, knocked open the yellow soil outside, and pushed away the pieces of Lois. A stream of hot steam came out, followed by an extremely rich fragrance. Luo Yun's mouth watered when he smelled it hard. He didn't care so much, and didn't care whether it was hot or not. He just started peeling off the outer leaves, revealing the golden roast chicken, and the aroma was even stronger. Raising his hand to wipe the drool from the corner of his mouth, Luo Yun grabbed the chicken leg and tore it off with force. Oil and water dripped from the chicken leg. Luo Yun licked his tongue and opened his mouth to bite. Call out. A stone flew through the air and hit Luo Yun directly on the forehead. Luo Yun screamed in pain and almost threw the chicken drumstick out of his hand. Raising his hand to touch his red forehead, Luo Yun stood up angrily, looked around, and shouted, Who is it? Who can sneak up on me? Get out of here. Call out. Another stone came, and Luo Yun was prepared now. He was so angry that he opened Sherry Nan directly, his eyes became red, and a round of black Megatama rotated in his eyes. Advertisement. When Sherry Nan was turned on, the fast rock slowed down several times in his eyes. Luo Yun lowered his head and bent down to avoid it, and the rock smashed into the sparks behind him, sparking a cloud of sparks. Huh. The person hiding in the secret saw Luo Yun's eyes turning red and let out a cry of surprise. He was very shocked that Luo Yun's eyes could turn blood red. With Sherry Nan turned on, Luo Yun's vision improved rapidly, and he could spot a little ghost more than 10 meters away, hiding in the darkness behind a bunch of trees. Without thinking, Luo Yun raised his foot and kicked a branch under his feet in the direction of the kid. The kid hiding in the bushes saw that Luo Yun had discovered him and jumped out of the bushes. Only then did Lin Ping see the other person's appearance. He was a kid who was smaller than him. He was wearing a white top and dark blue pants. He used a white hemp rope as a belt to tie the pants. The most eye-catching thing was his rare short green hair. He was holding a piece of grass in his mouth and looking at him with an unruly and arrogant look. Green hair. Looking at the other person's green hair, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment, suddenly thought of something, and his pupils dilated. In the world of One Piece, the one with green hair who is most remembered is Zoro. Could it be that the kid in front of me is Zoro? Advertisement. No, no. Wait, wait. Zoro has green hair, but that doesn't mean he has green hair and is Zoro. Luo Yun shook his head, calming down his excited heart, and asked the other person's name first. When Zoro saw the boy in front of him, he shook his head in surprise, frowned in confusion, and shouted, Hey, boy, who are you? Tell me your name. Luo Yun's eyes flashed and he shouted, If you want others to state their names, shouldn't you state your own first? Zoro thought for a while, and it seemed like the same thing. He coughed twice and said with a serious face, I am Rorino, the invincible fighter in the nearby villages. Zoro, who are you? It was really Zoro. Luo Yun was shocked. He didn't expect to actually meet Zoro when he was a child. This was such good luck. Suppressing the shock in his heart, Luo Yun also announced his name and said, My name is Sas. D. Luo Yun, Rorino. Zoro, why did you attack me just now? Hearing Luo Yun use the word sneak attack to describe what he had just done, Zoro seemed to be irritated and shouted, That's not a sneak attack. I think you dare to stay in the mountain alone at night. I just want to test how strong you are. I thought you were quite weak, but I didn't expect you to have a pair of strange eyes. Yeah. Luo Yun expressed doubts, and suddenly found that Zoro's eyes had been scanning the chicken legs in his hand, and he touched his belly with his right hand. Lin Ping understood that he was attracted by the smell of his roast chicken. Advertisement. Luo Yun put away the sherry non, turned around and sat down, and said to Zoro who was standing far away, If you want to eat, come over together. I can't finish this roast chicken by myself. Zoro hesitated for a moment, but his growling stomach urged him to come over and sit opposite Luo Yun. 
Come. Luo Yun raised his hand and threw the chicken leg to Zoro on the opposite side. Zoro caught it, smelled the fragrance of the chicken leg, and his stomach growled even more hungry. He grabbed the chicken leg and started to chew on it. Looking at Zoro eating chicken legs in front of him, at this time Zoro is far from the grown-up Haki. At this age, he is just a little boy. However, Zoro is still a child, which means that Luffy is also still a child. In addition, Zoro does not have a sword yet, which means that Zoro has not defeated Koshiro, the master of the sword path. It seems that the time when he traveled through time was still a long time before Luffy went to sea, which also meant that he had enough time to become stronger. Seeing Zoro eating so happily, Luo Yun's stomach growled. He tore off the other chicken leg and bit into it. The whole roast chicken weighing 4 to 5 kilograms was quickly eaten by the two of them. Fortunately, although the two of them have large appetites, they are still children after all. A whole roast chicken is enough for two people. Zoro touched his full belly, looked at the pile of bones at his feet, and said sheepishly, Thank you for the roast chicken. I will give you one back then. Advertisement. 3. State your name. Advertisement. Luo Yun woke up with a start. When Luo Yun saw that the beggar's chicken had been prepared, his stomach, which had been hungry for a long time, immediately began to growl unsatisfactorily. He took the beggar's chicken out of the fire with a nearby branch, knocked open the yellow soil outside, and pushed away the pieces of Lois. A stream of hot steam came out, followed by an extremely rich fragrance. Luo Yun's mouth watered when he smelled it hard. He didn't care so much, and didn't care whether it was hot or not. He just started peeling off the outer leaves, revealing the golden roast chicken, and the aroma was even stronger. Raising his hand to wipe the drool from the corner of his mouth, Luo Yun grabbed the chicken leg and tore it off with force. Oil and water dripped from the chicken leg. Luo Yun licked his tongue and opened his mouth to bite. Call out. A stone flew through the air and hit Luo Yun directly on the forehead. Luo Yun screamed in pain and almost threw the chicken drumstick out of his hand. Raising his hand to touch his red forehead, Luo Yun stood up angrily, looked around, and shouted, Who is it? Who can sneak up on me? Get out of here. Call out. Another stone came, and Luo Yun was prepared now. He was so angry that he opened Sherry Nan directly, his eyes became red, and a round of black Megatama rotated in his eyes. Advertisement. When Sherry Nan was turned on, the fast rock slowed down several times in his eyes. Luo Yun lowered his head and bent down to avoid it, and the rock smashed into the sparks behind him, sparking a cloud of sparks. Huh. The person hiding in the secret saw Luo Yun's eyes turning red and let out a cry of surprise. He was very shocked that Luo Yun's eyes could turn blood red. With Sherry Nan turned on, Luo Yun's vision improved rapidly, and he could spot a little ghost more than 10 meters away, hiding in the darkness behind a bunch of trees. Without thinking, Luo Yun raised his foot and kicked a branch under his feet in the direction of the kid. The kid hiding in the bushes saw that Luo Yun had discovered him and jumped out of the bushes. Only then did Lin Ping see the other person's appearance. He was a kid who was smaller than him. He was wearing a white top and dark blue pants. He used a white hemp rope as a belt to tie the pants. The most eye-catching thing was his rare short green hair. He was holding a piece of grass in his mouth and looking at him with an unruly and arrogant look. Green hair. Looking at the other person's green hair, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment, suddenly thought of something, and his pupils dilated. In the world of One Piece, the one with green hair who is most remembered is Zoro. Could it be that the kid in front of me is Zoro? Advertisement. No, no. Wait, wait. Zoro has green hair, but that doesn't mean he has green hair and is Zoro. Luo Yun shook his head, calming down his excited heart, and asked the other person's name first. When Zoro saw the boy in front of him, he shook his head in surprise, frowned in confusion, and shouted, Hey, boy, who are you? Tell me your name. Luo Yun's eyes flashed and he shouted, If you want others to state their names, shouldn't you state your own first? Zoro thought for a while, and it seemed like the same thing. He coughed twice and said with a serious face, I am Rorino, the invincible fighter in the nearby villages. Zoro, who are you? It was really Zoro. Luo Yun was shocked. He didn't expect to actually meet Zoro when he was a child. This was such good luck. Suppressing the shock in his heart, Luo Yun also announced his name and said, My name is Sas. D. Luo Yun, Rorino. Zoro, why did you attack me just now? Hearing Luo Yun use the word sneak attack to describe what he had just done, Zoro seemed to be irritated and shouted, That's not a sneak attack. I think you dare to stay in the mountain alone at night. I just want to test how strong you are. I thought you were quite weak, but I didn't expect you to have a pair of strange eyes. Yeah. Luo Yun expressed doubts, and suddenly found that Zoro's eyes had been scanning the chicken legs in his hand, and he touched his belly with his right hand. Lin Ping understood that he was attracted by the smell of his roast chicken. Advertisement. Luo Yun put away the sherry non, turned around and sat down, and said to Zoro who was standing far away, If you want to eat, come over together. I can't finish this roast chicken by myself. Zoro hesitated for a moment, but his growling stomach urged him to come over and sit opposite Luo Yun. Come. Luo Yun raised his hand and threw the chicken leg to Zoro on the opposite side. Zoro caught it, smelled the fragrance of the chicken leg, and his stomach growled even more hungry. He grabbed the chicken leg and started to chew on it. Looking at Zoro eating chicken legs in front of him, at this time Zoro is far from the grown-up Haki. At this age, he is just a little boy. However, Zoro is still a child, which means that Luffy is also still a child. In addition, Zoro does not have a sword yet, which means that Zoro has not defeated Koshiro, the master of the sword path. It seems that the time when he traveled through time was still a long time before Luffy went to sea, which also meant that he had enough time to become stronger. Seeing Zoro eating so happily, Luo Yun's stomach growled. He tore off the other chicken leg and bit into it. The whole roast chicken weighing 4 to 5 kilograms was quickly eaten by the two of them. Fortunately, although the two of them have large appetites, they are still children after all. A whole roast chicken is enough for two people. Zoro touched his full belly, looked at the pile of bones at his feet, and said sheepishly, Thank you for the roast chicken. I will give you one back then. Advertisement. 3. State your name. Advertisement. Luo Yun woke up with a start. When Luo Yun saw that the beggar's chicken had been prepared, his stomach, which had been hungry for a long time, immediately began to growl unsatisfactorily. He took the beggar's chicken out of the fire with a nearby branch, knocked open the yellow soil outside, and pushed away the pieces of Lois. A stream of hot steam came out, followed by an extremely rich fragrance. Luo Yun's mouth watered when he smelled it hard. He didn't care so much, and didn't care whether it was hot or not. 
He just started peeling off the outer leaves, revealing the golden roast chicken, and the aroma was even stronger. Raising his hand to wipe the drool from the corner of his mouth, Luo Yun grabbed the chicken leg and tore it off with force. Oil and water dripped from the chicken leg. Luo Yun licked his tongue and opened his mouth to bite. Call out. A stone flew through the air and hit Luo Yun directly on the forehead. Luo Yun screamed in pain and almost threw the chicken drumstick out of his hand. Raising his hand to touch his red forehead, Luo Yun stood up angrily, looked around, and shouted, Who is it? Who can sneak up on me? Get out of here. Call out. Another stone came, and Luo Yun was prepared now. He was so angry that he opened Sherry Nan directly, his eyes became red, and a round of black Megatama rotated in his eyes. Advertisement. When Sherry Nan was turned on, the fast rock slowed down several times in his eyes. Luo Yun lowered his head and bent down to avoid it, and the rock smashed into the sparks behind him, sparking a cloud of sparks. Huh. The person hiding in the secret saw Luo Yun's eyes turning red and let out a cry of surprise. He was very shocked that Luo Yun's eyes could turn blood red. With Sherry Nan turned on, Luo Yun's vision improved rapidly, and he could spot a little ghost more than 10 meters away, hiding in the darkness behind a bunch of trees. Without thinking, Luo Yun raised his foot and kicked a branch under his feet in the direction of the kid. The kid hiding in the bushes saw that Luo Yun had discovered him and jumped out of the bushes. Only then did Lin Ping see the other person's appearance. He was a kid who was smaller than him. He was wearing a white top and dark blue pants. He used a white hemp rope as a belt to tie the pants. The most eye-catching thing was his rare short green hair. He was holding a piece of grass in his mouth and looking at him with an unruly and arrogant look. Green hair. Looking at the other person's green hair, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment, suddenly thought of something, and his pupils dilated. In the world of One Piece, the one with green hair who is most remembered is Zoro. Could it be that the kid in front of me is Zoro? Advertisement. No, no. Wait, wait. Zoro has green hair, but that doesn't mean he has green hair and is Zoro. Luo Yun shook his head, calming down his excited heart, and asked the other person's name first. When Zoro saw the boy in front of him, he shook his head in surprise, frowned in confusion, and shouted, Hey, boy, who are you? Tell me your name. Luo Yun's eyes flashed and he shouted, If you want others to state their names, shouldn't you state your own first? Zoro thought for a while, and it seemed like the same thing. He coughed twice and said with a serious face, I am Rorino, the invincible fighter in the nearby villages. Zoro, who are you? It was really Zoro. Luo Yun was shocked. He didn't expect to actually meet Zoro when he was a child. This was such good luck. Suppressing the shock in his heart, Luo Yun also announced his name and said, My name is Sas. D. Luo Yun, Rorino. Zoro, why did you attack me just now? Hearing Luo Yun use the word sneak attack to describe what he had just done, Zoro seemed to be irritated and shouted, That's not a sneak attack. I think you dare to stay in the mountain alone at night. I just want to test how strong you are. I thought you were quite weak, but I didn't expect you to have a pair of strange eyes. Yeah, Luo Yun expressed doubts, and suddenly found that Zoro's eyes had been scanning the chicken legs in his hand, and he touched his belly with his right hand. Lin Ping understood that he was attracted by the smell of his roast chicken. Advertisement. Luo Yun put away the sherry non, turned around and sat down, and said to Zoro who was standing far away, If you want to eat, come over together. I can't finish this roast chicken by myself. Zoro hesitated for a moment, but his growling stomach urged him to come over and sit opposite Luo Yun. Come. Luo Yun raised his hand and threw the chicken leg to Zoro on the opposite side. Zoro caught it, smelled the fragrance of the chicken leg, and his stomach growled even more hungry. He grabbed the chicken leg and started to chew on it. Looking at Zoro eating chicken legs in front of him, at this time Zoro is far from the grown-up Haki. At this age, he is just a little boy. However, Zoro is still a child, which means that Luffy is also still a child. In addition, Zoro does not have a sword yet, which means that Zoro has not defeated Koshiro, the master of the sword path. It seems that the time when he traveled through time was still a long time before Luffy went to sea, which also meant that he had enough time to become stronger. Seeing Zoro eating so happily, Luo Yun's stomach growled. He tore off the other chicken leg and bit into it. The whole roast chicken weighing 4 to 5 kilograms was quickly eaten by the two of them. Fortunately, although the two of them have large appetites, they are still children after all. A whole roast chicken is enough for two people. Zoro touched his full belly, looked at the pile of bones at his feet, and said sheepishly, Thank you for the roast chicken. I will give you one back then. Advertisement. Four learn swordsmanship. Advertisement. It's just a roast chicken, not something expensive. Luo Yun waved his hand and said grandly. This made Zoro feel much better about Luo Yun. After a pause, Luo Yun continued, Speaking of which, why are you in the mountains at this late hour? Zoro raised his fist Kaido, I have defeated invincible opponents in my own village. I heard that there is a very powerful kendo master in the next village. I want to challenge him, but on the way there, I didn't pay attention to the time. Staying here for now. As he said that, Zoro turned his head away, not daring to look into Luo Yun's smiling eyes. You shouldn't be lost, right? No, I just didn't pay attention to the time. Zoro, who was exposed, suddenly became angry and shouted, making Luo Yun slap her legs and burst into laughter. Zoro clenched his fists and wanted to hit the mocking Luo Yun in anger, but thinking that he had just eaten half a roast chicken, it would be a bad idea to hit him, so he could only snort, fold his arms and sit down depressedly. After laughing for a while, Luo Yun put away his smile and said, The village you went to is called Shimatsuki Village, right? Advertisement. You know too, yeah, this village is particularly famous among the surrounding villages because there is a very strong swordsman master there, and many nearby villagers send their children there to learn swordsmanship. What is famous for? Of course, Luo Yun made it up. He was hunted down by the villagers when he first arrived. How could he know this? He said that this was just to get closer to Zoro, and also laid the groundwork for what he did next. Hearing that Luo Yun, the kendo gym leader, was very powerful, Zoro gushed and said disdainfully, Why is that so awesome? I just went to compete in the gym this time. Defeating that gym owner proves that I am the strongest. It seems that Zoro in the future will be strong, unwilling to admit defeat, and dare to fight since he was a child. So that's it. Luo Yun pretended to be surprised, and then invited, Let's go together. If the master of the kendo gym is defeated by you, I will learn swordsmanship from him. If you are not him of. Before Luo Yun finished speaking, he was interrupted by Zoro, I must have won, and I will definitely defeat him. Luo Yun, you should change your teacher. I don't believe it. With your little arms and legs, how can you be my rival? 
He is well known in several nearby villages. Luo Yun pretended to look down on Zoro. Zoro is still a child and is so strong. What happened to Zoro? Luo Yun was furious. Seeing that Luo Yun looked down on him, he looked at Luo Yun angrily and said, If you don't believe it, let's make a bet. Luo Yun's eyes flashed, and he was secretly happy. Children were children, and they fell into the trap so easily, but he still pretended to be hesitant before speaking. What kind of bet? Advertisement. Zoro still didn't know that he was falling into the trap set by Luo Yun, so he thought carefully about what bet to set. After thinking for a long time, Zoro finally thought of it and said, In this way, if I defeat that kendo gym leader, you have to call me big brother. Luo Yun said, Then if you are not defeated and I win, what will you do? I won't lose. There's always a chance of anything happening. What if you lose? If I lose, then I will call you big brother. Okay, it's a deal. High-fiving Zoro, Luo Yun showed a smile of success on his face. Zoro looked at Luo Yun and smiled. For some reason, he had a bad feeling in his heart, but he dismissed it in the blink of an eye. He would not lose, Luo Yun is doomed. The two chatted for a while, and they both felt sleepy at the end, so they slept like this all night leaning on tree roots. The next day, Luo Yun took Zoro down the mountain, and Zoro followed Luo Yun without any objection. In addition to the reason for yesterday's bet, there is another most important reason. He has been wandering in this mountain for three days. If he doesn't follow Luo Yun, he doesn't know how long he will continue to wander. On the way, Luo Yun didn't ask Zoro about the road. Zoro, who was a road nerd, asked him that he would never be able to reach Shimatsuki village. Luo Yun took Zoro down the other side of the mountain and came to a prosperous town at the foot of the mountain. Shimatsuki village has Koshiro's kendo gym. The village should be quite famous. You can find out by asking around in town. Advertisement. In town? This is the largest town among several nearby villages. Today is the market day once a month. Many villagers from nearby villages come here to go to the market. The town is extremely busy. Every street is crowded with people, and almost every shop and stall along both sides of the street is crowded with people, making it a lively scene. Before going in, Luo Yun held Zoro's hand, which was a warning. Zoro, after entering the town, no matter what happens, you have to follow me. Anyone who watches One Piece will know Zoro's road crazy attribute. The word direction does not exist in Zoro's dictionary. Not to mention that today is so lively and crowded, and it is easy to get separated if you are not careful. Luo Yun doesn't want to have to find this guy then. However, just a minute after Luo Yun and Zoro entered the town, Luo Yun stood alone at the entrance of the town, looking up and forgetting the sky, wanting to cry without tears. It's so hard for me. Back to a minute ago, Luo Yun was walking inside with Zoro. There was a lot of traffic in the town, so naturally there were more people coming in and out at the entrance. Advertisement. Four learn swordsmanship. Advertisement. It's just a roast chicken, not something expensive. Luo Yun waved his hand and said grandly. This made Zoro feel much better about Luo Yun. After a pause, Luo Yun continued, Speaking of which, why are you in the mountains at this late hour? Zoro raised his fist Kaido, I have defeated invincible opponents in my own village. I heard that there is a very powerful kendo master in the next village. I want to challenge him, but on the way there, I didn't pay attention to the time. Staying here for now. As he said that, Zoro turned his head away, not daring to look into Luo Yun's smiling eyes. You shouldn't be lost, right? No, I just didn't pay attention to the time. Zoro, who was exposed, suddenly became angry and shouted, making Luo Yun slap her legs and burst into laughter. Zoro clenched his fists and wanted to hit the mocking Luo Yun in anger, but thinking that he had just eaten half a roast chicken, it would be a bad idea to hit him, so he could only snort, fold his arms and sit down depressedly. After laughing for a while, Luo Yun put away his smile and said, The village you went to is called Shimatsuki Village, right? Advertisement. You know too, yeah, this village is particularly famous among the surrounding villages because there is a very strong swordsman master there, and many nearby villagers send their children there to learn swordsmanship. What is famous for? Of course, Luo Yun made it up. He was hunted down by the villagers when he first arrived. How could he know this? He said that this was just to get closer to Zoro, and also laid the groundwork for what he did next. Hearing that Luo Yun, the kendo gym leader, was very powerful, Zoro gushed and said disdainfully, Why is that so awesome? I just went to compete in the gym this time. Defeating that gym owner proves that I am the strongest. It seems that Zoro in the future will be strong, unwilling to admit defeat, and dare to fight since he was a child. So that's it. Luo Yun pretended to be surprised, and then invited, Let's go together. If the master of the kendo gym is defeated by you, I will learn swordsmanship from him. If you are not him of. Before Luo Yun finished speaking, he was interrupted by Zoro, I must have won, and I will definitely defeat him. Luo Yun, you should change your teacher. I don't believe it. With your little arms and legs, how can you be my rival? He is well known in several nearby villages. Luo Yun pretended to look down on Zoro. Zoro is still a child and is so strong. What happened to Zoro? Luo Yun was furious. Seeing that Luo Yun looked down on him, he looked at Luo Yun angrily and said, If you don't believe it, let's make a bet. Luo Yun's eyes flashed, and he was secretly happy. Children were children, and they fell into the trap so easily, but he still pretended to be hesitant before speaking. What kind of bet? Advertisement. Zoro still didn't know that he was falling into the trap set by Luo Yun, so he thought carefully about what bet to set. After thinking for a long time, Zoro finally thought of it and said, In this way, if I defeat that kendo gym leader, you have to call me big brother. Luo Yun said, Then if you are not defeated and I win, what will you do? I won't lose. There's always a chance of anything happening. What if you lose? If I lose, then I will call you big brother. Okay, it's a deal. High-fiving Zoro, Luo Yun showed a smile of success on his face. Zoro looked at Luo Yun and smiled. For some reason, he had a bad feeling in his heart, but he dismissed it in the blink of an eye. He would not lose, Luo Yun is doomed. The two chatted for a while, and they both felt sleepy at the end, so they slept like this all night leaning on tree roots. The next day, Luo Yun took Zoro down the mountain, and Zoro followed Luo Yun without any objection. In addition to the reason for yesterday's bet, there is another most important reason. He has been wandering in this mountain for three days. If he doesn't follow Luo Yun, he doesn't know how long he will continue to wander. On the way, Luo Yun didn't ask Zoro about the road. Zoro, who was a road nerd, asked him that he would never be able to reach Shimatsuki village. Luo Yun took Zoro down the other side of the mountain and came to a prosperous town at the foot of the mountain. Shimatsuki village has Koshiro's kendo gym. The village should be quite famous. You can find out by asking around in town. 
Advertisement. In town, this is the largest town among several nearby villages. Today is the market day once a month. Many villagers from nearby villages come here to go to the market. The town is extremely busy. Every street is crowded with people, and almost every shop and stall along both sides of the street is crowded with people, making it a lively scene. Before going in, Luo Yun held Zoro's hand, which was a warning. Zoro, after entering the town, no matter what happens, you have to follow me. Anyone who watches One Piece will know Zoro's road crazy attribute. The word direction does not exist in Zoro's dictionary. Not to mention that today is so lively and crowded, and it is easy to get separated if you are not careful. Luo Yun doesn't want to have to find this guy then. However, just a minute after Luo Yun and Zoro entered the town, Luo Yun stood alone at the entrance of the town, looking up and forgetting the sky, wanting to cry without tears. It's so hard for me. Back to a minute ago, Luo Yun was walking inside with Zoro. There was a lot of traffic in the town, so naturally there were more people coming in and out at the entrance. Advertisement. For learn swordsmanship. Advertisement. It's just a roast chicken, not something expensive. Luo Yun waved his hand and said grandly. This made Zoro feel much better about Luo Yun. After a pause, Luo Yun continued, speaking of which, why are you in the mountains at this late hour? Zoro raised his fist Kaido, I have defeated invincible opponents in my own village. I heard that there is a very powerful kendo master in the next village. I want to challenge him, but on the way there, I didn't pay attention to the time. Staying here for now. As he said that, Zoro turned his head away, not daring to look into Luo Yun's smiling eyes. You shouldn't be lost, right? No, I just didn't pay attention to the time. Zoro, who was exposed, suddenly became angry and shouted, making Luo Yun slap her legs and burst into laughter. Zoro clenched his fists and wanted to hit the mocking Luo Yun in anger, but thinking that he had just eaten half a roast chicken, it would be a bad idea to hit him, so he could only snort, fold his arms and sit down depressly. After laughing for a while, Luo Yun put away his smile and said, The village you went to is called Shimatsuki Village, right? Advertisement. You know too, yeah? This village is particularly famous among the surrounding villages because there is a very strong swordsman master there, and many nearby villagers send their children there to learn swordsmanship. What is famous for? Of course, Luo Yun made it up. He was hunted down by the villagers when he first arrived. How could he know this? He said that this was just to get closer to Zoro, and also laid the groundwork for what he did next. Hearing that Luo Yun, the kendo gym leader, was very powerful, Zoro gushed and said disdainfully, Why is that so awesome? I just went to compete in the gym this time. Defeating that gym owner proves that I am the strongest. It seems that Zoro in the future will be strong, unwilling to admit defeat, and dare to fight since he was a child. So that's it. Luo Yun pretended to be surprised, and then invited, Let's go together. If the master of the kendo gym is defeated by you, I will learn swordsmanship from him. If you are not him of. Before Luo Yun finished speaking, he was interrupted by Zoro, I must have won, and I will definitely defeat him. Luo Yun, you should change your teacher. I don't believe it. With your little arms and legs, how can you be my rival? He is well known in several nearby villages. Luo Yun pretended to look down on Zoro. Zoro is still a child and is so strong. What happened to Zoro? Luo Yun was furious. Seeing that Luo Yun looked down on him, he looked at Luo Yun angrily and said, If you don't believe it, let's make a bet. Luo Yun's eyes flashed, and he was secretly happy. Children were children, and they fell into the trap so easily, but he still pretended to be hesitant before speaking. What kind of bet? Advertisement. Zoro still didn't know that he was falling into the trap set by Luo Yun, so he thought carefully about what bet to set. After thinking for a long time, Zoro finally thought of it and said, In this way, if I defeat that kendo gym leader, you have to call me big brother. Luo Yun said, Then if you are not defeated and I win, what will you do? I won't lose. There's always a chance of anything happening. What if you lose? If I lose, then I will call you big brother. Okay, it's a deal. High-fiving Zoro, Luo Yun showed a smile of success on his face. Zoro looked at Luo Yun and smiled. For some reason, he had a bad feeling in his heart, but he dismissed it in the blink of an eye. He would not lose, Luo Yun is doomed. The two chatted for a while, and they both felt sleepy at the end, so they slept like this all night leaning on tree roots. The next day, Luo Yun took Zoro down the mountain, and Zoro followed Luo Yun without any objection. In addition to the reason for yesterday's bet, there is another most important reason. He has been wandering in this mountain for three days. If he doesn't follow Luo Yun, he doesn't know how long he will continue to wander. On the way, Luo Yun didn't ask Zoro about the road. Zoro, who was a road nerd, asked him that he would never be able to reach Shimatsuki village. Luo Yun took Zoro down the other side of the mountain and came to a prosperous town at the foot of the mountain. Shimatsuki village has Koshiro's kendo gym. The village should be quite famous. You can find out by asking around in town. Advertisement. In town? This is the largest town among several nearby villages. Today is the market day once a month. Many villagers from nearby villages come here to go to the market. The town is extremely busy. Every street is crowded with people, and almost every shop and stall along both sides of the street is crowded with people, making it a lively scene. Before going in, Luo Yun held Zoro's hand, which was a warning. Zoro, after entering the town, no matter what happens, you have to follow me. Anyone who watches One Piece will know Zoro's road crazy attribute. The word direction does not exist in Zoro's dictionary. Not to mention that today is so lively and crowded, and it is easy to get separated if you are not careful. Luo Yun doesn't want to have to find this guy then. However, just a minute after Luo Yun and Zoro entered the town, Luo Yun stood alone at the entrance of the town, looking up and forgetting the sky, wanting to cry without tears. It's so hard for me. Back to a minute ago, Luo Yun was walking inside with Zoro. There was a lot of traffic in the town, so naturally there were more people coming in and out at the entrance. Advertisement. Five Road Crazy Zoro. Advertisement. As people crowded forward and walked forward, Luo Yun and Zoro could only push forward a little bit with the crowd. At first, Luo Yun was afraid that Zoro would get lost, so he looked back from time to time to see if Zoro was still there. After entering the town and walking forward for only a few dozen meters, he came across the first entrance. There was a vendor arguing with someone next to him. Luo Yun took a second look curiously. Two eyes? It's really just two eyes. When he looked back, Zoro was no longer there, disappearing behind him. Standing at the end of the town, Luo Yun pulled his hair in annoyance, not because he was upset that Zoro had lost it, but because he actually believed that Zoro would not lose it. How could there be such a stupid person like him? Young, still too young. How can you believe that Zoro is a fool? 
If he could take the right path, there would be no such word as a fool in this world. Why? Sighing deeply, Luo Yun really felt like crying without tears at this moment. He was completely desperate for Zoro. Advertisement. Whatever you want, just throw it away. Isn't it just that Zoro is lost? No matter how big the problem is, it operates normally. Maybe you'll run into him if you wander around. It doesn't matter if you don't run into him. As much as this guy is causing trouble, he will run into him sooner or later. Thinking like this, the depression in Luo Yun's heart disappeared. He turned around and walked into the town again. Asking where Shimatsuki village was and how to get there was what he should do now. On the other side, Zoro was facing a dead-end alley. His face was livid, and he was yelling curses. That idiot Luo Yun can actually get lost. Luo Yun, who entered the town alone, did not go looking for a place to ask Shimatsuki village first. Instead, he squeezed in a crowded place and searched for the target. You are the one. Advertisement. Finally, my eyes fell on a fat man, walking on the street with an arrogant and domineering look on his face. He wore a big gold chain around his neck, and he almost had the words get rich written on his face. Ku Ok pretended to walk over casually, and the moment he got close to the fat man, Luo Yun Sherry Nan quickly opened, all movements slowed down in his eyes, his right hand reached out and retracted, and Sherry Nan closed. A series of actions were completed in seconds when Luo Yun and the fat man intertwined. It was so fast that no one noticed Luo Yun's behavior. Turning the intersection, Luo Yun had a smile on his face. He raised his hand and threw the money bag in his hand. It was heavy. He was indeed a nouveau riche. He had a lot of money when he went out. Sherry Nan is really convenient. Even though just one Megatama is already so powerful, it surpasses ordinary people's vision and insight. Even seemingly fast movements are only extremely slow in his eyes. As for using Sherry Nan to steal things, if the Achiha family members of the Hokage knew about it, would they kill him from across the world? This is not a question Luo Yun is thinking about. After finding the best restaurant on this street, the two tall and thick waiters guarding the door saw that Luo Yun was a brat and was wearing rags, so they immediately stopped Luo Yun. When Luo Yun took out two silver coins from the bag and threw them to the two waiters, the two waiters immediately smiled and bowed their heads to welcome Luo Yun in. The usefulness of money is highlighted at this time. Money may not be everything, but without money nothing is impossible. No matter in any world, this principle must be followed. Advertisement. Luo Yun did not go to the lobby, but went straight to a private room on the second floor. Just as he casually gave a huge tip of two silver coins, the waiters in the restaurant knew that the seemingly shabby child in front of him was actually a kid who ran away from home. The wealthy second generation who carry huge sums of money. Immediately, there was no way anyone dared to neglect. Each one of them served extremely hard and wanted to get two tips. One silver coin was enough for them to earn a month's salary. Luo Yun was not stingy, and rewarded several young and beautiful waiters with a silver coin each. Anyway, there was a lot of money in the suddenly rich bag, with dozens of silver coins and more than ten gold coins. How much belly is worth? When Luo Yun came here, he didn't know the exchange rate for gold and silver coins in One Piece world. How could he find out clearly? But looking at the excitement of all the waiters, the exchange rate couldn't be much lower. Reaching out to summon the cleverest waitress among them, Luo Yun said, Beautiful lady, please bring a portion of all the delicious food you have here. Okay, sir. Being praised by Luo Yun for her beauty, the waitress smiled, thinking to herself that she didn't expect that this grown-up from a good family could really speak, and his tone was gentle, but it's a pity that he is too young, otherwise I can do something for my sister. Luo Yun added, By the way, sister, I have a family elder who teaches kendo in Shimatsuki village. On the way to visit, I was attacked by bandits. Now I am the only one left. I lost my way and walked all the way here. I would like to ask how to get to Shimatsuki village from this town. No wonder such a rich young man looked so miserable. It turned out that he was attacked by bandits. Suddenly, thinking that such a young boy was alone, the waitress was filled with sympathy. Next, I asked for directions and said, Shimatsuki village is on the seaside to the southwest of the town. There is a main road directly out of the southwest of the town. Walk along the main road for about half a mile and you will see Shimatsuki village. Advertisement. Five Road Crazy Zoro. Advertisement. As people crowded forward and walked forward, Luo Yun and Zoro could only push forward a little bit with the crowd. At first, Luo Yun was afraid that Zoro would get lost, so he looked back from time to time to see if Zoro was still there. After entering the town and walking forward for only a few dozen meters, he came across the first entrance. There was a vendor arguing with someone next to him. Luo Yun took a second look curiously. Two eyes? It's really just two eyes. When he looked back, Zoro was no longer there, disappearing behind him. Standing at the end of the town, Luo Yun pulled his hair in annoyance, not because he was upset that Zoro had lost it, but because he actually believed that Zoro would not lose it. How could there be such a stupid person like him? Young, still too young. How can you believe that Zoro is a fool? If he could take the right path, there would be no such word as a fool in this world. Why? Sighing deeply, Luo Yun really felt like crying without tears at this moment. He was completely desperate for Zoro. Advertisement. Whatever you want, just throw it away. Isn't it just that Zoro is lost? No matter how big the problem is, it operates normally. Maybe you'll run into him if you wander around. It doesn't matter if you don't run into him. As much as this guy is causing trouble, he will run into him sooner or later. Thinking like this, the depression in Luo Yun's heart disappeared. He turned around and walked into the town again. Asking where Shimatsuki village was and how to get there was what he should do now. On the other side, Zoro was facing a dead end alley. His face was livid, and he was yelling curses. That idiot Luo Yun can actually get lost. Luo Yun, who entered the town alone, did not go looking for a place to ask Shimatsuki village first. Instead, he squeezed in a crowded place and searched for the target. You are the one. Advertisement. Finally, my eyes fell on a fat man, walking on the street with an arrogant and domineering look on his face. He wore a big gold chain around his neck, and he almost had the words get rich written on his face. Ku Ok pretended to walk over casually, and the moment he got close to the fat man, Luo Yun Sherry Nan quickly opened, all movements slowed down in his eyes, his right hand reached out and retracted, and Sherry Nan closed. A series of actions were completed in seconds when Luo Yun and the fat man intertwined. It was so fast that no one noticed Luo Yun's behavior. Turning the intersection, Luo Yun had a smile on his face. He raised his hand and threw the money bag in his hand. It was heavy. He was indeed a nouveau riche. He had a lot of money when he went out. 
Sherry Nan is really convenient. Even though just one Megatama is already so powerful, it surpasses ordinary people's vision and insight. Even seemingly fast movements are only extremely slow in his eyes. As for using Sherry Nan to steal things, if the Achiha family members of the Hokage knew about it, would they kill him from across the world? This is not a question Luo Yun is thinking about. After finding the best restaurant on this street, the two tall and thick waiters guarding the door saw that Luo Yun was a brat and was wearing rags, so they immediately stopped Luo Yun. When Luo Yun took out two silver coins from the bag and threw them to the two waiters, the two waiters immediately smiled and bowed their heads to welcome Luo Yun in. The usefulness of money is highlighted at this time. Money may not be everything, but without money nothing is impossible. No matter in any world, this principle must be followed. Advertisement. Luo Yun did not go to the lobby, but went straight to a private room on the second floor. Just as he casually gave a huge tip of two silver coins, the waiters in the restaurant knew that the seemingly shabby child in front of him was actually a kid who ran away from home. The wealthy second generation who carry huge sums of money. Immediately, there was no way anyone dared to neglect. Each one of them served extremely hard and wanted to get two tips. One silver coin was enough for them to earn a month's salary. Luo Yun was not stingy, and rewarded several young and beautiful waiters with a silver coin each. Anyway, there was a lot of money in the suddenly rich bag, with dozens of silver coins and more than ten gold coins. How much belly is worth? When Luo Yun came here, he didn't know the exchange rate for gold and silver coins in One Piece world. How could he find out clearly? But looking at the excitement of all the waiters, the exchange rate couldn't be much lower. Reaching out to summon the cleverest waitress among them, Luo Yun said, Beautiful lady, please bring a portion of all the delicious food you have here. Okay, sir. Being praised by Luo Yun for her beauty, the waitress smiled, thinking to herself that she didn't expect that this grown-up from a good family could really speak, and his tone was gentle, but it's a pity that he is too young, otherwise I can do something for my sister. Luo Yun added, By the way, sister, I have a family elder who teaches kendo in Shimatsuki village. On the way to visit, I was attacked by bandits. Now I am the only one left. I lost my way and walked all the way here. I would like to ask how to get to Shimatsuki village from this town. No wonder such a rich young man looked so miserable. It turned out that he was attacked by bandits. Suddenly, thinking that such a young boy was alone, the waitress was filled with sympathy. Next, I asked for directions and said, Shimatsuki village is on the seaside to the southwest of the town. There is a main road directly out of the southwest of the town. Walk along the main road for about half a mile and you will see Shimatsuki village. Advertisement. Five road crazy Zoro. Advertisement. As people crowded forward and walked forward, Luo Yun and Zoro could only push forward a little bit with the crowd. At first, Luo Yun was afraid that Zoro would get lost, so he looked back from time to time to see if Zoro was still there. After entering the town and walking forward for only a few dozen meters, he came across the first entrance. There was a vendor arguing with someone next to him. Luo Yun took a second look curiously. Two eyes? It's really just two eyes. When he looked back, Zoro was no longer there, disappearing behind him. Standing at the end of the town, Luo Yun pulled his hair in annoyance, not because he was upset that Zoro had lost it, but because he actually believed that Zoro would not lose it. How could there be such a stupid person like him? Young, still too young. How can you believe that Zoro is a fool? If he could take the right path, there would be no such word as a fool in this world. Why? Sighing deeply, Luo Yun really felt like crying without tears at this moment. He was completely desperate for Zoro. Advertisement. Whatever you want, just throw it away. Isn't it just that Zoro is lost? No matter how big the problem is, it operates normally. Maybe you'll run into him if you wander around. It doesn't matter if you don't run into him. As much as this guy is causing trouble, he will run into him sooner or later. Thinking like this, the depression in Luo Yun's heart disappeared. He turned around and walked into the town again. Asking where Shimatsuki village was and how to get there was what he should do now. On the other side, Zoro was facing a dead end alley, his face was livid, and he was yelling curses. That idiot Luo Yun can actually get lost. Luo Yun, who entered the town alone, did not go looking for a place to ask Shimatsuki village first. Instead, he squeezed in a crowded place and searched for the target. You are the one. Advertisement. Finally, my eyes fell on a fat man, walking on the street with an arrogant and domineering look on his face. He wore a big gold chain around his neck, and he almost had the words get rich written on his face. Kuo Kei pretended to walk over casually, and the moment he got close to the fat man, Luo Yun Sherry Nan quickly opened, all movements slowed down in his eyes, his right hand reached out and retracted, and Sherry Nan closed. A series of actions were completed in seconds when Luo Yun and the fat man intertwined. It was so fast that no one noticed Luo Yun's behavior. Turning the intersection, Luo Yun had a smile on his face. He raised his hand and threw the money bag in his hand. It was heavy. He was indeed a nouveau riche. He had a lot of money when he went out. Sherry Nan is really convenient. Even though just one Megatama is already so powerful, it surpasses ordinary people's vision and insight. Even seemingly fast movements are only extremely slow in his eyes. As for using Sherry Nan to steal things, if the Achiha family members of the Hokage knew about it, would they kill him from across the world? This is not a question Luo Yun is thinking about. After finding the best restaurant on the street, the two tall and thick waiters guarding the door saw that Luo Yun was a brat and was wearing rags, so they immediately stopped Luo Yun. When Luo Yun took out two silver coins from the bag and threw them to the two waiters, the two waiters immediately smiled and bowed their heads to welcome Luo Yun in. The usefulness of money is highlighted at this time. Money may not be everything, but without money nothing is impossible. No matter in any world, this principle must be followed. Advertisement. Luo Yun did not go to the lobby, but went straight to a private room on the second floor. Just as he casually gave a huge tip of two silver coins, the waiters in the restaurant knew that the seemingly shabby child in front of him was actually a kid who ran away from home. The wealthy second generation who carry huge sums of money. Immediately, there was no way anyone dared to neglect. Each one of them served extremely hard and wanted to get two tips. One silver coin was enough for them to earn a month's salary. Luo Yun was not stingy, and rewarded several young and beautiful waiters with a silver coin each. Anyway, there was a lot of money in the suddenly rich bag, with dozens of silver coins and more than ten gold coins. How much belly is worth? When Luo Yun came here, he didn't know the exchange rate for gold and silver coins in One Piece world. 
How could he find out clearly? But looking at the excitement of all the waiters, the exchange rate couldn't be much lower. Reaching out to summon the cleverest waitress among them, Luo Yun said, Beautiful lady, please bring a portion of all the delicious food you have here. Okay, sir. Being praised by Luo Yun for her beauty, the waitress smiled, thinking to herself that she didn't expect that this grown-up from a good family could really speak, and his tone was gentle, but it's a pity that he is too young, otherwise I can do something for my sister. Luo Yun added, By the way, sister, I have a family elder who teaches kendo in Shimatsuki village. On the way to visit, I was attacked by bandits. Now I am the only one left. I lost my way and walked all the way here. I would like to ask how to get to Shimatsuki village from this town. No wonder such a rich young man looked so miserable. It turned out that he was attacked by bandits. Suddenly, thinking that such a young boy was alone, the waitress was filled with sympathy. Next, I asked for directions and said, Shimatsuki village is on the seaside to the southwest of the town. There is a main road directly out of the southwest of the town. Walk along the main road for about half a mile and you will see Shimatsuki village. Advertisement. 6 Zoro, you have changed. Advertisement. Okay, thank you sister. Next Luo Yun asked some other questions. What country is this? Where is the kingdom of Goa? Have you ever heard of Windmill Village? There is no marine base nearby. The waitress works in this kind of restaurant and usually listens to the conversations of customers from all over the world, so she knows a lot. Most of them can answer it. Except for Windmill Village, they have never heard of it, and the rest are more or less familiar with it. The great restaurant is not only the quality of service, but also the speed of serving food. After chatting for a while, all the dishes were served. When the waitress left, Luo Yun tipped her a silver coin, which made the waitress extremely happy and thanked her repeatedly. From this morning until noon, Luo Yun didn't eat anything in order to reach Shimatsuki village as soon as possible. Looking at the table full of food, Luo Yun's stomach immediately growled with hunger. He wiped the saliva from the corner of his mouth and started eating immediately. However, even if Luo Yun ate and drank like crazy, it was impossible for him to finish all the dishes on the table. He was not a foodie like Luffy. Finally, a roasted chicken and a whole roasted lamb chop were packed away along with a few side dishes. When paying, I also got two bottles of good wine. Zoro is a complete alcoholic, never having fun without drinking, and he should have been drinking since he was a child. Carrying this bag of things, I walked out of the restaurant door. The sun in the sky was still fierce and high in the sky. It was noon now. If I set off at this time, I would be able to reach the dojo around evening. Otherwise I would have to wait until tomorrow. Advertisement. But before we can set off, we need to find Zoro, the crazy guy. This town is either big or small, so finding someone is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Wandering on the street, Luo Yun searched for Zoro while muttering strangely to himself. What's going on? That guy Zoro has caused enough trouble to give Luffy a fight, why hasn't there been any movement yet? As the saying goes, CAO 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 has arrived. Luo Yun was muttering when he heard a burst of noise from behind, which was also mixed with curses and shouts of killing. Luo Yun turned around curiously and looked behind him. There was a chaos in the crowd. People rushed to escape in both directions. Among the separated crowds, he saw Zoro running desperately. Behind him, a group of people wearing grey GI uniforms were led by a strong man, chasing Zoro. Stop, don't run, stop. You bastard, stop here, you dare to molest my woman. What? Luo Yun was shocked when he heard this, what the hell, Zoro, a straight man who has never been cold to women, actually molested a good woman. Zoro, you changed. Advertisement. You have become such a beast. Luo Yun clutched her chest with a heartbroken look on her face. She didn't expect Zoro, a straight-faced man, to look like Sanji when he was a child. Zoro was being chased, not to mention how depressed he was. He was just doing it casually. Who knew that something like that would happen? If he had known it, he would not have done it. This town can't stay any longer, but what to do with that guy Luo Yun? We can't leave him alone. The scolding is getting closer and closer. If this continues, it won't take long for him to catch up. Forget it, let's run out and get rid of these guys first, and then sneak in to find Luo Yun. Suddenly Zoro's eyes lit up and he saw Luo Yun standing in the middle of the road in front of him. Zoro immediately waved and shouted, Luo Yun, I'm here. Luo Yun was watching the show of Zoro being chased. When Zoro shouted, Luo Yun's face darkened and he cursed Zoro for being a cheat. More than ten people were chasing after him, and the crowd was so dark. Luo Yun turned around and ran away without even thinking. If he was caught up, he wouldn't be able to escape even with Sherry Nan. Without training, Sherry Nan has not been able to exert even one-tenth of its usefulness. If he had learned some physical skills or swordsmanship and cooperated with Sherry Nan, Luo Yun would have been absolutely sure to eliminate more than ten people, but it was a pity that he did not. As soon as he turned around and ran away, Luo Yun immediately regretted why he was so stupid. Advertisement. Zoro just shouted without pointing at him. He turned around and ran away to tell everyone that he was Luo Yun, an accomplice of Zoro. This is completely a behavior where there is no silver 300 tails. Zoro had already caught up, and naturally those behind him also caught up, with the pursuers not far behind him. Okay, there are no accomplices yet, don't let these two brats go. Hearing the scolding coming from behind, Luo Yun cursed Zoro in his heart and sighed at the same time. He was the unreasonable disaster. Sighing, Luo Yun ran very fast, and his legs seemed to hit each other. He turned on the small electric motor and fled forward along the road. Stop, you two little wolves, stop for me. The shouts and curses kept coming from behind, and Luo Yun couldn't help but complain. When chasing someone, shouting stand up was invented by some idiot. If you say to stop, they will stop, so you still have to chase. Turning to look at Zoro beside him, Luo Yun suddenly felt heartbroken and said, Zoro, I really misjudged you. I didn't expect you to be such a person and be able to do such a thing. Zoro had a dark face and cursed angrily, get out. I'm not that kind of person, stop slandering me here. It's not that I'm slandering you, Luo Yun said quickly, it's because these people are chasing you because you molested other women. If you didn't do such a thing, why would they be chasing you? Why would you run away? Advertisement. 6 Zoro, you have changed. Advertisement. Okay, thank you sister. Next Luo Yun asked some other questions, what country is this? Where is the kingdom of Goa? 
Have you ever heard of Windmill Village? There is no marine base nearby. The waitress works in this kind of restaurant and usually listens to the conversations of customers from all over the world, so she knows a lot. Most of them can answer it. Except for Windmill Village, they have never heard of it, and the rest are more or less familiar with it. The great restaurant is not only the quality of service, but also the speed of serving food. After chatting for a while, all the dishes were served. When the waitress left, Luo Yun tipped her a silver coin, which made the waitress extremely happy and thanked her repeatedly. From this morning until noon, Luo Yun didn't eat anything in order to reach Shimatsuki village as soon as possible. Looking at the table full of food, Luo Yun's stomach immediately growled with hunger. He wiped the saliva from the corner of his mouth and started eating immediately. However, even if Luo Yun ate and drank like crazy, it was impossible for him to finish all the dishes on the table. He was not a foodie like Luffy. Finally, a roasted chicken and a whole roasted lamb chop were packed away along with a few side dishes. When paying, I also got two bottles of good wine. Zoro is a complete alcoholic, never having fun without drinking, and he should have been drinking since he was a child. Carrying this bag of things, I walked out of the restaurant door. The sun in the sky was still fierce and high in the sky. It was noon now. If I set off at this time, I would be able to reach the dojo around evening. Otherwise I would have to wait until tomorrow. Advertisement. But before we can set off, we need to find Zoro, the crazy guy. This town is either big or small, so finding someone is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Wandering on the street, Luo Yun searched for Zoro while muttering strangely to himself. What's going on? That guy Zoro has caused enough trouble to give Luffy a fight, why hasn't there been any movement yet? As the saying goes, CAO 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 has arrived. Luo Yun was muttering when he heard a burst of noise from behind, which was also mixed with curses and shouts of killing. Luo Yun turned around curiously and looked behind him. There was a chaos in the crowd. People rushed to escape in both directions. Among the separated crowds, he saw Zoro running desperately. Behind him, a group of people wearing grey GI uniforms were led by a strong man, chasing Zoro. Stop, don't run, stop. You bastard, stop here, you dare to molest my woman. What? Luo Yun was shocked when he heard this, what the hell, Zoro, a straight man who has never been cold to women, actually molested a good woman. Zoro, you've changed. Advertisement. You have become such a beast. Luo Yun clutched her chest with a heartbroken look on her face. She didn't expect Zoro, a straight-faced man, to look like Sanji when he was a child. Zoro was being chased, not to mention how depressed he was. He was just doing it casually. Who knew that something like that would happen? If he had known it, he would not have done it. This town can't stay any longer, but what to do with that guy Luo Yun? We can't leave him alone. The scolding is getting closer and closer. If this continues, it won't take long for him to catch up. Forget it, let's run out and get rid of these guys first, and then sneak in to find Luo Yun. Suddenly Zoro's eyes lit up and he saw Luo Yun standing in the middle of the road in front of him. Zoro immediately waved and shouted, Luo Yun, I'm here. Luo Yun was watching the show of Zoro being chased. When Zoro shouted, Luo Yun's face darkened and he cursed Zoro for being a cheat. More than 10 people were chasing after him, and the crowd was so dark. Luo Yun turned around and ran away without even thinking. If he was caught up, he wouldn't be able to escape even with Sherry Nan. Without training, Sherry Nan has not been able to exert even one tenth of its usefulness. If he had learned some physical skills or swordsmanship and cooperated with Sherry Nan, Luo Yun would have been absolutely sure to eliminate more than ten people, but it was a pity that he did not. As soon as he turned around and ran away, Luo Yun immediately regretted why he was so stupid. Advertisement. Zoro just shouted without pointing at him. He turned around and ran away to tell everyone that he was Luo Yun, an accomplice of Zoro. This is completely a behavior where there is no silver 300 tails. Zoro had already caught up, and naturally those behind him also caught up, with the pursuers not far behind him. Okay, there are no accomplices yet, don't let these two brats go. Hearing the scolding coming from behind, Luo Yun cursed Zoro in his heart and sighed at the same time. He was the unreasonable disaster. Sighing, Luo Yun ran very fast, and his legs seemed to hit each other. He turned on the small electric motor and fled forward along the road. Stop, you two little wolves, stop for me. The shouts and curses kept coming from behind, and Luo Yun couldn't help but complain. When chasing someone, shouting stand up was invented by some idiot. If you say to stop, they will stop, so you still have to chase. Turning to look at Zoro beside him, Luo Yun suddenly felt heartbroken and said, Zoro, I really misjudged you. I didn't expect you to be such a person and be able to do such a thing. Zoro had a dark face and cursed angrily, get out. I'm not that kind of person, stop slandering me here. It's not that I'm slandering you, Luo Yun said quickly, it's because these people are chasing you because you molested other women. If you didn't do such a thing, why would they be chasing you? Why would you run away? Advertisement. Six Zoro, you have changed. Advertisement. Okay, thank you sister. Next Luo Yun asked some other questions, what country is this? Where is the kingdom of Goa? Have you ever heard of Windmill Village? There is no marine base nearby. The waitress works in this kind of restaurant and usually listens to the conversations of customers from all over the world, so she knows a lot. Most of them can answer it. Except for Windmill Village, they have never heard of it, and the rest are more or less familiar with it. The great restaurant is not only the quality of service, but also the speed of serving food. After chatting for a while, all the dishes were served. When the waitress left, Luo Yun tipped her a silver coin, which made the waitress extremely happy and thanked her repeatedly. From this morning until noon, Luo Yun didn't eat anything in order to reach Shimatsuki village as soon as possible. Looking at the table full of food, Luo Yun's stomach immediately growled with hunger. He wiped the saliva from the corner of his mouth and started eating immediately. However, even if Luo Yun ate and drank like crazy, it was impossible for him to finish all the dishes on the table. He was not a foodie like Luffy. Finally, a roasted chicken and a whole roasted lamb chop were packed away along with a few side dishes. When paying, I also got two bottles of good wine. Zoro is a complete alcoholic, never having fun without drinking, and he should have been drinking since he was a child. Carrying this bag of things, I walked out of the restaurant door. The sun in the sky was still fierce and high in the sky. It was noon now. If I set off at this time, I would be able to reach the dojo around evening. Otherwise I would have to wait until tomorrow. Advertisement. But before we can set off, we need to find Zoro, the crazy guy. This town is either big or small, so finding someone is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Wandering on the street, Luo Yun searched for Zoro while muttering strangely to himself. 
What's going on? That guy Zoro has caused enough trouble to give Luffy a fight, why hasn't there been any movement yet? As the saying goes, CAO 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 has arrived. Luo Yun was muttering when he heard a burst of noise from behind, which was also mixed with curses and shouts of killing. Luo Yun turned around curiously and looked behind him. There was a chaos in the crowd. People rushed to escape in both directions. Among the separated crowds, he saw Zoro running desperately. Behind him, a group of people wearing grey GI uniforms were led by a strong man. Chasing Zoro. Stop, don't run, stop. You bastard, stop here, you dare to molest my woman. What? Luo Yun was shocked when he heard this, what the hell, Zoro, a straight man who has never been cold to women, actually molested a good woman. Zoro, you've changed. Advertisement. You have become such a beast. Luo Yun clutched her chest with a heartbroken look on her face. She didn't expect Zoro, a straight-faced man, to look like Sanji when he was a child. Zoro was being chased, not to mention how depressed he was. He was just doing it casually. Who knew that something like that would happen? If he had known it, he would not have done it. This town can't stay any longer, but what to do with that guy Luo Yun? We can't leave him alone. The scolding is getting closer and closer. If this continues, it won't take long for him to catch up. Forget it, let's run out and get rid of these guys first, and then sneak in to find Luo Yun. Suddenly Zoro's eyes lit up and he saw Luo Yun standing in the middle of the road in front of him. Zoro immediately waved and shouted, Luo Yun, I'm here. Luo Yun was watching the show of Zoro being chased. When Zoro shouted, Luo Yun's face darkened and he cursed Zoro for being a cheat. More than ten people were chasing after him, and the crowd was so dark. Luo Yun turned around and ran away without even thinking. If he was caught up, he wouldn't be able to escape even with Sherry Nan. Without training, Sherry Nan has not been able to exert even one tenth of its usefulness. If he had learned some physical skills or swordsmanship and cooperated with Sherry Nan, Luo Yun would have been absolutely sure to eliminate more than ten people, but it was a pity that he did not. As soon as he turned around and ran away, Luo Yun immediately regretted why he was so stupid. Advertisement. Zoro just shouted without pointing at him. He turned around and ran away to tell everyone that he was Luo Yun, an accomplice of Zoro. This is completely a behavior where there is no silver 300 tails. Zoro had already caught up, and naturally those behind him also caught up, with the pursuers not far behind him. Okay, there are no accomplices yet, don't let these two brats go. Hearing the scolding coming from behind, Luo Yun cursed Zoro in his heart and sighed at the same time. He was the unreasonable disaster. Sighing, Luo Yun ran very fast, and his legs seemed to hit each other. He turned on the small electric motor and fled forward along the road. Stop, you two little wolves, stop for me. The shouts and curses kept coming from behind, and Luo Yun couldn't help but complain. When chasing someone, shouting stand up was invented by some idiot. If you say to stop, they will stop, so you still have to chase. Turning to look at Zoro beside him, Luo Yun suddenly felt heartbroken and said, Zoro, I really misjudged you. I didn't expect you to be such a person and be able to do such a thing. Zoro had a dark face and cursed angrily, get out. I'm not that kind of person, stop slandering me here. It's not that I'm slandering you, Luo Yun said quickly, it's because these people are chasing you because you molested other women. If you didn't do such a thing, why would they be chasing you? Why would you run away? Advertisement. Seven Dojo. Advertisement. You, Zoro was speechless after being asked, and finally said something that he was too lazy to tell you, so he looked away from Luo Yun and ran away. It's so embarrassing. It was so embarrassing just now, Zoro felt ashamed and regretful at the same time. Seeing that Zoro didn't speak, Luo Yun advised, come on, it happened anyway, so what does it matter? You can't let me just say when I meet someone in the future, when I first met Zoro, Zoro, you go he molested other girls and was hunted down. Zoro gritted his teeth and said angrily, once again, I didn't tease you. Seeing Luo Yun acting like this, it seemed that he really had this idea. Thinking that if Luo Yun really said this in the future, his reputation would be ruined, so Zoro had no choice but to tell the truth about what happened just now. The incident happened ten minutes ago. Zoro was wandering the streets looking for Luo Yun, but everyone knew that Zoro was a notorious street nerd. He almost walked out of the town after wandering for a long time, but finally walked back. Get lost. Advertisement. While Zoro was wandering down the street when he was lost, he smelled the aroma of food from the vendors on both sides of the road and his stomach growled with hunger. Thinking that he would settle his stomach first and then go find Luo Yun, Zoro walked towards a restaurant. As a result, the restaurant saw Zoro dressed no better than a beggar and kicked him out without even letting Zoro in. At this time, a young girl passed by. Her pink skirt was caught on the stall next to her. Out of kindness, Zoro thought of helping the girl untie her skirt. Unexpectedly, the skirt was a little messy, and he used a lot of force to tear a big hole in the girl's skirt. The girl immediately screamed, beat Zoro with her bag, and shouted that she was a pervert. As a result, the man came. Seeing the scene, she became furious and led a group of boys to cut Zoro into pieces. Zoro ran away quickly. Then there is a series of things that happened when I met Luo Yun later. After hearing what happened, Luo Yun held his stomach and burst into laughter, which made his stomach hurt. Giving a thumbs up to Zoro, awesome, Zoro, you are really awesome. After saying that, he couldn't help but burst out laughing. If the pursuers weren't still behind him, Luo Yun would have wanted to sit on the ground and laugh. This was so funny. Zoro's face was already blackened into charcoal. He turned his head away and did not want to look at Luo Yun. He knew that Luo Yun would definitely be like this, so he had no intention of saying anything just now. Advertisement. After laughing for a while, Luo Yun said, Okay, stop laughing, let's get rid of these followers and leave this town. Although Zoro and Luo Yun were only two children under ten years old, their physical fitness was as good as that of adults. As they ran wildly, they took advantage of the crowds of people on the road to get rid of the people behind them at an intersection, leading them follow Zoro to the southwest of the town. This time Luo Yun was experienced and let Zoro walk in front the whole time. He took Zoro to the southwest of the town. Just like the waitress said, there was a big road. The two of them walked along the road in the direction of Shimatsuki village. On the way, Luo Yun gave Zoro the roasted chicken, roasted lamb chops, and two bottles of wine. Zoro, who had been hungry for a long time, ate happily. He drank one of the two bottles of wine, and Luo Yun drank one. For the sake of Luo Yun remembering to bring him things and wine, Zoro looked much better after drinking and eating, unlike just now, where he had a dark face and deliberately ignored Luo Yun. On the way, Luo Yun and Zoro met a carriage heading to Shimatsuki village. The driver was an old man. 
Seeing that Luo Yun and Zoro were also going to Shimatsuki village, they kindly gave them a ride. Originally, he arrived in the evening, but ended up arriving in the afternoon. After getting off the bus, Luo Yun thanked the old man and secretly stuffed a silver coin into the old man's clothes. Shimatsuki village is not a very big village. There is a stone engraved with the three characters Shimatsuki village standing at the entrance of the village. Luo Yun took a second look curiously, because the three characters Shimatsuki village on the stone did not look like the craftsman carved it bit by bit. It was as if someone had written on it with a sharp weapon. Zoro was overjoyed when he saw Shimatsuki village, and called Luo Yun to go into the village. First, he couldn't wait to defeat the master of the Shimatsuki village Kendo Jim, and second, he wanted Luo Yun to admit defeat and call him big brother. Shimatsuki village is not a very big village. There is only one street with houses built on both sides. There are almost a hundred households in the whole village. Advertisement. The village is not big, so naturally every villager knows about such a large kendo gym. If they ask a random villager, he will give them directions. You guys are looking for a kendo gym. Judging from your age, you should be here to learn swordsmanship. The kendo gym is on the hillside behind the village. No, I'm here. Holding down Zoro who was about to kick him out, Luo Yun said thank you to the villagers and then dragged Zoro towards the kendo gym. After not walking far, Luo Yun and Zoro came to what the villagers said was halfway up the hillside. There was only one building on the entire slope, the kendo hall. They came to the gate of the kendo hall. Hey hey. Before I even got close, I heard a burst of vigorous haying coming from inside. It seemed that the students inside were practicing their swordsmanship. There is a plaque hanging above the gate, with the four words Yuxin Deo Kang written on it. Before Luo Yun could do anything, Zoro couldn't hold it in any longer and walked inside, arrogantly kicking open the ajar door. Advertisement. Seven Dojo. Advertisement. You, Zoro was speechless after being asked, and finally said something that he was too lazy to tell you, so he looked away from Luo Yun and ran away. It's so embarrassing. It was so embarrassing just now? Zoro felt ashamed and regretful at the same time. Seeing that Zoro didn't speak, Luo Yun advised, come on, it happened anyway, so what does it matter? You can't let me just say when I meet someone in the future, when I first met Zoro, Zoro, you go he molested other girls and was hunted down. Zoro gritted his teeth and said angrily, once again, I didn't tease you. Seeing Luo Yun acting like this, it seemed that he really had this idea. Thinking that if Luo Yun really said this in the future, his reputation would be ruined, so Zoro had no choice but to tell the truth about what happened just now. The incident happened ten minutes ago. Zoro was wandering the streets looking for Luo Yun, but everyone knew that Zoro was a notorious street nerd. He almost walked out of the town after wandering for a long time, but finally walked back. Get lost. Advertisement. While Zoro was wandering down the street when he was lost, he smelled the aroma of food from the vendors on both sides of the road and his stomach growled with hunger. Thinking that he would settle his stomach first and then go find Luo Yun, Zoro walked towards a restaurant. As a result, the restaurant saw Zoro dressed no better than a beggar and kicked him out without even letting Zoro in. At this time, a young girl passed by. Her pink skirt was caught on the stall next to her. Out of kindness, Zoro thought of helping the girl untie her skirt. Unexpectedly, the skirt was a little messy, and he used a lot of force to tear a big hole in the girl's skirt. The girl immediately screamed, beat Zoro with her bag, and shouted that she was a pervert. As a result, the man came. Seeing this scene, she became furious and led a group of boys to cut Zoro into pieces. Zoro ran away quickly. Then there is a series of things that happened when I met Luo Yun later. After hearing what happened, Luo Yun held his stomach and burst into laughter, which made his stomach hurt. Giving a thumbs up to Zoro, awesome, Zoro, you are really awesome. After saying that, he couldn't help but burst out laughing. If the pursuers weren't still behind him, Luo Yun would have wanted to sit on the ground and laugh. This was so funny. Zoro's face was already blackened into charcoal. He turned his head away and did not want to look at Luo Yun. He knew that Luo Yun would definitely be like this, so he had no intention of saying anything just now. Advertisement. After laughing for a while, Luo Yun said, Okay, stop laughing, let's get rid of these followers and leave this town. Although Zoro and Luo Yun were only two children under ten years old, their physical fitness was as good as that of adults. As they ran wildly, they took advantage of the crowds of people on the road to get rid of the people behind them at an intersection, leading them follow Zoro to the southwest of the town. This time Luo Yun was experienced and let Zoro walk in front the whole time. He took Zoro to the southwest of the town. Just like the waitress said, there was a big road. The two of them walked along the road in the direction of Shimatsuki village. On the way, Luo Yun gave Zoro the roasted chicken, roasted lamb chops, and two bottles of wine. Zoro, who had been hungry for a long time, ate happily. He drank one of the two bottles of wine, and Luo Yun drank one. For the sake of Luo Yun remembering to bring him things and wine, Zoro looked much better after drinking and eating, unlike just now, where he had a dark face and deliberately ignored Luo Yun. On the way, Luo Yun and Zoro met a carriage heading to Shimatsuki village. The driver was an old man. Seeing that Luo Yun and Zoro were also going to Shimatsuki village, they kindly gave them a ride. Originally, he arrived in the evening, but ended up arriving in the afternoon. After getting off the bus, Luo Yun thanked the old man and secretly stuffed a silver coin into the old man's clothes. Shimatsuki village is not a very big village. There is a stone engraved with the three characters Shimatsuki village standing at the entrance of the village. Luo Yun took a second look curiously, because the three characters Shimatsuki village on the stone did not look like the craftsman carved it bit by bit. It was as if someone had written on it with a sharp weapon. Zoro was overjoyed when he saw Shimatsuki village, and called Luo Yun to go into the village. First, he couldn't wait to defeat the master of the Shimatsuki village Kendo Jim, and second, he wanted Luo Yun to admit defeat and call him big brother. Shimatsuki village is not a very big village. There is only one street with houses built on both sides. There are almost a hundred households in the whole village. Advertisement. The village is not big, so naturally every villager knows about such a large kendo gym. If they ask a random villager, he will give them directions. You guys are looking for a kendo gym. Judging from your age, you should be here to learn swordsmanship. The kendo gym is on the hillside behind the village. No, I'm here. Holding down Zoro who was about to kick him out, Luo Yun said thank you to the villagers and then dragged Zoro towards the kendo gym. After not walking far, Luo Yun and Zoro came to what the villagers said was halfway up the hillside. There was only one building on the entire slope, the kendo hall. They came to the gate of the kendo hall. 
Hey hey. Before I even got close, I heard a burst of vigorous haying coming from inside. It seemed that the students inside were practicing their swordsmanship. There is a plaque hanging above the gate, with the four words Yuxindeo Kang written on it. Before Luo Yun could do anything, Zoro couldn't hold it in any longer and walked inside, arrogantly kicking open the ajar door. Advertisement. Seven Dojo. Advertisement. You, Zoro was speechless after being asked, and finally said something that he was too lazy to tell you, so he looked away from Luo Yun and ran away. It's so embarrassing. It was so embarrassing just now? Zoro felt ashamed and regretful at the same time. Seeing that Zoro didn't speak, Luo Yun advised, Come on, it happened anyway, so what does it matter? You can't let me just say when I meet someone in the future, when I first met Zoro, Zoro, you go he molested other girls and was hunted down. Zoro gritted his teeth and said angrily, Once again, I didn't tease you. Seeing Luo Yun acting like this, it seemed that he really had this idea. Thinking that if Luo Yun really said this in the future, his reputation would be ruined, so Zoro had no choice but to tell the truth about what happened just now. The incident happened ten minutes ago. Zoro was wandering the streets looking for Luo Yun, but everyone knew that Zoro was a notorious street nerd. He almost walked out of the town after wandering for a long time, but finally walked back. Get lost. Advertisement. While Zoro was wandering down the street when he was lost, he smelled the aroma of food from the vendors on both sides of the road and his stomach growled with hunger. Thinking that he would settle his stomach first and then go find Luo Yun, Zoro walked towards a restaurant. As a result, the restaurant saw Zoro dressed no better than a beggar and kicked him out without even letting Zoro in. At this time, a young girl passed by. Her pink skirt was caught on the stall next to her. Out of kindness, Zoro thought of helping the girl untie her skirt. Unexpectedly, the skirt was a little messy, and he used a lot of force to tear a big hole in the girl's skirt. The girl immediately screamed, beat Zoro with her bag, and shouted that she was a pervert. As a result, the man came. Seeing this scene, she became furious and led a group of boys to cut Zoro into pieces. Zoro ran away quickly. Then there is a series of things that happened when I met Luo Yun later. After hearing what happened, Luo Yun held his stomach and burst into laughter, which made his stomach hurt. Giving a thumbs up to Zoro, awesome, Zoro, you are really awesome. After saying that, he couldn't help but burst out laughing. If the pursuers weren't still behind him, Luo Yun would have wanted to sit on the ground and laugh. This was so funny. Zoro's face was already blackened into charcoal. He turned his head away and did not want to look at Luo Yun. He knew that Luo Yun would definitely be like this, so he had no intention of saying anything just now. Advertisement. After laughing for a while, Luo Yun said, Okay, stop laughing, let's get rid of these followers and leave this town. Although Zoro and Luo Yun were only two children under ten years old, their physical fitness was as good as that of adults. As they ran wildly, they took advantage of the crowds of people on the road to get rid of the people behind them at an intersection, leading them follow Zoro to the southwest of the town. This time Luo Yun was experienced and let Zoro walk in front the whole time. He took Zoro to the southwest of the town. Just like the waitress said, there was a big road. The two of them walked along the road in the direction of Shimatsuki village. On the way, Luo Yun gave Zoro the roasted chicken, roasted lamb chops, and two bottles of wine. Zoro, who had been hungry for a long time, ate happily. He drank one of the two bottles of wine, and Luo Yun drank one. For the sake of Luo Yun remembering to bring him things and wine, Zoro looked much better after drinking and eating, unlike just now, where he had a dark face and deliberately ignored Luo Yun. On the way, Luo Yun and Zoro met a carriage heading to Shimatsuki village. The driver was an old man. Seeing that Luo Yun and Zoro were also going to Shimatsuki village, they kindly gave them a ride. Originally, he arrived in the evening, but ended up arriving in the afternoon. After getting off the bus, Luo Yun thanked the old man and secretly stuffed a silver coin into the old man's clothes. Shimatsuki village is not a very big village. There is a stone engraved with the three characters Shimatsuki village standing at the entrance of the village. Luo Yun took a second look curiously, because the three characters Shimatsuki village on the stone did not look like the craftsman carved it bit by bit. It was as if someone had written on it with a sharp weapon. Zoro was overjoyed when he saw Shimatsuki village, and called Luo Yun to go into the village. First, he couldn't wait to defeat the master of the Shimatsuki village Kendo Jim, and second, he wanted Luo Yun to admit defeat and call him big brother. Shimatsuki village is not a very big village. There is only one street with houses built on both sides. There are almost a hundred households in the whole village. Advertisement. The village is not big, so naturally every villager knows about such a large kendo gym. If they ask a random villager, he will give them directions. You guys are looking for a kendo gym. Judging from your age, you should be here to learn swordsmanship. The kendo gym is on the hillside behind the village. No, I'm here. Holding down Zoro who was about to kick him out, Luo Yun said thank you to the villagers and then dragged Zoro towards the kendo gym. After not walking far, Luo Yun and Zoro came to what the villagers said was halfway up the hillside. There was only one building on the entire slope, the kendo hall. They came to the gate of the kendo hall. Hey hey. Before I even got close, I heard a burst of vigorous haying coming from inside. It seemed that the students inside were practicing their swordsmanship. There is a plaque hanging above the gate, with the four words Yuxindeo Kang written on it. Before Luo Yun could do anything, Zoro couldn't hold it in any longer and walked inside, arrogantly kicking open the ajar door. Advertisement. A Kunav Zoro 1. Advertisement. He stood in the middle of the inner hall with his hands on his hips and shouted into the room. Is anyone here? Is anyone here? I'm here to play in the gym. If you are a good guy, come out with me to show off. Idiot. Luo Yun raised his hands and patted his face, not wanting to read any more. Fortunately, Koshiro was in there with a good temper. If it were another owner, he would have been beaten to death long ago for being so arrogant. Seeing no one replying inside, Zoro took a deep breath and was about to continue shouting when Koshiro, dressed in gray clothes and with eyes, walked out with a smile on his face. Looking down at Zoro who made the bold statement, he smiled and said, he's actually here to play in the gym. It's really rare these days. Two of them came at once. I'm not here to compete in the gym, Luo Yun quickly waved his hand and explained, I'm here to learn from his master. I heard that there is a very strong kendo gym owner in Shimatsuki village, and he's here to compete in the gym. 
Koshiro smiled and said, that's it, then please sit down for a while while I solve the matter of playing in the gym in front of you, and I will talk to you in detail about apprenticeship and learning skills. Advertisement. Um, Luo Yu nodded and sat down on the wooden pillar next to him to watch Zoro play. Because Zoro shouted to kick the gym, the sound of sword practice inside had stopped. Luo Yun squinted and saw a group of children similar to them at the entrance of the corridor behind Koshiro, looking out curiously and talking to each other. Snort? Seeing Luo Yun sitting aside, Zoro snorted coldly, crossed his arms and said confidently, Don't underestimate me just because I'm a child. I'm unbeatable in the village next door. Okay then, I will accept your challenge. If I win, I'll take away your sign. What if we lose? Lost, if I lose, I will join your sect like him, become your disciple, and learn swordsmanship. With that said, Zoro raised his hand and pointed at Luo Yun, who was watching the show next to him. Koshiro laughed, then it's settled. In that case, it's up to you, Kona. Advertisement. As he spoke, Koshiro suddenly shouted something to the back. The children who were looking out curiously were startled and fell to the ground. Only a girl wearing a white top and blue shorts with a serious face was seen. He walked out and glanced at the apprentice who fell to the ground next to him. The apprentice was so frightened that he put his hands on the ground and backed away quickly. Zoro was stunned for a moment when he saw that it was a girl. Feeling looked down upon, he looked up at Koshiro and said angrily, What, aren't you here to be my opponent? You actually asked a girl to come, I don't want to fight with girls. Koshiro smiled slightly and explained, although Kuna is a girl, she is more powerful than adults in the dojo, although as her father, this is not appropriate for me to say. Zoro looked at Kuna, thought for a moment, and said, I know, then I will defeat her first, and then I will defeat you. Zoro, who is very strong and refuses to admit defeat, will face off against Kuna, who is also very strong and refuses to admit defeat. This battle will definitely be interesting. Since it is a gymnasium, it must be in front of all the apprentices. Several people came inside. The apprentices in the dojo were already sitting neatly cross-legged on the ground. Luo Yun was not used to sitting, so he stood beside him with his arms folded, leaning on the corner. Zoro came to the sword barrel next to him and asked Koshiro if he could take any wooden sword. The guy took out all nine swords in it, holding three swords in each hand and holding three swords in his mouth. Seeing the scene, everyone present except Koshiro turned pale, and the man holding the sword acted like an idiot. Arrogant Kuna saw Zoro like this, her eyes were full of disdain, she thought she had some ability, but she didn't expect that he was a fool who couldn't even hold a sword. Salute like an altar. Advertisement. Koshiro looked up at the altar on the wall and bowed as he spoke. Kuna and Zoro also bowed at the same time. Zoro was holding three wooden swords in his mouth reluctantly. He dropped one when he bent down, and another one when he and Kuna bowed to each other. The apprentices watching the battle couldn't hold back their laughter when they saw this scene. If the owner Koshiro hadn't been there, he would have laughed loudly. Ha ha ha. The apprentices watching the battle laughed in low voices. They originally thought it was a fierce battle between evenly matched opponents, but they didn't expect that the person who came to kick the gym was an idiot who couldn't even hold a sword. Zoro simply ignored the ridicule from the people around him. The strong would not care about the weak's voice. After bowing to each other, Kuna pulled out the wooden sword from her waist, held the sword with both hands, and made a starting gesture with the sword tip facing upwards, while Zoro just held six wooden swords with both hands and bit the wooden sword in his mouth without making any move. The formula can be expressed. Seeing that Zoro looked like a newcomer, Kuna looked even more disdainful. It was simply an insult to compete with such a guy. Kuna's disdainful eyes met Zoro's strong eyes. Their eyes met in the air, and sparks seemed to collide invisibly. Suddenly, Kona took action, stepped forward with his right foot, and slashed down with both hands upright, very fast. Zoro felt his vision go dark. He subconsciously held the wooden swords in both hands and crossed them in front of him. The wooden sword struck down. Not only was he fast, but he was also very powerful. With one strike, Zoro's wooden swords fell down. The sword landed on top of Zoro's head. Zoro screamed in pain and flew out, his hands and the wooden sword in his mouth flying out. Advertisement. 8 Kunav Zoro 1. Advertisement. He stood in the middle of the inner hall with his hands on his hips and shouted into the room. Is anyone here? Is anyone here? I'm here to play in the gym. If you are a good guy, come out with me to show off. Idiot. Luo Yun raised his hands and patted his face, not wanting to read any more. Fortunately, Koshiro was in there with a good temper. If it were another owner, you would have been beaten to death long ago for being so arrogant. Seeing no one replying inside, Zoro took a deep breath and was about to continue shouting when Koshiro, dressed in gray clothes and with eyes, walked out with a smile on his face. Looking down at Zoro who made the bold statement, he smiled and said, he's actually here to play in the gym. It's really rare these days. Two of them came at once. I'm not here to compete in the gym, Luo Yun quickly waved his hand and explained, I'm here to learn from his master. I heard that there is a very strong kendo gym owner in Shimatsuki village, and he's here to compete in the gym. Koshiro smiled and said, that's it, then please sit down for a while while I solve the matter of playing in the gym in front of you, and I will talk to you in detail about apprenticeship and learning skills. Advertisement. Um, Luo Yun nodded and sat down on the wooden pillar next to him to watch Zoro play. Because Zoro shouted to kick the gym, the sound of sword practice inside had stopped. Luo Yun squinted and saw a group of children similar to them at the entrance of the corridor behind Koshiro, looking out curiously and talking to each other. Snort? Seeing Luo Yun sitting aside, Zoro snorted coldly, crossed his arms and said confidently, Don't underestimate me just because I'm a child. I'm unbeatable in the village next door. Okay then, I will accept your challenge. If I win, I'll take away your sign. What if we lose? Lost, if I lose, I will join your sect like him, become your disciple, and learn swordsmanship. With that said, Zoro raised his hand and pointed at Luo Yun, who was watching the show next to him. Koshiro laughed, then it's settled. In that case, it's up to you, Kuna. Advertisement. As he spoke, Koshiro suddenly shouted something to the back. The children who were looking out curiously were startled and fell to the ground. Only a girl wearing a white top and blue shorts with a serious face was seen. He walked out and glanced at the apprentice who fell to the ground next to him. The apprentice was so frightened that he put his hands on the ground and backed away quickly. Zoro was stunned for a moment when he saw that it was a girl. Feeling looked down upon, he looked up at Koshiro and said angrily, What, aren't you here to be my opponent? You actually asked a girl to come, I don't want to fight with girls. 
Koshiro smiled slightly and explained, although Kuna is a girl, she is more powerful than adults in the dojo, although as her father, this is not appropriate for me to say. Zoro looked at Kuna, thought for a moment, and said, I know, then I will defeat her first, and then I will defeat you. Zoro, who is very strong and refuses to admit defeat, will face off against Kuna, who is also very strong and refuses to admit defeat. This battle will definitely be interesting. Since it is a gymnasium, it must be in front of all the apprentices. Several people came inside. The apprentices in the dojo were already sitting neatly cross-legged on the ground. Luo Yun was not used to sitting, so he stood beside him with his arms folded, leaning on the corner. Zoro came to the sword barrel next to him and asked Koshiro if he could take any wooden sword. The guy took out all nine swords in it, holding three swords in each hand and holding three swords in his mouth. Seeing the scene, everyone present except Koshiro turned pale, and the man holding the sword acted like an idiot. Arrogant Kuna saw Zoro like this, her eyes were full of disdain, she thought she had some ability, but she didn't expect that he was a fool who couldn't even hold a sword. Salute like an altar. Advertisement. Koshiro looked up at the altar on the wall and bowed as he spoke. Kuna and Zoro also bowed at the same time. Zoro was holding three wooden swords in his mouth reluctantly. He dropped one when he bent down, and another one when he and Kuna bowed to each other. The apprentices watching the battle couldn't hold back their laughter when they saw this scene. If the owner Koshiro hadn't been there, he would have laughed loudly. Ha ha ha. The apprentices watching the battle laughed in low voices. They originally thought it was a fierce battle between evenly matched opponents, but they didn't expect that the person who came to kick the gym was an idiot who couldn't even hold a sword. Zoro simply ignored the ridicule from the people around him. The strong would not care about the weak's voice. After bowing to each other, Kuna pulled out the wooden sword from her waist, held the sword with both hands, and made a starting gesture with the sword tip facing upwards, while Zoro just held six wooden swords with both hands and bit the wooden sword in his mouth without making any move. The formula can be expressed. Seeing that Zoro looked like a newcomer, Kuna looked even more disdainful. It was simply an insult to compete with such a guy. Kuna's disdainful eyes met Zoro's strong eyes. Their eyes met in the air, and sparks seemed to collide invisibly. Suddenly, Kuna took action, stepped forward with his right foot, and slashed down with both hands upright, very fast. Zoro felt his vision go dark. He subconsciously held the wooden swords in both hands and crossed them in front of him. The wooden swords struck down. Not only was he fast, but he was also very powerful. With one strike, Zoro's wooden swords fell down. The sword landed on top of Zoro's head. Zoro screamed in pain and flew out, his hands and the wooden sword in his mouth flying out. 9 Kuna F Zoro 2. Advertisement. Seeing the scene, the apprentices who were watching the battle had a look of contempt on their faces. This guy who claimed to be a gymnast was not much different from them. He had the guts to come to the gym with such strength. Koshiro's eyes were thoughtful. He could naturally tell that Zoro was a novice, but as a novice, he was able to react when Kuna made a move. This kid's reaction was very fast. Zoro, who was lying on the ground, looked at Kuna's arrogant eyes, unwillingness mixed with anger, hateful. Cursing softly, Zoro grabbed two wooden swords and stood up from the ground. He held the swords in both hands and stood sideways. His body squatted slightly and leaned forward slightly. He held the sword in his right hand horizontally in front of him and his left hand held the sword tilted downward. This was another move. The most authentic double sword style. Both Kuna and Koshiro were startled by Zoro's movements. This skilled movement did not look like that of a novice who had never learned swordsmanship. Kuna couldn't help but asked, Have you ever learned Naito Ryu swordsmanship? No way. Today is the first time I hold a sword, Zoro roared. First time. Koshiro smiled slightly. It was his first time holding a sword and he was able to do it so proficiently. It takes a long time for ordinary people to practice the double sword style. This child has a strong talent for swordsmanship. Seeing the disdain in Kuna's eyes, Zoro was very angry. He was very strong. If he wanted to become stronger in the future, how could he lose to such a woman? Advertisement. Thinking about this, Zoro shouted, rushed towards Kuna quickly, crossed his swords in front of him with both hands and stabbed Kuna. This seemingly powerful move had flaws everywhere in Kuna's eyes. She was indeed a novice. She didn't even move her feet. When Zoro approached, Kuna raised her sword and struck out. Bang. With one strike of the sword, Zoro was knocked away again and fell heavily to the ground. The two wooden swords in his hands flew out. Zoro fell to the ground with dizziness, and a clear long red mark appeared on his forehead, which was made by a wooden sword. The apprentices next to him felt pain when they saw it. If this sword hit them on the head, they would probably suffer the same fate. Why doesn't this idiot hide? Luo Yun raised his hand and slapped his forehead with a look of helplessness. He obviously didn't know how to use a sword and he was a novice, but he actually took the initiative to attack others without dodging. Isn't this an opportunity for others to expose their flaws? Watching Zoro fall to the ground, Koshiro raised his hand to declare victory. One point, that's it. Kona wins. Kona walked up to the dazed Zoro, stuck the sword upright in front of Zoro, and mocked, This child is like a wild boar. That's enough, Kona. Seeing the scene, Koshiro frowned slightly and shouted to stop. As a winner, taunting the loser was against the spirit of a swordsman. Advertisement. Kuna was unmoved and still mocked, you are obviously an amateur, but you want to play the double sword style. You are ten years too early. Zoro had woken up at this time. Hearing the taunting words, he held the bamboo sword in his hand tightly and glared at Kuna with angry eyes. But Zoro didn't speak. Since he failed, it is the winner's right to mock the weak. I will become stronger, stronger, and one day I will defeat you with the two sword style that you look down on. Zoro secretly made up his mind. This prompted Zoro to embark on the path of swordsmanship and become a swordsman. For this woman who defeated and ridiculed her, and even later, for her, Zoro would go to sea just to defeat the swordsmen around the world and become the world's greatest swordsman. Swordsman, let her name ring through the heavens. Seeing the unwillingness and anger in Zoro's eyes, Kona said, Why, if you don't want to admit defeat, then get up and fight with me. If you lose, you lose. There is no need to compete again. Very simple and good. Kuna originally thought that Zoro would get up in anger and start another fight with her, but Zoro's surrender was unexpected, which made her look at Zoro a few times. Seeing that these two strong people were getting more and more angry, Koshiro interjected from the side, If that's the case, then you have to. I understand. In that case, I will join your sect. Do you have any objections? It was Zoro who was so arrogant even after being defeated and joining someone else's sect. Advertisement. Koshiro was not angry, but smiled and said, No problem. 
Kona picked up the wooden sword in her hand and turned around to leave. Zoro suddenly raised his head and shouted, I will practice hard and I will defeat you. Remember it. That won't happen one day. Kona said lightly, turned and left. Many people who were defeated by her said this, but they were still defeated by her. Hateful. Seeing Kona's disdain for him, Zoro punched the ground angrily. Why? Koshiro sighed, with a worried look on his face. This daughter was extremely talented in swordsmanship, but she could not change her arrogant and cold temperament. If this continued, it would be difficult for her to achieve much in the way of swordsmanship in the future. She would have to find someone to defeat her to make her restrain herself. But none of the people he has collected can compare to Kuna. If anything, this little guy is possible. He has good swordsmanship talent, a strong heart, and a character that refuses to admit defeat. He is a talent that can be made. Wait. Suddenly, Luo Yun, who was standing in the corner, called out to Kuna who was about to leave. Everyone present was stunned. Only then did someone notice Luo Yun standing in the corner and realized that there was such a person. Advertisement. Ten Sherry Non defeated Kuna Wan. Advertisement. From the moment he walked in, Luo Yun had just said one sentence. In addition, everyone was attracted by the arrogant Zoro, so they didn't pay much attention to Luo Yun for a while. Even Koshiro almost forgot about Luo Yun's existence. Only when Luo Yun spoke out did everyone notice him. Kuna stopped, turned to look at Luo Yun, raised the sword in her hand, and said arrogantly, Why, you want to challenge me too? Yes. Luo Yun replied lightly, then walked forward, passing by Kuna, and came to Zoro's side. Hearing that Luo Yun also wanted to challenge Kuna, the apprentices below suddenly became curious and started talking. Who is this guy? He dares to challenge Kuna. I don't know, I just knew I came here with this kid. It sounds like I came here to learn from my teacher. Why did I suddenly challenge Kuna? Zoro was the most confused. He knew that Luo Yun was here to become a disciple and he had never thought of challenging him. Why did he suddenly have to duel with this woman? Walking up to Zoro, he gently picked up a fallen wooden sword from the ground and turned to look at Kuna. Advertisement. Why? What why? Why challenge me? I remember you came here to become a disciple. Challenging me now means you are kicking the gym. Luo Yun did not answer Kuna immediately. He turned to look at Koshiro and asked, What? Gym owner, you can't kick the gym. Koshiro was stunned for a moment, then smiled and said, Of course. Thank you, host. With the same smile, Luo Yun then turned back to look at Kuna, who was frowning, and said calmly, Originally, I came to be a disciple, but you defeated my younger brother and mocked him in front of him. He, the eldest brother, can't turn a blind eye. Brother. It was not only Kuna who was confused, but also Zoro. Zoro was stunned for a moment, and suddenly remembered the bet he made with Luo Yun, and his face immediately turned red with embarrassment. Are you his eldest brother? Kuna looked suspicious. Judging from his appearance and the name he just called, he didn't look like the eldest brother between these two people. It wasn't before, but it was just now. Speaking of which, I have to thank you. Kuna became more and more confused after hearing Luo Yun's words. Fortunately, she didn't care so much. She pulled out the wooden sword from her waist and pointed it at Luo Yun. Advertisement. In that case, I will accept your challenge. I hope you won't be as useless as this guy who fell to the ground. Hearing this, Zoro immediately felt unhappy. I even gave in and fell to the ground. I even got it on me. Forget it if you are unhappy, Luo Yun. Why did this guy take me with him? Kuna was indeed unhappy. Luo Yun's calm reply just now seemed to not put her in his eyes at all. This made Kuna feel very humiliated, so she would teach this arrogant guy a lesson. But she seemed to have forgotten that she was even more arrogant than Luo Yun. Salute like a shrine. Koshiro bowed towards the wall shrine, Luo Yun and Kuna put away their wooden swords and followed Koshiro in bowing. Salute to each other. Luo Yun bowed to Kuna, and Kuna bowed to Luo Yun at the same time. After the ceremony, Koshiro took two steps back, leaving a fighting position for the two of them. As for Zoro, he had been dragged down by the apprentice below, and the wooden sword on the ground was also picked up. Kuna pulled out the wooden sword from her waist and held the sword diagonally with both hands as she did against Zoro. Luo Yun also made the same move. Everyone was dumbfounded by Luo Yun's action. What the hell, this guy Luo Yun wants to do the same thing as this woman. Zoro muttered to himself. He thought Luo Yun would rush up like him, but he didn't expect that Luo Yun would just stand there with a sword. Advertisement. Only Koshiro seemed to see something. There was a trace of surprise in his eyes, and he nodded with satisfaction. Luo Yun did the same action as Kuna out of helplessness. Like Zoro, he didn't know any common sense about swordsmanship. There was no way he could hold a sword and place it casually like that idiot Zoro. So he just followed Kuna directly. Kuna has been learning kendo since she was a child, so she never has the wrong starting position. Koshiro also understood Luo Yun's point, and nodded with satisfaction. He knew his disadvantages, but was able to use methods to minimize them. Luo Yun may not have shown the same strong swordsmanship talent as Zoro, but he has shown strong fighting talents. Kuna was also shocked by Luo Yun's starting position. In a blink of an eye, she realized that Luo Yun was completely imitating himself. He had been lying for a long time and was lying about not knowing any kendo. His eyes became more and more disdainful. Luo Yun was naturally aware of Kuna's disdain and didn't pay much attention to it. In the original work, Kuna was a proud and cold girl, and few people could look into her eyes, except Zoro. Tick tock tick. The clock placed on the wall moved little by little, but neither Kuna nor Luo Yun made any movement. They were doing the same starting position and staring at each other. Hey, what are these two people doing? It's been a minute, and neither of them made a move. How is this guy named Luo Yun so strong? Even Kuna was at a standstill. The apprentices below were talking quietly one by one. Kuna naturally heard it, and her face changed slightly. Especially when she heard these people say that she was stagnant, she became slightly angry. This was not to say that she was not as good as the guy in front of her. Advertisement. Eleven Sherry Non defeated Kuna too. Advertisement. At first, Kuna thought Luo Yun would charge straight up like Zoro. She just needed to find the flaw clearly and defeat him. But Luo Yun didn't move, and he was confident, which made Kuna hesitate a little. In reality, Luo Yun had nowhere to be confident, but externally, he was actually panicking in his heart. He had never used a sword before, and he even learned the starting position of holding a sword from Kuna. He is not that idiot like Zoro. It is the stupidest thing for a person who does not know swordsmanship to take the initiative when facing a master of swordsmanship. At this time, you need to stay calm and stay the same to cope with all changes, because if you move, you will be full of flaws in the eyes of the other party. If you don't move and act confident, the other party will be afraid. To put it crudely, it means scaring. 
Luo Yun learned this trick from the Star Master movie, and it was really good when used. Kuna was frightened by him, but after hearing what the guys next to her said, Kuna was slightly angry, why should she be so careful when dealing with a guy who couldn't even hold a sword? Advertisement. Break. He immediately gave a cold shout, stepped out quickly, rushed in front of Luo Yun, held the sword in both hands and struck Luo Yun's head suddenly, just like he had attacked Zoro before. At this moment, Luo Yun raised his head, his bright eyes changed, blood red light flashed, a Megatama appeared, and Sherry Nan appeared. Seeing Luo Yun's eyes suddenly turn blood red, Kuna was startled and stopped immediately. Not to mention Kuna, even Koshiro who was the referee next to him was startled. The apprentices below were even more frightened and screamed. Looking at Luo Yun's blood red eyes and face, some were so frightened that they almost fell down. On the ground, shaking all over. Among all the people, only Zoro had seen Luo Yun's blood red eyes. He barely kept quiet, but he also looked curiously at Luo Yun's blood red eyes that were different from ordinary people. Snapped. Suddenly, a crisp sound echoed, Luo Yun's wooden sword struck Kuna's chest, and Kuna took half a small step back in pain. Kuna was hit, she was defeated. Seeing that Kuna, who had never been defeated, was actually hit, the apprentices were dumbfounded. In addition to being shocked, the fear of Luo Yun's blood red eyes was instantly diluted in their hearts. Advertisement. What just happened? Some apprentices looked confused when they saw Kuna retreating and Luo Yun slashing with his sword, and asked stupidly. They were so shocked by Luo Yun's bloody eyes that they didn't notice Luo Yun's move. Only Zoro and Koshiro saw it. The moment Kuna was stunned by Luo Yun's blood red eyes, Luo Yun struck out with lightning speed and slashed down with his sword, hitting Kuna in the middle. I lost. Kuna seemed to be stunned and murmured. Looking at the sword on her chest, Kuna couldn't believe it. Ever since she started practicing swordsmanship, she had never lost a game, no matter whether she was a peer or an adult, but today she actually lost. She was still defeated by a kendo idiot who couldn't even hold a sword, which made her extremely arrogant even more unacceptable. This was naturally Luo Yun's plan. Since he took the initiative to challenge Kuna, Luo Yun had some confidence to dare to do so, instead of rushing forward like Zoro without knowing the strength of the enemy. Revealing Sherry Nan was also part of Luo Yun's plan. Luo Yun thought about it carefully in the past two days. The world of One Piece is different from the ordinary world. There are various races in this world. In addition to humans, there are also giant races in this world. Fish people, merfolk, sea kings, and even three-eyed people. Advertisement. It is also said that Devil Fruit has long been a weirdo. East Blue is the most remote sea among the four seas, and the village where he was reborn is also a remote village. No one in the village goes to sea, and they are short-sighted. When they saw his bloody eyes, they thought he was the reincarnation of the devil, and wanted to parade him through the streets and dip him in a pig cage. It's different when you go outside. The world outside is wider, and there are many people who have seen some strange things. His eyes can only make people panic, but they will no longer be thought of as the reincarnation of the devil. For example, when Zoro saw Sherry Nan, he was only surprised, not as scared as the villagers. So Luo Yun felt that his thinking should be changed. Sherry Nan was not something invisible to others, but he was just different from other people. There are so many unusual people on the sea, let alone the Grand Line. There are countless people who are different from ordinary people, and his Sherry Nan will not bring him any unknown danger. Besides, he will defeat Koshiro as his teacher next, and it will take at least a few years to learn the art. It is impossible that Sherry Nan cannot be revealed in a few years. In this case, it is better to reveal it from the beginning, generously, and maybe less. A lot of trouble. In addition, Koshiro can be said to be one of the most powerful people among pirates, but Koshiro's knowledge is much higher than ordinary people, if Koshiro recognizes him. This means that his next Sherry Nan will at most surprise the people in this dojo and the village, but it will not be like the situation of being dipped in a pig cage at the beginning. Another point is that if you want to learn true swordsmanship, you have to show something special and let Koshiro pay attention. The apprentice will choose the master, and the master will also choose the apprentice. Therefore, this is a multifaceted matter, and the pros outweigh the cons. Advertisement. 11 Sherry Nan defeated Kuna 2. Advertisement. At first, Kuna thought Luo Yun would charge straight up like Zoro. She just needed to find the flaw clearly and defeat him. But Luo Yun didn't move, and he was confident, which made Kuna hesitate a little. In reality, Luo Yun had nowhere to be confident, but externally, he was actually panicking in his heart. He had never used a sword before, and he even learned the starting position of holding a sword from Kuna. He is not that idiot like Zoro. It is the stupidest thing for a person who does not know swordsmanship to take the initiative when facing a master of swordsmanship. At this time, you need to stay calm and stay the same to cope with all changes, because if you move, you will be full of flaws in the eyes of the other party. If you don't move and act confident, the other party will be afraid. To put it crudely, it means scaring. Luo Yun learned this trick from the Star Master movie, and it was really good when used. Kuna was frightened by him, but after hearing what the guys next to her said, Kuna was slightly angry, why should she be so careful when dealing with a guy who couldn't even hold a sword? Advertisement. Break. He immediately gave a cold shout, stepped out quickly, rushed in front of Luo Yun, held the sword in both hands and struck Luo Yun's head suddenly, just like he had attacked Zoro before. At this moment, Luo Yun raised his head, his bright eyes changed, blood red light flashed, a Megatama appeared, and Sherry Nan appeared. Seeing Luo Yun's eyes suddenly turn blood red, Kuna was startled and stopped immediately. Not to mention Kuna, even Koshiro who was the referee next to him was startled. The apprentices below were even more frightened and screamed. Looking at Luo Yun's blood red eyes and face, some were so frightened that they almost fell down. On the ground, shaking all over. Among all the people, only Zoro had seen Luo Yun's blood red eyes. He barely kept quiet, but he also looked curiously at Luo Yun's blood red eyes that were different from ordinary people. Snapped. Suddenly, a crisp sound echoed, Luo Yun's wooden sword struck Kuna's chest, and Kuna took half a small step back in pain. Kuna was hit, she was defeated. Seeing that Kuna, who had never been defeated, was actually hit, the apprentices were dumbfounded. In addition to being shocked, the fear of Luo Yun's blood red eyes was instantly diluted in their hearts. Advertisement. What just happened? Some apprentices looked confused when they saw Kuna retreating and Luo Yun slashing with his sword, and asked stupidly. They were so shocked by Luo Yun's bloody eyes that they didn't notice Luo Yun's move. Only Zoro and Koshiro saw it. The moment Kuna was stunned by Luo Yun's blood red eyes, Luo Yun struck out with lightning speed and slashed down with his sword, hitting Kuna in the middle. I lost. 
Kona seemed to be stunned and murmured. Looking at the sword on her chest, Kona couldn't believe it. Ever since she started practicing swordsmanship, she had never lost a game, no matter whether she was a peer or an adult, but today she actually lost. She was still defeated by a kendo idiot who couldn't even hold a sword, which made her extremely arrogant even more unacceptable. This was naturally Luo Yun's plan. Since he took the initiative to challenge Kuna, Luo Yun had some confidence to dare to do so, instead of rushing forward like Zoro without knowing the strength of the enemy. Revealing Sherry Nan was also part of Luo Yun's plan. Luo Yun thought about it carefully in the past two days. The world of One Piece is different from the ordinary world. There are various races in this world. In addition to humans, there are also giant races in this world. Fish people, merfolk, sea kings, and even three-eyed people. Advertisement. It is also said that Devil Fruit has long been a weirdo. East Blue is the most remote sea among the four seas, and the village where he was reborn is also a remote village. No one in the village goes to sea, and they are short-sighted. When they saw his bloody eyes, they thought he was the reincarnation of the devil, and wanted to parade him through the streets and dip him in a pig cage. It's different when you go outside. The world outside is wider, and there are many people who have seen some strange things. His eyes can only make people panic, but they will no longer be thought of as the reincarnation of the devil. For example, when Zoro saw Sherry Nan, he was only surprised, not as scared as the villagers. So Luo Yun felt that his thinking should be changed. Sherry Nan was not something invisible to others, but he was just different from other people. There are so many unusual people on the sea, let alone the Grand Line. There are countless people who are different from ordinary people, and his Sherry Nan will not bring him any unknown danger. Besides, he will defeat Koshiro as his teacher next, and it will take at least a few years to learn the art. It is impossible that Sherry Nan cannot be revealed in a few years. In this case, it is better to reveal it from the beginning, generously, and maybe less. A lot of trouble. In addition, Koshiro can be said to be one of the most powerful people among pirates, but Koshiro's knowledge is much higher than ordinary people, if Koshiro recognizes him. This means that his next Sherry Nan will at most surprise the people in this dojo and the village, but it will not be like the situation of being dipped in a pig cage at the beginning. Another point is that if you want to learn true swordsmanship, you have to show something special and let Koshiro pay attention. The apprentice will choose the master, and the master will also choose the apprentice. Therefore, this is a multifaceted matter, and the pros outweigh the cons. Advertisement. 12 Learning Art Begins 1. Advertisement. It's impossible to win without force. This guy has bloody eyes. He is not a human being, but a devil. How can it be counted? Some people who admired Kuna reacted immediately and complained about Kuna. Kuna did not lose in swordsmanship, but in Luo Yun's devil-like eyes. Luo Yun couldn't win at all. This game should be repeated. Shut up. Kuna suddenly shouted angrily, and the few apprentices who spoke out were too frightened to speak. If you lose, you lose. There is nothing to say. Being frightened by a pair of special eyes only shows that my practice is not up to PAR. With that said, Kuna looked up at Luo Yun, raised her sword and pointed it at Luo Yun, issuing a challenge to Luo Yun. In a month, I will challenge you again. I will definitely defeat you at that time. Do you accept it? Seeing Kuna looking like I'm going to kill you if you don't accept it, Luo Yun smiled helplessly. I accept. Advertisement. What else can I do but accept him? Seeing Luo Yun's interest, Kuna snorted, thinking that this guy was aware of his interest. In a month, I will definitely wipe away the shame of today. Sensei, do we really want this guy to join the dojo? Does this guy have eyes like the devil? At this time, one of the apprentices finally raised the issue. The apprentices looked at Luo Yun's blood red eyes with fear, looking like a strange demon. They shuddered at the thought of living and studying with Luo Yun in the future. Okay, Koshiro finally spoke at this time, scolded the following apprentices, and said, In the future, you are not allowed to use words like monster and devil to talk about Luo Yun. Luo Yun is a real person, he is just a little different from ordinary people. Just like some people are born weak and sick, and some people are born with supernatural powers. If I read it correctly, Luo Yun, your eyes should be different from ordinary people by birth, not acquired. Yes, Taoist master. Luo Yun Kaido, he is not Koshiro's disciple yet, he can only call him Tao master. If Koshiro can prove it to him, his Sherry Nan will not be considered a monster by others. When he completes his training and goes to sea, he will not have to worry. The weird things people at sea have seen are much scarier than his eyes. Koshiro smiled slightly and said, Okay, in that case, Luo Yun, starting from today, you will officially join my gym, ahead of Zoro. Thank you, master. Finally becoming a master, Luo Yun happily bowed to Koshiro as a master. Advertisement. Koshiro nodded with satisfaction, this apprentice is very good at respecting his master. Hearing this, Zoro, who was sitting below, suddenly became unhappy. He stood up excitedly, pointed at Luo Yun and shouted in dissatisfaction. Why, I was the one who joined first, I should be the senior brother. Koshiro smiled slightly and explained, but he defeated Kuna, and he is still your big brother. Zoro was at a loss for words. Everything Koshiro said was correct, leaving him unable to refute, including the fact that Luo Yun is his eldest brother. Although only the two of them know this matter, Zoro can deny it, but Zoro is not such a person. He would rather die than break his promise. Luo Yun could only look at Luo Yun resentfully. Luo Yun's skin was covered with goosebumps and he subconsciously took two steps away from Zoro. Zoro, there won't be any problem with his orientation, right? Second update, please vote for recommendation. Dang, dang. A loud copper bell rang over the dojo. It was just dawn, the sky was bright and fish belly white, the dusk was dim, and the coldness of the night had not completely dissipated. In the dojo dormitory, the closed door slowly opened. Apprentices of different sizes, dressed in uniform cyan clothes, rubbed their eyes and slapped each other in unison, complaining to each other. I'm so sleepy, I feel like I slept in. Advertisement. If you really don't want to leave the bed, why do you have to get up early every day? Master, can we take a nap? I'm so sleepy. Koshiro woke up early and stood in the middle courtyard with a gentle smile on his face, listening to the complaints of the apprentices. Among them, the younger apprentices who had just joined the dojo complained the most. The older apprentices had adapted to getting up early and would not do this again. Complain. Smiling softly, Koshiro said, if you want to become a powerful swordsman, you must not relax at all times. Luo Yun and Zoro got up as early as an hour ago, and they have completed their morning training subjects. 
Hearing this, the apprentices looked shocked, and the next second, they didn't believe it. How is it possible? They woke up an hour early. It was still dark at that time. Also, the morning training consists of a 5-kilometer morning jog, a 100 push UPS, 50 pull UPS, and 500 sword swings. It takes at least an hour and a half to complete. Seeing that the apprentices didn't believe it, Koshiro smiled slightly and said, You can go out and take a look. Luo Yun and Zoro are already doing their second morning exercise. Let's go out and take a look. Someone said something, and everyone immediately ran out in a swarm and came to the training ground outside the dojo. Before they arrived, they heard the shouts of Zoro and Luo Yun waving their swords. Everyone ran over and saw Zoro and Luo Yun holding wooden swords. They were covered in white air and sweating profusely. They were separated. He swung his sword at a wooden stake wrapped with hemp rope. Everyone who originally didn't believe it now had to believe that these two guys who just joined yesterday were even more ferocious than they showed yesterday. Advertisement. 13 Learning Art Begins 2. Advertisement. Bang. The wooden sword struck the wooden stake with a muffled sound. Luo Yun gasped, stopped, shook his sore arm, and raised his hand to touch the sweat on his forehead. At the same time, he looked to the side and muttered, What are these guys doing there if they are not training? Do we look so good? Your sister, you are not watching a monkey show. As he spoke, Luo Yun turned his attention away from the apprentices and looked at Zoro next to him. This guy is holding a wooden sword in each hand at the moment, clenching his teeth and chopping the wooden stakes wildly. In this formation, it feels like the wooden stakes are Kona. Speaking of Kona, he hasn't seen her since he got up. Luo Yun doesn't think Kona is still sleeping in at this time. It is an unmitigated fact that Kona is a genius in swordsmanship, but Kona's superb swordsmanship is not only due to her talent, but also to her hard work and practice. There is a saying that goes, a waste material is not necessarily a waste material, but a genius without diligence will definitely be a waste material. Advertisement. There should be a special place for training, after all, she is the only girl in the entire dojo. Thinking that Luo Yun had calmed down for a while, the pain in his hands had eased, and his breathing had slowed down. He did not continue to rest, and swung his wooden sword to chop the tree stump in front of him again. If he wants to survive in the coming chaotic era and step on the wave of the times, Luo Yun must have strong power. From now on, every minute and every second cannot be wasted. Zoro wanted to defeat Kuna, so he got up early in the morning to train, just to become stronger. Luo Yun is different. He has his own goals, but achieving his goals requires strength, so like Zoro, he gets up before dawn to train. Fortunately, he was reborn in the One Piece world and gave him a pair of Sherry Non. Although he does not have the protagonist's aura like Luffy, he also has his own aura. In addition to Sherry Non, he is also physically much stronger than his peers. A 5km morning run, 100 push UPS, 50 pull UPS, and 500 sword swings were completed almost at the same time as Zoro within an hour. His physical fitness is several times stronger than that of an adult, and is comparable to the monster Zoro. Bang, bang. Sword after sword fell, after all, Luo Yun's hand was a wooden sword. Even if each sword struck with full force, and more than 700 strikes had been made before, the wooden stake in front of him still did not change much, except that the hemp rope wrapped around it was slightly damaged. But I don't know how long it will take before this is different from Luo Yun's goal. Advertisement. The so-called goal was given to him by Koshiro this morning. No, it should be said that it was set for the two of them. Back to an hour ago, Luo Yun and Zoro got up earlier than everyone else, but Luo Yun got up early but found that he didn't know what to do. He is not like an idiot like Zoro who practices blindly wielding two wooden swords. If he can develop superb swordsmanship by practicing blindly, then there will be many powerful swordsmen in the world. Just when Luo Yun thought it was better to exercise and build up his physical fitness first, Koshiro's voice came from behind, with a hint of surprise in his tone. I didn't expect you two to get up so early for training. Luo Yun was stunned for a moment, turned around and saw Koshiro, and quickly bowed, Master. Since he joined Koshiro's sect yesterday, it is natural to respect his teacher. Zoro glanced at Koshiro, said nothing, and continued to swing the wooden sword in his hand to chop the tree stump in front of him. Regarding Zoro's rudeness, Koshiro smiled slightly and said nothing. He turned to look at Luo Yun and said with a smile, Luo Yun, why don't you train with Zoro? Luo Yun thought for a while, and truthfully Kaido said, the disciple feels that Zoro's training is just a waste of physical strength. Real swordsmanship cannot be practiced without rules. Before Koshiro could say anything, Zoro, who was practicing sword play next to him, couldn't help but stopped chopping wooden stakes and said angrily, you are just practicing blindly, Luo Yun. If you have the ability, let's fight to see who is stronger between the two of us. Advertisement. Luo Yun picked his ears and said with a smile, Zoro, you have to call me senior brother, of course you can also call me big brother. Zoro became even more angry, but he lost the bet and couldn't refute. He could only look at Luo Yun with gritted teeth, wishing that the two wooden swords in his hands could turn into real swords and cut this guy in half. Seeing Zoro's angry and unwilling look, Luo Yun couldn't help laughing. Asshole. Zoro gritted his teeth with hatred and was extremely angry, but he couldn't do anything to Luo Yun. Seeing the two new disciples playing around, Koshiro chuckled and persuaded, Okay, okay, Luo Yun is right and he is wrong. Luo Yun was teasing Zoro. When he heard this, he was stunned for a moment, and then looked at Koshiro in confusion. Koshiro said that he was wrong, and he understood it, but he really didn't understand whether it was right or wrong. The angry Zoro couldn't help but look at Koshiro curiously. Not to mention Luo Yun, he didn't understand what he said. Seeing the doubts of the two disciples, Koshiro smiled and explained to them, Luo Yun is half right. Practicing swordsmanship is indeed not a blind practice. You need to follow the rules, but that is just ordinary swordsmanship. Really powerful swordsmen, their swordsmanship is separated from the rules and regulations, and the sword is used as a part of the body, like an arm. Zoro pouted and said in disbelief, Master, you are deceiving people. Is a sword that can't even cut a piece of paper still a sword? Advertisement. 
13 learning art begins too. Advertisement. Bang. The wooden sword struck the wooden stake with a muffled sound. Luo Yun gasped, stopped, shook his sore arm, and raised his hand to touch the sweat on his forehead. At the same time, he looked to the side and muttered, What are these guys doing there if they are not training? Do we look so good? Your sister, you are not watching a monkey show. As he spoke, Luo Yun turned his attention away from the apprentices and looked at Zoro next to him. This guy is holding a wooden sword in each hand at the moment, clenching his teeth and chopping the wooden stakes wildly. In this formation, it feels like the wooden stakes are Kona. Speaking of Kona, he hasn't seen her since he got up. Luo Yun doesn't think Kona is still sleeping in at this time. It is an unmitigated fact that Kona is a genius in swordsmanship, but Kona's superb swordsmanship is not only due to her talent, but also to her hard work and practice. There is a saying that goes, a waste material is not necessarily a waste material, but a genius without diligence will definitely be a waste material. Advertisement. There should be a special place for training. After all, she is the only girl in the entire dojo. Thinking that Luo Yun had calmed down for a while, the pain in his hands had eased, and his breathing had slowed down. He did not continue to rest, and swung his wooden sword to chop the tree stump in front of him again. If he wants to survive in the coming chaotic era and step on the wave of the times, Luo Yun must have strong power. From now on, every minute and every second cannot be wasted. Zoro wanted to defeat Kona, so he got up early in the morning to train, just to become stronger. Luo Yun is different. He has his own goals, but achieving his goals requires strength, so like Zoro, he gets up before dawn to train. Fortunately, he was reborn in the One Piece world and gave him a pair of Sherinan. Although he does not have the protagonist's aura like Luffy, he also has his own aura. In addition to Sherinan, he is also physically much stronger than his peers. A 5km morning run, 100 push UPS, 50 pull UPS, and 500 sword swings were completed almost at the same time as Zoro within an hour. His physical fitness is several times stronger than that of an adult, and is comparable to the monster Zoro. Bang, bang. Sword after sword fell, after all, Luo Yun's hand was a wooden sword. Even if each sword struck with full force, and more than 700 strikes had been made before, the wooden stake in front of him still did not change much, except that the hemp rope wrapped around it was slightly damaged. But I don't know how long it will take before this is different from Luo Yun's goal. Advertisement. The so-called goal was given to him by Koshiro this morning. No, it should be said that it was set for the two of them. Back to an hour ago, Luo Yun and Zoro got up earlier than everyone else, but Luo Yun got up early but found that he didn't know what to do. He is not like an idiot like Zoro who practices blindly wielding two wooden swords. If he can develop superb swordsmanship by practicing blindly, then there will be many powerful swordsmen in the world. Just when Luo Yun thought it was better to exercise and build up his physical fitness first, Koshiro's voice came from behind, with a hint of surprise in his tone. I didn't expect you two to get up so early for training. Luo Yun was stunned for a moment, turned around and saw Koshiro, and quickly bowed, Master. Since he joined Koshiro's sect yesterday, it is natural to respect his teacher. Zoro glanced at Koshiro, said nothing, and continued to swing the wooden sword in his hand to chop the tree stump in front of him. Regarding Zoro's rudeness, Koshiro smiled slightly and said nothing. He turned to look at Luo Yun and said with a smile, Luo Yun, why don't you train with Zoro? Luo Yun thought for a while, and truthfully Kaido said, the disciple feels that Zoro's training is just a waste of physical strength. Real swordsmanship cannot be practiced without rules. Before Koshiro could say anything, Zoro, who was practicing sword play next to him, couldn't help but stopped chopping wooden stakes and said angrily, you are just practicing blindly, Luo Yun. If you have the ability, let's fight to see who is stronger between the two of us. Advertisement. Luo Yun picked his ears and said with a smile, Zoro, you have to call me senior brother, of course you can also call me big brother. Zoro became even more angry, but he lost the bet and couldn't refute. He could only look at Luo Yun with gritted teeth, wishing that the two wooden swords in his hands could turn into real swords and cut this guy in half. Seeing Zoro's angry and unwilling look, Luo Yun couldn't help laughing. Asshole. Zoro gritted his teeth with hatred and was extremely angry, but he couldn't do anything to Luo Yun. Seeing the two new disciples playing around, Koshiro chuckled and persuaded, Okay, okay, Luo Yun is right and he is wrong. Luo Yun was teasing Zoro. When he heard this, he was stunned for a moment, and then looked at Koshiro in confusion. Koshiro said that he was wrong, and he understood it, but he really didn't understand whether it was right or wrong. The angry Zoro couldn't help but look at Koshiro curiously. Not to mention Luo Yun, he didn't understand what he said. Seeing the doubts of the two disciples, Koshiro smiled and explained to them, Luo Yun is half right. Practicing swordsmanship is indeed not a blind practice. You need to follow the rules, but that is just ordinary swordsmanship. Really powerful swordsmen, their swordsmanship is separated from the rules and regulations, and the sword is used as a part of the body, like an arm. Zoro pouted and said in disbelief, Master, you are deceiving people. Is a sword that can't even cut a piece of paper still a sword? Advertisement. 14 Crazy Kuna 1. Advertisement. Is that a real sword? Luo Yun glanced at Zoro next to him with disdain. Zoro is still a rebellious little boy. Only later will he understand why a sword that can cut through steel cannot cut through paper. That's just the external performance. Internally, the swordsman's control of the sword has reached a subtle level, and he can accurately control every ounce of power. Master, how should we practice in the first step? Luo Yun looked at Koshiro and asked. Koshiro did not answer immediately. He raised his hand to rest his chin and pondered slightly. At first, he planned to let Luo Yun and Zoro practice sword training first, but looking at these two exercises today, Luo Yun and Zoro's physical fitness is far beyond ordinary people, so there is no need to do it first. To raise a sword, you can learn and raise it at the same time. With a clear mind in mind, Koshiro said, Luo Yun, neither you nor Zoro understand the sword. I will not officially teach you the way of the sword until you understand the sword. Zoro was not happy when he heard that he would not teach Kendo. He threw the wooden sword in his hand and joined the dojo. Apart from losing, the most important reason was to learn superb swordsmanship and defeat that arrogant woman Kuna. If you don't teach me Kendo now, what can I do to defeat Kuna? What can I do if I join the dojo? Seeing Zoro's unhappy face, Luo Yun immediately understood what was going on, frowned slightly, and grabbed the guy. He scolded, Zoro, please be quiet for a while and listen to the teacher first. Seeing what Luo Yun did, Koshiro was slightly surprised. Luo Yun's mind is far beyond that of his peers, and is no worse than an adult. Advertisement. 
Koshiro did not show his surprise, and said calmly, I will teach you about swords first and conduct basic physical training at the same time. Only when you truly understand what a sword is, can you practice kendo. Luo Yun asked again, Master, how should we understand the sword? What does it mean to understand the sword? This needs to be explained clearly. If we talk about it in a general way, when will this end? This disciple always brings up the key points every time. Koshiro is surprised and delighted, which shows that this new disciple is smart and witty. Raising his hand and pointing to the wooden stake that Zoro had just practiced on, Koshiro smiled slightly and said, Just wait until you use the wooden sword in your hand to chop the wooden stake in front of you. Luo Yun was dumbfounded for a moment and chopped the wooden pile into pieces. This wooden pile was specially used for training. It was made from the core of a nearby hardwood tree. This kind of wood is as hard as stone. It is also called stone wood and is wrapped around the outside. A layer of treated twine provides cushioning. It would take a day to chop with a real sharp sword. How long would it take to hold a wooden sword? I'm afraid it will take several months before this is possible. Zoro felt like he was being tricked and used his wooden sword to chop off the wooden stakes. How could this be possible? About to get angry. Koshiro suddenly said, Oh, by the way, it took Kona a month to chop the stakes. The words just fell. Zoro was silent. He walked to the wooden pile with a wooden sword in both hands and started chopping wildly. Sure enough, ginger is still spicier when old. Advertisement. Just mention Kuna and let Zoro go. The master has seen through Zoro. Okay, what else can I do? I can only chop it. Luo Yun shrugged helplessly. If he wanted to learn superb swordsmanship, he could only follow Koshiro's instructions. The sun rises and sets, the wind comes and the rain comes, just like a white horse passing by. Summer passes and autumn comes. The apricot trees in the courtyard of the ashram were still green when they arrived, but now they are withered and yellow, and the golden fallen leaves are scattered in the courtyard. In the blink of an eye, it has been three months since Luo Yun and Zoro came to Yuxin Dojo. Inside the dojo, the two figures flashed quickly, and the wooden swords collided in the air with a muffled sound. Below, Koshiro and the other apprentices sat quietly below, watching the fight between Zoro and Kona on the stage. Holding the wooden sword in both hands, Zoro launched a mad attack on Kona. The fierce attack was like a, and Kona was like a small boat in the huge waves. But no matter how fierce the attack was, Kona blocked Zoro's attack perfectly. She seemed to have seen through Zoro's attack and was ready to block every strike of Zoro's sword. Below, Luo Yun shook his head secretly. Advertisement. Zoro's high-speed attack method doesn't seem to work. Kona's swordsmanship is far stronger than Zoro's. Although Zoro's attack is fierce, Kona blocked it. The high-speed fierce attack consumes a lot of physical strength. Zoro will not last long in this state. Once Zoro withdraws his offensive, Gu Yuna will definitely seize the opportunity and bully him. Then Zoro will definitely lose. Zoro also understands this, so he has been attacking at a high speed in order to find Kona's weaknesses, but Kona's defense is airtight. But if he cannot defeat Kona before his physical strength is exhausted, Zoro will still be defeated when his physical strength is exhausted. Whoosh. Continuing to attack at a high speed, Zoro already felt that his physical strength was insufficient, but Kona in front of him was only defensive. Gritting his teeth, Zoro gathered the last of his strength, swung his sword with both hands like raindrops, and slashed at Kona. Kuna quickly blocked with her sword, blocking Zoro's slashes one by one. The sudden attack exhausted Zoro's last strength, and Zoro's attack immediately slowed down. It's now. Kuna's eyes lit up, and she stopped defending with the wooden sword in her hand. She took the initiative to slash out, blocked the falling swords, and swept out with her backhand, knocking the swords away. Quickly flipping his wrist, the long sword turned 180 degrees in Kuna's palm, hung over Zoro's head in the air, and suddenly fell down. Advertisement. 15 Crazy Kuna 2. Advertisement. Bang. A scream sounded, and Zoro flew out and fell to the ground, with a deep red mark on his forehead. Seeing the winner, Koshiro immediately raised his hand and shouted. One point, so far, Kona wins, 100 wins and 0 losses. The falling sword pointed at Zoro who fell to the ground. Kona raised her head proudly and taunted Zoro, you lost, Zoro, how could you be so useless? He is obviously a boy, snort. With a slight snort, Zoro neither roared nor yelled to refute Kona's taunt. He calmly picked up the wooden sword on the ground and walked to sit down among the crowd below. Looking at Zoro who walked into the crowd and sat down, Koshiro nodded with satisfaction. In just three months, Zoro has improved a lot. From the original instant kill to now being able to compete with Kona for half a minute. Next, Kona versus Luo Yun, record, 10 colon 1. It's my turn. After muttering to himself, Luo Yun stood up from the crowd, held his sword and walked to the middle. In the past three months, he was not like Zoro who challenged Kona every day. In addition to losing the January battle agreed with Kona, he also challenged Kona nine times, but lost every time. There is no way, Kona is very talented in swordsmanship and has been practicing swordsmanship since she was a child. Even though Luo Yun has become much stronger in the past three months, she is still no match for Kona. Koshiro glanced at the two of them, his voice calm. Advertisement. Salute. Luo Yun lowered his head and bowed to Kona, and Kona also bowed at the same time. After the ceremony, Koshiro nodded to signal the start. Kona immediately drew her sword and without any preamble, rushed towards Luo Yun and struck Luo Yun's chest with her sword. I'll wipe it. Do you want this? Seeing that this woman was attacking her without saying a word, Luo Yun immediately swore. In response to the scolding, Luo Yun quickly dodged to the side to avoid Kona's chop. Seeing Luo Yun dodge, Kona quickly changed her moves, turning from a vertical chop to a horizontal slash, and the wooden sword swept out and hit Luo Yun's abdomen. Draw your sword and kill. The wooden sword came at such a fast speed that it was impossible to dodge. Luo Yun raised his hand and drew the sword. Draw your sword and kill. With a soft shout, the wooden sword was unsheathed like lightning, deflecting Kona's chop. Almost at the same time, the wooden sword slashed towards Kona. So fast. Zoro was secretly shocked. Luo Yun's sword slash was faster than the last time he fought. In the flash of lightning, Kona flipped her wrist, and the wooden sword in her hand rotated 360 degrees, like a shield standing in front of her. Bang! Advertisement. With a muffled sound, the two wooden swords collided in the air, and their energy was scattered. Luo Yun and Kona fell back at the same time. Luo Yun took three steps back to stabilize his body, while Kona stabilized with just one step. The stronger one was determined. Down. Kona looked up at Luo Yun and said arrogantly, Luo Yun, if you only have this strength, you are definitely no match for me. 
In this case, Luo Yan's eyes darkened and his tone became serious. Kuna's eyes changed slightly, and she subconsciously became vigilant. Is this guy Luo Yun finally going to use his Sherry Nan? The purpose of provoking Luo Yun just now was to get Luo Yun to use that strange Sherry Nan. What Kuna wanted to defeat was the real Luo Yun, not the Luo Yun who was hiding his strength. Then I give up. Bang, bang. Everyone was stunned instantly and lay on the floor on the wooden board. Where's dignity? Where's face? One second he looked like he was going to call for a big move, and the next second he gave in. Have you ever played like this? They gave up after just two moves. This didn't look like a duel. Damn it, Luo Yun, you bastard. Advertisement. Kuna, who thought she was being tricked by Luo Yun, couldn't help but cursed angrily at this moment. She didn't look as arrogant as usual at all. Koshiro sat up from the ground. Even he couldn't watch anymore. He coughed twice and couldn't help but remind him, Luo Yun, in a swordsman's duel, losing without fighting is not only against the swordsman's spirit, but also against the swordsman's spirit. Rules of duel. Turning to look at Koshiro, Luo Yun said respectfully, Master, after we had a brief battle just now, I have realized that I am no match for senior sister Kuna. If I continue to fight, I am just asking for trouble. If I voluntarily admit defeat, I will suffer less. This. Koshiro was speechless for a moment. Luo Yun's words were so reasonable that even he didn't know how to refute. Kuna did not accept such rhetoric here. She felt that Luo Yun not only looked down on her but also made fun of her, and did not use all his strength during the fight with her. For the proud Kuna, how could she bear such an insult? She angrily yelled, asshole. Immediately holding the wooden sword in hand, he rushed towards Luo Yun, raised his hand and struck down with the sword. Seeing Kuna angrily attacking him, Luo Yun's forehead was sweating. What was going on? Didn't he just admit defeat? Why should this woman be so angry? I felt like I wanted to tear him into pieces and chop him into minced meat. Depressed as hell, Luo Yun also saw that Kuna was going to beat him to death, and he didn't have time to think too much. He raised the wooden sword in his hand and slashed upward, blocking Kuna's long sword. But Kuna was in a high position, and she was attacking from top to bottom. In addition, Kuna was angry and struck with all her strength. This attack was slashing, but Luo Yun only managed to block it and was knocked back several steps. Feeling the slight pain in the tiger's mouth, I thought to myself, this woman is really crazy and has no mercy at all. Just now, if he had not escaped quickly, he would have been hit in the head. This was not as gentle as Soros, leaving a red mark, and he would definitely have been hit with a concussion. Advertisement. 16 Sherry Nan not 1. Advertisement. Luo Yun didn't have time to think too much. Kona failed to hit a single blow in front of him. He reversed his sword and struck Luo Yun's head with a vertical slash in succession. The speed was extremely fast, the long sword split the air, and the strong wind roared. Luo Yun quickly raised his foot and kicked the wooden sword out of Kona's hand. At the same time, he swept the sword out and struck Kona's abdomen. Kuna was not in a hurry, her steps slipped, her body fell back a few centimeters, and she narrowly dodged the Luo Yun wooden sword. At this moment, Luo Yun's middle door was wide open. Naturally, Kuna would not miss this perfect opportunity. She flipped her wrist and slashed down vertically with the wooden sword in her hand. Luo Yun quickly dodged. If he was hit by this sword, it would definitely be uncomfortable. I'm afraid he would have to lie in bed for the next few days. If you want to run away, don't even think about it. Kuna yelled angrily, stepped out, and chased after Luo Yun who was retreating. The wooden sword in his hand followed Luo Yun like a long snake, and he would not stop until he stabbed Luo Yun. Kuna is too emotional and her swordsmanship is messed up. Koshiro frowned slightly. It looked like Kuna had the upper hand and kept suppressing Luo Yun. But in fact, Kuna's swordsmanship was chaotic and she was carried away by anger. Relatively speaking, Luo Yun was very calm and kept looking for Kuna's flaws. Although Kuna was resolved in time every time, something would happen sooner or later if this continued. Advertisement. Luo Yun rolled over and dodged several consecutive slashes. Kuna became even more angry. She quickly pressed on Luo Yun and slashed down with the wooden sword in her hand. In anger, Kuna only wanted to hit Luo Yun, but in anger, she did not estimate the distance between her and Luo Yun, and the sword fell in vain. It's now. Luo Yun's eyes lit up, and he finally caught Kuna's flaw. With a little more force on the toes, the retreating momentum was changed to forward, and he pressed against Kuna. Everything happened in a blink of an eye, and Kuna had no time to react. Luo Yun was already approaching. At this moment, Kuna also realized that she was upset by Luo Yun's irritation just now, which gave Luo Yun an opportunity. It was too late to regret now, Kuna immediately made the best reaction and slashed diagonally upward towards Luo Yun's neck at an angle that was difficult for ordinary people to achieve. Clang. The bell that marked the end of the duel rang, and the apprentices who were seated, including Zoro, looked at the two people in the field dumbfounded. The tip of the wooden sword in Luo Yun's hand was seen reaching Kuna's chest, and the wooden sword in Kuna's hand also fell on Luo Yun's neck. At the last moment, the two fought and both lost. The duel is over, there is no winner between Kuna and Luo Yun. Koshiro made the final verdict. How can it be? Zoro looked at this scene in disbelief. He knew very well what kind of strength Luo Yun had. He was definitely no match for Kuna, but he could compete with her on a PAR. Advertisement. Could it be that this guy was hiding his clumsiness in normal sparring and didn't use his full strength at all? Asshole? Crazy woman. Looking at the wooden sword in his hand that stabbed Kuna's chest, Luo Yun was not excited about being tied with Kuna, but instead felt helpless and had a headache. In his last move just now, he caught Kuna's flaw, leaving Kuna unable to dodge. But Kuna originally had the opportunity to pay a certain price to block his move and regain the initiative, but the woman's first reaction was to choose the most brutal way to die with him. You have to be so angry and annoyed with him to do such a thing. Luo Yun was surprised. He didn't offend Kuna. Why did Kuna hate him so much? Was it because he defeated her through unfair means the first time? Luo Yun couldn't understand. Anyway, this woman wanted to kill him. Hearing Koshiro say the duel was over, Luo Yun breathed a sigh of relief and put down his wooden sword. Although Kuna looked unwilling, she hesitated for a while and then removed the wooden sword placed on Luo Yun's neck. I lost. Although she is arrogant, Kuna is a person who can afford to lose. Advertisement. Hey, hey. After hearing Kuna admit defeat, Luo Yun reminded him, Kuna, it's a draw between the two of us. No one loses, no one wins. Throwing away the wooden sword in her hand, Kuna returned to her cold demeanor and turned to look at Luo Yun with a cold tone. If you don't win, you lose. After saying that, Kuna turned and left the room without stopping. Why? Looking at Kuna's leaving figure, Luo Yun sighed helplessly. 
He really couldn't understand this woman. We were all brothers and sisters, and we didn't offend her. How could she be treated like an enemy? Koshiro looked thoughtfully at the woman's leaving figure. Hearing Luo Yun sigh, he turned around and smiled slightly. Kuna is such a girl. She is very competitive and maybe a little difficult to get along with. I didn't care. Luo Yun shook his head and said depressedly, I just don't understand why Kuna is so hostile to me. As a father, he naturally understood and helped Luo Yun explain her doubts. Kuna has a stronger competitive spirit than men. Before losing to you, Kuna had never lost. Even the adults in the dojo were no match for her. But she has already defeated me. Luo Yun still didn't understand. Although he used dishonorable means to defeat Kuna, Kuna easily defeated him in the duel a month later. Kuna should not be so hostile to him. To be honest, Luo Yun really doesn't want to have a bad relationship with Kuna. Although Kuna is just a simple memory character in One Piece, her existence is very important, especially to this guy Zoro. Advertisement. 17 Sherry Non Not 2. Advertisement. Koshiro smiled, because you didn't use the blood-colored eyes you used that day. In Kuna's opinion, you didn't use your full strength. For Kuna, who is very competitive, not only will she not be happy to win you like this, but she will feel that you are insulting her. Look down on her. Master, I really don't have any. Luo Yun quickly waved his hand and explained, Kuna is Koshiro's daughter after all, and he doesn't want to be judged by others. I don't use Sherry Non. Mainly because I feel that the duel between me and Kuna is a kendo duel. Using other powers would be unfair to Kuna. Even if I win like this, I won't be able to win. Anyway, no one in One Piece knew what Sherry Non was, so Luo Yun just copied it. Koshiro nodded and said, I know this, but Luo Yun, you are mistaken. Mistaken? Luo Yun was stunned for a moment and immediately asked Koshiro for advice, Master, where did I go wrong? Koshiro did not answer Luo Yun immediately. He stood up from his kneeling position and walked outside. Luo Yun followed Koshiro with doubts and followed Koshiro to the courtyard. Entering autumn, the apricot trees in the courtyard are shining with golden light, and pieces of golden leaves hang on the branches. At this moment, a breeze blows by, and the yellow apricot leaves break away from the branches and dance in the air like beautiful butterflies. This situation is extremely beautiful. Koshiro raised his hand and gently grabbed a fluttering apricot leaf, turned his back to Luo Yun and asked, Luo Yun, do you think this withering apricot leaf is part of the apricot tree? Advertisement. Luo Yun didn't understand why Koshiro didn't answer his questions first, but asked this kind of question instead, but he still suppressed his doubts, Kaido, naturally. Why? As long as the apricot leaf is not separated from the apricot tree, it is connected to the apricot tree and is naturally considered a part of the apricot tree. Good. Koshiro nodded and said, in that case, why don't you treat your Sherry Non as a part of yourself? Boom. These words were like five thunders exploding in Luo Yun's mind, and Luo Yun was stunned for a moment. That's right. Why don't you regard Sherry Non as a part of yourself? This question flashed through his mind crazily, and Luo Yun had never thought about it before. Koshiro glanced sideways at Luo Yun who was stunned behind him, and continued, You are right, swordsmanship should be used in kendo duels, but your Sherry Non is not the rest of the power, it is your own strength, Sherry Non is your advantage. Just like Kuna, she has been exposed to swords since she was 3 years old and practiced swordsmanship at 5 years old. Now she has learned swordsmanship for 5 years. She has learned swordsmanship for 5 years more than you. This is her advantage. You regard Sherry Non as the rest of the force, which is a mistake in itself. According to your logic, wouldn't Kuna have to give up studying swordsmanship for 5 more years? Is this fair and absolute? Advertisement. This. Luo Yun was at a loss for words. His mind was spinning for a long time, unable to refute Koshiro's words. At this moment, Luo Yun suddenly realized that he had made a mistake from the beginning. In his mind, Sherry Non is an external force. One is that he was reborn in the One Piece world, and the other Sherry Non belongs to Hokage but not the One Piece world. He subconsciously believes that Sherry Non is a powerful external force that does not belong to him, so Luo Yun has been studying swordsmanship and exercising his physical fitness. Because in his opinion, Sherry Non's power is powerful but unreliable, and he may disappear at some point. Before that, he needs to gain his own powerful power. Even without relying on Sherry Non, he is still powerful. Luo Yun has not used Sherry Non since he joined the dojo training in order not to rely on Sherry Non. Once Sherry Non disappears, his strength will be greatly reduced. Now Koshiro's words made Luo Yun suddenly understand that Sherry Non is a part of his body and his own power. Sherry Non is similar to the Devil Fruit in One Piece. Demon Fruit Power, their power comes from Devil Fruit. Could it be that they don't use this power? Four emperors, Shishibukai, Admiral of Headquarters, most of them are Demon Fruit Power. Aren't they strong? They still stand at the pinnacle of world combat power. He should not reject Sherry Non and be afraid of this power, but should be exposed to and tolerate it and practice this power. Advertisement. With a flash of light in his eyes, Luo Yun looked at Koshiro, the chief master in front of him, his eyes showed genuine respect for the first time, and he said respectfully, I understand, master. Koshiro grinned and said, now that you understand, let's go train. It's also important to be strong. Kendo is like sailing against the current. If you don't advance, you will retreat. Okay, master. With a big knot in his heart resolved, Luo Yun was in a good mood, smiled slowly, took the wooden sword and left to find Zoro for training. After Luo Yun left, Koshiro put his hands behind his back and looked up at Huang Xing in the courtyard. After listening to you for so long, you should understand. Luo Yun didn't mean to insult you, but he just has a knot in his heart. The voice was calm and slow, but there was no one around. Koshiro seemed to be talking to the air. Just as the words fell, at the corner behind the corridor, Kuna bit her lip and left slowly. The other side, Luo Yun came to a separate place where he and Zoro were training. At a creek. Advertisement. 18 Shuriken Technique 1. Advertisement. Zoro had already started training when Luo Yun arrived. He was standing above a depression in the stream. The stream suddenly tightened here and flowed quickly between the palm-sized gap between two gray stones, like the Milky Way falling into the circle below. The pit slowly flows into the distance. Zoro's feet were placed on two stones respectively, and he had a hemp rope in his mouth. Under the rope was a stone weighing about 10 kilograms. The hemp rope was woven into a net to catch the stone. Without disturbing Zoro, Luo Yun went to the puddle below and found a place that was almost clean and sat down. 
It was said to be a puddle, but it was actually several square meters in size. It was like a small pool. The water was so clear that you could see the stones at the bottom. Several black fish can be seen swimming. As soon as he sat down, he heard a bang, the stone fell into the water, and the water splashed. He almost got soaked, but a lot of stream water also splashed on him. After touching the stream water on his face that was affecting his vision, Luo Yun was not angry because of this. He looked up at the panting Zoro above and asked curiously, It's not that you don't plan to practice the three-sword style, why did you practice it again? I still can't beat Kuna with two swords. I'm going to try it with three swords. As he said that, Zoro walked down the puddle, grabbed the hemp rope floating on the water, and fished the stone out of the water. He looked up at Luo Yun and said, You are lucky this time. You deliberately made Kuna angry and confused. If you catch her, it will be a tie. You also think I did it on purpose, isn't it? Luo Yun explained, It's just a duel, I won't use tricks. I am indeed no match for Kuna. If I can't win, I can't let people admit defeat. Advertisement. Then why don't you use Sherry Non? If you use Sherry Non, according to what you said, you will have insights far beyond ordinary people. Kona may not be your opponent, right? Luo Yun sighed, he didn't know how to explain this, even Zoro thought so. The fact is, even if he uses Sherry Non, Luo Yun is sure that he is no match for Kuna. He really thinks that Kuna is useless. Kuna is a genius in swordsmanship and has studied five years more than them. It has been three months since he joined the dojo. He has played more than ten games with Kuna, and hundreds of games with Zoro. Luo Yun can be sure that Kuna has not shown her true strength. In addition to Kona's strength, Luo Yun's own poor strength is also a reason. Sherry Non is very strong. After it is turned on, his eyesight does increase sharply, but his own strength is not enough and he cannot perfectly exert the power of Sherry Non. Bang! The stone smashed into the water, the water splashed, and the waves rolled on the calm surface. Whoosh! Zoro put his hands on his knees, sweating profusely and breathing heavily. Advertisement. He estimated in his mind that he could now hold on for more than three minutes. Compared with less than one minute a week ago, he had made great progress. But this level is not enough, there is still a lot to be desired. If he wants to truly use the three sword style, he must maintain the strength of his mouth and the bite force of his teeth for at least 15 minutes. This time is the prerequisite for practicing the three sword style. To successfully practice the three sword style, you need longer time and heavier stones. After regaining some strength, Zoro looked up to the shore next to him. Luo Yun was doing what he called special training. He built a large wooden frame in the open space on the shore. On the wooden frame was a rope net woven with hemp rope. At the hinges of these rope nets, ropes hung down, and wooden sticks were tied under the ropes. Anyway, Zoro didn't know what it was, but he saw Luo Yun tying these hanging ropes with a rope every day, and then untying the rope. These ropes tied with wooden sticks did not swing at all regularly during the fall. Immediately afterwards, Luo Yun activated his Sherry Non, rushed into it, and dodged these wooden sticks that swung irregularly. At the beginning, Luo Yun was miserable. Less than 10 seconds after entering, he was knocked to the ground by these wooden sticks and screamed in pain. Whenever this happens, Zoro can't help laughing, and at the same time, he makes fun of Luo Yun. Advertisement. Looking at Luo Yun dodging among the flying wooden sticks, Zoro said to himself, but today, Luo Yun has persisted for a long time. Ashore, Sherry Non turned on the black Megatama in his blood-red eyes, and after his insight increased, the rapidly dancing wooden stick became slower in Luo Yun's eyes. Using Sherry Non at the same time, Luo Yun can lock the actions of several targets at the same time. This is the power of Sherry Non. One wooden stick came from the front, and another one from the left. Luo Yun first bent down to avoid the front wooden stick, and rolled his body to the right at the same time, avoiding the left wooden stick. The other four wooden sticks came at the same time from different directions. Luo Yun stepped hard with both feet, jumped high, jumped on top of the wooden sticks, and avoided the four wooden sticks. Next, Luo Yun, who activated the power of Sherry Non, dodged flexibly among the flying wooden sticks. It was extremely thrilling every time, but at the last moment, Luo Yun got out of the way. Until the speed of these wooden sticks slowed down, Luo Yun was not hit even once. After practicing for more than two weeks, I finally achieved something small. After listening to Kochiro's words that day, Luo Yun completely woke up and began to accept the power of Sherry Non. It must be said that it was only when he accepted the use of Sherry Non's power that Luo Yun truly felt the power of Sherry Non. Advertisement. 19 Shuriken Technique 2. Advertisement. However, although Sherry Non is powerful, his body is unable to utilize this power. To put it simply, he is too weak. It was said that among the flying wooden sticks, he could clearly see the movement trajectory of each wooden stick, but he couldn't avoid it. The inside of his eyes suddenly increased sharply, but his own reflexes and speed could not keep up with the increase in Sheringen's power. In order to cooperate with Sheringen's inside improvement as soon as possible, Luo Yun could only use this most ruthless method, borrowing these wooden sticks that danced without tracks to train his body's reflexes and speed. It was really miserable at the beginning, and he was ridiculed by the heartless guy Zoro, but the effect was indeed effective. From the beginning, Luo Yun could not dodge the four wooden sticks perfectly, but now he can face six wooden sticks without difficulty. By the way, is he going to get a gun? With the power of Sherry Non, Luo Yun can see ants crawling 50 meters away. His dynamic vision is stronger, making him a perfect match for a marksman. It would be a waste not to get a gun. Of course, it is still a pity. There is no such thing as ninjutsu in the pirate world. The usefulness of Sherry Non in his hands seems to be that he can have far more insights than ordinary people. Advertisement. But now his Sherry Non is only one Megatama, and I don't know what the difference will be after double Megatama, or even three Megatama, as for the above-mentioned Mangekyo Sherry Non. Luo Yun is not so ambitious yet, and he doesn't even know how to evolve Ermagadama. Is it according to the Hokage, or is it some other way? Luo Yun is not sure yet. At this stage, Luo Yun has only one goal, which is to adapt to Sherry Non's power and make perfect use of him. Call out. A sound of breaking through the air sounded from behind him, and the next second, Luo Yun felt like his head had been hit. Zoro. Luo Yun clenched his fist in anger and turned around. Zoro said, not me. As he spoke, Zoro raised his finger and pointed at the top of Luo Yun's head. 
Seeing that Zoro's face was serious and did not look like he was joking, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment and looked curiously in the direction of Zoro's finger. He saw Kuna standing on the forked branch of a big tree above his head, holding the trunk of the branch with one hand and holding her waist with the other, as cold as ever. Both Zoro and Luo Yun were shocked by Kuna's sudden appearance. Speaking of which, the relationship between the three of them could not be described as normal, let alone normal. Instead, they felt a bit like enemies. Luo Yun glanced at Zoro subconsciously, and Zoro happened to also look over. Both of them saw deep doubts in each other's eyes. Kuna, what do you want from us too? Luo Yun took a step forward and broke the silence. Advertisement. My father asked me to bring you something. Kuna said coldly. What? Zoro asked curiously. He hasn't gotten anything recently, let alone asked Koshiro to bring him anything, so it should be Luo Yun. Sure enough, Luo Yun was a little happy and said, It's finally done, have you brought it? Kuna didn't answer, but took out a bag from behind and threw it to Luo Yun below. Luo Yun didn't care so much. When he saw the bag flying towards him, he quickly caught it, opened the bag and took out something from it. This is a shuriken. Zoro looked at the thing in Luo Yun's hand in surprise. That's right, what Luo Yun is holding is a shuriken? Luo Yun made a sketch based on the shape of the shuriken in Hokage. He asked Koshiro to make a specially customized shuriken. Luo Yun made it a week ago. However, the shuriken he drew is unique and equipped with special mechanisms, so it took a long time to customize it. I just got it today. After careful inspection, he found that it was exactly the same as the shuriken he had drawn. The shuriken he customized was a five-pointed shuriken in the car sword, which means it has five sharp points. In addition, the small mechanisms inside are also very delicate, and the matching silk props are also very slender. Advertisement. Overall, it was almost 100% in line with his requirements. After all, you get what you pay for. 50 shurikens cost Luo Yun 1 gold coin. 1 gold coin is equivalent to 10,000 belly. This price is extremely high. At this moment, Kuna on the branch couldn't help but ask, can you still use shuriken? When she got the bag, Kuna secretly glanced at the contents of the bag, which were shurikens. On the way here, she kept wondering why Luo Yun wanted to customize the shurikens. Now seeing Luo Yun happily holding a shuriken, she was even more confused. Could it be that in addition to his strange eyes and the ability to use shurikens, this guy's hidden strength was deeper than she expected? Luo Yun was stunned for a moment when he heard Kuna's initiative to ask. This seemed to be the first time Kuna took the initiative to talk to him during a non-dual moment. I don't know how to use shuriken Luo Yun shook his head. Then why did you customize the shuriken? Kuna asked again. It is precisely because I don't know how to do it that I customized shurikens for learning, Luo Yun said, putting the shuriken into the bag. Kuna looked deeply at Luo Yun, said nothing, turned around, jumped down from the tree, and left straight away. Zoro, who didn't know when he came to the side, asked in confusion, what does she mean? You ask me? Who am I asking? I don't know either, Luo Yun also didn't explain. After a pause, Luo Yun added, but have you noticed that she doesn't seem to be as hostile to us as before? Advertisement. 19 Shuriken Technique 2. Advertisement. However, although Sherry Nan is powerful, his body is unable to utilize this power. To put it simply, he is too weak. It was said that among the flying wooden sticks, he could clearly see the movement trajectory of each wooden stick, but he couldn't avoid it. The inside of his eyes suddenly increased sharply, but his own reflexes and speed could not keep up with the increase in Sheringan's power. In order to cooperate with Sheringan's inside improvement as soon as possible, Luo Yun could only use this most ruthless method, borrowing these wooden sticks that danced without tracks to train his body's reflexes and speed. It was really miserable at the beginning, and he was ridiculed by the heartless guy Zoro, but the effect was indeed effective. From the beginning, Luo Yun could not dodge the four wooden sticks perfectly, but now he can face six wooden sticks without difficulty. By the way, is he going to get a gun? With the power of Sherry Nan, Luo Yun can see ants crawling 50 meters away. His dynamic vision is stronger, making him a perfect match for a marksman. It would be a waste not to get a gun. Of course, it is still a pity. There is no such thing as ninjutsu in the pirate world. The usefulness of Sherry Nan in his hands seems to be that he can have far more insights than ordinary people. Advertisement. But now his Sherry Nan is only one Megatama, and I don't know what the difference will be after double Megatama, or even three Megatama, as for the above-mentioned Mangekyo Sherry Nan. Luo Yun is not so ambitious yet, and he doesn't even know how to evolve Ermagadama. Is it according to the Hokage, or is it some other way? Luo Yun is not sure yet. At this stage, Luo Yun has only one goal, which is to adapt to Sherry Nan's power and make perfect use of him. Call out. A sound of breaking through the air sounded from behind him, and the next second, Luo Yun felt like his head had been hit. Zoro. Luo Yun clenched his fist in anger and turned around. Zoro said, not me. As he spoke, Zoro raised his finger and pointed at the top of Luo Yun's head. Seeing that Zoro's face was serious and did not look like he was joking, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment and looked curiously in the direction of Zoro's finger. He saw Kuna standing on the forked branch of a big tree above his head, holding the trunk of the branch with one hand and holding her waist with the other, as cold as ever. Both Zoro and Luo Yun were shocked by Kuna's sudden appearance. Speaking of which, the relationship between the three of them could not be described as normal, let alone normal. Instead, they felt a bit like enemies. Luo Yun glanced at Zoro subconsciously, and Zoro happened to also look over. Both of them saw deep doubts in each other's eyes. Kuna, what do you want from us too? Luo Yun took a step forward and broke the silence. Advertisement. My father asked me to bring you something. Kuna said coldly. What? Zoro asked curiously. He hasn't gotten anything recently, let alone asked Koshiro to bring him anything, so it should be Luo Yun. Sure enough, Luo Yun was a little happy and said, it's finally done, have you brought it? Kuna didn't answer, but took out a bag from behind and threw it to Luo Yun below. Luo Yun didn't care so much. When he saw the bag flying towards him, he quickly caught it, opened the bag and took out something from it. This is a shuriken. Zoro looked at the thing in Luo Yun's hand in surprise. That's right, what Luo Yun is holding is a shuriken? Luo Yun made a sketch based on the shape of the shuriken in Hokage. He asked Koshiro to make a specially customized shuriken. Luo Yun made it a week ago. However, the shuriken he drew is unique and equipped with special mechanisms, so it took a long time to customize it. I just got it today. After careful inspection, he found that it was exactly the same as the shuriken he had drawn. 
The shuriken he customized was a five-pointed shuriken in the car sword, which means it has five sharp points. In addition, the small mechanisms inside are also very delicate, and the matching silk props are also very slender. Advertisement. Overall, it was almost 100% in line with his requirements. After all, you get what you pay for. 50 shurikens cost Luo Yun one gold coin. One gold coin is equivalent to 10,000 belly. This price is extremely high. At this moment, Kuna on the branch couldn't help but ask, can you still use shuriken? When she got the bag, Kuna secretly glanced at the contents of the bag, which were shurikens. On the way here, she kept wondering why Luo Yun wanted to customize the shurikens. Now seeing Luo Yun happily holding a shuriken, she was even more confused. Could it be that in addition to his strange eyes and the ability to use shurikens, this guy's hidden strength was deeper than she expected? Luo Yun was stunned for a moment when he heard Kuna's initiative to ask. This seemed to be the first time Kuna took the initiative to talk to him during a non-dual moment. I don't know how to use shuriken Luo Yun shook his head. Then why did you customize the shuriken? Kuna asked again. It is precisely because I don't know how to do it that I customized shurikens for learning, Luo Yun said, putting the shuriken into the bag. Kuna looked deeply at Luo Yun, said nothing, turned around, jumped down from the tree, and left straight away. Zoro, who didn't know when he came to the side, asked in confusion, what does she mean? You ask me? Who am I asking? I don't know either, Luo Yun also didn't explain. After a pause, Luo Yun added, but have you noticed that she doesn't seem to be as hostile to us as before? Advertisement. 19 Shuriken Technique 2. Advertisement. However, although Sherry Nan is powerful, his body is unable to utilize this power. To put it simply, he is too weak. It was said that among the flying wooden sticks, he could clearly see the movement trajectory of each wooden stick, but he couldn't avoid it. The inside of his eyes suddenly increased sharply, but his own reflexes and speed could not keep up with the increase in Sheringan's power. In order to cooperate with Sheringan's inside improvement as soon as possible, Luo Yun could only use this most ruthless method, borrowing these wooden sticks that danced without tracks to train his body's reflexes and speed. It was really miserable at the beginning, and he was ridiculed by the heartless guy Zoro, but the effect was indeed effective. From the beginning, Luo Yun could not dodge the four wooden sticks perfectly, but now he can face six wooden sticks without difficulty. By the way, is he going to get a gun? With the power of Sherry Nan, Luo Yun can see ants crawling 50 meters away. His dynamic vision is stronger, making him a perfect match for a marksman. It would be a waste not to get a gun. Of course, it is still a pity. There is no such thing as ninjutsu in the pirate world. The usefulness of Sherry Nan in his hands seems to be that he can have far more insights than ordinary people. Advertisement. But now his Sherry Nan is only one Megatama, and I don't know what the difference will be after double Megatama, or even three Megatama, as for the above-mentioned Mangekyo Sherry Nan. Luo Yun is not so ambitious yet, and he doesn't even know how to evolve Ermagatama. Is it according to the Hokage, or is it some other way? Luo Yun is not sure yet. At this stage, Luo Yun has only one goal, which is to adapt to Sheringan's power and make perfect use of him. Call out. A sound of breaking through the air sounded from behind him, and the next second, Luo Yun felt like his head had been hit. Zoro. Luo Yun clenched his fist in anger and turned around. Zoro said, not me. As he spoke, Zoro raised his finger and pointed at the top of Luo Yun's head. Seeing that Zoro's face was serious and did not look like he was joking, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment and looked curiously in the direction of Zoro's finger. He saw Kuna standing on the forked branch of a big tree above his head, holding the trunk of the branch with one hand and holding her waist with the other, as cold as ever. Both Zoro and Luo Yun were shocked by Kuna's sudden appearance. Speaking of which, the relationship between the three of them could not be described as normal, let alone normal. Instead, they felt a bit like enemies. Luo Yun glanced at Zoro subconsciously, and Zoro happened to also look over. Both of them saw deep doubts in each other's eyes. Kuna, what do you want from us too? Luo Yun took a step forward and broke the silence. Advertisement. My father asked me to bring you something. Kuna said coldly. What? Zoro asked curiously. He hasn't gotten anything recently, let alone asked Koshiro to bring him anything, so it should be Luo Yun. Sure enough, Luo Yun was a little happy and said, it's finally done, have you brought it? Kuna didn't answer, but took out a bag from behind and threw it to Luo Yun below. Luo Yun didn't care so much. When he saw the bag flying towards him, he quickly caught it, opened the bag and took out something from it. This is a shuriken. Zoro looked at the thing in Luo Yun's hand in surprise. That's right, what Luo Yun is holding is a shuriken? Luo Yun made a sketch based on the shape of the shuriken in Hokage. He asked Koshiro to make a specially customized shuriken. Luo Yun made it a week ago. However, the shuriken he drew is unique and equipped with special mechanisms, so it took a long time to customize it. I just got it today. After careful inspection, he found that it was exactly the same as the shuriken he had drawn. The shuriken he customized was a five-pointed shuriken in the car sword, which means it has five sharp points. In addition, the small mechanisms inside are also very delicate, and the matching silk props are also very slender. Advertisement. Overall, it was almost 100% in line with his requirements. After all, you get what you pay for. 50 shurikens cost Luo Yun one gold coin. One gold coin is equivalent to 10,000 belly. This price is extremely high. At this moment, Kuna on the branch couldn't help but ask, can you still use shuriken? When she got the bag, Kuna secretly glanced at the contents of the bag, which were shurikens. On the way here, she kept wondering why Luo Yun wanted to customize the shurikens. Now seeing Luo Yun happily holding a shuriken, she was even more confused. Could it be that in addition to his strange eyes and the ability to use shurikens, this guy's hidden strength was deeper than she expected? Luo Yun was stunned for a moment when he heard Kuna's initiative to ask. This seemed to be the first time Kuna took the initiative to talk to him during a non-dual moment. I don't know how to use shuriken Luo Yun shook his head. Then why did you customize the shuriken? Kuna asked again. It is precisely because I don't know how to do it that I customized shurikens for learning, Luo Yun said, putting the shuriken into the bag. Kuna looked deeply at Luo Yun, said nothing, turned around, jumped down from the tree, and left straight away. Zoro, who didn't know when he came to the side, asked in confusion, what does she mean? You ask me? Who am I asking? I don't know either, Luo Yun also didn't explain. After a pause, Luo Yun added, but have you noticed that she doesn't seem to be as hostile to us as before? Advertisement. 19 Shuriken Technique 2. Advertisement. However, although Sherry Nan is powerful, his body is unable to utilize this power. To put it simply, he is too weak. 
It was said that among the flying wooden sticks, he could clearly see the movement trajectory of each wooden stick, but he couldn't avoid it. The inside of his eyes suddenly increased sharply, but his own reflexes and speed could not keep up with the increase in Sheringan's power. In order to cooperate with Sheringan's inside improvement as soon as possible, Luo Yun could only use this most ruthless method, borrowing these wooden sticks that danced without tracks to train his body's reflexes and speed. It was really miserable at the beginning, and he was ridiculed by the heartless guy Zoro, but the effect was indeed effective. From the beginning, Luo Yun could not dodge the four wooden sticks perfectly, but now he can face six wooden sticks without difficulty. By the way, is he going to get a gun? With the power of Sherry Nan, Luo Yun can see ants crawling 50 meters away. His dynamic vision is stronger, making him a perfect match for a marksman. It would be a waste not to get a gun. Of course, it is still a pity. There is no such thing as ninjutsu in the pirate world. The usefulness of Sherry Nan in his hands seems to be that he can have far more insights than ordinary people. Advertisement. But now his Sherry Nan is only one Megatama, and I don't know what the difference will be after double Megatama, or even three Megatama, as for the above mentioned Mangekyo Sherry Nan. Luo Yun is not so ambitious yet, and he doesn't even know how to evolve Ermagadama. Is it according to the Hokage, or is it some other way? Luo Yun is not sure yet. At this stage, Luo Yun has only one goal, which is to adapt to Sheringan's power and make perfect use of him. Call out. A sound of breaking through the air sounded from behind him, and the next second, Luo Yun felt like his head had been hit. Zoro. Luo Yun clenched his fist in anger and turned around. Zoro said, not me. As he spoke, Zoro raised his finger and pointed at the top of Luo Yun's head. Seeing that Zoro's face was serious and did not look like he was joking, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment and looked curiously in the direction of Zoro's finger. He saw Kuna standing on the forked branch of a big tree above his head, holding the trunk of the branch with one hand and holding her waist with the other, as cold as ever. Both Zoro and Luo Yun were shocked by Kuna's sudden appearance. Speaking of which, the relationship between the three of them could not be described as normal, let alone normal. Instead, they felt a bit like enemies. Luo Yun glanced at Zoro subconsciously, and Zoro happened to also look over. Both of them saw deep doubts in each other's eyes. Kuna, what do you want from us too? Luo Yun took a step forward and broke the silence. Advertisement. My father asked me to bring you something. Kuna said coldly. What? Zoro asked curiously. He hasn't gotten anything recently, let alone asked Koshiro to bring him anything, so it should be Luo Yun. Sure enough, Luo Yun was a little happy and said, It's finally done, have you brought it? Kuna didn't answer, but took out a bag from behind and threw it to Luo Yun below. Luo Yun didn't care so much. When he saw the bag flying towards him, he quickly caught it, opened the bag and took out something from it. This is a shuriken. Zoro looked at the thing in Luo Yun's hand in surprise. That's right, what Luo Yun is holding is a shuriken? Luo Yun made a sketch based on the shape of the shuriken in Hokage. He asked Koshiro to make a specially customized shuriken. Luo Yun made it a week ago. However, the shuriken he drew is unique and equipped with special mechanisms, so it took a long time to customize it. I just got it today. After careful inspection, he found that it was exactly the same as the shuriken he had drawn. The shuriken he customized was a five-pointed shuriken in the car sword, which means it has five sharp points. In addition, the small mechanisms inside are also very delicate, and the matching silk props are also very slender. Advertisement. Overall, it was almost 100% in line with his requirements. After all, you get what you pay for. 50 shurikens cost Luo Yun one gold coin. One gold coin is equivalent to 10,000 belly. This price is extremely high. At this moment, Kuna on the branch couldn't help but ask, can you still use shuriken? When she got the bag, Kuna secretly glanced at the contents of the bag, which were shurikens. On the way here, she kept wondering why Luo Yun wanted to customize the shurikens. Now seeing Luo Yun happily holding a shuriken, she was even more confused. Could it be that in addition to his strange eyes and the ability to use shurikens, this guy's hidden strength was deeper than she expected? Luo Yun was stunned for a moment when he heard Kuna's initiative to ask. This seems to be the first time Kuna took the initiative to talk to him during a non-dual moment. I don't know how to use shuriken Luo Yun shook his head. Then why did you customize the shuriken? Kuna asked again. It is precisely because I don't know how to do it that I customized shurikens for learning, Luo Yun said, putting the shuriken into the bag. Kuna looked deeply at Luo Yun, said nothing, turned around, jumped down from the tree, and left straight away. Zoro, who didn't know when he came to the side, asked in confusion, what does she mean? You ask me? Who am I asking? I don't know either, Luo Yun also didn't explain. After a pause, Luo Yun added, but have you noticed that she doesn't seem to be as hostile to us as before? Advertisement. 19 Shuriken Technique 2. Advertisement. However, although Sherry Nan is powerful, his body is unable to utilize this power. To put it simply, he is too weak. It was said that among the flying wooden sticks, he could clearly see the movement trajectory of each wooden stick, but he couldn't avoid it. The inside of his eyes suddenly increased sharply, but his own reflexes and speed could not keep up with the increase in Sheringan's power. In order to cooperate with Sheringan's inside improvement as soon as possible, Luo Yun could only use this most ruthless method, borrowing these wooden sticks that danced without tracks to train his body's reflexes and speed. It was really miserable at the beginning, and he was ridiculed by the heartless guy Zoro, but the effect was indeed effective. From the beginning, Luo Yun could not dodge the four wooden sticks perfectly, but now he can face six wooden sticks without difficulty. By the way, is he going to get a gun? With the power of Sherry Nan, Luo Yun can see ants crawling 50 meters away. His dynamic vision is stronger, making him a perfect match for a marksman. It would be a waste not to get a gun. Of course, it is still a pity. There is no such thing as ninjutsu in the pirate world. The usefulness of Sherry Nan in his hands seems to be that he can have far more insights than ordinary people. Advertisement. But now his Sherry Nan is only one Megatama, and I don't know what the difference will be after double Megatama, or even three Megatama, as for the above mentioned Mangekyo Sherry Nan. Luo Yun is not so ambitious yet, and he doesn't even know how to evolve Ermagadama. Is it according to the Hokage, or is it some other way? Luo Yun is not sure yet. At this stage, Luo Yun has only one goal, which is to adapt to Sheringan's power and make perfect use of him. Call out. A sound of breaking through the air sounded from behind him, and the next second, Luo Yun felt like his head had been hit. Zoro. Luo Yun clenched his fist in anger and turned around. Zoro said, not me. As he spoke, Zoro raised his finger and pointed at the top of Luo Yun's head. 
Seeing that Zoro's face was serious and did not look like he was joking, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment and looked curiously in the direction of Zoro's finger. He saw Kuna standing on the forked branch of a big tree above his head, holding the trunk of the branch with one hand and holding her waist with the other, as cold as ever. Both Zoro and Luo Yun were shocked by Kuna's sudden appearance. Speaking of which, the relationship between the three of them could not be described as normal, let alone normal. Instead, they felt a bit like enemies. Luo Yun glanced at Zoro subconsciously, and Zoro happened to also look over. Both of them saw deep doubts in each other's eyes. Kuna, what do you want from us too? Luo Yun took a step forward and broke the silence. Advertisement. My father asked me to bring you something. Kuna said coldly. What? Zoro asked curiously. He hasn't gotten anything recently, let alone asked Koshiro to bring him anything, so it should be Luo Yun. Sure enough, Luo Yun was a little happy and said, It's finally done, have you brought it? Kuna didn't answer, but took out a bag from behind and threw it to Luo Yun below. Luo Yun didn't care so much. When he saw the bag flying towards him, he quickly caught it, opened the bag and took out something from it. This is a shuriken. Zoro looked at the thing in Luo Yun's hand in surprise. That's right, what Luo Yun is holding is a shuriken? Luo Yun made a sketch based on the shape of the shuriken in Hokage. He asked Koshiro to make a specially customized shuriken. Luo Yun made it a week ago. However, the shuriken he drew is unique and equipped with special mechanisms, so it took a long time to customize it. I just got it today. After careful inspection, he found that it was exactly the same as the shuriken he had drawn. The shuriken he customized was a five-pointed shuriken in the car sword, which means it has five sharp points. In addition, the small mechanisms inside are also very delicate, and the matching silk props are also very slender. Advertisement. Overall, it was almost 100% in line with his requirements. After all, you get what you pay for. 50 shurikens cost Luo Yun one gold coin. One gold coin is equivalent to 10,000 belly. This price is extremely high. At this moment, Kuna on the branch couldn't help but ask, can you still use shuriken? When she got the bag, Kuna secretly glanced at the contents of the bag, which were shurikens. On the way here, she kept wondering why Luo Yun wanted to customize the shurikens. Now seeing Luo Yun happily holding a shuriken, she was even more confused. Could it be that in addition to his strange eyes and the ability to use shurikens, this guy's hidden strength was deeper than she expected? Luo Yun was stunned for a moment when he heard Kuna's initiative to ask. This seemed to be the first time Kuna took the initiative to talk to him during a non-dual moment. I don't know how to use shuriken Luo Yun shook his head. Then why did you customize the shuriken? Kuna asked again. It is precisely because I don't know how to do it that I customized shurikens for learning, Luo Yun said, putting the shuriken into the bag. Kuna looked deeply at Luo Yun, said nothing, turned around, jumped down from the tree, and left straight away. Zoro, who didn't know when he came to the side, asked in confusion, what does she mean? You ask me? Who am I asking? I don't know either, Luo Yun also didn't explain. After a pause, Luo Yun added, but have you noticed that she doesn't seem to be as hostile to us as before? Advertisement. 20 Revolutionary Army? 1. Advertisement. No feeling, Zoro said without interest. His only interest in Kuna is to become stronger and defeat this woman, and he doesn't bother to care about the rest. Forget it, I'm too lazy to tell you. Luo Yun waved his hand. Talking about this with Zoro, a guy who is an idiot towards women, he is really stupid. Zoro glanced at Luo Yun unhappily, walked back to the puddle, picked up the stones that fell in, and continued his training. Here Luo Yun was focused on the shuriken he had received. He couldn't wait to take the shuriken and came to a corner of the shore. There were two big trees here, and he had already hung targets on them. He took out a shuriken from the bag, Luo Yun held it, stood in front of the target, and used it for the first time. Luo Yun was not too far away, standing ten meters away. Taking a deep breath, he turned on the sherry non, and Luo Yun's eyesight sharpened. The target that was originally ten meters away now seemed to be right in front of Luo Yun's eyes. Shuriken technique. With an extremely low shout, Luo Yun raised his hand and shot the shuriken, and the shuriken flew out with a roar. Fortunately, in the past three months of physical training, Luo Yun's physical fitness has increased a lot compared to before. In order to practice swordsmanship, he focused on training his arm strength. Otherwise, with his original physical fitness, he would only be able to throw shurikens. Call out. Advertisement. The black shuriken was like a bolt of black lightning, flying straight out and accurately hitting the target, with its sharp point deeply inserted into the wooden target. Good. Luo Yun was overjoyed when he hit the target in the first practice session. With Sherryan's insight, it's perfect to use with shurikens. It's a pity that he didn't hit the target. This is not a big problem. Being able to hit the target in the first practice was beyond Luo Yun's expectations. The next step is to practice diligently, try to hit the target, and then extend the distance, and then change from static targets to dynamic targets, and even Uchiha attack is cool way of handling shurikens. Of course, you have to do this step by step, one bite at a time. Now, try to hit the bullseye first, and then work on it slowly and step by step. Cultivation fills up Luo Yun's time every day. Get up in the morning for physical training, after breakfast, practice swordsmanship, and then sherry non-training, and in the evening do shuriken training plus physical training. This is Luo Yun's daily life. Except for eating and sleeping, Luo Yun is practicing cultivation almost all the time. Watered by sweat and time, the harvest flower slowly blooms. Autumn turns to winter, time flies by like a fleeting moment, and in a blink of an eye it feels like winter. Heavy snow covered the earth, the trees turned withered, the sky and the earth were covered in white snow, and the streams were frozen. Advertisement. In this freezing temperature of several degrees below zero, Luo Yun and Zoro were only wearing short sleeves. Due to the high intensity training, they were sweating and standing in the middle of the snow. Zoro, throw. After Luo Yun finished speaking, Zoro immediately threw out the wine bottles in his hands. The four bottles flew high into the air, showing four different trajectories. Sherry Non, with blood red eyes and black Megatama spinning, Luo Yun reached into his pocket and took out four black shurikens between his fingers again. After a 0.01 second of hesitation, Luo Yun fired the shuriken in his hand, and the four shurikens were shot out at the same time, each preparing to hit the wine bottle flying in the air. Taking, locking, and shooting, Luo Yun completed the three actions in one go, almost in an instant. Bang, bang. 
There were four muffled sounds in succession, the wine bottle exploded, and the black shuriken's majesty did not diminish, like a black light, stuck in the trunk of the big tree behind. Woko, seeing this scene, Zoro couldn't help but curse. Luo Yun is so pervert that he fired four shurikens at the same time and accurately hit four moving targets. Zoro subconsciously put himself in the position of fighting Luo Yun. He had to admit that it was very difficult to block Luo Yun's shuriken. Advertisement. Moreover, Luo Yun's shuriken is not only amazingly accurate, but also very weird. Hitting four moving targets at the same time is not Luo Yun's strongest shuriken. He knows that Luo Yun also practices a weird shuriken control skill, which is not know whether your cultivation is successful or not. Zoro suddenly discovered sadly that Luo Yun was no match for him with swordsmanship alone. Luo Yun only learned a part of Teza's swordsmanship, unlike him who only practiced swordsmanship. But if you add Sherry Nan or this shuriken technique, he is no match for Luo Yun in a real fight. The two of them entered the dojo at the same time, and now Luo Yun is actually stronger than him. Zoro is deeply shocked. The other apprentices have long been hit by Luo Yun's progress and have no idea at all, but who is Zoro? He would not be defeated so easily. Luo Yun's strength actually aroused Zoro's competitive spirit. No, the intensity of training must be increased, and the practice of three sword style must be put on the agenda. He secretly made up his mind that he must catch up with Luo Yun and not let this guy pass him. Yeah, here, Luo Yun was overjoyed when he accurately shot the four wine bottles flying in the air. Shooting four moving targets at the same time involves more than just raising your hand and shooting a scene on the surface. Achieving this means that his Sherry Nan can lock on to four moving targets at the same time, and his shuriken firing skills have greatly improved. Shooting four shurikens at the same time, and controlling the direction and power of each shuriken, the skills involved are extremely difficult. Luo Yun contacted him for more than a month, and finally fully understood it with the help of his master Koshiro. Advertisement. 21 Revolutionary Army. 2. Advertisement. At the same time, this also made Luo Yun more and more certain that Koshiro was hiding his clumsiness. It would be impossible for an ordinary Koshiro to easily guide him to complete this skill. It's a pity that One Piece is not as powerful as the cathartic feeling in fantasy novels. In the world of One Piece, if you insist on hiding and not showing your power, you will not know how strong the opponent is. For example, Rayleigh has been hiding in the Sabayati archipelago for many years, but few people have discovered that he is the right arm of the famous pirate King Roger, Pluton Rayleigh. They only think that he is an old coator who loves gambling and drinking. It is also possible that he is too weak and cannot detect the aura of a strong person. Zoro immediately ran to the training area after helping Luo Yun. He felt Luo Yun's rapid progress, which further stimulated Zoro's competitiveness and motivation. Luo Yun tied a wooden stick with four ropes and continued to practice. Under the cold wind, the wooden stick blew with the wind. Luo Yun shot out of his hand and hit the target accurately again. The practice has continued, and practice makes perfect when shooting four moving targets at the same time. Only then can Luo Yun truly master it. Tread. There was a rush of footsteps, and an apprentice wearing a Taoist robe ran out of the bushes. He looked overjoyed when he saw Luo Yun and Zoro. Before he could stop, he waved and shouted, Luo Yun, Zoro. When they heard someone calling themselves, Luo Yun and Zoro stopped at the same time and followed the sound to see an apprentice wearing a Taoist robe running towards them. Advertisement. Luo Yun stopped Shuriken, looked at Ike who was running anxiously, and asked, What happened? Apprentice Ike stopped in front of Luo Yun, supported his knees with his hands, bent over and took a few deep breaths, licked his lower lips with a dry mouth and said, The master of the dojo calls you two over. Why are you calling us over? Zoro walked over and asked in confusion. I don't know anymore, you just want me to call you. Ike shook his head and said. After a pause, Ike said again, it seems to be something about borrowing food. Borrowing food. Zoro frowned slightly and said, borrowing food has happened a lot recently. Why did you call us two today? This Hind Dojo is the best swordsmanship dojo in more than a dozen villages in several towns around, so many people come to learn the art. The tuition fees Koshiro charges are neither high nor low. Luo Yun and Zoro did not charge tuition fees. They were different from other apprentices. They were not just apprentices, but disciples who taught by words and deeds. Therefore, this Hind Dojo is considered wealthy in the surrounding areas. Every winter, some poor refugees come to his Hind Dojo to borrow food. Koshiro will always give food to anyone who comes. He said it was a loan, but Koshiro never kept track of who borrowed food from whom, and didn't care whether the other party repaid it. Advertisement. Therefore, Koshiro is known as the good guy in the neighborhood. When it comes to borrowing food directly, there are usually dedicated adult apprentices. Why did they call two of them today? Not only Zoro was puzzled, but Luo Yun was also very puzzled. Okay, let's forget about this for now. We'll find out when we get back, Luo Yun said. All right. The two immediately packed up, put on their clothes, and followed Ike and the others towards the dojo. The creek where Luo Yun and Zoro often practice is in Yamanaka, a mountain behind the dojo. It is not very close to the dojo, and it takes a while for the three of them to walk back. On the way, Luo Yun asked Ike, Ike, did any strange people come to the dojo today? Ike thought for a moment and said, there are no strange people in the dojo. It's just that a group of men in black robes checked into the only hotel in the village last night. The man in black robe. Yes, that guy Jay saw a group of four or five people when he went to Kaido from home last night. They were all wearing black robes. You couldn't even see their faces. Ike said a little scared, as if he saw it. Zoro frowned and said, This is a bit strange. All the people in black robes in broad daylight seem to be deliberately not wanting others to see them. Advertisement. Luo Yun glanced at Zoro in surprise. The guy who likes to use swords to solve problems is rarely able to analyze. But Zoro was right. He didn't dare to see anyone in broad daylight. Either they were doing something shameful, or they had an unusual status and couldn't be seen in the light. No matter what the possibility is, it shows one problem. This group of people is not simple. A group of extraordinary people appear in a small village like Shimatsuki village, which is strange no matter how you look at it. Does the matter of borrowing food have anything to do with these men in black robes? An idea suddenly flashed through Luo Yun's mind. The more Luo Yun thought about it, the more likely it was that Luo Yun thought it was possible. Suddenly, two strange things happened at the same time, and the probability of a connection between them was quite high. Luo Yun did not tell Zoro. 
One reason was that his guesses were not necessarily correct. The other reason was that it seemed of no use. He would wait and see the situation first. Back at the dojo, Luo Yun and the other three felt strange that there was no one in the training ground next to the dojo. It's time for afternoon practice now. Normally everyone is training in full swing at the training ground. Why is there no one there? Everyone was there when I left. I touched his head and looked confused. Zoro glanced at Luo Yun subconsciously and saw Luo Yun frowning. Even Luo Yun felt something was wrong. Advertisement. 21 Revolutionary Army. 2. Advertisement. At the same time, this also made Luo Yun more and more certain that Koshiro was hiding his clumsiness. It would be impossible for an ordinary Koshiro to easily guide him to complete this skill. It's a pity that One Piece is not as powerful as the cathartic feeling in fantasy novels. In the world of One Piece, if you insist on hiding and not showing your power, you will not know how strong the opponent is. For example, Rayleigh has been hiding in the Sabayati archipelago for many years, but few people have discovered that he is the right arm of the famous pirate King Roger, Pluton Rayleigh. They only think that he is an old coator who loves gambling and drinking. It is also possible that he is too weak and cannot detect the aura of a strong person. Zoro immediately ran to the training area after helping Luo Yun. He felt Luo Yun's rapid progress, which further stimulated Zoro's competitiveness and motivation. Luo Yun tied a wooden stick with four ropes and continued to practice. Under the cold wind, the wooden stick blew with the wind. Luo Yun shot out of his hand and hit the target accurately again. The practice has continued, and practice makes perfect when shooting four moving targets at the same time. Only then can Luo Yun truly master it. Tread. There was a rush of footsteps, and an apprentice wearing a Taoist robe ran out of the bushes. He looked overjoyed when he saw Luo Yun and Zoro. Before he could stop, he waved and shouted, Luo Yun, Zoro. When they heard someone calling themselves, Luo Yun and Zoro stopped at the same time and followed the sound to see an apprentice wearing a Taoist robe running towards them. Advertisement. Luo Yun stopped Shuriken, looked at Ike who was running anxiously, and asked, What happened? Apprentice Ike stopped in front of Luo Yun, supported his knees with his hands, bent over and took a few deep breaths, licked his lower lips with a dry mouth and said, The master of the dojo calls you two over. Why are you calling us over? Zoro walked over and asked in confusion. I don't know anymore, you just want me to call you. Ike shook his head and said. After a pause, Ike said again, it seems to be something about borrowing food. Borrowing food. Zoro frowned slightly and said, Borrowing food has happened a lot recently. Why did you call us two today? This Hind Dojo is the best swordsmanship dojo in more than a dozen villages in several towns around, so many people come to learn the art. The tuition fees Koshiro charges are neither high nor low. Luo Yun and Zoro did not charge tuition fees. They were different from other apprentices. They were not just apprentices, but disciples who taught by words and deeds. Therefore, this Hind Dojo is considered wealthy in the surrounding areas. Every winter, some poor refugees come to this Hind Dojo to borrow food. Koshiro will always give food to anyone who comes. He said it was alone, but Koshiro never kept track of who borrowed food from whom, and didn't care whether the other party repaid it. Advertisement. Therefore, Koshiro is known as the good guy in the neighborhood. When it comes to borrowing food directly, there are usually dedicated adult apprentices. Why did they call two of them today? Not only Zoro was puzzled, but Luo Yun was also very puzzled. Okay, let's forget about this for now. We'll find out when we get back, Luo Yun said. All right. The two immediately packed up, put on their clothes, and followed Ike and the others towards the dojo. The creek where Luo Yun and Zoro often practice is in Yamanaka, a mountain behind the dojo. It is not very close to the dojo, and it takes a while for the three of them to walk back. On the way, Luo Yun asked Ike, Ike, did any strange people come to the dojo today? Ike thought for a moment and said, there are no strange people in the dojo. It's just that a group of men in black robes checked into the only hotel in the village last night. The man in black robe? Yes, that guy Jay saw a group of four or five people when he went to Kaido from home last night. They were all wearing black robes. You couldn't even see their faces. Ike said a little scared, as if he saw it. Zoro frowned and said, This is a bit strange. All the people in black robes in broad daylight seem to be deliberately not wanting others to see them. Advertisement. Luo Yun glanced at Zoro in surprise. The guy who likes to use swords to solve problems is rarely able to analyze. But Zoro was right. He didn't dare to see anyone in broad daylight, either they were doing something shameful, or they had an unusual status and couldn't be seen in the light. No matter what the possibility is, it shows one problem, this group of people is not simple. A group of extraordinary people appear in a small village like Shimatsuki village, which is strange no matter how you look at it. Does the matter of borrowing food have anything to do with these men in black robes? An idea suddenly flashed through Luo Yun's mind. The more Luo Yun thought about it, the more likely it was that Luo Yun thought it was possible. Suddenly, two strange things happened at the same time, and the probability of a connection between them was quite high. Luo Yun did not tell Zoro. One reason was that his guesses were not necessarily correct. The other reason was that it seemed of no use. He would wait and see the situation first. Back at the dojo, Luo Yun and the other three felt strange that there was no one in the training ground next to the dojo. It's time for afternoon practice now. Normally everyone is training in full swing at the training ground. Why is there no one there? Everyone was there when I left. I touched his head and looked confused. Zoro glanced at Luo Yun subconsciously and saw Luo Yun frowning. Even Luo Yun felt something was wrong. 23 Koshiro vs Dragon 2. Advertisement. Is it really amazing? Surprised, but Long didn't show it. The other party was hidden in East Blue, so naturally there was something unspeakable. If he revealed it, he might anger the other party. Koshiro poured another cup of tea for everyone and said slowly, I don't know how much food our distinguished guests need. Let me see if the food in the dojo is enough. The dragon did not look back, but turned to look at Ivankov, who had an unusually large head. Ivankov gestured and said Kaido, we need 10 days worth of food for 100 people. Koshiro thought for a while and then said, food is not a problem, but there is not so much food in the dojo now, and it will take some time to raise it. About how long? Ivankov asked. One day is enough, we can raise money tomorrow, Koshiro replied. There are a large number of people in the dojo. Although they are all children, the daily high-intensity training requires more food than adults. The dojo stores a large amount of food at any time. 
However, there were too many aids to the poor during this period, and the dojo consumed too much food, leaving little food in reserve. Koshiro was thinking of buying a lot of food. Advertisement. In addition, these people have exactly what they need, and they will not be targeted by interested people. Long immediately thanked him and said, Thank you so much to the host. We will remember this friendship forever. It's just a small effort, Koshiro said with a squinted smile. I can't do much for your great cause, I can only do my little bit. A flash of surprise flashed across Long's face. Did the other party already know their identities? How did they know it? They thought they didn't leak the slightest trace. How could the master in front of them still know their identity? After hesitating in his heart, Long did not express his doubts. It was not clear whether the other party was sure or just guessing and testing, but if he asked, it would be equivalent to confirming their identity. Thank you very much. After saying thanks, Long stood up and said goodbye. In this case, we won't bother you too much. We will come to pick up the food the day after tomorrow. Koshiro suddenly shook his head and refused. No, I will send two disciples to you. Your clothes are not suitable for staying in the village. The day after tomorrow, I will ask my disciples to bring the food to the abandoned port in the mountains behind Shimatsuki village. You can just go there in advance to meet us. The dragon originally meant that they would take it themselves, but Koshiro was right. Their outfits had already caused quite a commotion in the village, and it was really not good to stay here for one more night. Advertisement. He nodded immediately and said, Okay, we will sail the boat there and stop it in the evening, and wait for the disciples of the farm owner to come to deliver food tomorrow night. Koshiro then stood up and sent Long and others away. As soon as he went out, he met Luo Yun and Zoro who came in. This is the scene now? Zoro and Luo Yun stood there dumbly. Zoro was frightened by Ivankov's big face, and Luo Yun was also frightened by Ivankov's face, but it was not the huge face itself, but Ivankov's status as a revolutionary soldier. The revolutionary army actually appeared in Ishin Dojo? Not yet an ordinary revolutionary army. Ivankov, the demon king, has been following Long since very early on. He is a senior cutter of the revolutionary army and a good friend of Long. At this time, the revolutionary army should not have extended its tentacles into the Grand Line, and Ivankov should not yet be the commander of the G, Grand Line, army. There is only one person these five men in black robes vaguely respect who can keep Ivankov by their side. Leader of the revolutionary army, Monkey.D.Dragon, the world's most vicious criminal and the father of the protagonist Monkey.D. Luffy, this is a well-deserved and famous big man, a big man who will make the whole world tremble if he stumps his feet. Advertisement. Of course, the current dragons are not that famous yet. King Cobra of Alabasta did not raise the dangers of the Revolutionary Army at the World Summit. The Revolutionary Army has not yet completely entered the eyes of the kings of the major franchise countries in the world, nor has it received the utmost attention from the world government. The current Revolutionary Army should only be in the development stage. But it was enough to shock Luo Yun. This is a dragon. I don't know how strong the dragon is now. Anyway, ten years from now, the dragon will be at the four emperor's admiral level. I don't know how strong it is. Luo Yun feels that he is extremely lucky. Traveling through the world of One Piece, he first became a disciple of Koshiro, and now he meets Long, the leader of the Revolutionary Army. No, you have to hold on. Isn't it just a dragon? He has high standards, but in the world of One Piece, is there anyone who is more top-notch than a dragon? Seeing Zoro and Luo Yun coming in, Koshiro introduced, These are my disciples Luo Yun and Zoro. They will deliver food to you tomorrow. Sending food. Luo Yun's eyes flashed. Didn't he mean to borrow food? Why did it change to sending food, or is Jack trying to trick me? Zoro looked unscrupulously at Ivankov's slapped face that even the black robe could not completely cover. How could someone have such a big face? Speaking of which, that guy Luo Yun also had a pair of bloody eyes. As Luo Yun said, there are so many strange guys on the sea, which is really interesting. What kind of people are Long and others? They can see the difference between Luo Yun and Zoro at a glance. They are stronger than the apprentices they met before. Advertisement. 24 The world's nobles being targeted 1. Advertisement. Sure enough, a great teacher makes a great disciple, Ivankov complimented politely. Koshiro didn't reply, but the slightly curved corners of his mouth showed that Koshiro still took advantage of these words. Saying goodbye to Koshiro, Long left directly with Ivankov and others. When passing by Luo Yun, Luo Yun looked up. The face was familiar, slightly menacing, with a red square scar on the left side of his face. It was indeed a dragon. Luo Yun was secretly shocked as he watched Long and his group disappear until their backs disappeared outside the door. Early the next morning, Koshiro stood in the courtyard and gave instructions to Luo Yun and Zoro. Luo Yun, Zoro, you two take four apprentices to the town to buy food. Wait, master, I don't want to go with Zoro. Why? Advertisement. Zoro is a road addict. Last time I came with Zoro, he almost got lost when we passed through the town. Asshole, Luo Yun, I am not. In that case, that's fine. Zoro doesn't have to go. Kuna, you go with Luo Yun. Luo Yun's face changed wildly, and he quickly said, Well, master, I think it's okay for Zoro to get lost, or... But Koshiro had already turned around and entered the room and could not hear Luo Yun's words. Why? Looking at the closed door, Luo Yun sighed deeply, Kuna followed, it would be better for Zoro to be a road idiot. On the side, Zoro saw Luo Yun sighing and laughing with gloating. Calling you disgusted, Kuna will follow you now to see what you do. Although he didn't want to, it was impossible to refuse, so Luo Yun had no choice but to accept his fate and called two apprentices aged 16 or 17, and two others about the same age as him, plus Kuna, a group of six people, riding in three carriages respectively. Leave the village and head to the nearest town. On the way, Luo Yun and Kuna sat on the first carriage and led the way. They sat on both sides of the carriage and neither spoke. Of course Luo Yun didn't want to sit with Kuna. This woman was very prejudiced against him. If they sat together, she might draw her sword and chop him at some point. Advertisement. But when they set off, the other four people didn't want to be with the aloof Kuna. The four people discussed and sold Luo Yun. Looking at the four people snickering behind him, Luo Yun raised a contemptuous finger with his backhand, a group of guys who betrayed their teammates at critical moments. He glanced sideways at Kuna, who was sitting cross-legged, leaning against the carriage with her back, holding her sword in both hands, looking at the pastoral scenery passing by. Luo Yun felt that being so silent was a bit uncomfortable. He coughed twice and broke the silence, um, I'm sorry about the last duel. It's okay, you hurt me, and I hurt you too, so it's okay, Kuna looked away and said calmly. A month ago, the two had a duel, and in the end, Luo Yun naturally lost. 
However, Luo Yun was not easily defeated. After Koshiro's words, Luo Yun used Sherry Nan. Luo Yun defeated Kona with half a move. Although it was a duel, the two fought a bit apart from the duel in the end. Even with wooden swords, both sides were still injured. Kona was cut in the arm by Luo Yun, and Luo Yun was deliberately chopped in the chest. He lay in bed for two days before getting off the ground. After a while, the two fell silent again. Kona's cold personality and their relationship made Luo Yun really didn't know what to say, but Kona didn't speak at all. Suddenly, Kona took the initiative to talk to Luo Yun for the first time. Why didn't you use your shuriken in the last duel? Do you think I'm not worthy? Of course not. Luo Yun quickly waved his hand and explained, At that time, I hadn't mastered the shuriken yet. I could deal with ordinary people, but I couldn't deal with a master of swordsmanship like you. It was of little use. Advertisement. Although Kona didn't react to this little flattery, her slightly softened expression showed that it was still useful. The old saying is indeed true, no one likes to hear such good words. Luo Yun added, By the way, the last move you used in the last duel, Falling Wind Slash, was very powerful. If you had a real sword in your hand, I might not be able to block it. This is not flattery, Kona's Falling Wind Slash is really strong. He used his strongest sword at that time, but it was still broken by Kona. Speaking of Kendo, Kona finally became interested and looked over for the first time. Your last move, Flowing Light Slash, is also very strong. I think you didn't perfect that move, and it was a bit choppy when you used it. Luo Yun said, yes, it was not perfected at that time and there was no way. I originally planned to perfect it and then use it, but at that time, you were forced to do nothing. If you don't use that trick, you will definitely lose. Suddenly, without warning, Luo Yun and Kona started talking about Kendo issues. Oh my god, Luo Yun can actually talk to the aloof queen. You must be lying. I from behind was stunned when he saw this scene. The other three people were also in disbelief. Jess rubbed his eyes and said in disbelief, Isn't the relationship between Luo Yun and Kona very bad? It doesn't look bad at all. Luo Yun is so awesome, he can even talk to Kona, the aloof queen of Iceberg. One apprentice was shocked and admired at the same time. Kona is a famous Iceberg. There are very few people in the dojo who can speak to Kona. Luo Yun is the first one who can talk to Kona like this. Advertisement. 24 The world's nobles being targeted 1. Advertisement. Sure enough, a great teacher makes a great disciple, Ivankov complimented politely. Koshiro didn't reply, but the slightly curved corners of his mouth showed that Koshiro still took advantage of these words. Saying goodbye to Koshiro, Long left directly with Ivankov and others. When passing by Luo Yun, Luo Yun looked up. The face was familiar, slightly menacing, with a red square scar on the left side of his face. It was indeed a dragon. Luo Yun was secretly shocked as he watched Long and his group disappear until their backs disappeared outside the door. Early the next morning, Koshiro stood in the courtyard and gave instructions to Luo Yun and Zoro. Luo Yun, Zoro, you two take four apprentices to the town to buy food. Wait, master, I don't want to go with Zoro. Why? Advertisement. Zoro is a road addict. Last time I came with Zoro, he almost got lost when we passed through the town. Asshole, Luo Yun, I am not. In that case, that's fine. Zoro doesn't have to go. Kona, you go with Luo Yun. Luo Yun's face changed wildly, and he quickly said, Well, master, I think it's okay for Zoro to get lost, or... But Koshiro had already turned around and entered the room and could not hear Luo Yun's words. Why? Looking at the closed door, Luo Yun sighed deeply. Kona followed, it would be better for Zoro to be a road idiot. On the side, Zoro saw Luo Yun sighing and laughing with gloating. Calling you disgusted, Kona will follow you now to see what you do. Although he didn't want to, it was impossible to refuse, so Luo Yun had no choice but to accept his fate and called two apprentices aged 16 or 17, and two others about the same age as him, plus Kona, a group of six people, riding in three carriages respectively. Leave the village and head to the nearest town. On the way, Luo Yun and Kona sat on the first carriage and led the way. They sat on both sides of the carriage and neither spoke. Of course Luo Yun didn't want to sit with Kona. This woman was very prejudiced against him. If they sat together, she might draw her sword and chop him at some point. Advertisement. But when they set off, the other four people didn't want to be with the aloof Kona. The four people discussed and sold Luo Yun. Looking at the four people snickering behind him, Luo Yun raised a contemptuous finger with his backhand, a group of guys who betrayed their teammates at critical moments. He glanced sideways at Kona, who was sitting cross-legged, leaning against the carriage with her back, holding her sword in both hands, looking at the pastoral scenery passing by. Luo Yun felt that being so silent was a bit uncomfortable. He coughed twice and broke the silence, um, I'm sorry about the last duel. It's okay, you hurt me, and I hurt you too, so it's okay, Kona looked away and said calmly. A month ago, the two had a duel, and in the end, Luo Yun naturally lost. However, Luo Yun was not easily defeated. After Koshiro's words, Luo Yun used Sherry Nan. Luo Yun defeated Kona with half a move. Although it was a duel, the two fought a bit apart from the duel in the end. Even with wooden swords, both sides were still injured. Kona was cut in the arm by Luo Yun, and Luo Yun was deliberately chopped in the chest. He lay in bed for two days before getting off the ground. After a while, the two fell silent again. Kona's cold personality and their relationship made Luo Yun really didn't know what to say, but Kona didn't speak at all. Suddenly, Kona took the initiative to talk to Luo Yun for the first time. Why didn't you use your shuriken in the last duel? Do you think I'm not worthy? Of course not. Luo Yun quickly waved his hand and explained, at that time, I hadn't mastered the shuriken yet. I could deal with ordinary people, but I couldn't deal with a master of swordsmanship like you. It was of little use. Advertisement. Although Kona didn't react to this little flattery, her slightly softened expression showed that it was still useful. The old saying is indeed true, no one likes to hear such good words. Luo Yun added, by the way, the last move you used in the last duel, Falling Wind Slash, was very powerful. If you had a real sword in your hand, I might not be able to block it. This is not flattery, Kona's Falling Wind Slash is really strong. He used his strongest sword at that time, but it was still broken by Kona. 
Speaking of Kendo, Kuna finally became interested and looked over for the first time. Your last move, Flowing Light Slash, is also very strong. I think you didn't perfect that move, and it was a bit choppy when you used it. Luo Yun said, yes, it was not perfected at that time and there was no way. I originally planned to perfect it and then use it, but at that time, you were forced to do nothing. If you don't use that trick, you will definitely lose. Suddenly, without warning, Luo Yun and Kuna started talking about Kendo issues. Oh my god, Luo Yun can actually talk to the aloof queen. You must be lying. Ike from behind was stunned when he saw this scene. The other three people were also in disbelief. Jess rubbed his eyes and said in disbelief, Isn't the relationship between Luo Yun and Kuna very bad? It doesn't look bad at all. Luo Yun is so awesome, he can even talk to Kuna, the aloof queen of Iceberg. One apprentice was shocked and admired at the same time. Kuna is a famous Iceberg. There are very few people in the dojo who can speak to Kuna. Luo Yun is the first one who can talk to Kuna like this. Advertisement. 24 The world's nobles being targeted 1. Advertisement. Sure enough, a great teacher makes a great disciple. Ivankov complimented politely. Koshiro didn't reply, but the slightly curved corners of his mouth showed that Koshiro still took advantage of these words. Saying goodbye to Koshiro, Long left directly with Ivankov and others. When passing by Luo Yun, Luo Yun looked up. The face was familiar, slightly menacing, with a red square scar on the left side of his face. It was indeed a dragon. Luo Yun was secretly shocked as he watched Long and his group disappear until their backs disappeared outside the door. Early the next morning, Koshiro stood in the courtyard and gave instructions to Luo Yun and Zoro. Luo Yun, Zoro, you two take four apprentices to the town to buy food. Wait, master, I don't want to go with Zoro. Why? Advertisement. Zoro is a road addict. Last time I came with Zoro, he almost got lost when we passed through the town. Asshole, Luo Yun, I am not. In that case, that's fine. Zoro doesn't have to go. Kuna, you go with Luo Yun. Luo Yun's face changed wildly, and he quickly said, Well, master, I think it's okay for Zoro to get lost, or... But Koshiro had already turned around and entered the room and could not hear Luo Yun's words. Why? Looking at the closed door, Luo Yun sighed deeply. Kuna followed, it would be better for Zoro to be a road idiot. On the side, Zoro saw Luo Yun sighing and laughing with gloating. Calling you disgusted, Kuna will follow you now to see what you do. Although he didn't want to, it was impossible to refuse, so Luo Yun had no choice but to accept his fate and called two apprentices aged 16 or 17, and two others about the same age as him, plus Kuna, a group of six people, riding in three carriages respectively. Leave the village and head to the nearest town. On the way, Luo Yun and Kuna sat on the first carriage and led the way. They sat on both sides of the carriage and neither spoke. Of course Luo Yun didn't want to sit with Kuna. This woman was very prejudiced against him. If they sat together, she might draw her sword and chop him at some point. Advertisement. But when they set off, the other four people didn't want to be with the aloof Kuna. The four people discussed and sold Luo Yun. Looking at the four people snickering behind him, Luo Yun raised a contemptuous finger with his backhand, a group of guys who betrayed their teammates at critical moments. He glanced sideways at Kuna, who was sitting cross-legged, leaning against the carriage with her back, holding her sword in both hands, looking at the pastoral scenery passing by. Luo Yun felt that being so silent was a bit uncomfortable. He coughed twice and broke the silence, um, I'm sorry about the last duel. It's okay, you hurt me, and I hurt you too, so it's okay, Kuna looked away and said calmly. A month ago, the two had a duel, and in the end, Luo Yun naturally lost. However, Luo Yun was not easily defeated. After Koshiro's words, Luo Yun used Sherry Nan. Luo Yun defeated Kuna with half a move. Although it was a duel, the two fought a bit apart from the duel in the end. Even with wooden swords, both sides were still injured. Kuna was cut in the arm by Luo Yun, and Luo Yun was deliberately chopped in the chest. He lay in bed for two days before getting off the ground. After a while, the two fell silent again. Kuna's cold personality and their relationship made Luo Yun really didn't know what to say, but Kuna didn't speak at all. Suddenly, Kuna took the initiative to talk to Luo Yun for the first time. Why didn't you use your shuriken in the last duel? Do you think I'm not worthy? Of course not. Luo Yun quickly waved his hand and explained, at that time, I hadn't mastered the shuriken yet. I could deal with ordinary people, but I couldn't deal with a master of swordsmanship like you. It was of little use. Advertisement. Although Kuna didn't react to this little flattery, her slightly softened expression showed that it was still useful. The old saying is indeed true, no one likes to hear such good words. Luo Yun added, by the way, the last move you used in the last duel, falling wind slash, was very powerful. If you had a real sword in your hand, I might not be able to block it. This is not flattery, Kuna's falling wind slash is really strong. He used his strongest sword at that time, but it was still broken by Kuna. Speaking of Kendo, Kuna finally became interested and looked over for the first time. Your last move, Flowing Light Slash, is also very strong. I think you didn't perfect that move, and it was a bit choppy when you used it. Luo Yun said, yes, it was not perfected at that time and there was no way. I originally planned to perfect it and then use it, but at that time, you were forced to do nothing. If you don't use that trick, you will definitely lose. Suddenly, without warning, Luo Yun and Kuna started talking about Kendo issues. Oh my god, Luo Yun can actually talk to the aloof queen. You must be lying. I from behind was stunned when he saw this scene. The other three people were also in disbelief. Jess rubbed his eyes and said in disbelief, Isn't the relationship between Luo Yun and Kuna very bad? It doesn't look bad at all. Luo Yun is so awesome, he can even talk to Kuna, the aloof queen of Iceberg. One apprentice was shocked and admired at the same time. Kuna is a famous Iceberg. There are very few people in the dojo who can speak to Kuna. Luo Yun is the first one who can talk to Kuna like this. Advertisement. 25 The world's nobles being targeted too. Advertisement. The conversation between Luo Yun and Kuna was all about swordsmanship. Even so, the relationship between Luo Yun and Kuna's sword has eased a lot. In the blink of an eye, it was noon and everyone came to the town. The town today was particularly deserted. There were a lot fewer vendors on both sides, many shops were closed, and only a few shops were still open. Everyone was confused and a little strange. Luo Yun was equally surprised. The streets were deserted, the shops were closed, and the vendors setting up stalls were missing. But although the streets were deserted, they were very neat, and there was no trace of chaos. It didn't look like something had happened. What's going on? There's no one on the road. Did something happen? It's so deserted. I have a bad feeling. 
Hearing what Jess said next to him, Luo Yun frowned and scolded, Don't talk nonsense. Any bad premonitions are false. If the store is open, it means nothing happened. Advertisement. No matter what happens, it's none of our business. We're just here to buy food. We'll leave after buying the food. We won't be able to go shopping as mentioned above. Originally, none of them objected to the cancellation of the shopping trip, but under the current circumstances, they were not in the mood to go shopping. Several people went straight to the food store. Fortunately, the door was still open. Yuxin Dojo was a regular customer of the food store. The two oldest apprentices had come to buy food many times. The boss recognized them as apprentices from his hind dojo at a glance and welcomed them warmly. Boss, we need to buy 6,000 kilograms of grain this time. After a few casual words, Luo Yun got to the point. So many. The boss was startled. The boss asked out of curiosity, usually Yishin Dojo buys a lot of grain, but it's only 2 to 3,000 caddies. Even in winter, it's 4 to 5,000 caddies. This time it's 6,000 caddies. It's never happened before. Luo Yun smiled and said, this winter is colder than in previous years. Many places on the way from the village to the town are frozen. The road is difficult and unsafe, so I might as well buy more at once and save more money. That's true. The boss nodded and didn't ask any more questions. Yuxin Dojo always buys a lot of food. It's normal to buy more if the roads are not good. Boss, this is the money, you order it. After counting the money and confirming that the amount was correct, the boss immediately ordered the guys to load the truck. Jack and the four drove the carriage to the warehouse behind to watch. Advertisement. Luo Yun and the boss were the only ones left in the front shop, as well as Kona who was sitting next to him without saying anything. Looking at the deserted streets outside through the window, Luo Yun asked, Boss, what happened in the town? Even in winter, it shouldn't be so deserted. It's not because the higher UPS have implemented a ban and don't allow everyone to come out. There are fewer people in winter, and no one comes to the surrounding villages during the cold weather. This way, there are even fewer people, and the business is not even half of what it used to be. The boss sighed and complained. Stand up. Luo Yun asked curiously, why is the ban suddenly implemented? The boss's voice suddenly dropped and he whispered, I heard that the world's nobles are coming to the kingdom of Goa next to us, and they will pass by us, so the surrounding area is under martial law. The marine military base west of the town has been on the highest alert since a week ago, and more than 10 marine warships have left the base to clean up pirates in the surrounding waters. Luo Yun's eyes flashed, and he was calm on the surface, but he was really surprised in his heart. One is the celestial dragons, the world's nobles. These guys who are not even worthy of trash appear in East Blue, and the other is that the kingdom of Goa where Luffy is located is not far from Shimatsuki village. That said, Sabo hasn't been bombarded by the celestial dragons yet, and the dragons haven't saved Sabo yet. According to the passage of time, the terminal was not sure to be burned tonight. Luffy and Ace's lives were hanging by a thread and they were almost burned to death. The dragon will rush to the kingdom of Goa tonight and meet Sabo. Tomorrow, Sabo will go to sea and be bombarded, and the dragon will rescue Sabo. Tomorrow night they will send food to Long and others, and Long will definitely be there at that time, which means that Long will appear on the ship with Sabo before tomorrow night. Advertisement. That's interesting. The three Luffy brothers did not meet Luffy and Ace, but they met Sabo first. However, if Goa Kingdom is not far from Shimatsuki Village, if you have a chance, would you like to visit Goa Kingdom? You can also meet Luffy and Ace at this time, and maybe you can do something. Of course, this is a bit far away. Luo Yun will not choose to go to sea before he has certain strength to protect himself. Suddenly a bright light flashed in the mind of Luo Yun, who was thinking wildly. The world's noble celestial dragons appeared in East Blue, and the dragons and their group also happened to appear in East Blue. How could it be such a coincidence? The purpose is to overthrow the unequal rule of the celestial dragons that dominate the world government. The world government is not the biggest enemy of the revolutionary army. The real enemy is the celestial dragons that dominate the century government. Celestial dragons, revolutionary army. The two irreconcilable parties are right in front of us now. If something doesn't happen, Luo Yun won't believe it. Join said that the target of the revolutionary army is this lone celestial dragons. At this time, Dragon and Ivankov and other senior cotters of the revolutionary army appear here, which makes sense. Luo Yun didn't believe that a group of senior leaders of the revolutionary army appeared in the sea at this time just to wander around. The revolutionary army is targeting the head of this celestial dragons. If this is the case, it will definitely be a big event that shocks the world. Advertisement. 26 Seriously Injured Girl. Advertisement. Inside the store, Luo Yun and the shop owner chatted happily, like two friends who had never known each other. Kuna, who was sitting quietly on a chair next to her, watched the scene curiously. Luo Yun chatted about this and that with the shop owner, chatting all over the place. He doesn't look like a teenage boy, but rather like a weather-beaten adult, whose knowledge and experience are totally inconsistent with his age. Moreover, the words that occasionally come out of his mouth have never been heard before, but they are very interesting. The origin of Luo Yun has never been heard from him, including his experience before joining the dojo. He has never heard him mention it, as if it was shrouded in a thick fog. But even his father said that Luo Yun has a psychological maturity far beyond that of his peers. Not only is he mature in age, but Luo Yun's every move has a maturity that is far different from that of a child. What did he go through before joining the dojo? And what kind of experience can make Luo Yun have a maturity comparable to an adult at this age? Kona was curious about this. Luo Yun was talking to his boss. He had worked in sales in his previous life and it was extremely easy to deal with people. Suddenly, he glanced sideways and noticed Kona looking at him. Subconsciously, my heart tightened. There was something wrong with Kona's eyes. This woman wasn't thinking about how to teach her a lesson. Just then, Jess and Ike came out of the back hall and said the food was packed. Advertisement. The town is currently enforcing a ban and it is not advisable to stay too long. Luo Yun said goodbye to the boss immediately, drove a carriage with a few people to leave the shop, and walked along the main road to Shimatsuki village. After leaving the store, it happened to be noon and there were already two or three people on the road, but the restaurants on both sides of the road were not open. Fortunately, everyone brought dry food, and we agreed to leave the town and find a quiet place to heat it up and eat it. This made Luo Yun truly understand the power of the celestial dragons. Just traveling there would be such a huge battle, and the surrounding towns would be put under martial law when passing nearby. What a scene it would be if they came. Celestial dragons? It is indeed the garbage of the world, standing at the top of the world, exploiting the world wantonly in the name of the creator, absorbing the blood of countless people for their enjoyment. 
Hearing Luo Yun's whisper, Kuna asked curiously, what are celestial dragons? Facing Kuna's sudden question, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment and explained, they are the world nobles mentioned by the boss before, also called celestial dragons. They are the descendants of the 20 kings who established the world government 800 years ago. They are known as descendants of the creator be proud of yourself and think you are noble. Above the whole world, they can dominate the lives of creatures all over the world at will. In their consciousness, the world exists because of them, so the whole world should be free to them to take whatever they want. Isn't this just garbage? Kuna said subconsciously. Luo Yun was startled for a moment, then laughed the next moment. Advertisement. Haha, <laughs> you are right, these guys are indeed garbage, and they are the biggest garbage in the world. Kuna curled her lips, said nothing, and looked aside. When Kuna didn't answer, Luo Yun didn't continue, and an Xian drove the carriage on the street. There were not many people in the town, and the roads were smooth and there were no traffic jams. Everyone soon arrived at the outskirts of the town and drove onto the road to Shimatsuki village. Almost a mile away from the town, everyone rested under a hillside in the lee of the wind. Three carriages formed a group to block the wind. Everyone sat in the middle and lit a fire. They took out the dry food they brought with them and roasted it to eat. Several people were chatting while eating, but Kuna did not join them and sat quietly beside them eating. Here, just warm it. Looking at the water bag handed over by Luo Yun, Kuna hesitated for a moment, took the water bag, wiped the mouth of the bottle, took a sip, and handed it to Luo Yun again. Luo Yun smiled and didn't say anything. He raised his hand and took a sip. He was also very thirsty. Kuna's face changed instantly when she saw this scene, and she subconsciously stood up to stop Luo Yun, but Luo Yun had already drank it, and a faint red suddenly appeared on the face of the cold and expressionless queen. Looking up at Kuna who was getting up, Luo Yun hadn't reacted yet and asked in confusion, What's wrong? Is something wrong? Fine. Advertisement. Kuna snorted coldly, sat down again, turned around, and turned her back to Luo Yun. Looking at the angry Kuna, Luo Yun looked puzzled. What's going on? He was fine just now, why is he angry again all of a sudden? Woman, I really can't understand. After touching his head, Luo Yun felt confused. He handed the water bag to Ike and the others next to him. Everyone took a few sips and ate dry food. After dinner, everyone did not continue to rest. It gets dark very quickly in winter, and you have to go back in the dark if you sit down again. It is extremely cold at night in winter, and the cold wind howls like an icy knife. Everyone packed up their things and were about to set off when there was a noise on the slope above their heads. Everyone looked up at the same time. Before they could see what was happening, they saw a black thing falling from the hillside and landing on the grain in the middle car. What? Ike looked confused. It's a person. People. Luo Yun said something, and jumped onto the car in two or three steps. Among the piles of food, there lay a young woman, who was too beautiful to behold. The skin is white and moist, can be broken by blows, the facial features are exquisite, like God's most exquisite masterpiece, and the figure is also curvy, both in figure and appearance, he is over 97. Advertisement. 26 Seriously Injured Girl. Advertisement. Inside the store, Luo Yun and the shop owner chatted happily, like two friends who had never known each other. Kuna, who was sitting quietly on a chair next to her, watched the scene curiously. Luo Yun chatted about this and that with the shop owner, chatting all over the place. He doesn't look like a teenage boy, but rather like a weather-beaten adult, whose knowledge and experience are totally inconsistent with his age. Moreover, the words that occasionally come out of his mouth have never been heard before, but they are very interesting. The origin of Luo Yun has never been heard from him, including his experience before joining the dojo. He has never heard him mention it, as if it was shrouded in a thick fog. But even his father said that Luo Yun has a psychological maturity far beyond that of his peers. Not only is he mature in age, but Luo Yun's every move has a maturity that is far different from that of a child. What did he go through before joining the dojo? And what kind of experience can make Luo Yun have a maturity comparable to an adult at this age? Kona was curious about this. Luo Yun was talking to his boss. He had worked in sales in his previous life and it was extremely easy to deal with people. Suddenly, he glanced sideways and noticed Kona looking at him. Subconsciously, my heart tightened. There was something wrong with Kona's eyes. This woman wasn't thinking about how to teach her a lesson. Just then, Jess and Ike came out of the back hall and said the food was packed. Advertisement. The town is currently enforcing a ban and it is not advisable to stay too long. Luo Yun said goodbye to the boss immediately, drove a carriage with a few people to leave the shop, and walked along the main road to Shimatsuki village. After leaving the store, it happened to be noon and there were already two or three people on the road, but the restaurants on both sides of the road were not open. Fortunately, everyone brought dry food, and we agreed to leave the town and find a quiet place to heat it up and eat it. This made Luo Yun truly understand the power of the celestial dragons. Just traveling there would be such a huge battle, and the surrounding towns would be put under martial law when passing nearby. What a scene it would be if they came. Celestial dragons? It is indeed the garbage of the world, standing at the top of the world, exploiting the world wantonly in the name of the Creator, absorbing the blood of countless people for their enjoyment. Hearing Luo Yun's whisper, Kuna asked curiously, what are celestial dragons? Facing Kuna's sudden question, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment and explained, they are the world nobles mentioned by the boss before, also called celestial dragons. They are the descendants of the 20 kings who established the world government 800 years ago. They are known as descendants of the creator be proud of yourself and think you are noble. Above the whole world, they can dominate the lives of creatures all over the world at will. In their consciousness, the world exists because of them, so the whole world should be free to them to take whatever they want. Isn't this just garbage? Kuna said subconsciously. Luo Yun was startled for a moment, then laughed the next moment. Advertisement. Haha, <laughs> you are right, these guys are indeed garbage, and they are the biggest garbage in the world. Kuna curled her lips, said nothing, and looked aside. When Kuna didn't answer, Luo Yun didn't continue, and an Xian drove the carriage on the street. There were not many people in the town, and the roads were smooth and there were no traffic jams. Everyone soon arrived at the outskirts of the town and drove onto the road to Shimatsuki village. Almost a mile away from the town, everyone rested under a hillside in the lee of the wind. Three carriages formed a group to block the wind. Everyone sat in the middle and lit a fire. They took out the dry food they brought with them and roasted it to eat. Several people were chatting while eating, but Kuna did not join them and sat quietly beside them eating. Here, just warm it. Looking at the water bag handed over by Luo Yun, Kuna hesitated for a moment, took the water bag, wiped the mouth of the bottle, took a sip, and handed it to Luo Yun again. Luo Yun smiled and didn't say anything. 
He raised his hand and took a sip. He was also very thirsty. Kuna's face changed instantly when she saw this scene, and she subconsciously stood up to stop Luo Yun, but Luo Yun had already drank it, and a faint red suddenly appeared on the face of the cold and expressionless queen. Looking up at Kuna who was getting up, Luo Yun hadn't reacted yet and asked in confusion, What's wrong? Is something wrong? Fine. Advertisement. Kuna snorted coldly, sat down again, turned around, and turned her back to Luo Yun. Looking at the angry Kuna, Luo Yun looked puzzled. What's going on? He was fine just now, why is he angry again all of a sudden? Woman, I really can't understand. After touching his head, Luo Yun felt confused. He handed the water bag to Ike and the others next to him. Everyone took a few sips and ate dry food. After dinner, everyone did not continue to rest. It gets dark very quickly in winter, and you have to go back in the dark if you sit down again. It is extremely cold at night in winter, and the cold wind howls like an icy knife. Everyone packed up their things and were about to set off when there was a noise on the slope above their heads. Everyone looked up at the same time. Before they could see what was happening, they saw a black thing falling from the hillside and landing on the grain in the middle car. What? Ike looked confused. It's a person. People. Luo Yun said something, and jumped onto the car in two or three steps. Among the piles of food, there lay a young woman, who was too beautiful to behold. The skin is white and moist, can be broken by blows, the facial features are exquisite, like God's most exquisite masterpiece, and the figure is also curvy, both in figure and appearance, he is over 97. Advertisement. 26 Seriously Injured Girl. Advertisement. Inside the store, Luo Yun and the shop owner chatted happily, like two friends who had never known each other. Kuna, who was sitting quietly on a chair next to her, watched the scene curiously. Luo Yun chatted about this and that with the shop owner, chatting all over the place. He doesn't look like a teenage boy, but rather like a weather-beaten adult, whose knowledge and experience are totally inconsistent with his age. Moreover, the words that occasionally come out of his mouth have never been heard before, but they are very interesting. The origin of Luo Yun has never been heard from him, including his experience before joining the dojo. He has never heard him mention it, as if it was shrouded in a thick fog. But even his father said that Luo Yun has a psychological maturity far beyond that of his peers. Not only is he mature in age, but Luo Yun's every move has a maturity that is far different from that of a child. What did he go through before joining the dojo? And what kind of experience can make Luo Yun have a maturity comparable to an adult at this age? Kona was curious about this. Luo Yun was talking to his boss. He had worked in sales in his previous life and it was extremely easy to deal with people. Suddenly, he glanced sideways and noticed Kona looking at him. Subconsciously, my heart tightened. There was something wrong with Kona's eyes. This woman wasn't thinking about how to teach her a lesson. Just then, Jess and Ike came out of the back hall and said the food was packed. Advertisement. The town is currently enforcing a ban and it is not advisable to stay too long. Luo Yun said goodbye to the boss immediately, drove a carriage with a few people to leave the shop, and walked along the main road to Shimatsuki village. After leaving the store, it happened to be noon and there were already two or three people on the road, but the restaurants on both sides of the road were not open. Fortunately, everyone brought dry food, and we agreed to leave the town and find a quiet place to heat it up and eat it. This made Luo Yun truly understand the power of the celestial dragons. Just traveling there would be such a huge battle, and the surrounding towns would be put under martial law when passing nearby. What a scene it would be if they came. Celestial dragons? It is indeed the garbage of the world, standing at the top of the world, exploiting the world wantonly in the name of the Creator, absorbing the blood of countless people for their enjoyment. Hearing Luo Yun's whisper, Kuna asked curiously, what are celestial dragons? Facing Kuna's sudden question, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment and explained, they are the world nobles mentioned by the boss before, also called celestial dragons. They are the descendants of the twenty kings who established the world government eight hundred years ago. They are known as descendants of the creator be proud of yourself and think you are noble. Above the whole world, they can dominate the lives of creatures all over the world at will. In their consciousness, the world exists because of them, so the whole world should be free to them to take whatever they want. Isn't this just garbage? Kuna said subconsciously. Luo Yun was startled for a moment, then laughed the next moment. Advertisement. Haha, <laughs> you are right, these guys are indeed garbage, and they are the biggest garbage in the world. Kuna curled her lips, said nothing, and looked aside. When Kuna didn't answer, Luo Yun didn't continue, and an Xian drove the carriage on the street. There were not many people in the town, and the roads were smooth and there were no traffic jams. Everyone soon arrived at the outskirts of the town and drove onto the road to Shimatsuki village. Almost a mile away from the town, everyone rested under a hillside in the lee of the wind. Three carriages formed a group to block the wind. Everyone sat in the middle and lit a fire. They took out the dry food they brought with them and roasted it to eat. Several people were chatting while eating, but Kuna did not join them and sat quietly beside them eating. Here, just warm it. Looking at the water bag handed over by Luo Yun, Kuna hesitated for a moment, took the water bag, wiped the mouth of the bottle, took a sip, and handed it to Luo Yun again. Luo Yun smiled and didn't say anything. He raised his hand and took a sip. He was also very thirsty. Kuna's face changed instantly when she saw the scene, and she subconsciously stood up to stop Luo Yun, but Luo Yun had already drank it, and a faint red suddenly appeared on the face of the cold and expressionless queen. Looking up at Kuna who was getting up, Luo Yun hadn't reacted yet and asked in confusion, What's wrong? Is something wrong? Fine. Advertisement. Kuna snorted coldly, sat down again, turned around, and turned her back to Luo Yun. Looking at the angry Kuna, Luo Yun looked puzzled. What's going on? He was fine just now, why is he angry again all of a sudden? Woman, I really can't understand. After touching his head, Luo Yun felt confused. He handed the water bag to Ike and the others next to him. Everyone took a few sips and ate dry food. After dinner, everyone did not continue to rest. It gets dark very quickly in winter, and you have to go back in the dark if you sit down again. It is extremely cold at night in winter, and the cold wind howls like an icy knife. Everyone packed up their things and were about to set off when there was a noise on the slope above their heads. Everyone looked up at the same time. Before they could see what was happening, they saw a black thing falling from the hillside and landing on the grain in the middle car. What? Ike looked confused. It's a person. 
people. Luo Yun said something, and jumped onto the car in two or three steps. Among the piles of food, there lay a young woman, who was too beautiful to behold. The skin is white and moist, can be broken by blows, the facial features are exquisite, like God's most exquisite masterpiece, and the figure is also curvy, both in figure and appearance, he is over 97. Advertisement. 27 mixed doubles 1. Advertisement. However, her current situation was not good, she was covered in blood and was seriously injured and fell into a coma. Kuna also jumped up at this time. When she saw the young girl, she was shocked and asked, Who is this? Who knows? Luo Yun replied, raised his hand to probe the girl's nostrils, and said, The breathing is weak and the blood loss is too much. The bleeding must be stopped as soon as possible, otherwise it will be life-threatening. Let's save people first and help her stop the bleeding. After saying that, Luo Yun stood up and looked at Kuna. Seeing Luo Yun looking at her, Kuna suddenly panicked for some reason and asked, Why are you looking at me? Stop the bleeding. She is a woman. It is impossible for us men to come. You are the only woman here, so of course you are the one to come, Luo Yun said helplessly. But I can't, Kuna said in a confused tone. She could fight if she was asked, but she had never done anything like rescuing people. Tear. He tore off a few pieces of cloth from his top, handed it to Kona, and said, You have these pieces of cloth to stop the bleeding from her important injuries. We will take her back to the doctor for the rest. Advertisement. Kona was still hesitant and did not take the piece of cloth. I didn't expect that Kona, a girl who is usually aloof, would react like a child when encountering something like this. That's right, no matter how arrogant she is, she is still just a child. Now is not the time to laugh at Kuna. If you continue to delay, this girl will really become cold. Get it done quickly. If she continues to lose blood, she will die. Pay attention to important wounds and be sure to bandage them to stop the bleeding. He grabbed Kuna's hand and gave the piece of cloth to Kuna. After giving a few instructions, Luo Yun jumped down. Jack and others who were not so agile jumped up, so they could only wait anxiously below, watching Luo Yun jump down and rush over to ask. Who fell? What happened? Wait. Luo Yun raised his hand to stop everyone's questioning and replied, I don't know what you are asking. I only know that this is a woman who was seriously injured. Kuna is up there helping her with her injuries. Woman, how could a seriously injured woman appear in this place at this time? Ike looked up at the top of the slope about 10 meters above his head. We'll have to wait until the woman wakes up to find out, Luo Yun said with a shrug. After a pause, Luo Yun continued, In short, it is not appropriate to stay in this place for too long. Ours will leave first and return to the village as soon as possible to find a doctor to treat the injury of the woman above. Otherwise, she will lose blood sooner or later in this cold weather. Everyone will die. Advertisement. Yes, yes, right away. Several people nodded in agreement, quickly returned to their carriages, and drove the carriages to prepare for departure. Tap tap tap. A burst of chaotic footsteps sounded overhead, and Luo Yun's face changed instantly as he was about to set off. Sure enough, he was still worried. The girl was seriously injured and fell down the slope. She was covered in blood. The bloodline had not yet dried on her body. It looked like she had been injured not long ago. The person who injured her might be behind her. So Luo Yun immediately asked everyone to leave first to avoid unnecessary trouble. Unexpectedly, it was a little late and the other party had already chased him. Whoosh. There was a sound of breaking through the air, and more than ten figures jumped down from the slope, surrounding Luo Yun and his party. Each of these people wore black clothes and black masks, and held sharp long knives in their hands. Some of them had dried bloodline on their knives. Only one person's face was exposed, and there was a scar of several centimeters on the right cheek. It seemed that he should be the leader. Seeing these people wearing masks, all of them were still full of murderous intent. Jack and the others were trembling with fear, but as children, they had never encountered such a battle. The two older apprentices had seen battles before. After a brief panic, they immediately drew their swords to guard against sudden attacks by these people. Recently, due to the winter, there have been too many refugees, and robbery incidents have often occurred. Just in case, everyone is not carrying wooden swords, but real sharp swords. Advertisement. The strong man at the head glanced sharply around Luo Yun and the others. When he saw that they were wearing the same clothes and had swords in their hands, he immediately understood the identities of the brats in front of him. The strong man took two steps forward and said in a dull voice, I didn't expect to encounter a group of guys with swords in this place, but it's a pity that you won't survive today. Don't let any rumors reveal what happened today. Leave only that woman and kill the rest. Let's start. The strong man raised his hand and ordered. Nest grass? Luo Yun immediately cursed. Didn't it mean that villains die from talking too much? You just say a word and start killing people while riding a horse. This doesn't follow the plot at all. How can you be such a villain? People like you are not qualified to be a villain at all. Scolding is what it takes, no matter how much Luo Yun scolds you, he will not make these people stop and talk to you. Seeing this situation, Kuna couldn't continue to stop the girls bleeding from above. She bandaged the wound in twos and twos and jumped off the roof of the car. Standing next to Luo Yun, he asked, what should we do now? Seeing these masked men attacking with swords without saying a word, Luo Yun gritted his teeth and said, what else can we do? The opponent is clearly determined to kill us, so we can only fight. Sitting quietly, a seriously injured woman fell from the sky and brought a life or death crisis to a group of them. Advertisement. 28 mixed doubles 2. Advertisement. Luo Yun didn't know whether to lament their good luck or curse their bad luck. The other party came to kill them without saying a word. The ruthlessness of this group of people was far beyond Luo Yun's expectations. Looking sideways at Jack and the four people next to him, even the two adult apprentices were so frightened that their faces turned pale when faced with this situation. Ike and Jace had already been so frightened that their faces turned pale and their legs could not stop shaking. This is not possible. Ike and Jace are among the strongest among the apprentices. Despite their young age, they can deal with one or two adults without any problem. But now I am afraid of being like this before fighting. I am afraid that my swordsmanship can be used at two or three levels, and I will definitely die if I face him head on. Luo Yun immediately shouted sternly, Everyone, they are ruthless and will never spare us. Now the situation is very clear. Either you die or I live. If you want to survive, you can only deal with them. It's time to show off the results of our years of learning. When we meet on a narrow road, the brave one wins. As soon as he finished speaking, Luo Yun jumped up and took the initiative to meet a masked man who was charging towards him. It's useless to just say some inspiring words. His first attack, it is best to defeat one of them with lightning speed, can give them the courage to fight. Advertisement. 
Seeing Luo Yun flying toward him, the masked man laughed disdainfully and said, You kid, you can't kill the enemy just by shouting, so you should die. He immediately slashed Luo Yun with his sword. From the perspective of the masked man, it was not an easy task for a teenage brat like him to solve this problem. One knife was enough. Seeing the long knife slashing straight at him, Luo Yun panicked, but he couldn't give in at this time. As he said, after more than half a year of high-intensity training, it was finally time to put it to the test. Luo Yun dodged the slashing sword, stepped on his right foot, jumped up high, and took the opportunity to approach the man in black robe. Holding the sword with his left hand and holding the hilt with his right hand, Luo Yun's eyes flashed with murderous intent and he let out a low drink. Draw your sword and kill. Uh huh. There was a flash of cold light, the long sword was unsheathed, the sword light flashed, a big head flew high, and the blood from the severed neck spurted out like spring water. The masked man's eyes were bloodshot and filled with reluctance at the last moment before death. How could he die at the hands of a little devil? How could a little devil be so strong? The tragic death of their companion made the others stop in unison. Everyone was shocked and looked at the bloodstained Luo Yun in shock. This teenage brat was able to kill their companions with one move. How is that possible? You're lying. When did that blue European guy become such a piece of trash? Advertisement. It's not that Ian's European style is too rubbish, but this brat is very strong. Please be careful. These brats are not ordinary children. They are all apprentices of the sword dojo. If you are careless, you will end up like Ian's European style. The strong man reminded his men that he didn't care at all about Ian's Oyushi's death. After working in this business for so long, he still didn't know that no matter what enemy he faced, he had to go all out. He deserved to die. If Ian's European style wasn't careless, Luo Yun could defeat him with his skills, but it would never be as simple as killing him with one sword. Jace and others, including Kuna, looked dumbly at Luo Yun, who was stained with blood on the field. They didn't expect that Luo Yun, who usually smiled and laughed, could be so cruel. He cut off people's heads with a sword, and his whole body was stained red with blood, but he was still so calm. Luo Yun is such a good girl. I clasped his hands in front of his chest with a look of admiration. Puff. Luo Yun felt like he was about to spurt out a mouthful of old blood. What the hell are you saying as a man, lousy men? It's almost okay for you as a woman to say such things. Bah, what the hell, now is not the time to talk about this matter. You guys, lousy, I am still holding on. Do you think I won't feel sick when I see this head flying up and blood spurting out? This is also the first time for lousy to kill someone. But he couldn't give in now. He would not be able to deter these people and increase his courage. Luo Yun was suppressing the nausea in his chest. However, this strong man should not be underestimated. In just a few words, most of his intimidating purpose was reduced. As expected, he was able to defeat these people. The boss is not just a jobber, he still has two brushes. Advertisement. Kuna looked at Luo Yun who was the first to kill an enemy on the field, gritting her silver teeth with an expression of annoyance and disgust. Of course, it was not Luo Yun who was annoyed and disgusted, but herself. Faced with a life and death crisis, Luo Yun drew her sword without hesitation, but she didn't even have the courage to draw her sword in the first place. All these years of practicing swordsmanship were in vain. Could it be that she is only suitable for fighting people with no murderous intention in the dojo with a wooden sword? No, absolutely not. She practices swordsmanship to become the world's greatest swordsman? How could he not even have the courage to draw his sword? Uh-huh. Raising his hand to draw his sword, a cold light flashed from Kona's firm eyes. Kuna stepped forward with one foot, and his figure shot out, holding a long sword and heading towards the nearest masked man. When the masked man saw Kona approaching, his first reaction was contempt. But when he saw his companion on the ground died tragically, he didn't want to be capsized in a ditch, so he immediately put away his contempt. Swinging the long sword, he slashed at Kuna with all his strength. Kuna raised the sword above her head to block it, and struck the sword with the long sword. Clang! There was a crisp sound, and the sword sank with great force. Kuna was pressed down. The opponent was an adult after all, and a well-trained killer. His strength was far greater than that of ordinary people. Kona's body was pressed down continuously. Advertisement. 29 CP Cypher Pole 1. Advertisement. Are we useless? Kid, it's your misfortune to find Laozi. The masked man cursed sternly, and when his hand became stronger, Kona was kept being suppressed. Kona's body was bent a little bit by the pressure, like a stretched long bow, and the sharp blade approached Kona's scalp little by little. Jace and the others looked extremely worried. They tightly grasped the hilt of the sword in their hands, as if they couldn't help but want to come to the rescue. But Luo Yun looked calm. These masked men were much stronger than ordinary people, but they were no match for him, let alone Kona. It seems that Kona is in danger now, but after playing more than 10 games with Kona, Luo Yun knows Kona very well, and she is gathering strength. Bang! Invisibly, there seemed to be a taut bowstring stretched out. Advertisement. Kona's body suddenly bounced up, and a powerful force burst out, lifting the long knife in the black-robed man's hand. Kona tiptoed and jumped up to the same height as the masked man. One time Luo Yun suffered a big loss and thought he could suppress Kona, but Kona suddenly burst out with strength and actually knocked him away. Later, Luo Yun realized that it was a power charging technique that Kona had learned by herself. It was used to deal with opponents who were powerful and weak. Luo Yun didn't know the specific principle. It probably turned himself into a bow. The greater the power, the tighter it becomes. Then it suddenly bursts out with huge power and lifts the opponent away. If the opponent is not careful, they will basically be hit. Kona waved her sword, swept it out, and struck the black-robed man's neck with the sharp tip. The black-robed man's eyes were cracked, and he subconsciously wanted to retreat, but he was just thrown away by Kona, and his body was falling back words, and he had no time to dodge. Phew. The sound of a sharp blade cutting off blood vessels in the skin caused blood to spurt out, and a long scar stretched across the masked man's neck. The masked man raised his hand to cover his neck, and blood oozed out from his fingers. The other hand pointed at Kuna, and he kept mumbling, but his neck was cut and he couldn't make any sound at all. It sounded vaguely like there was only one person. Character. How, how. The masked man died and collapsed, his face showing the unwillingness before death. Unfortunately, he didn't say a word even after he died. Advertisement. Looking at the dead masked man, Kona felt sick in her heart. This was her first time killing someone, but thinking that Luo Yun was fine, Kona immediately suppressed her feeling of nausea. 
He said coldly, you are lucky to have met me. Although I don't know the name, you will be the first person to die under the sword of the greatest swordsman in the future. Seeing Kuna say something to Haki after killing someone, Luo Yun felt a little regretful. Why didn't he think of doing this just now? What a good opportunity to show off. But he and Kuna were fighting each other one after another. How come it felt like a mixed male and female doubles fight? No, a mixed male and female doubles battle. Luo Yun and Kuna each killed one of the masked men with one sword. The other masked men were really frightened and did not dare to attack again. The two companions were killed in an instant. That doesn't mean that it was just a sword strike against these two brats. This brat came out of nowhere, why is he so pervert? If the other four were like this, he would be slapped. We are so frighteningly strong at such a young age, we people are like dogs. Another one of his men was killed with a sword. The strong man couldn't keep calm. These few in front of him were not brats at all. They were just perverts wearing brat skins. His men were all good players, but they couldn't even block a single move. Don't underestimate these little devils. If you're not careful, the boat may capsize in the gutter this time. Turning his eyes, the strong man looked at Jess and the others and ordered, half of the people restrain these two brats, and the rest will deal with the four brats. Advertisement. Luo Yun suddenly screamed in his heart that something was wrong. This was what he was afraid of. The four of Jace and the others were surrounded by seven or eight masked men and were no match at all. When the time comes, the others will turn around to deal with them. Even if he and Kuna are stronger, they can't beat four hands with one fist. Luo Yun subconsciously looked at Kuna, and Kuna happened to also look over. The two looked at each other without verbal communication, but they immediately understood each other's meaning and at the same time retreated to the middle carriage where the girl was lying. As they retreated, Luo Yun shouted to the four of them, You guys quickly gather around the middle carriage. The two of us will guard the outside. The two of you stand at the four corners with the carriage as the center, relying on each other. After the operation just now, Luo Yun had vaguely become the center of several people. After hearing Luo Yun's words, several people ran over without any hesitation and surrounded the carriage. Six people vaguely formed a circular formation to attack in a defensive posture. Killers. From the beginning, Luo Yun never thought that relying on the six of them, taking the initiative to attack could kill all the killers. He just took action suddenly, just to temporarily scare these killers, and at the same time inspire the courage of Jace and others. But I didn't expect Kuna to suddenly take action and kill a killer. Now there are only 14 killers left out of 16, and the pressure is much less than before. The next step is to see if you can withstand the real attacks launched by these killers. If you can withstand the first wave of pressure, the pressure will be greatly reduced again. If you can't withstand them, they will die. The crisis is imminent. Luo Yun and Kuna took action one after another, killing the two killers with lightning speed, only slightly delaying the opponent's attack. Advertisement. 29 CP Cypher Pole 1. Advertisement. Are we useless? Kid, it's your misfortune to find Laozi. The masked man cursed sternly, and when his hand became stronger, Kuna was kept being suppressed. Kuna's body was bent a little bit by the pressure, like a stretched long bow, and the sharp blade approached Kuna's scalp little by little. Jace and the others looked extremely worried. They tightly grasped the hilt of the sword in their hands, as if they couldn't help but want to come to the rescue. But Luo Yun looked calm. These masked men were much stronger than ordinary people, but they were no match for him, let alone Kuna. It seems that Kuna is in danger now, but after playing more than 10 games with Kuna, Luo Yun knows Kuna very well, and she is gathering strength. Bang! Invisibly, there seemed to be a taut bowstring stretched out. Advertisement. Kuna's body suddenly bounced up, and a powerful force burst out, lifting the long knife in the black-robed man's hand. Kuna tiptoed and jumped up to the same height as the masked man. One time Luo Yun suffered a big loss and thought he could suppress Kuna, but Kuna suddenly burst out with strength and actually knocked him away. Later, Luo Yun realized that it was a power charging technique that Kuna had learned by herself. It was used to deal with opponents who were powerful and weak. Luo Yun didn't know the specific principle. It probably turned himself into a bow. The greater the power, the tighter it becomes. Then it suddenly bursts out with huge power and lifts the opponent away. If the opponent is not careful, they will basically be hit. Kuna waved her sword, swept it out, and struck the black-robed man's neck with the sharp tip. The black-robed man's eyes were cracked, and he subconsciously wanted to retreat, but he was just thrown away by Kuna, and his body was falling backwards, and he had no time to dodge. Phew. The sound of a sharp blade cutting off blood vessels in the skin caused blood to spurt out, and a long scar stretched across the masked man's neck. The masked man raised his hand to cover his neck, and blood oozed out from his fingers. The other hand pointed at Kuna, and he kept mumbling, but his neck was cut and he couldn't make any sound at all. It sounded vaguely like there was only one person. Character. How, how. The masked man died and collapsed, his face showing the unwillingness before death. Unfortunately, he didn't say a word even after he died. Advertisement. Looking at the dead masked man, Kuna felt sick in her heart. This was her first time killing someone, but thinking that Luo Yun was fine, Kuna immediately suppressed her feeling of nausea. He said coldly, you are lucky to have met me. Although I don't know the name, you will be the first person to die under the sword of the greatest swordsman in the future. Seeing Kuna say something to Haki after killing someone, Luo Yun felt a little regretful. Why didn't he think of doing this just now? What a good opportunity to show off. But he and Kuna were fighting each other one after another. How come it felt like a mixed male and female doubles fight? No, a mixed male and female doubles battle. Luo Yun and Kuna each killed one of the masked men with one sword. The other masked men were really frightened and did not dare to attack again. The two companions were killed in an instant. That doesn't mean that it was just a sword strike against these two brats. This brat came out of nowhere, why is he so pervert? If the other four were like this, he would be slapped. We are so frighteningly strong at such a young age, we people are like dogs. Another one of his men was killed with a sword. The strong man couldn't keep calm. These few in front of him were not brats at all. They were just perverts wearing brat skins. His men were all good players, but they couldn't even block a single move. Don't underestimate these little devils. If you're not careful, the boat may capsize in the gutter this time. Turning his eyes, the strong man looked at Jess and the others and ordered, half of the people restrain these two brats, and the rest will deal with the four brats. Advertisement. Luo Yun suddenly screamed in his heart that something was wrong. This was what he was afraid of. The four of Jace and the others were surrounded by seven or eight masked men and were no match at all. When the time comes, the others will turn around to deal with them. Even if he and Kuna are stronger, they can't beat four hands with one fist. 
Luo Yun subconsciously looked at Kuna, and Kuna happened to also look over. The two looked at each other without verbal communication, but they immediately understood each other's meaning and at the same time retreated to the middle carriage where the girl was lying. As they retreated, Luo Yun shouted to the four of them, You guys quickly gather around the middle carriage. The two of us will guard the outside. The two of you stand at the four corners with the carriage as the center, relying on each other. After the operation just now, Luo Yun had vaguely become the center of several people. After hearing Luo Yun's words, several people ran over without any hesitation and surrounded the carriage. Six people vaguely formed a circular formation to attack in a defensive posture. Killers. From the beginning, Luo Yun never thought that relying on the six of them, taking the initiative to attack could kill all the killers. He just took action suddenly, just to temporarily scare these killers, and at the same time inspire the courage of Jace and others. But I didn't expect Kuna to suddenly take action and kill a killer. Now there are only 14 killers left out of 16, and the pressure is much less than before. The next step is to see if you can withstand the real attacks launched by these killers. If you can withstand the first wave of pressure, the pressure will be greatly reduced again. If you can't withstand them, they will die. The crisis is imminent. Luo Yun and Kuna took action one after another, killing the two killers with lightning speed, only slightly delaying the opponent's attack. Advertisement. 29 CP Cypher Pole 1. Advertisement. Are we useless? Kid, it's your misfortune to find Laozi. The masked man cursed sternly, and when his hand became stronger, Kuna was kept being suppressed. Kuna's body was bent a little bit by the pressure, like a stretched long bow, and the sharp blade approached Kuna's scalp little by little. Jace and the others looked extremely worried. They tightly grasped the hilt of the sword in their hands, as if they couldn't help but want to come to the rescue. But Luo Yun looked calm. These masked men were much stronger than ordinary people, but they were no match for him, let alone Kuna. It seems that Kuna is in danger now, but after playing more than 10 games with Kuna, Luo Yun knows Kuna very well, and she is gathering strength. Bang! Invisibly, there seemed to be a taut bowstring stretched out. Advertisement. Kuna's body suddenly bounced up, and a powerful force burst out, lifting the long knife in the black-robed man's hand. Kuna tiptoed and jumped up to the same height as the masked man. One time Luo Yun suffered a big loss and thought he could suppress Kuna, but Kuna suddenly burst out with strength and actually knocked him away. Later, Luo Yun realized that it was a power charging technique that Kuna had learned by herself. It was used to deal with opponents who were powerful and weak. Luo Yun didn't know the specific principle. It probably turned himself into a bow. The greater the power, the tighter it becomes. Then it suddenly bursts out with huge power and lifts the opponent away. If the opponent is not careful, they will basically be hit. Kuna waved her sword, swept it out, and struck the black-robed man's neck with the sharp tip. The black-robed man's eyes were cracked, and he subconsciously wanted to retreat, but he was just thrown away by Kuna, and his body was falling backwards, and he had no time to dodge. Phew. The sound of a sharp blade cutting off blood vessels in the skin caused blood to spurt out, and a long scar stretched across the masked man's neck. The masked man raised his hand to cover his neck, and blood oozed out from his fingers. The other hand pointed at Kuna, and he kept mumbling, but his neck was cut and he couldn't make any sound at all. It sounded vaguely like there was only one person. Character. How, how. The masked man died and collapsed, his face showing the unwillingness before death. Unfortunately, he didn't say a word even after he died. Advertisement. Looking at the dead masked man, Kuna felt sick in her heart. This was her first time killing someone, but thinking that Luo Yun was fine, Kuna immediately suppressed her feeling of nausea. He said coldly, you are lucky to have met me. Although I don't know the name, you will be the first person to die under the sword of the greatest swordsman in the future. Seeing Kuna say something to Haki after killing someone, Luo Yun felt a little regretful. Why didn't he think of doing this just now? What a good opportunity to show off. But he and Kuna were fighting each other one after another. How come it felt like a mixed male and female doubles fight? No. A mixed male and female doubles battle. Luo Yun and Kuna each killed one of the masked men with one sword. The other masked men were really frightened and did not dare to attack again. The two companions were killed in an instant. That doesn't mean that it was just a sword strike against these two brats. This brat came out of nowhere, why is he so pervert? If the other four were like this, he would be slapped. We are so frighteningly strong at such a young age, we people are like dogs. Another one of his men was killed with a sword. The strong man couldn't keep calm. These few in front of him were not brats at all. They were just perverts wearing brat skins. His men were all good players, but they couldn't even block a single move. Don't underestimate these little devils. If you're not careful, the boat may capsize in the gutter this time. Turning his eyes, the strong man looked at Jess and the others and ordered, half of the people restrain these two brats, and the rest will deal with the four brats. Advertisement. Luo Yun suddenly screamed in his heart that something was wrong. This was what he was afraid of. The four of Jace and the others were surrounded by seven or eight masked men and were no match at all. When the time comes, the others will turn around to deal with them. Even if he and Kuna are stronger, they can't beat four hands with one fist. Luo Yun subconsciously looked at Kuna, and Kuna happened to also look over. The two looked at each other without verbal communication, but they immediately understood each other's meaning and at the same time retreated to the middle carriage where the girl was lying. As they retreated, Luo Yun shouted to the four of them, You guys quickly gather around the middle carriage. The two of us will guard the outside. The two of you stand at the four corners with the carriage as the center, relying on each other. After the operation just now, Luo Yun had vaguely become the center of several people. After hearing Luo Yun's words, several people ran over without any hesitation and surrounded the carriage. Six people vaguely formed a circular formation to attack in a defensive posture. Killers. From the beginning, Luo Yun never thought that relying on the six of them, taking the initiative to attack could kill all the killers. He just took action suddenly, just to temporarily scare these killers, and at the same time inspire the courage of Jace and others. But I didn't expect Kuna to suddenly take action and kill a killer. Now there are only 14 killers left out of 16, and the pressure is much less than before. The next step is to see if you can withstand the real attacks launched by these killers. If you can withstand the first wave of pressure, the pressure will be greatly reduced again. If you can't withstand them, they will die. The crisis is imminent. Luo Yun and Kuna took action one after another, killing the two killers with lightning speed, only slightly delaying the opponent's attack. Advertisement. 30 CP Cypher Pole 2. Advertisement. 
However, under the command of the strong man in charge, these killers reorganized their formation and surrounded them. The strong man did not expect that as soon as he gave the order, the brat immediately retreated and at the same time gathered the other four people around him, surrounding the middle carriage as the center. It's really surprising. This kid not only has such skills at such a young age, but also has good tactical awareness. The strong man was secretly surprised. But then his eyes flashed with murderous intent and he said coldly, Do you think this will be useful? Don't waste time. Let's all go together and deal with these little devils together. So what if you have good skills? So what if the tactics are good? Their manpower is several times that of theirs, and all of them are good players. In the face of absolute power, no matter how they resist, it will be in vain. After the boss gave the order, these killers naturally did not dare to hesitate and attacked from all directions at the same time. Hold. Luo Yun burst out with swear words. This boss was so cunning, he just suppressed them all without giving them a chance to breathe. Seeing these killers coming, Luo Yun clenched the sword in his hand. His heart darkened, he couldn't hold it back and had no choice but to use it. Advertisement. Sherry Nan. He drank softly, his eyes turned blood red, a round of Megatama slowly rotated in his eyes, Sherry Nan was turned on, and the scene in his eyes suddenly changed drastically. The slow-moving killers became extremely slow in his eyes. Seeing Luo Yun's devilish blood red eyes, even the killer with his hands covered in blood was startled. The strong man behind him looked at this scene with wide eyes and shock. The strange blood-colored eyes were like the eyes of a demon crawling out of hell. He was stunned for a while, but the next second, the strong man reacted. He raised his hand anxiously and shouted, Back away, this kid is demon fruit power. However, by the time the strong man reacted and shouted a reminder, it was already too late. Luo Yun took out four shurikens from his pocket with his right hand and clamped them between his fingers. Without hesitation, he raised his hand and fired. Shuriken technique. The four shurikens fired like four black thunderbolts, hitting the forehoods of the four killers. The four killers groaned at the same time, tilted their heads to the right, and fell to the ground like soft noodles, losing their last lives. Breath. So strong. This is not what Jace and the others are thinking at the moment, it is also what Kuna is thinking at the moment. Advertisement. Is this what Luo Yun said is the successful shuriken technique? Kuna subconsciously placed her in the killer's position, without any preparation, and suddenly realized that even if she wanted to perfectly block these four shurikens, it would be impossible. The next second, Kuna looked at Luo Yun angrily. This guy really didn't use his full strength when fighting her. If Luo Yun knew what Kuna was thinking at this moment, he would definitely cry out for injustice. He used all his strength in every duel with Kuna, but dueling and life and death battles are two different concepts. In the blink of an eye, only ten killers were left out of the fourteen. Six corpses fell on the snow, braving the heat. As time went by, their corpses would slowly freeze into ice. The other killers didn't dare to move for a while. They thought they encountered a group of sheep, but they didn't expect that there was a devil hidden under one of the sheep. The killers were so depressed at the moment that they really wanted to curse. A kid is so scary, and he is also a rare ability user. Is this still a weak East Blue? How could it be scarier than Grand Line? Seeing this, the strong man finally couldn't stand aside and watch the show. If this went on, his men might be dead. Even if he caught the woman, it would be difficult for him to go back alone. Seeing that the strong man finally moved, Luo Yun's eyes flashed slightly, the boss finally couldn't sit still anymore. Compared with these killers, the real biggest danger is the leader. His strength is far higher than these ordinary killers. Luo Yun was afraid that the leader would let these killers consume them, and finally he would take action. In that case, they would be really in danger. Now that the leader was about to take action, Luo Yun felt relieved. Advertisement. When Kuna saw the leader walking forward, she was so competitive that she immediately moved forward. Luo Yun was startled when she noticed Kuna's movement. Auntie, don't make trouble at this time. He quickly took two steps forward and walked to Kuna. Seeing Luo Yun blocking him in front, Kuna looked angry. Before Kuna could speak, Luo Yun said first, Your task is to protect the others. I leave these killers to you, and I will deal with this boss. After saying that, without waiting for Kuna to object, Luo Yun walked out first, leaving Kuna behind and looking angrily at his back. Kuna really wanted to kill the bastard in front of her with a knife at this moment, but this was impossible, so she could only stamp her feet angrily, turn around and retreat to the carriage. I'll deal with this kid who has devil fruit ability. You can deal with the rest. The strong man ordered the surrounding men and walked towards Luo Yun. The strong man also has a knife in his hand, but unlike other killers, the knife is larger and the back of the knife is thicker. The power of swinging it is definitely greater than that of ordinary long knives. I didn't expect to encounter a demon fruit power in East Blue. The strong man stopped and did not hide the surprise in his tone. Those who can? Luo Yun was stunned for a moment. For a long time, this guy thought his Sherry Nan was the devil fruit ability. Luo Yun didn't bother to explain. He wished everyone thought so. Advertisement. 30 CP Cypher Pole 2. Advertisement. However, under the command of the strong man in charge, these killers reorganized their formation and surrounded them. The strong man did not expect that as soon as he gave the order, the brat immediately retreated and at the same time gathered the other four people around him, surrounding the middle carriage as the center. It's really surprising. This kid not only has such skills at such a young age, but also has good tactical awareness. The strong man was secretly surprised. But then his eyes flashed with murderous intent and he said coldly, Do you think this will be useful? Don't waste time. Let's all go together and deal with these little devils together. So what if you have good skills? So what if the tactics are good? Their manpower is several times that of theirs, and all of them are good players. In the face of absolute power, no matter how they resist, it will be in vain. After the boss gave the order, these killers naturally did not dare to hesitate and attacked from all directions at the same time. Hold. Luo Yun burst out with swear words. This boss was so cunning, he just suppressed them all without giving them a chance to breathe. Seeing these killers coming, Luo Yun clenched the sword in his hand. His heart darkened, he couldn't hold it back and had no choice but to use it. Advertisement. Sherry Nan. He drank softly, his eyes turned blood red, a round of Megatama slowly rotated in his eyes, Sherry Nan was turned on, and the scene in his eyes suddenly changed drastically. The slow-moving killers became extremely slow in his eyes. Seeing Luo Yun's devilish blood red eyes, even the killer with his hands covered in blood was startled. The strong man behind him looked at this scene with wide eyes and shock. The strange blood-colored eyes were like the eyes of a demon crawling out of hell. He was stunned for a while, but the next second, the strong man reacted. He raised his hand anxiously and shouted, Back away, this kid is demon fruit power. 
However, by the time the strong man reacted and shouted a reminder, it was already too late. Luo Yun took out four shurikens from his pocket with his right hand and clamped them between his fingers. Without hesitation, he raised his hand and fired. Shuriken technique. The four shurikens fired like four black thunderbolts, hitting the foreheads of the four killers. The four killers groaned at the same time, tilted their heads to the right, and fell to the ground like soft noodles, losing their last lives. Breath. So strong. This is not what Jace and the others are thinking at the moment. It is also what Kuna is thinking at the moment. Advertisement. Is this what Luo Yun said is the successful shuriken technique? Kuna subconsciously placed her in the killer's position, without any preparation, and suddenly realized that even if she wanted to perfectly block these four shurikens, it would be impossible. The next second, Kuna looked at Luo Yun angrily. This guy really didn't use his full strength when fighting her. If Luo Yun knew what Kuna was thinking at this moment, he would definitely cry out for injustice. He used all his strength in every duel with Kuna, but dueling and life and death battles are two different concepts. In the blink of an eye, only ten killers were left out of the fourteen. Six corpses fell on the snow, braving the heat. As time went by, their corpses would slowly freeze into ice. The other killers didn't dare to move for a while. They thought they encountered a group of sheep, but they didn't expect that there was a devil hidden under one of the sheep. The killers were so depressed at the moment that they really wanted to curse. A kid is so scary, and he is also a rare ability user. Is this still a weak East Blue? How could it be scarier than Grand Line? Seeing this, the strong man finally couldn't stand aside and watch the show. If this went on, his men might be dead. Even if he caught the woman, it would be difficult for him to go back alone. Seeing that the strong man finally moved, Luo Yun's eyes flashed slightly, the boss finally couldn't sit still anymore. Compared with these killers, the real biggest danger is the leader. His strength is far higher than these ordinary killers. Luo Yun was afraid that the leader would let these killers consume them, and finally he would take action. In that case, they would be really in danger. Now that the leader was about to take action, Luo Yun felt relieved. Advertisement. When Kuna saw the leader walking forward, she was so competitive that she immediately moved forward. Luo Yun was startled when she noticed Kuna's movement. Auntie, don't make trouble at this time. He quickly took two steps forward and walked to Kuna. Seeing Luo Yun blocking him in front, Kuna looked angry. Before Kuna could speak, Luo Yun said first, Your task is to protect the others. I leave these killers to you, and I will deal with this boss. After saying that, without waiting for Kuna to object, Luo Yun walked out first, leaving Kuna behind and looking angrily at his back. Kuna really wanted to kill the bastard in front of her with a knife at this moment, but this was impossible, so she could only stamp her feet angrily, turn around and retreat to the carriage. I'll deal with this kid who has devil fruit ability. You can deal with the rest. The strong man ordered the surrounding men and walked towards Luo Yun. The strong man also has a knife in his hand, but unlike other killers, the knife is larger and the back of the knife is thicker. The power of swinging it is definitely greater than that of ordinary long knives. I didn't expect to encounter a demon fruit power in East Blue. The strong man stopped and did not hide the surprise in his tone. Those who can, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment. For a long time, this guy thought his cherry non was the devil fruit ability. Luo Yun didn't bother to explain. He wished everyone thought so. Advertisement. 30 CP Cypher Pole 2. Advertisement. However, under the command of the strong man in charge, these killers reorganized their formation and surrounded them. The strong man did not expect that as soon as he gave the order, the brat immediately retreated and at the same time gathered the other four people around him, surrounding the middle carriage as the center. It's really surprising. This kid not only has such skills at such a young age, but also has good tactical awareness. The strong man was secretly surprised. But then his eyes flashed with murderous intent and he said coldly, Do you think this will be useful? Don't waste time. Let's all go together and deal with these little devils together. So what if you have good skills? So what if the tactics are good? Their manpower is several times that of theirs, and all of them are good players. In the face of absolute power, no matter how they resist, it will be in vain. After the boss gave the order, these killers naturally did not dare to hesitate and attack from all directions at the same time. Hold. Luo Yun burst out with swear words. This boss was so cunning, he just suppressed them all without giving them a chance to breathe. Seeing these killers coming, Luo Yun clenched the sword in his hand, his heart darkened, he couldn't hold it back and had no choice but to use it. Advertisement. Sherry Nan. He drank softly, his eyes turned blood red, a round of Megatama slowly rotated in his eyes, Sherry Nan was turned on, and the scene in his eyes suddenly changed drastically. The slow-moving killers became extremely slow in his eyes. Seeing Luo Yun's devilish blood red eyes, even the killer with his hands covered in blood was startled. The strong man behind him looked at this scene with wide eyes and shock. The strange blood-colored eyes were like the eyes of a demon crawling out of hell. He was stunned for a while, but the next second, the strong man reacted. He raised his hand anxiously and shouted, Back away, this kid is demon fruit power. However, by the time the strong man reacted and shouted a reminder, it was already too late. Luo Yun took out four shurikens from his pocket with his right hand and clamped them between his fingers. Without hesitation, he raised his hand and fired. Shuriken technique. The four shurikens fired like four black thunderbolts, hitting the foreheads of the four killers. The four killers groaned at the same time, tilted their heads to the right, and fell to the ground like soft noodles, losing their last lives. Breath. So strong. This is not what Jace and the others are thinking at the moment, it is also what Kuna is thinking at the moment. Advertisement. Is this what Luo Yun said is the successful shuriken technique? Kuna subconsciously placed her in the killer's position, without any preparation, and suddenly realized that even if she wanted to perfectly block these four shurikens, it would be impossible. The next second, Kuna looked at Luo Yun angrily. This guy really didn't use his full strength when fighting her. If Luo Yun knew what Kuna was thinking at this moment, he would definitely cry out for injustice. He used all his strength in every duel with Kuna, but dueling and life and death battles are two different concepts. In the blink of an eye, only ten killers were left out of the fourteen. Six corpses fell on the snow, braving the heat. As time went by, their corpses would slowly freeze into ice. The other killers didn't dare to move for a while. They thought they encountered a group of sheep, but they didn't expect that there was a devil hidden under one of the sheep. The killers were so depressed at the moment that they really wanted to curse. A kid is so scary, and he is also a rare ability user. Is this still a weak East Blue? How could it be scarier than Grand Line? Seeing this, the strong man finally couldn't stand aside and watch the show. If this went on, his men might be dead. 
Even if he caught the woman, it would be difficult for him to go back alone. Seeing that the strong man finally moved, Luo Yan's eyes flashed slightly, the boss finally couldn't sit still anymore. Compared with these killers, the real biggest danger is the leader. His strength is far higher than these ordinary killers. Luo Yun was afraid that the leader would let these killers consume them, and finally he would take action. In that case, they would be really in danger. Now that the leader was about to take action, Luo Yun felt relieved. Advertisement. When Kuna saw the leader walking forward, she was so competitive that she immediately moved forward. Luo Yun was startled when she noticed Kuna's movement. Auntie, don't make trouble at this time. He quickly took two steps forward and walked to Kuna. Seeing Luo Yun blocking him in front, Kuna looked angry. Before Kuna could speak, Luo Yun said first, Your task is to protect the others. I leave these killers to you, and I will deal with this boss. After saying that, without waiting for Kuna to object, Luo Yun walked out first, leaving Kuna behind and looking angrily at his back. Kuna really wanted to kill the bastard in front of her with a knife at this moment, but this was impossible, so she could only stamp her feet angrily, turn around and retreat to the carriage. I'll deal with this kid who has devil fruit ability. You can deal with the rest. The strong man ordered the surrounding men and walked towards Luo Yun. The strong man also has a knife in his hand, but unlike other killers, the knife is larger and the back of the knife is thicker. The power of swinging it is definitely greater than that of ordinary long knives. I didn't expect to encounter a demon fruit power in East Blue. The strong man stopped and did not hide the surprise in his tone. Those who can? Luo Yun was stunned for a moment. For a long time, this guy thought his sherry non was the devil fruit ability. Luo Yun didn't bother to explain. He wished everyone thought so. Advertisement. 31 Shuriken Technique 1. Advertisement. Seeing that Luo Yun was silent, the strong man added, If you were a few years older, I would definitely not be your opponent, but now you are just a kid. With devil fruit, you can exert some strength. Kid, it's just your bad luck that you encountered this kind of thing. If it were normal times, I might give you a chance to join CP Cypher Pole, but today, you can only die. In the strong man's opinion, these rats will definitely die today, and he doesn't care to say more, as dead people will never reveal secrets. Depend on. Luo Yun was dumbfounded for a moment, thinking that these men in black were CP Cypher Pole, which meant that these people were not killers, but people from the government. But judging from their attire, it is obvious that they are not CP Espionage personnel on the surface. They should be doing shady things for the government secretly. Luo Yun no longer knows what to say about his bad luck. He encountered CP Cypherpole and killed someone, and now he is still involved in it. Luo Yun doesn't want to go against CP Cypherpole yet. It's not that he's afraid, it's just that facing CP Cypherpole with his current strength is completely courting death. But the current situation is obviously not something he has thought about. The other party is obviously determined to kill these people. If he wants to live, he can only kill these people. Since they are spies of CP Cypherpole, we cannot let one of them go, otherwise they will be in endless trouble and the dojo will be involved. Killing intent flashed in his eyes, and Luo Yun felt determined to kill. The strong man had climbed out of life and death. He felt the murderous intention in Luo Yun's heart and immediately said with a disdainful smile, You kid, you still want to kill me. Advertisement. You will know if you can kill or not, you will know if you try. This was the first time Luo Yun spoke, and his tone was murderous. Looking for death, kid. The strong man was enraged, shouted angrily, stepped out, swung his long knife and slashed down in the air, the long knife word as it cut through the air. It has to be said that as the boss, the strong man is indeed much stronger than the other killers. This sword is extremely fast, but now that Luo Yun has activated Sherry Nan, the strong man's speed is broken, but in Luo Yun's eyes, it is extremely slow. He lightly stepped his right foot to the left, and easily dodged the strong man's sword on one side of his body. Bang! The long knife fell to the ground, cutting a crack into the ground, and dust and smoke flew up. Seeing Luo Yun dodge, the strong man flipped his wrist and swung his long sword upwards. Luo Yun quickly raised his sword to block it. There was a sharp clang sound and fire was radiating. The long sword sank with great force and slashed Luo Yun away with one strike. His feet rubbed against the ground, and two parallel scratches appeared under his feet. He stepped back four to five meters, and Luo Yun stepped hard with both feet to steady his steps. What a powerful force. Advertisement. Loosening his hands to relieve the pain in the tiger's mouth and two arms, Luo Yun was secretly shocked. The strength of this strong man was comparable to that of two adults. Although after this period of high-intensity physical training, his strength far exceeds that of his peers, and is no worse than an adult, but it is still worse than a strong man. It seems that we can't fight head-on. We can only win by relying on speed and skill. Luo Yun was knocked back with one blow. The strong man stepped hard on the ground with both feet and shot out. He swung the long knife and struck Luo Yun's head. This was to get straight to Luo Yun's head. Luo Yun quickly retreated, but the strong man was faster than him. He caught up with him in a blink of an eye and dropped the long knife. Seeing the long knife slashing down with strong wind, Luo Yun didn't panic, raised his right foot high, kicked the strong man in the abdomen, and kicked the strong man several steps away. He stepped on his left foot at the same time and rushed out. The sharp sword in his hand flashed and he stabbed the strong man upright. Flash sword. The wrist shook rapidly at an irregular speed, causing the long sword to shake as well, and more than a dozen sword shadows seemed to appear in the void. The strong man quickly retreated, but the long sword came close to him. The strong man couldn't tell which sword shadow was real and which sword shadow was fake. In anger, he slashed down with a long sword in his hand, and the sword shadows shattered. But he didn't hit the real sword. Tear. Blood flew up, and the long sword left a wound of 10 centimeters on the strong man's shoulder. Luo Yun did not take the opportunity to continue attacking, and quickly stepped back, because the strong man's long sword had already struck backhand. Advertisement. Die. Sherry Nan had already locked onto the trajectory of the long sword strike, and Luo Yun narrowly dodged it by tilting her head, and a strand of broken long black hair fell from the top of her head. But Luo Yun dodged the strong man's sword and failed to avoid the strong man's fist. The fist landed on Luo Yun's shoulder, making a heavy muffled sound, and knocked Luo Yun away with one punch. After taking several steps back, Luo Yun stabilized his body. His left shoulder was in severe pain, and he couldn't even lift it. With a child's frame, he couldn't withstand a strong punch from a strong man, and his left hand was immediately disabled. Several long knives are coming. At the same time, he slashed at Kuna, who was in danger. However, Kuna didn't panic, stood up on her toes, rotated her body, and swept out the long sword in her hand. 
Swish. In an instant, Kona swung several swords to repel all the killers. She tapped her toes and stepped forward, approaching one of the killers. He swung his sword and slashed, and the opponent reacted quickly and quickly raised the sword in his hands to block. But the moment Kona was about to hit the sword, he suddenly changed his move. The vertical slash was changed to a horizontal slash, and the sword slid out to the right against the blade's edge. Sizzling. The fire was radiating, and the long sword slid down from the blade, taking advantage of the momentum to cut off the killer's left arm. The killer howled in pain, turned pale, and quickly backed away, trying to escape. Advertisement. 32 Shuriken Technique 2. Advertisement. Don't even think about escaping. Kuna was simmering with anger in her heart at this moment. She shouted loudly, caught up with him and raised his hand to kill the opponent directly with a sword. At this time, the remaining killers who had been repelled approached and attacked Kuna with their swords whistling. The killers also knew at this time that Kuna was as terrifying as the kid. In a short period of time, two of her companions were killed. He immediately put out 120% of his energy and went all out to deal with Kuna. The four killers cooperated with each other and struck continuously. Even though Kuna had strong swordsmanship, she was forced to retreat continuously. But it was not a dangerous situation. Kuna barely resisted the attacks of several people, waiting for the opponent to reveal his flaw and kill him with one move. The four of them surrounded the carriage, facing the four killers. After all, Jace and Ike were just children. Even with the addition of two adult apprentices, they were still no match for the four killers, and the situation was full of dangers. Facing the pressure of death, coupled with the fact that Luo Yun and Kuna had killed two killers in seconds, courage was inspired in several people. It's not like they will be defeated so quickly. As long as Luo Yun and Kuna get out of the way, the balance of victory will tilt in their favor. File, file, file. Advertisement. The swords collided, with a metallic clang and fire, Kona fought and retreated. As time went by, the swordsmanship learned over the years became more and more proficient in the face of life and death oppression and fierce battles. Gradually, Kona began to be able to handle it with ease. While blocking the attacks of four people, he could also launch two counterattacks from time to time, forcing the four killers to panic. If they hadn't cooperated with each other tacitly, their joint effort would have been broken by Kona. Even so, from now on, Kona's final victory is only a matter of time. The killers on the opposite side naturally felt Kona's progress. During the fight with them, the swordsmanship of the little girl in front of them changed from being unfamiliar at the beginning to becoming smoother and faster. If this continues, the four of them may not be able to suppress this female brat. The four of them were anxious and looked at each other to communicate, and the four of them worked harder to suppress Kona. But Kona mastered the swordsmanship in the battle and made rapid progress. Even with the added strength of four people, they couldn't suppress Kona. Instead, they gradually pushed Kona to her limits. The four killers became Kona's whetstones, and they sharpened Kona's sword. The other side, Luo Yun was knocked back by the strong man's punch. His left shoulder was in so much pain that he couldn't even lift his hand and was almost disabled. Advertisement. Looking down at the injury on his shoulder, the strong man snorted lightly, looking unconcerned. This injury was nothing to him. Looking up, he saw Luo Yun's left hand hanging down. The strong man sneered, Kid, as a swordsman, what else can you do if you lose one hand? I have plenty of tricks. Luo Yun replied, his momentum was not bad at all. But he is not so energetic in his heart. Losing one hand will have a huge impact on him. Although he is an Itoryu and can hold a sword with one right hand, there is a big difference between using a sword with two hands and using one hand. A big difference will greatly affect the use of moves. This strong man is experienced at first sight, and his attacks are aimed at his weak points. When ordinary people are injured, their first reaction is to retreat, but his first reaction is to fight back, exchanging injuries for injuries. Only people who often lick blood from their swords would do this. Really? It depends on your ability. Judging from the fight just now, your ability should be paramecia, and the key to your ability lies in these eyes. If there was a trick, you would have used it just now instead of using swordsmanship all the time. Zhuang Han analyzed lightly. He looked confident, as if he had taken control of the situation and had victory in his hands. Luo Yun didn't speak. No matter what he said at this time, it was nonsense. He rushed forward quickly, focused on the attack, jumped up, and volleyed over the head of the strong man. The long sword in his hand was released, and he held the hilt with his back hand, falling from the sky and stabbing the strong man in the head. The strong man sneered, swung his sword and swept it towards Luo Yun. Advertisement. Sherry non activated, Luo Yun found the strong man's flaw, and the long sword flipped and spun again, slashing the strong man's wrist at an extremely tricky angle that could not be defended, severing the arteries. Blood spurted out like a broken water pipe, and the strong man subconsciously pulled his hand away from the pain. How could Luo Yun give up this great opportunity? He slashed at the strong man's neck with his sword, hoping to kill the strong man with one move. Unexpectedly, when he saw the long sword coming, the strong man not only did not dodge, but smiled and said, Kid, you have too little experience, you fell into the trap. After the words fell, the strong man picked up the long knife with his right hand and swung it upward suddenly. When Luo Yun saw the other party laughing, he already felt something was wrong and quickly backed away, but it was still too late. The long knife struck, Luo Yun made a move to hold the sword to block it, but with only one right hand, his strength was too much. Clang! With a startling sound and flames blazing, the long sword came out of Luo Yun's hand, spun more than ten times like a windmill, and fell upside down on the ground. Luo Yun's tiger's mouth cracked with great force, blood stained the entire palm, and the pain was extremely painful. Die, kid! Unexpectedly, the strong man ignored the broken blood vessels in his left wrist and the blood surged wildly, and attacked with a knife, intending to kill him here first. At this moment, the ferocity of the strong man inspired the cruelty in Luo Yun's heart. Come on, who is afraid of whom? Either you die or I die, one of us must die here. Advertisement. 33 kill them all. No one left alive. 1. Advertisement. Raising his hand and taking out a shuriken, Luo Yun did not launch it immediately, he was a little hesitant. He still hasn't mastered this move, and sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't work. Forget it at normal times, but at this moment, if it doesn't work, it will be gone. If you don't use this trick, there are no other tricks. Let's give it a try. Gritting his teeth, Luo Yun Sherinan locked the trajectory of the strong man, and immediately raised his hand to shoot the shuriken, like a black lightning shot straight to the strong man's forehead. 
In the flash of lightning, the strong man tilted his head and dodged Luo Yun's shuriken. The strong man smiled proudly and said, Kid, do you think I didn't guard against your shuriken? Now let's see what other tricks you have. Who says I can't do anything? Luo Yun raised his head and smiled proudly. He held his right hand in the air and pulled it back suddenly. I saw the flying shuriken suddenly separated from the middle, and the five sharp corners of the shuriken split into five small shurikens. The tails of these five small shurikens were tied with an extremely thin, almost invisible to the naked eye, thin threads. The other end of these threads was held in Luo Yun's hand. When Luo Yun pulled back, the silk thread pulled the shuriken, and the shuriken flying forward was pulled by the thin thread and flew backward. Do shuriken. Seeing the smug smile on Luo Yun's face at the moment of death, the strong man was stunned for a moment. Does this kid have any other tricks? No matter what tricks he has, kill him first. This kid is a bit evil. I don't know if I keep him. Something happened. Advertisement. Thinking that the strong man no longer hesitated, he swung his sword and was about to kill Luo Yun. Suddenly he heard several sounds of breaking through the air from behind. The strong man subconsciously looked back. When he turned around, he saw five small shurikens flying towards him. The strong man was stunned and his face was full of disbelief. How could there be shurikens? Didn't he avoid the shurikens? At this time, everyone was fighting, and the shuriken flying from behind came from nowhere. But the shuriken obviously wouldn't tell him this answer. The five shurikens came at him like five black snakes. At such a close range, all five shurikens hit the strong man. Two shurikens hit the strong man's left shoulder, one shuriken hit the strong man's back, one shuriken hit the back of the strong man's head, and the most important one hit the strong man's neck. Plop. The strong man stood upright like a hard stick and fell down, raising a puff of dust and smoke. The fallen strong man did not die immediately. He pointed with difficulty to the shuriken stuck on his shoulder and shouted with his last strength. Why? Luo Yan's blood-stained right hand dragged his left hand, and he staggered up to the strong man and said, Before I die, I will let you understand what is going on. As he spoke, Luo Yun pulled hard with his right hand, and the three shurikens on the strong man's shoulders flew out and hung in the air. Under the reflection of the sun, the strong man lying on the ground finally saw the thin line behind the shuriken. At this moment, the strong man finally closed his eyes in understanding. He died unjustly. Advertisement. Phew. Seeing that the strong man was completely dead, Luo Yun finally stopped holding back and opened his mouth to spit out the blood accumulated in his chest. After spitting out the blood, Luo Yun's face immediately turned pale, but then turned rosy, and his breathing gradually became calmer. The other side, while Kuna was dealing with the four killers, her attention was distracted and staring at the other two sides. Seeing that Luo Yun was about to die at the hands of the strong man, Kuna subconsciously wanted to go over and support him. But with this move, Kuna suddenly revealed a flaw. How could the four killers miss this great opportunity? The four of them shouted in unison. Kill. With shouts of kill, the four of them slashed at Kuna from all sides with their swords. The sword flashed, blocking Kuna's retreat, leaving Kuna with nowhere to escape. With a little more force on her toes, Kuna jumped into the air and dodged the attacks of four broadswords. Lu Fengjin. With a shout, Kuna leaped to a certain height and fell from the sky. Advertisement. This is Kuna's strongest move. Luo Yun was defeated by this move in the past. He leaped in the air and then swooped down. Using gravity to increase his speed and strength, his sword moves became more flexible and changeable. It vaguely looked like a flying sword. It is a phoenix bird, so it is also called Lu Fengjin. It was extremely powerful and the sword moves were unpredictable. Even if Luo Yun had a sherry non, he couldn't see it clearly and tried his best to block it. Kuna and the killer figure passed each other, and with a flash of sword light, the killer's head fell to the ground, and his body collapsed to the ground. After killing a killer with one blow, Kuna put her toes on the ground, took advantage of the situation to spin, and swept out her long sword. Immediately there were three landing sounds, and the other three killers fell to the ground as soft as noodles, and the long knives in their hands fell. The wounds on the three of them were the same, all on their necks. The blood marks slowly separated and blood surged wildly. Looking at the four dead killers, blood seeped out from the corner of Kuna's mouth, and her face turned pale. But he couldn't stop the proud smile on his face, looking up at the sword covered in blood. He said to himself, I didn't expect the new move to be so powerful. Let's call this move Phoenix Tail Swing. Phew. Opening his mouth to spit out the suppressed blood, Luo Yun raised his hand to wipe the bloodline from the corner of his mouth. Covered in blood, he looked down at the dead strong man and laughed. With an arrogant laugh and a hint of madness, he said, If you want to kill me, you are not enough. Lao Zi is the protagonist from time travel. Do you know what a protagonist is, idiot? After venting his emotions, Luo Yun immediately released a lot of the negative feelings accumulated in his heart after killing someone for the first time. This kind of thing seems to have no impact. Advertisement. 34 kill them all. No one left alive. 2. Advertisement. But if you don't release it, it will remain accumulated in your mind, which is a big problem for your mentality. He collapsed on the ground with a plop. His whole body was sore and sore now, and he didn't want to move. It was impossible to support Jace and the others. Fortunately, Kuna also defeated her opponent. Seeing Kuna's last move with a sword and turning around to fight back, Luo Yun's face changed slightly, and he couldn't help but sigh at how strong he was. The sword slashed out without any warning, and the enemy had no time to react, killing three people instantly, all with one move on the same wound. Kuna has become stronger. After a battle, Kuna's sword moves can be performed smoothly and without any obstruction. It would have been impossible for Kuna to perform such moves so smoothly. Sure enough, fighting is the most motivating thing. Kuna has been practicing sword practice for seven years since she was three years old. Today's battle will refine Kuna's seven years of sword practice, eliminating the draws and leaving the essence. After this battle, Kuna will become stronger at a rapid speed, just by accumulating time and effort. It seems that it may be impossible to defeat Kuna next, and there is a long way to go. Advertisement. After dealing with the opponent, Kuna looked towards Luo Yun and found that Luo Yun had already dealt with the strong leader, but was seriously injured. At this time, Luo Yun shouted, I can just can't hold on anymore. Please go over and help. Okay. Kuna turned around and saw that the four people in Ikejis were all injured and had been forced to the foot of the car. If this continued, within half a minute, the four of them would be dead. He immediately flew forward and thrust out the long sword in his hand to block the sword of a killer who was about to hit Ike. The long sword danced like a spiritual snake, and the sword shadows danced all over the sky. Kuna slashed through the killer's chest with one sword, causing flesh and blood to flow freely. 
Blood surged wildly. The killer fell to the ground, struggled for a while, and died completely with his legs shaking. After saving Ike, Kona turned back and stabbed the killer who was dealing with Jace. The killer quickly dodged and avoided Kona's sword. At this time, the only three remaining killers also found that except for the three of them, the others were all dead. They were frightened and frightened. They had no desire to fight again. They looked at each other, turned around and ran away. Call out. Two shurikens were fired, and one hit a killer on the forehead. The killer died immediately. Under the inertia of running forward, his body took another two steps forward before falling to the ground. Another killer was shot in the knee, and fell to his knees with a pop. Luo Yun was seriously injured, and his accuracy was quite poor, with one of his two shurikens hitting the target. Advertisement. Kuna originally saw that the three killers wanted to retreat, so she had no intention of continuing the pursuit, but Luo Yun suddenly stopped the killers. Kuna looked at Luo Yun in shock and confusion. The bright eyes seemed to be asking Luo Yun why he wanted to kill these killers who were trying to escape. Seeing that the third killer was running away, Luo Yun lost track of him. Where did he have time to explain so much? He shouted anxiously, Kuna, leave the third one behind. Seeing how anxious Luo Yun was, Kona hesitated and jumped out, chasing the third killer. Being able to survive this time can be said to be due to Luo Yun. Without him, all of them would have died here. Since Luo Yun said that he would keep all the killers, he naturally had his intention. Unknowingly, Kona didn't realize that she already had basic trust in Luo Yun. Although she would hesitate when Luo Yun spoke, she would still follow Luo Yun's wishes. Gu Yuna quickly caught up with the third killer, silver light burst out, and sword shadows danced all over the sky. The killer persisted for more than ten moves before he was killed by Kona at his feet. His blood dyed the white snow under his feet red. Seeing that the third killer was also killed by Kona, Luo Yun breathed a sigh of relief. These people are all CP Cypherpole killers. If any of them escape, what happened today will be leaked, and then they will face CP Cypherpole. Pursuit and revenge. His hind dojo will inevitably be involved when the time comes. Although Koshiro is strong, but the opponent's CP is Cypherpole who relies on the world government, and the final result is really hard to say. Advertisement. After a long rest, Luo Yun walked up to the only killer who was still alive, and Kona also stepped back. Just as he was about to ask Luo Yun why, Luo Yun ignored the killer's plea for mercy and pierced the killer's throat with a sword. Blood splattered all over Luo Yun's face. Seeing Luo Yun kill the last killer without saying a word, Kona was shocked and immediately asked Luo Yun, Why did you kill these people? They all ran away, why did you kill them? Why? Luo Yun repeated the sentence, turned around and found a place to sit down, looked up at Kona, and chuckled, If we don't kill them, we will be the ones who die. But we have already won, defeated them all. Kona waved her hands and shouted, What's the use of defeating him? Luo Yun asked Kona, and Kona was speechless. Luo Yun added, Looking at the way these people act, they are organized and orderly. They are professional killers at first glance. There must be an organization behind such people. If any of them escape, please report what happened today. When the time comes, not only us but also the dojo and everyone will face their revenge. Kona's face changed drastically. She was still young and had never thought that far ahead. When she thought of a powerful obstacle that would deal with everyone in the dojo, that scene, just thinking about it, Kona felt the chill rising from her heels. Advertisement. 34 killed them all. No one left alive. 2. Advertisement. But if you don't release it, it will remain accumulated in your mind, which is a big problem for your mentality. He collapsed on the ground with a plop. His whole body was sore and sore now, and he didn't want to move. It was impossible to support Jace and the others. Fortunately, Kuna also defeated her opponent. Seeing Kuna's last move with a sword and turning around to fight back, Luo Yun's face changed slightly, and he couldn't help but sigh at how strong he was. The sword slashed out without any warning, and the enemy had no time to react, killing three people instantly, all with one move on the same wound. Kuna has become stronger. After a battle, Kuna's sword moves can be performed smoothly and without any obstruction. It would have been impossible for Kuna to perform such moves so smoothly. Sure enough, fighting is the most motivating thing. Kuna has been practicing sword practice for seven years since she was three years old. Today's battle will refine Kuna's seven years of sword practice, eliminating the dross and leaving the essence. After this battle, Kuna will become stronger at a rapid speed, just by accumulating time and effort. It seems that it may be impossible to defeat Kuna next, and there is a long way to go. Advertisement. After dealing with the opponent, Kuna looked towards Luo Yun and found that Luo Yun had already dealt with the strong leader, but was seriously injured. At this time, Luo Yun shouted, I can just can't hold on anymore, please go over and help. Okay. Kuna turned around and saw that the four people in Ikeji's were all injured and had been forced to the foot of the car. If this continued, within half a minute, the four of them would be dead. He immediately flew forward and thrust out the long sword in his hand to block the sword of a killer who was about to hit Ike. The long sword danced like a spiritual snake, and the sword shadows danced all over the sky. Kuna slashed through the killer's chest with one sword, causing flesh and blood to flow freely. Blood surged wildly. The killer fell to the ground, struggled for a while, and died completely with his legs shaking. After saving Ike, Kuna turned back and stabbed the killer who was dealing with Jace. The killer quickly dodged and avoided Kuna's sword. At this time, the only three remaining killers also found that except for the three of them, the others were all dead. They were frightened and frightened. They had no desire to fight again. They looked at each other, turned around and ran away. Call out. Two shurikens were fired, and one hit a killer on the forehead. The killer died immediately. Under the inertia of running forward, his body took another two steps forward before falling to the ground. Another killer was shot in the knee, and fell to his knees with a pop. Luo Yun was seriously injured, and his accuracy was quite poor, with one of his two shurikens hitting the target. Advertisement. Kuna originally saw that the three killers wanted to retreat, so she had no intention of continuing the pursuit, but Luo Yun suddenly stopped the killers. Kuna looked at Luo Yun in shock and confusion. The bright eyes seemed to be asking Luo Yun why he wanted to kill these killers who were trying to escape. Seeing that the third killer was running away, Luo Yun lost track of him. Where did he have time to explain so much? He shouted anxiously, Kuna, leave the third one behind. Seeing how anxious Luo Yun was, Kuna hesitated and jumped out, chasing the third killer. Being able to survive this time can be said to be due to Luo Yun. Without him, all of them would have died here. 
Since Luo Yun said that he would keep all the killers, he naturally had his intention. Unknowingly, Kuna didn't realize that she already had basic trust in Luo Yun. Although she would hesitate when Luo Yun spoke, she would still follow Luo Yun's wishes. Gu Yuna quickly caught up with the third killer, silver light burst out, and sword shadows danced all over the sky. The killer persisted for more than ten moves before he was killed by Kuna at his feet. His blood dyed the white snow under his feet red. Seeing that the third killer was also killed by Kuna, Luo Yun breathed a sigh of relief. These people are all CP Cypher Pole killers. If any of them escape, what happened today will be leaked, and then they will face CP Cypher Pole. Pursuit and revenge. His hind dojo will inevitably be involved when the time comes. Although Koshiro is strong, but the opponent's CP is Cypher Pole who relies on the world government, and the final result is really hard to say. Advertisement. After a long rest, Luo Yun walked up to the only killer who was still alive, and Kona also stepped back. Just as he was about to ask Luo Yun why, Luo Yun ignored the killer's plea for mercy and pierced the killer's throat with a sword. Blood splattered all over Luo Yun's face. Seeing Luo Yun kill the last killer without saying a word, Kona was shocked and immediately asked Luo Yun, Why did you kill these people? They all ran away, why did you kill them? Why? Luo Yun repeated the sentence, turned around and found a place to sit down, looked up at Kona, and chuckled, If we don't kill them, we will be the ones who die. But we have already won, defeated them all. Kona waved her hands and shouted, What's the use of defeating him? Luo Yun asked Kona, and Kona was speechless. Luo Yun added, Looking at the way these people act, they are organized and orderly. They are professional killers at first glance. There must be an organization behind such people. If any of them escape, please report what happened today. When the time comes, not only us but also the dojo and everyone will face their revenge. Kona's face changed drastically. She was still young and had never thought that far ahead. When she thought of a powerful obstacle that would deal with everyone in the dojo, that scene, just thinking about it, Kona felt a chill rising from her heels. Advertisement. 35 kill them all. No one left alive. 3. Advertisement. For our safety, for the safety of everyone, we must kill them and prevent today's events from being leaked, including us. Once leaked, it will be dangerous not only to ourselves, but also to our friends and family, life will be in danger. Luo Yun continued. He glanced at everyone and stated the seriousness of the matter, just to remind these people who had not experienced many ups and downs in life and ask them to keep it secret. CP Cypherpole as Cypherpole under the world government, their power is too strong. There are really not many forces in the world that can ignore them. Kuna didn't say anything anymore, she was not stupid. As soon as Luo Yun said it, she understood the seriousness of the matter. After taking a few breaths, Luo Yun looked at the corpses strewn on the ground and ordered to Jifan, carry all the corpses together and burn them on fire. After tonight, everything will be buried in the snow, under. With what Luo Yun said just now, no one objected to Luo Yun's decision. The seriously injured Jace, Ike, and Luo Yun were all lying down to rest. They didn't even have the strength to move. Only Kuna and two adult apprentices had the strength. Kuna had to help stop the bleeding of the girl on the grain truck, and it was left to the two adult apprentices to carry the corpses. Fortunately, the corpses were not far apart, so it took a while. Advertisement. Hey, are you okay? Luo Yun asked with concern after calling to Kuna who was about to climb into the car. Faced with being surrounded by multiple killers, Kuna won the final victory, but she was also injured. Her arms and right calf were slashed, and Kuna now walks with a limp. Fortunately, it's not a big problem. Kuna said calmly and climbed on top of the carriage. After being rejected, Luo Yun shrugged. He was used to Kona's aloofness, and it was rare to be able to respond to him now. After a while, the fourteen corpses were piled into a small queue. The two apprentices poured the oil they carried with them on the pile of corpses, and Luo Yun lit the fire. The fire was rising, and there was oil. Even in winter, the fire burned very quickly, and the body and the surrounding area were burned to ashes. But after tonight, a heavy snow will fall, and all traces will be hidden under the white snow, and no one will find these ashes. When the snow melts next spring, under the irrigation of these ashes, the grass seeds in the ground will grow more lush than in nearby places. Okay, let's go. Advertisement. After checking that everything was taken care of, Luo Yun shouted and everyone got on the carriage and drove the carriage back. Due to the delay caused by this matter, it was already dark when Luo Yun and the others returned to Shimatsuki village. The cold wind was howling and the snow was flying. There was no one outside the village. Everyone was hiding in the heated rooms. This is just right, as it saves them from having to find a way to hide when they enter the village. Who knows how big a sensation they will cause if they enter the village one by one with injuries. After passing the village, we finally arrived at the Ishine Dojo on the hillside at the end of the village. It was so late, and there was only light in a few places in the dojo. There were two lanterns at the gate swaying in the cold wind. After parking the carriage, Luo Yun jumped out of the carriage, scratching his body and grinning in pain. Gritting his teeth and enduring the pain, Luo Yun came to the door and patted the door hard. The door opened immediately, and a sleepy apprentice emerged. Luo Yun. Seeing that it was Luo Yun, he woke up instantly and was about to show a happy smile on his face, but he was shocked when he saw that Luo Yun was covered in blood. Frightened, he turned around and ran towards the courtyard, shouting into the lighted room inside, Owner, owner, Luo Yun and the others are back, but they are covered in blood and all of them have injuries. Advertisement. Before the words were blown away in the cold wind, Koshiro walked out in pajamas, his brows furrowed and his gentle smile was gone. Without saying a word, he immediately walked towards the door with a worried look on his face. Outside the door, Luo Yun heard the shouting inside and turned around to call everyone to come down. He and Kona entered the dojo first. Ike and Jace walked behind each other, supporting each other. An adult apprentice followed behind, supporting the seriously injured girl. When Koshiro came to the door, Luo Yun and Kona happened to cross the door with blood and injuries on their bodies. Koshiro's brows were already furrowed and he immediately quickened his pace and reached out to support Kona and Luo Yun. Master, something happened on the road? We were attacked by bandits, Luo Yun raised his head and said. There are many people talking in the dojo, and they all have injuries. It is impossible to hide them. But if there are many people talking, who knows whether it will be leaked. 
So on the way back, everyone agreed to say that they were attacked by bandits on the road, and the girl was also attacked by bandits. Everyone fought off the bandits, and seeing that the girl was seriously injured, they brought the girl back for treatment. Don't talk yet. Let's talk after we get in. After speaking out to stop Luo Yun, Koshiro walked into the room holding one in each hand. The apprentices' panic shouting alarmed not only Koshiro, but also the other apprentices who were also worried about Luo Yun and others, including Zoro, who had not slept much. They also ran out and saw Luo Yun and others who were going to buy food, all injured. They were also shocked, and at the same time they were curious about what happened to Luo Yun and the others on the way to buy food, and why everyone was injured. Advertisement. 35 kill them all. No one left alive. 3. Advertisement. For our safety, for the safety of everyone, we must kill them and prevent today's events from being leaked, including us. Once leaked, it will be dangerous not only to ourselves, but also to our friends and family, life will be in danger. Luo Yun continued. He glanced at everyone and stated the seriousness of the matter, just to remind these people who had not experienced many ups and downs in life and asked them to keep it secret. CP Cypherpole as Cypherpole under the world government, their power is too strong. There are really not many forces in the world that can ignore them. Kuna didn't say anything anymore, she was not stupid. As soon as Luo Yun said it, she understood the seriousness of the matter. After taking a few breaths, Luo Yun looked at the corpses strewn on the ground and ordered to Jifan, carry all the corpses together and burn them on fire. After tonight, everything will be buried in the snow, under. With what Luo Yun said just now, no one objected to Luo Yun's decision. The seriously injured Jace, Ike, and Luo Yun were all lying down to rest. They didn't even have the strength to move. Only Kuna and two adult apprentices had the strength. Kuna had to help stop the bleeding of the girl on the grain truck, and it was left to the two adult apprentices to carry the corpses. Fortunately, the corpses were not far apart, so it took a while. Advertisement. Hey, are you okay? Luo Yun asked with concern after calling to Kuna who was about to climb into the car. Faced with being surrounded by multiple killers, Kuna won the final victory, but she was also injured. Her arms and right calf were slashed, and Kuna now walks with a limp. Fortunately, it's not a big problem. Kuna said calmly and climbed on top of the carriage. After being rejected, Luo Yun shrugged. He was used to Kuna's aloofness, and it was rare to be able to respond to him now. After a while, the fourteen corpses were piled into a small queue. The two apprentices poured the oil they carried with them on the pile of corpses, and Luo Yun lit the fire. The fire was rising, and there was oil. Even in winter, the fire burned very quickly, and the body and the surrounding area were burned to ashes. But after tonight, a heavy snow will fall, and all traces will be hidden under the white snow, and no one will find these ashes. When the snow melts next spring, under the irrigation of these ashes, the grass seeds in the ground will grow more lush than in nearby places. Okay, let's go. Advertisement. After checking that everything was taken care of, Luo Yun shouted and everyone got on the carriage and drove the carriage back. Due to the delay caused by this matter, it was already dark when Luo Yun and the others returned to Shimatsuki village. The cold wind was howling and the snow was flying. There was no one outside the village. Everyone was hiding in the heated rooms. This is just right, as it saves them from having to find a way to hide when they enter the village. Who knows how big a sensation they will cause if they enter the village one by one with injuries. After passing the village, we finally arrived at the Ishine Dojo on the hillside at the end of the village. It was so late, and there was only light in a few places in the dojo. There were two lanterns at the gate swaying in the cold wind. After parking the carriage, Luo Yun jumped out of the carriage, scratching his body and grinning in pain. Gritting his teeth and enduring the pain, Luo Yun came to the door and patted the door hard. The door opened immediately, and a sleepy apprentice emerged. Luo Yun. Seeing that it was Luo Yun, he woke up instantly and was about to show a happy smile on his face, but he was shocked when he saw that Luo Yun was covered in blood. Frightened, he turned around and ran towards the courtyard, shouting into the lighted room inside, Owner, owner, Luo Yun and the others are back, but they are covered in blood and all of them have injuries. Advertisement. Before the words were blown away in the cold wind, Koshiro walked out in pajamas, his brows furrowed and his gentle smile was gone. Without saying a word, he immediately walked towards the door with a worried look on his face. Outside the door, Luo Yun heard the shouting inside and turned around to call everyone to come down. He and Kuna entered the dojo first. Ike and Jace walked behind each other, supporting each other. An adult apprentice followed behind, supporting the seriously injured girl. When Koshiro came to the door, Luo Yun and Kuna happened to cross the door with blood and injuries on their bodies. Koshiro's brows were already furrowed and he immediately quickened his pace and reached out to support Kuna and Luo Yun. Master, something happened on the road? We were attacked by bandits, Luo Yun raised his head and said. There are many people talking in the dojo, and they all have injuries. It is impossible to hide them, but if there are many people talking, who knows whether it will be leaked. So on the way back, everyone agreed to say that they were attacked by bandits on the road, and the girl was also attacked by bandits. Everyone fought off the bandits, and seeing that the girl was seriously injured, they brought the girl back for treatment. Don't talk yet. Let's talk after we get in. After speaking out to stop Luo Yun, Koshiro walked into the room holding one in each hand. The apprentices' panic shouting alarmed not only Koshiro, but also the other apprentices who were also worried about Luo Yun and others, including Zoro, who had not slept much. They also ran out and saw Luo Yun and others who were going to buy food, all injured. They were also shocked, and at the same time they were curious about what happened to Luo Yun and the others on the way to buy food, and why everyone was injured. Advertisement. 36 Shimatsuki Origin 1. Advertisement. Zoro stood in front of the crowd. He was the first one to rush out. When he saw injured Luo Yun and Kuna, Zoro ran to Luo Yun in a few steps. What happened to you guys? Luo Yun Zoro asked urgently. Luo Yun looked at Zoro and smiled bitterly Kaido, I'll tell you when I get in. The injured people were helped into the room, including the seriously injured girl. The other apprentices were ordered by Koshiro to move the food to the granary, leaving only Zoro and the injured Luo Yun in the room. It was snowing heavily outside, and many apprentices worked together to quickly move the grain into the granary. Three carriages were also pulled to the stables by dedicated personnel to feed them with grain and grass. The room is as warm as spring. 
Koshiro is treating the injuries of the injured Luo Yun and others. As the owner of the field, he is skilled in kendo and is also a doctor with good medical skills. The apprentices in the kendo hall fight against each other, and the attacks are not serious or serious. Injuries are inevitable, and Koshiro handles them. While bandaging Kuna, Koshiro lowered his head and asked, Luo Yun, can you tell me now what's going on? Zoro looked at Luo Yun with curiosity. If Koshiro hadn't been there, he would have been unable to hold back and asked. Advertisement. People like Luo Yun went out fine, but when they came back, everyone was seriously injured. Even Luo Yun and Kuna were seriously injured. It looked like they had gone through a fierce battle. As for the bandit attack, Zoro didn't believe it. Although there were six of Luo Yun and the others, each of them had been practicing in the dojo for several years. It was not a problem to deal with ordinary people. What's more, with Kuna and Luo Yun here, ordinary bandits were no match for them. They could bandits couldn't hurt them like this. Luo Yun had nothing to hide from Koshiro and had to explain everything to Koshiro. So Luo Yun bought them food from the town, and because of the ban, they ate the dry food they carried with them not far from the town. Then the girl's body fell from the sky, and the killers appeared and killed everyone. They were forced to fight back in desperation, killing everyone. Killer. Luo Yun recounted everything in detail without hiding anything. One was because there was no need to hide, and the other was that everyone watched what happened, so he couldn't hide anything. Koshiro didn't speak, just listened quietly, but the more he listened, the more he frowned. And Zoro clenched his hands into fists as he listened, with both annoyance and regret on his face. If he had known that something like this would happen, he should have followed up anyway and fought with a group of killers. What a great opportunity for actual combat. If it were another apprentice who heard what happened, his first reaction would be to be glad that he was not chosen to buy food. But Zoro is different. Far from being timid, Zoro dares to fight, is warlike, and will fight in every battle. Advertisement. Especially with Kuna and Luo Yun pressing down on him, Zoro worked hard to become stronger every day just to be able to defeat these two people. After this battle, Kuna and Luo Yun will definitely improve rapidly. Zoro understands this very well, and the gap between him and them is likely to widen even further. This is why Zoro is so upset and regretful. Not talking about Zoro, Koshiro said after listening, Luo Yun, you are right. Those people cannot escape. If one escapes, there will be endless disasters. Kuna felt a little decadent when she heard her father's praise. Her father usually greeted people with a smile, but he was very strict and rarely praised others. She has only received one praise so far. This is not enough to make Kuna like this, mainly because her hesitation in the end almost allowed the last killer to escape. At that time, she also questioned Luo Yun because Luo Yun killed the killer. Now her father praises Luo Yun for this, making Kuna feel stupid. The first day her father taught her swordsmanship, he warned her. The sword is a murderous weapon. Once you hold the sword, you will throw away the kindness and indecisiveness of a woman. Any hesitation and sympathy in the battle may lead to death. She had heard this sentence hundreds of times after studying swordsmanship for several years, but at the last moment, she felt sympathy for the enemy who wanted to kill her. If Luo Yun hadn't spoken out in the end, she would have let the killer go. As a result, Kuna was only annoyed. Advertisement. Looking at the apprentices and disciples in the room, Koshiro reminded again, this matter is only known to the people in this room. After everyone leaves, you cannot leak a word. You must forget this matter from your heart. If you meet someone who asks, according to what Luo Yun prepared, you also know the consequences if it is discovered, so everyone must keep the secret 100%, and no one can mention it. Yes. Everyone responded in unison. Okay, you all go back and rest. Don't practice for these two days. Take good care of your body first. A gentle smile appeared on Koshiro's face again, and he narrowed his eyes and waved his hand, indicating that everyone could leave. Luo Yun stood up. A movement of his body touched the wound, and the pain that had been mild became severe again. Especially after applying medicine, the effect of the medicine made the wound more painful. He called to Zoro who was getting up and said, Zoro, help me down. I don't, you go alone. Zoro rolled his eyes. He is in a bad mood right now. If Luo Yun hadn't called him a wanderer, he would have followed him to buy food this time. Now he wants to punch Luo Yun in the face that deserves a beating, and he also wants me to hold him up. Thinking too much. Advertisement. 36 Shimatsuki Origin 1. Advertisement. Zoro stood in front of the crowd. He was the first one to rush out. When he saw injured Luo Yun and Kuna, Zoro ran to Luo Yun in a few steps. What happened to you guys? Luo Yun Zoro asked urgently. Luo Yun looked at Zoro and smiled bitterly Kaido, I'll tell you when I get in. The injured people were helped into the room, including the seriously injured girl. The other apprentices were ordered by Koshiro to move the food to the granary, leaving only Zoro and the injured Luo Yun in the room. It was snowing heavily outside, and many apprentices worked together to quickly move the grain into the granary. Three carriages were also pulled to the stables by dedicated personnel to feed them with grain and grass. The room is as warm as spring. Koshiro is treating the injuries of the injured Luo Yun and others. As the owner of the field, he is skilled in kendo and is also a doctor with good medical skills. The apprentices in the kendo hall fight against each other, and the attacks are not serious or serious. Injuries are inevitable, and Koshiro handles them. While bandaging Kuna, Koshiro lowered his head and asked, Luo Yun, can you tell me now what's going on? Zoro looked at Luo Yun with curiosity. If Koshiro hadn't been there, he would have been unable to hold back and asked. Advertisement. People like Luo Yun went out fine, but when they came back, everyone was seriously injured. Even Luo Yun and Kuna were seriously injured. It looked like they had gone through a fierce battle. As for the bandit attack, Zoro didn't believe it. Although there were six of Luo Yun and the others, each of them had been practicing in the dojo for several years. It was not a problem to deal with ordinary people. What's more, with Kuna and Luo Yun here, ordinary bandits were no match for them. They could bandits couldn't hurt them like this. Luo Yun had nothing to hide from Koshiro and had to explain everything to Koshiro. So Luo Yun bought them food from the town, and because of the ban, they ate the dry food they carried with them not far from the town. Then the girl's body fell from the sky, and the killers appeared and killed everyone. They were forced to fight back in desperation, killing everyone. Killer. Luo Yun recounted everything in detail without hiding anything. One was because there was no need to hide, and the other was that everyone watched what happened, so he couldn't hide anything. Koshiro didn't speak, just listened quietly, but the more he listened, the more he frowned. 
and Zoro clenched his hands into fists as he listened, with both annoyance and regret on his face. If he had known that something like this would happen, he should have followed up anyway and fought with a group of killers. What a great opportunity for actual combat. If it were another apprentice who heard what happened, his first reaction would be to be glad that he was not chosen to buy food. But Zoro is different. Far from being timid, Zoro dares to fight, is warlike, and will fight in every battle. Advertisement. Especially with Kuna and Luo Yun pressing down on him, Zoro worked hard to become stronger every day just to be able to defeat these two people. After this battle, Kuna and Luo Yun will definitely improve rapidly. Zoro understands this very well, and the gap between him and them is likely to widen even further. This is why Zoro is so upset and regretful. Not talking about Zoro, Koshiro said after listening, Luo Yun, you are right. Those people cannot escape. If one escapes, there will be endless disasters. Kuna felt a little decadent when she heard her father's praise. Her father usually greeted people with a smile, but he was very strict and rarely praised others. She has only received one praise so far. This is not enough to make Kuna like this, mainly because her hesitation in the end almost allowed the last killer to escape. At that time, she also questioned Luo Yun because Luo Yun killed the killer. Now her father praises Luo Yun for this, making Kuna feel stupid. The first day her father taught her swordsmanship, he warned her. The sword is a murderous weapon. Once you hold the sword, you will throw away the kindness and indecisiveness of a woman. Any hesitation and sympathy in the battle may lead to death. She had heard this sentence hundreds of times after studying swordsmanship for several years, but at the last moment, she felt sympathy for the enemy who wanted to kill her. If Luo Yun hadn't spoken out in the end, she would have let the killer go. As a result, Kuna was only annoyed. Advertisement. Looking at the apprentices and disciples in the room, Koshiro reminded again, this matter is only known to the people in this room. After everyone leaves, you cannot leak a word. You must forget this matter from your heart. If you meet someone who asks, according to what Luo Yun prepared, you also know the consequences if it is discovered, so everyone must keep the secret 100%, and no one can mention it. Yes, everyone responded in unison. Okay, you all go back and rest. Don't practice for these two days. Take good care of your body first. A gentle smile appeared on Koshiro's face again, and he narrowed his eyes and waved his hand, indicating that everyone could leave. Luo Yun stood up. A movement of his body touched the wound, and the pain that had been mild became severe again. Especially after applying medicine, the effect of the medicine made the wound more painful. He called to Zoro who was getting up and said, Zoro, help me down. I don't, you go alone. Zoro rolled his eyes. He is in a bad mood right now. If Luo Yun hadn't called him a wanderer, he would have followed him to buy food this time. Now he wants to punch Luo Yun in the face that deserves a beating, and he also wants me to hold him up. Thinking too much. Advertisement. 37 Shimatsuki Origin 2. Advertisement. Little brother, big brother is already like this. You can't do this, Luo Yun said with a grin. You. Hearing Luo Yun mention brother again, Zoro became even more angry, clenched his fists and glared at Luo Yun. Luo Yun didn't seem to see Zoro's angry gaze, shook his head and sighed, Hey, the younger brother doesn't even help the elder brother, you are making the elder brother very cold. Han Xian, you idiot. Zoro cursed in his heart, you are so shameless, you call me little brother in front of me every day and call yourself brother. Are you so shameless? Brother, I. Seeing that Luo Yun wanted to talk, Zoro finally couldn't bear it anymore. He gritted his teeth and walked to Luo Yun, put his arm around Luo Yun's shoulders, and lifted him up hard. When the wound was involved, Luo Yun grimaced in pain, but still kept a smile on his face. Advertisement. Let's go, brother. Zoro's mood immediately improved and he smiled softly. The strength in his hands was not weak. The harder he applied, the more pain Luo Yun felt. Okay, let's go, Luo Yun smiled through gritted teeth. The two of them walked out of the door like this. Seeing how interesting these two people were, everyone in the room couldn't help laughing. Everyone said goodbye one by one and Koshiro left. When Kuna was about to leave, Koshiro called out to Kuna. The smile on his face disappeared, and he changed from the gentleness before, and said seriously, Kuna, do you know where you went wrong this time? Kuna turned around, knelt down, lowered his head and admitted his mistake. Father, I should not forget your teachings, forget that the sword is a murderous weapon, and should not have any sympathy when dealing with the enemy. Seeing that Kuna knew the mistake he had made, Koshiro's face softened slightly. Seeing Kuna filled with regret, Koshiro found it difficult to express the lesson that came to his lips. Sighing, he raised his hand and said, Get up. You are just a child after all. You have not experienced many things. You still don't understand. I shouldn't be so strict with you. No. Advertisement. Kuna shook her head and refused, saying seriously, Father, I was wrong and not qualified to stand up. Although I am a child, Luo Yun can do it, and I should do it too. My father told me this sentence on the first day I practiced sword play, and he has always said this to me, but when I actually faced the enemy, I hesitated and sympathized. This is a mistake that I absolutely should not make. Koshiro is serious about his daughter because of Luo Yun, but Koshiro doesn't know what to say. Could it be that he told Kuna that Luo Yun is different and you can't compare with him? Who knows what the competitive daughter will do? Now it seems that Luo Yun has become Kuna's curse. Finally, someone can suppress Kuna. I just don't know if this is a good thing. Forget it, at least it's a good thing now. As for the rest, time will tell. His face turned serious, and Koshiro said solemnly, Kuna, do you know why I said this to you on your first day of sword training? My father must have had the same experience. Kuna is smart and has already guessed some things. Yes, Koshiro nodded and told a story. About 40 years ago, your grandfather ran away from the family and came to East Blue, where he built a dojo and gave birth to me. Grandpa's swordsmanship was strong and his sword-making skills were superb. Many people came here because of his fame, and a village was slowly built here. Grandpa named it Shimatsuki. I grew up in the Shimatsuki village. But 20 years ago, I went to sea and went to the Grand Line to find my own clan. After four years of ups and downs, I finally found the Shimatsuki family that my grandfather left. Advertisement. But at that time, the country where my family lived was stolen by conspiracy. For the future of the country, and in order to wait for the adults who would inherit the country to appear, some people and I began to resist. I faced countless powerful enemies without hesitation. At that time, I had a group of partners who could put our lives at risk for each other. 
We fought against these powerful enemies that invaded our homeland for our dreams and beliefs. During the battle, a partner and I faced an enemy. He was very strong, and the two of us worked together to defeat him. When we were about to behead him in the end, he begged me for mercy. I hesitated. At this time, he suddenly Baokai stabbed me with a knife, and my friend blocked the knife for me with his life. I killed the enemy, but my friend also fell in my arms. Because of my hesitation, not only did I almost kill myself, but I also killed my partner. At this point, Koshiro paused, his voice was low, and his eyes flashed with tears of regret even after 16 years. This was Kuna's father's emotion that she had never seen in her memory. Kuna was surprised and listened to every word carefully. She had never known that her father had this past, and she had never heard her father mention it in the slightest. Koshiro continued, the enemy is too powerful. The master who should inherit the country has not returned yet. No one in the entire country is his opponent. We failed. Only a few people escaped, and I was one of them. Since that incident, my swordsmanship has improved greatly, but what's the use? My dead companions cannot be resurrected, and I vow not to fight with a sword again for twenty years. Then we fled all the way, dying and scattering, and finally only your mother and I returned to the ashram and gave birth to you. Advertisement. 37 Shimatsuki Origin 2. Advertisement. Little brother, big brother is already like this, you can't do this, Luo Yun said with a grin. You. Hearing Luo Yun mention brother again, Zoro became even more angry, clenched his fists and glared at Luo Yun. Luo Yun didn't seem to see Zoro's angry gaze, shook his head and sighed, Hey, the younger brother doesn't even help the elder brother, you are making the elder brother very cold. Han Xian, you idiot. Zoro cursed in his heart, you are so shameless, you call me little brother in front of me every day and call yourself brother. Are you so shameless? Brother, I. Seeing that Luo Yun wanted to talk, Zoro finally couldn't bear it anymore. He gritted his teeth and walked to Luo Yun, put his arm around Luo Yun's shoulders, and lifted him up hard. When the wound was involved, Luo Yun grimaced in pain, but still kept a smile on his face. Advertisement. Let's go, brother. Zoro's mood immediately improved and he smiled softly. The strength in his hands was not weak. The harder he applied, the more pain Luo Yun felt. Okay, let's go, Luo Yun smiled through gritted teeth. The two of them walked out of the door like this. Seeing how interesting these two people were, everyone in the room couldn't help laughing. Everyone said goodbye one by one and Koshiro left. When Kuna was about to leave, Koshiro called out to Kuna. The smile on his face disappeared, and he changed from the gentleness before, and said seriously, Kuna, do you know where you went wrong this time? Kuna turned around, knelt down, lowered his head and admitted his mistake. Father, I should not forget your teachings, forget that the sword is a murderous weapon, and should not have any sympathy when dealing with the enemy. Seeing that Kuna knew the mistake he had made, Koshiro's face softened slightly. Seeing Kuna filled with regret, Koshiro found it difficult to express the lesson that came to his lips. Sighing, he raised his hand and said, Get up. You are just a child after all. You have not experienced many things. You still don't understand. I shouldn't be so strict with you. No. Advertisement. Kuna shook her head and refused, saying seriously, Father, I was wrong and not qualified to stand up. Although I am a child, Luo Yun can do it, and I should do it too. My father told me this sentence on the first day I practiced sword play, and he has always said this to me, but when I actually faced the enemy, I hesitated and sympathized. This is a mistake that I absolutely should not make. Koshiro is serious about his daughter because of Luo Yun, but Koshiro doesn't know what to say. Could it be that he told Kuna that Luo Yun is different and you can't compare with him? Who knows what the competitive daughter will do? Now it seems that Luo Yun has become Kuna's curse. Finally, someone can suppress Kuna. I just don't know if this is a good thing. Forget it, at least it's a good thing now. As for the rest, time will tell. His face turned serious, and Koshiro said solemnly, Kuna, do you know why I said this to you on your first day of sword training? My father must have had the same experience. Kuna is smart and has already guessed some things. Yes, Koshiro nodded and told a story. About 40 years ago, your grandfather ran away from the family and came to East Blue, where he built a dojo and gave birth to me. Grandpa's swordsmanship was strong and his sword-making skills were superb. Many people came here because of his fame, and a village was slowly built here. Grandpa named it Shimatsuki. I grew up in the Shimatsuki village. But 20 years ago, I went to sea and went to the Grand Line to find my own clan. After four years of ups and downs, I finally found the Shimatsuki family that my grandfather left. Advertisement. But at that time, the country where my family lived was stolen by conspiracy. For the future of the country, and in order to wait for the adults who would inherit the country to appear, some people and I began to resist. I faced countless powerful enemies without hesitation. At that time, I had a group of partners who could put our lives at risk for each other. We fought against these powerful enemies that invaded our homeland for our dreams and beliefs. During the battle, a partner and I faced an enemy. He was very strong, and the two of us worked together to defeat him. When we were about to behead him in the end, he begged me for mercy. I hesitated. At this time, he suddenly Baokai stabbed me with a knife, and my friend blocked the knife for me with his life. I killed the enemy, but my friend also fell in my arms. Because of my hesitation, not only did I almost kill myself, but I also killed my partner. At this point, Koshiro paused, his voice was low, and his eyes flashed with tears of regret even after 16 years. This was Kuna's father's emotion that she had never seen in her memory. Kuna was surprised and listened to every word carefully. She had never known that her father had this past, and she had never heard her father mention it in the slightest. Koshiro continued, the enemy is too powerful. The master who should inherit the country has not returned yet. No one in the entire country is his opponent. We failed. Only a few people escaped, and I was one of them. Since that incident, my swordsmanship has improved greatly, but what's the use? My dead companions cannot be resurrected, and I vow not to fight with a sword again for twenty years. Then we fled all the way, dying and scattering, and finally only your mother and I returned to the ashram and gave birth to you. Advertisement. 38 Nico Robin. Advertisement. 
Kona was extremely shocked. She didn't expect that her father's past was like this, and that her father was not from Shimatsuki village. Shimatsuki village was established because of her grandfather, and there was such a secret in it. Looking at the shocked Kona, Koshiro said, I originally waited for you to grow up before telling you about these things, but something like this happened today, so I decided to tell you first. After this experience, you will probably know many things too. I have my own considerations and thoughts, and I have some things to say to you. But one thing you must remember is that the sword is a murderous weapon. When you hold the sword and face the enemy, you cannot have the slightest hesitation or sympathy. Otherwise, in the end, you are likely to kill more than just yourself. Sympathy for the enemy is cruelty to myself and my friends. I understand, father, I won't make this kind of stupid mistake again. Kona put her hands on her knees and nodded seriously. She had long been extremely upset, and when she heard what her father said, she vowed never to hold back again. Little did he know that this extraordinary day would shape a female swordsman who would be feared in the future. Okay, you go and have a rest early. Don't practice sword practice these two days. It's the time when your bones are growing and it's easy to hurt your body. Seeing that it was getting late, Koshiro gave some instructions and waved his hand for Kona to retreat. Father, please rest early. Kona stood up and left. Just as she was about to go out, she suddenly stopped and turned around and asked, Father, why is the village named Shimatsuki? And my life experience. Koshiro didn't answer Kuna right away. He hesitated for a moment before giving an answer that wasn't an answer. Advertisement. One day, when you go to the new world and have the opportunity to enter a country called Wanakuni, you will know. There was a snowstorm all night last night, and when it dawned the next day, the sky and the earth were all white, and the earth seemed to have been covered with a snow-white carpet overnight. A room somewhere in the dojo? Warm sunlight breaks in through the gap in the slightly opened window, jumps on the floor tiles, and sprinkles on the head of the bed. The girl lying on the bed made a slight sound. After a while, the girl slowly opened her eyes, which were bright and shiny. The girl closed her eyes for too long, and the sunlight coming in from the window was a bit dazzling. The girl closed her eyes again, opened and closed them several times before she could adapt to the light. Standing up slightly, the girl looked around. Everything was unfamiliar. She raised her hand to rub her painful head. She remembered that she was chased by CP Cypherpole, fell into the hillside, and then lost consciousness. Where is she now? CP Cypherpole's cell? But this room was warm and homey, not like a prison cell at all. Click. At this moment, the door of the room was pushed open from the outside. The girl was subconsciously alert. She looked at the door and saw a child with his left hand wrapped in bandages and walking in with food in one hand. It was Luo Yun who came in. Luo Yun walked into the door and saw that the girl had woken up and was stunned subconsciously. Advertisement. Then he put the food on the middle table and walked to the girl's side. Looking at the girl's alert look, Luo Yun showed what he thought was a gentle smile. You're awake. Your face is rosy. It seems you're recovering well. There shouldn't be any big problems. I'll ask someone to check on you. Wait, kid. When the girl saw Luo Yun turning around to leave, she raised her hand and called out to Luo Yun. My name is Luo Yun. Luo Yun turned around and introduced himself. A flash of embarrassment flashed across the girl's face. She retracted her hand and asked, Luo Yun, where am I? Shimatsuki village, is Hind Dojo. Dojo. The girl was shocked. She did not fall into the hands of CP Cypherpole. In that situation, although she killed a large number of CP spies, she was also seriously injured and fell down the hillside. According to common sense, she must have fallen into the hands of CP. Why are you in the dojo? What is going on? Seeing the confusion on the girl's face, Luo Yun smiled and said, Yesterday we happened to be resting at the foot of the hillside. You fell from the hillside onto our grain truck and we rescued you. Advertisement. Are those people chasing me? The girl asked quickly. The spies were right behind her at that time. If she fell, the spies would definitely catch up with her. After you fell, they chased you and tried to kill us as soon as they appeared. In order to survive, we had no choice but to get rid of them, Luo Yun said calmly. How is it possible? The girl was extremely shocked. Although most of the CP Cypherpole personnel who were chasing her were killed by her, there were also many people who were chasing her, including many good ones. But such a group of well-trained CP Cypherpole killers were actually killed by this kid in front of them. How could the girl believe it? He also said it so lightly, as if dealing with these killers was just a trivial matter. This injury, the girl said as her eyes fell on Luo Yun's bandage. The injury I sustained in yesterday's battle will be fine with just two days of rest. Luo Yun raised his bandaged left arm and smiled indifferently. You should have a good rest first. If you are hungry, the food here is still warm. I will ask the doctor to come over and take a look at you later. After saying that, Luo Yun turned around and walked out the door. Of course he wanted to ask the girl why she was being chased by CP Cypherpole, but now that she had just woken up, it was not good to ask like this. Let's wait until tomorrow. Advertisement. 38 Nico Robin. Advertisement. Kona was extremely shocked. She didn't expect that her father's past was like this, and that her father was not from Shimatsuki village. Shimatsuki village was established because of her grandfather, and there was such a secret in it. Looking at the shocked Kuna, Koshiro said, I originally waited for you to grow up before telling you about these things, but something like this happened today, so I decided to tell you first. After this experience, you will probably know many things too. I have my own considerations and thoughts, and I have some things to say to you. But one thing you must remember is that the sword is a murderous weapon. When you hold the sword and face the enemy, you cannot have the slightest hesitation or sympathy. Otherwise, in the end, you are likely to kill more than just yourself. Sympathy for the enemy is cruelty to myself and my friends. I understand, father, I won't make this kind of stupid mistake again. Kuna put her hands on her knees and nodded seriously. She had long been extremely upset, and when she heard what her father said, she vowed never to hold back again. Little did he know that this extraordinary day would shape a female swordsman who would be feared in the future. Okay, you go and have a rest early. Don't practice sword practice these two days. It's the time when your bones are growing and it's easy to hurt your body. Seeing that it was getting late, Koshiro gave some instructions and waved his hand for Kuna to retreat. Father, please rest early. Kuna stood up and left. Just as she was about to go out, she suddenly stopped and turned around and asked, Father, why is the village named Shimatsuki? And my life experience. Koshiro didn't answer Kuna right away. He hesitated for a moment before giving an answer that wasn't an answer. Advertisement. 
One day, when you go to the new world and have the opportunity to enter a country called Wanakuni, you will know. There was a snowstorm all night last night, and when it dawned the next day, the sky and the earth were all white, and the earth seems to have been covered with a snow-white carpet overnight. A room somewhere in the dojo? Warm sunlight breaks in through the gap in the slightly opened window, jumps on the floor tiles, and sprinkles on the head of the bed. The girl lying on the bed made a slight sound. After a while, the girl slowly opened her eyes, which were bright and shiny. The girl closed her eyes for too long, and the sunlight coming in from the window was a bit dazzling. The girl closed her eyes again, opened and closed them several times before she could adapt to the light. Standing up slightly, the girl looked around. Everything was unfamiliar. She raised her hand to rub her painful head. She remembered that she was chased by CP Cypherpole, fell into the hillside, and then lost consciousness. Where is she now? CP Cypherpole's cell? But this room was warm and homey, not like a prison cell at all. Click. At this moment, the door of the room was pushed open from the outside. The girl was subconsciously alert. She looked at the door and saw a child with his left hand wrapped in bandages and walking in with food in one hand. It was Luo Yun who came in. Luo Yun walked into the door and saw that the girl had woken up, and was stunned subconsciously. Advertisement. Then he put the food on the middle table and walked to the girl's side. Looking at the girl's alert look, Luo Yun showed what he thought was a gentle smile. You're awake, your face is rosy. It seems you're recovering well. There shouldn't be any big problems. I'll ask someone to check on you. Wait, kid. When the girl saw Luo Yun turning around to leave, she raised her hand and called out to Luo Yun. My name is Luo Yun. Luo Yun turned around and introduced himself. A flash of embarrassment flashed across the girl's face. She retracted her hand and asked, Luo Yun, where am I? Shimatsuki village, is Hind Dojo. Dojo. The girl was shocked. She did not fall into the hands of CP Cypherpole. In that situation, although she killed a large number of CP spies, she was also seriously injured and fell down the hillside. According to common sense, she must have fallen into the hands of CP. Why are you in the dojo? What is going on? Seeing the confusion on the girl's face, Luo Yun smiled and said, Yesterday we happened to be resting at the foot of the hillside. You fell from the hillside onto our grain truck and we rescued you. Advertisement. Are those people chasing me? The girl asked quickly. The spies were right behind her at that time. If she fell, the spies would definitely catch up with her. After you fell, they chased you and tried to kill us as soon as they appeared. In order to survive, we had no choice but to get rid of them, Luo Yun said calmly. How is it possible? The girl was extremely shocked. Although most of the CP Cypherpole personnel who were chasing her were killed by her, there were also many people who were chasing her, including many good ones. But such a group of well-trained CP Cypherpole killers were actually killed by this kid in front of them. How could the girl believe it? He also said it so lightly, as if dealing with these killers was just a trivial matter. This injury, the girl said as her eyes fell on Luo Yun's bandage. The injury I sustained in yesterday's battle will be fine with just two days of rest. Luo Yun raised his bandaged left arm and smiled indifferently. You should have a good rest first. If you are hungry, the food here is still warm. I will ask the doctor to come over and take a look at you later. After saying that, Luo Yun turned around and walked out the door. Of course he wanted to ask the girl why she was being chased by CP Cypherpole, but now that she had just woken up, it was not good to ask like this. Let's wait until tomorrow. Advertisement. 39 History 1. Advertisement. As he was about to go out, Luo Yun suddenly realized that he didn't even know the person's name, so he turned around and asked. By the way, I still don't know what your name is. The girl hesitated for a moment, thinking that this place was remote and no one should know about her, so she said. My name is Nicole Robin. Luo Yun had already stepped out of the door with one foot and was about to step out with the other foot. When he heard the girl say his name, Luo Yun kicked his foot on the threshold and fell to the ground with a plop. Luo Yun, who fell to the ground, turned over and jumped up. He looked at the girl in shock and disbelief and asked again. What did you say your name was? Nicole Robin. Robin wondered why Luo Yun had such a big reaction when he heard her name. After being stunned for a long time, Luo Yun woke up and walked around the room, touching his head with his right hand, scratching his ears and cheeks, and muttering to himself. It's wrong, it's wrong. Advertisement. No, no, I can't say it's wrong, it's true for this time period. Nicole Robin should still be on the run at this time. As for whether she is in Grand Line Luo Yun, it is not certain, because according to the information in the anime, it only states that it will be six years before Nicole Robin joins Crocodile, and it does not say that Nicole. Where has Robin been? Although from this aspect, there is no problem with the time when Nicole Robin appears in East Blue, because at this time, Nicole Robin is still on the run. What Luo Yun couldn't figure out was that Nicole Robin was attacked, because if he didn't come out, Nicole Robin would definitely die, and there would be nothing to do next. In other words, his little butterfly broke in and made everything change quietly and invisibly. Only this statement can explain it all. Seeing Luo Yun shaking his head and nodding, and constantly saying some unintelligible words in his mouth, Robin asked in a low voice, Any questions? No problem. Luo Yun woke up from his reverie and realized that Robin was next to him. He quickly shook his head and turned to look at Robin seriously. Robin has changed a lot from what she was ten years ago. She doesn't have that mature, royal sister style. Instead, she is a lively girl with a youthful air. Advertisement. All in all, Robin is only 18 years old now. It is indeed the most beautiful years for a girl. Dispelling some stray thoughts from his mind, Luo Yun looked at Robin seriously, with a thoughtful look on his face, and suddenly walked to the table next to him, moved a stool and sat down. In Robin's doubtful eyes, Luo Yun revealed Robin's identity without warning. Nicole Robin was put on a bounty when she was only 8 years old. The bounty was as high as 77 million baileys. She was also called the son of the devil and was the most wanted criminal in the world government. Hearing this, Robin's face suddenly changed. He could not keep calm. His eyes turned cold. He had no time to think about why the kid in front of him knew her identity so clearly. He subconsciously raised his hands to activate his ability. But after Luo Yun prepared to reveal Robin's identity, he had already predicted that this kind of scene would happen, and had already been prepared for it secretly. Seeing that Robin was thinking of taking action, Luo Yun was faster. There was a shuriken in his hand at some point, and he raised his hand to stab Robin. The sharp tip of the shuriken was pressed against Robin's neck. 
Stop moving. Put your hands down, Luo Yun warned softly. Robin moved his hands for a moment, tilted his head back, and looked at Luo Yun in disbelief. The opponent had actually been guarding against her from the beginning, and judging from his movements, the opponent seemed to know exactly what moves she would use. Seeing Robin's hands stop moving, Luo Yun said again, I know your ability, Nicole. Robin, a paramecia flower flower fruit ability user, can make any part of the body bloom like a flower on anything within sight. Physical objects for attack or other purposes. It's not that scary if you just need to be prepared in advance, especially at close range. If you don't believe it, you can try to see if I can pierce your throat before you activate your ability. But I think you should not do this. With your current physical condition, you will not be able to escape regardless of whether you win or lose. Besides, I don't want to kill such a beautiful girl like you. Advertisement. When I was reading One Piece comics, Luo Yun liked Robin very much. When facing Robin, I couldn't help but make a few teasing remarks. Who are you? Robin couldn't figure out how the other party knew her abilities so well. Judging from the current situation, the other party was not a CP cypherpole person. Who are you? Robin stared at Luo Yun, not at all flustered by the sharp shuriken around his neck. I marveled in my heart that Robin had a strong mind. Luo Yun put down his shuriken and said, Me? Just an ordinary apprentice in this dojo. Apprentice, it's impossible to know this. Robin looked up at Luo Yun. Facing Robin's gaze, Luo Yun smiled slightly and sat back on the chair. It's up to you whether you believe it or not. What I'm telling you is the truth. If you don't believe it, you can go out and ask any apprentice, Luo Yun said with a smile. The topic changed, Luo Yun said again, compared to this, shouldn't you explain what you are doing? The famous devil's son Nicole Robin was offered a bounty of 77 million baileys when he was only 8 years old, but it appeared in the wheat east blue, still near our remote village. 39 History 1 Advertisement As he was about to go out, Luo Yun suddenly realized that he didn't even know the person's name, so he turned around and asked. By the way, I still don't know what your name is. The girl hesitated for a moment, thinking that this place was remote and no one should know about her, so she said. My name is Nicole Robin. Luo Yun had already stepped out of the door with one foot and was about to step out with the other foot. When he heard the girl say his name, Luo Yun kicked his foot on the threshold and fell to the ground with a plop. Luo Yun, who fell to the ground, turned over and jumped up. He looked at the girl in shock and disbelief and asked again. What did you say your name was? Nicole Robin. Robin wondered why Luo Yun had such a big reaction when he heard her name. After being stunned for a long time, Luo Yun woke up and walked around the room, touching his head with his right hand, scratching his ears and cheeks, and muttering to himself. It's wrong, it's wrong. Advertisement. No, no, I can't say it's wrong, it's true for this time period. Nicole Robin should still be on the run at this time. As for whether she is in Grand Line Luo Yun, it is not certain, because according to the information in the anime, it only states that it will be six years before Nicole Robin joins Crocodile, and it does not say that Nicole. Where has Robin been? Although from this aspect, there is no problem with the time when Nicole Robin appears in East Blue, because at this time, Nicole Robin is still on the run. What Luo Yun couldn't figure out was that Nicole Robin was attacked, because if he didn't come out, Nicole Robin would definitely die, and there would be nothing to do next. In other words, his little butterfly broke in and made everything change quietly and invisibly. Only this statement can explain it all. Seeing Luo Yun shaking his head and nodding, and constantly saying some unintelligible words in his mouth, Robin asked in a low voice, Any questions? No problem. Luo Yun woke up from his reverie and realized that Robin was next to him. He quickly shook his head and turned to look at Robin seriously. Robin has changed a lot from what she was ten years ago. She doesn't have that mature, royal sister style. Instead, she is a lively girl with a youthful air. Advertisement. All in all, Robin is only 18 years old now. It is indeed the most beautiful years for a girl. Dispelling some stray thoughts from his mind, Luo Yun looked at Robin seriously, with a thoughtful look on his face, and suddenly walked to the table next to him, moved the stool and sat down. In Robin's doubtful eyes, Luo Yun revealed Robin's identity without warning. Nicole Robin was put on a bounty when she was only 8 years old. The bounty was as high as 77 million baileys. She was also called the son of the devil and was the most wanted criminal in the world government. Hearing this, Robin's face suddenly changed. He could not keep calm. His eyes turned cold. He had no time to think about why the kid in front of him knew her identity so clearly. He subconsciously raised his hands to activate his ability. But after Luo Yun prepared to reveal Robin's identity, he had already predicted that this kind of scene would happen, and had already been prepared for it secretly. Seeing that Robin was thinking of taking action, Luo Yun was faster. There was a shuriken in his hand at some point, and he raised his hand to stab Robin. The sharp tip of the shuriken was pressed against Robin's neck. Stop moving, put your hands down, Luo Yun warned softly. Robin moved his hands for a moment, tilted his head back, and looked at Luo Yun in disbelief. The opponent had actually been guarding against her from the beginning, and judging from his movements, the opponent seemed to know exactly what moves she would use. Seeing Robin's hands stop moving, Luo Yun said again, I know your ability, Nicole. Robin, a paramecia flower flower fruit ability user, can make any part of the body bloom like a flower on anything within sight. Physical objects for attack or other purposes. It's not that scary if you just need to be prepared in advance, especially at close range. If you don't believe it, you can try to see if I can pierce your throat before you activate your ability. But I think you should not do this. With your current physical condition, you will not be able to escape regardless of whether you win or lose. Besides, I don't want to kill such a beautiful girl like you. Advertisement. When I was reading One Piece comics, Luo Yun liked Robin very much. When facing Robin, I couldn't help but make a few teasing remarks. Who are you? Robin couldn't figure out how the other party knew her abilities so well. Judging from the current situation, the other party was not a CP cypherpole person. Who are you? Robin stared at Luo Yun, not at all flustered by the sharp shuriken around his neck. I marveled in my heart that Robin had a strong mind. Luo Yun put down his shuriken and said, Me? Just an ordinary apprentice in this dojo. Apprentice, it's impossible to know this. Robin looked up at Luo Yun. Facing Robin's gaze, Luo Yun smiled slightly and sat back on the chair. It's up to you whether you believe it or not. What I'm telling you is the truth. If you don't believe it, you can go out and ask any apprentice, Luo Yun said with a smile. The topic changed, Luo Yun said again, compared to this, shouldn't you explain what you are doing? The famous devil's son Nicole Robin was offered a bounty of 77 million baileys when he was only 8 years old. But it appeared in the wheat east blue, still near our remote village. Advertisement. 
40 History 2. Advertisement. What do you think? Robin asked with a slight smile. Luo Yun's face darkened. Take a guess. You have to guess. If I can guess it, I will ask you. Robin chuckled lightly and said, Don't you know a lot of things? Why don't you even know this? Hearing this, Luo Yun rolled his eyes immediately. He could tell that this woman was deliberately playing tricks on him, just because he threatened her just now. Women are indeed petty and will retaliate. Even a wise man like Robin cannot avoid this. I guess I can't guess, but I feel a little confused. As the only scholar who escaped from West Blue O'Hara, why did you, Robin, not go to the Grand Line, but to the weakest East Blue? Luo Yun asked curiously. The Red Line and the Grand Line form a cross and divide the world into four parts, which are the four oceans. Generally speaking, ordinary people will not run from one ocean to another, because there are only two ways to go from East Blue to West Blue, one is over the Red Line, and the other is through the Calm Belt. But the Red Line is so towering and steep that ordinary people cannot climb it. Except for the Holy Land of Marijoys, there is no city or country. Advertisement. For hundreds of years, the only person to climb the Red Line and enter the Holy Land of Marijoys by hand was the Mermaid Tiger. Of course, strong people or people with special abilities can also do this, such as the red-haired man who infiltrated Marijoys to meet the five elders and Sabo and his team who infiltrated Marijoys to rescue the bears. For those who are capable of climbing the Red Line, they can choose the easier way through the Calm Belt. To ordinary people, the powerful Sea Kings in the Calm Belt are a huge threat, but to a certain extent, the Sea Kings are hardly a threat. Rayleigh swam directly across the Calm Belt, and Hawkeye floated across the Calm Belt in a coffin boat. If Robin wants to enter East Blue from West Blue, there is only one way. First enter the Grand Line, then cross the Calm Belt and enter East Blue. The risks involved are extremely huge. Luo Yun was curious as to why Robin took such a big risk to reach East Blue. For something very important, Robin replied calmly. What? Luo Yun asked again, actually having a guess in his mind. If I tell you about a stone, you won't understand it. I can only say that it is something very important to me. As for stones, there is only the text of history. Advertisement. Luo Yun had previously speculated that Robin could be asked to say something very important, other than the historical text, and it turned out to be true. But East Blue actually has a historical text. I had never thought of this. Speaking of it, it seems that most of the historical texts appear in the Grand Line, with very few scattered around, but of course it is not impossible. I remember that in the comics, O'Hara has several pieces of historical text, and even O'Hara scholars can decipher the meaning of this text. Unfortunately, it was destroyed by the Buster Call sent out by the five elders, leaving only Robin, who can interpret this kind of text. His wandering thoughts were brought back, and Luo Yun asked curiously, Have you found it? Um, Robin nodded and said, I found it, but not long after I found it, I was caught up by those annoying guys, who followed me all the way here. If it hadn't been for you, I would have died at their hands. Speaking of which, you are my savior and I owe you my life. No, no, it's just a coincidence. He said it carelessly, but Luo Yun was extremely happy in his heart. Others' favor may be useless, but Robin was different. As the only one who can decipher the text on the historical text, Robin knows a lot of things, even the whereabouts of the three ancient weapons, Pluton, Poseidon, and Uranus. Robin's favors are very useful. Next, Luo Yun and Robin continued talking for a long time. Advertisement. Luo Yun wants to get more information about the historical text from Robin, especially the part of East Blue, which is closest to him. Luo Yun wants to see the historical text. If he can control the historical text in his hands, it will naturally be better. All right. It's a pity that Robin seems to know Luo Yun's little thoughts. The relevant historical text is completely silent and does not give Luo Yun a chance at all. After chatting for a long time, the information Luo Yun obtained was limited and of little use. Instead, he was tricked a lot by Robin. By the time Luo Yun reacted, it was already too late. Luo Yun immediately said nothing more. Playing tricks with a smart woman like Robin is like making a deal with the devil and trying to take advantage of him. It boils down to two words. Madness? Luo Yun quickly stood up and said, Stop talking, it's time to change your dressing. I'll find someone to come over and change your dressing. You can rest peacefully for the next two days. As for those who are chasing you, don't worry. Only a few people know that you are here. With that said, Luo Yun put the chair away and walked out the door. Before going out, Luo Yun suddenly thought of something, stopped and turned around to give instructions. By the way, this is just a peaceful and peaceful village, and the dojo is full of ordinary apprentices. You'd better not show too much of some things, let alone talk about other things. Just treat yourself as an injured ordinary person. Advertisement. 40 History 2. Advertisement. What do you think? Robin asked with a slight smile. Luo Yun's face darkened. Take a guess. You have to guess. If I can guess it, I will ask you. Robin chuckled lightly and said, Don't you know a lot of things? Why don't you even know this? Hearing this, Luo Yun rolled his eyes immediately. He could tell that this woman was deliberately playing tricks on him, just because he threatened her just now. Women are indeed petty and will retaliate, even a wise man like Robin cannot avoid this. I guess I can't guess, but I feel a little confused. As the only scholar who escaped from West Blue O'Hara, why did you, Robin, not go to the Grand Line, but to the weakest East Blue? Luo Yun asked curiously. The Red Line and the Grand Line form a cross and divide the world into four parts, which are the four oceans. Generally speaking, ordinary people will not run from one ocean to another, because there are only two ways to go from East Blue to West Blue, one is over the Red Line, and the other is through the Calm Belt. But the Red Line is so towering and steep that ordinary people cannot climb it. Except for the Holy Land of Marijoys, there is no city or country. Advertisement. For hundreds of years, the only person to climb the Red Line and enter the Holy Land of Marijoys by hand was the Mermaid Tiger. Of course, strong people or people with special abilities can also do this, such as the red-haired man who infiltrated Marijoys to meet the five elders and Sabo and his team who infiltrated Marijoys to rescue the bears. For those who are capable of climbing the Red Line, they can choose the easier way through the Calm Belt. To ordinary people, the powerful Sea Kings in the Calm Belt are a huge threat, but to a certain extent, the Sea Kings are hardly a threat. Rayleigh swam directly across the Calm Belt, and Hawkeye floated across the Calm Belt in a coffin boat. If Robin wants to enter East Blue from West Blue, there is only one way. First enter the Grand Line, then cross the Calm Belt and enter East Blue. The risks involved are extremely huge. Luo Yun was curious as to why Robin took such a big risk to reach East Blue. For something very important, Robin replied calmly. What? Luo Yun asked again, actually having a guess in his mind. 
If I tell you about a stone, you won't understand it. I can only say that it is something very important to me. As for stones, there is only the text of history. Advertisement. Luo Yun had previously speculated that Robin could be asked to say something very important, other than the historical text, and it turned out to be true. But East Blue actually has a historical text. I had never thought of this. Speaking of it, it seems that most of the historical texts appear in the Grand Line, with very few scattered around, but of course it is not impossible. I remember that in the comics, O'Hara has several pieces of historical text, and even O'Hara scholars can decipher the meaning of this text. Unfortunately, it was destroyed by the buster call sent out by the five elders, leaving only Robin, who can interpret this kind of text. His wandering thoughts were brought back, and Luo Yun asked curiously, Have you found it? Um, Robin nodded and said, I found it, but not long after I found it, I was caught up by those annoying guys, who followed me all the way here. If it hadn't been for you, I would have died at their hands. Speaking of which, you are my savior and I owe you my life. No, no, it's just a coincidence. He said it carelessly, but Luo Yun was extremely happy in his heart. Others' favor may be useless, but Robin was different. As the only one who can decipher the text on the historical text, Robin knows a lot of things, even the whereabouts of the three ancient weapons, Pluton, Poseidon, and Uranus. Robin's favors are very useful. Next, Luo Yun and Robin continued talking for a long time. Advertisement. Luo Yun wants to get more information about the historical text from Robin, especially the part of East Blue, which is closest to him. Luo Yun wants to see the historical text. If he can control the historical text in his hands, it will naturally be better. All right. It's a pity that Robin seems to know Luo Yun's little thoughts. The relevant historical text is completely silent and does not give Luo Yun a chance at all. After chatting for a long time, the information Luo Yun obtained was limited and of little use. Instead, he was tricked a lot by Robin. By the time Luo Yun reacted, it was already too late. Luo Yun immediately said nothing more. Playing tricks with a smart woman like Robin is like making a deal with the devil and trying to take advantage of him. It boils down to two words. Madness? Luo Yun quickly stood up and said, Stop talking, it's time to change your dressing. I'll find someone to come over and change your dressing. You can rest peacefully for the next two days. As for those who are chasing you, don't worry. Only a few people know that you are here. With that said, Luo Yun put the chair away and walked out the door. Before going out, Luo Yun suddenly thought of something, stopped and turned around to give instructions. By the way, this is just a peaceful and peaceful village, and the dojo is full of ordinary apprentices. You'd better not show too much of some things, let alone talk about other things. Just treat yourself as an injured ordinary person. Advertisement. 41 Sabo, the spark that ignited the revolution won. Advertisement. I understand, don't worry, I won't say more. Robin nodded and watched Luo Yun leave the room and close the door. Her deep eyes revealed her thoughts. The appearance of Luo Yun and the conversation just now forced her to think more about things. Although it is peaceful here, it is not so secretly. This dojo is not that simple, but they don't think much about me. Stay here for now, and leave immediately after I recover from my injuries. It's not that Robin doesn't trust Luo Yun, it's just that years of running away and betraying her have made Robin unwilling to trust anyone but herself. Close the door, Luo Yun turned and left the room, walking to the front courtyard to find someone to give Robin medicine. I happened to meet Kuna on the way. Kuna was sitting in a daze on a stone chair under the almond tree with only dead branches left in the courtyard. Kuna, who was seriously injured, cannot practice for the past two days. For Kuna, a crazy practitioner, being unable to practice and sitting all the time is simply torture. Really unable to stay in the room, Kuna wanted to go out and relax, but when she walked outside and heard everyone training in full swing, her heart felt itchy, so she had to go back. There was nothing to do, so she finally came to the courtyard and sat down, thinking about what her father told her last night. She gradually became trance-like as she thought about it, and even Luo Yun didn't notice Luo Yun walking from behind. Advertisement. Luo Yun saw Kona sitting in the courtyard, thought for a while, and came over to ask how she was injured, but when he walked behind her, Kona didn't notice him. It wasn't until he walked to the chair next to him and sat down that Kona noticed his presence. Luo Yun subconsciously asked out of curiosity, What are you thinking about? You look so absorbed. Thinking of a place. Place? What place deserves your attention? Luo Yun became interested. You know New World. Hearing Kuna mention New World, Luo Yun was stunned for a moment. New World is in the Grand Line. Everyone in East Blue knows Grand Line, but for the weak East Blue, not many people have heard of New World. Luo Yun was naturally surprised when Kuna mentioned this all of a sudden, but considering Koshiro's identity, it was possible that Kuna knew about it. I know, Luo Yun nodded and said, New World is actually the Grand Line. The Grand Line is divided into two parts by the Red Line, divided into the first half and the second half. Generally speaking, the first half is the first half, and the second half is people also call it New World. Open up the ocean where people gather in the next era. New World, the next era. Kuna's eyes showed a trace of longing, as if she had already seen a group of sails rising on the blue sea. Advertisement. Suddenly Kuna suddenly realized the problem, raised her head and asked curiously, How do you know so clearly? I heard what others said when I was homeless, Luo Yun explained, and quickly took him over and asked, By the way, why did you suddenly ask New World why? I want to go to a place in the New World, a place that is important to me, Kuna said seriously. You don't even know New World, where are you going? Luo Yun said, picking up the tea on the table, but he was surprised by Kuna's words. Wanakuni. Phew. Luo Yun squirted out the tea that had just reached his mouth, and the light green tea spilled all over the table. Cough cough cough. Luo Yun choked and coughed, stood up in a hurry, and asked in shock and disbelief, where did you say? Wanakuni. Kuna looked at Luo Yun strangely. This guy's reaction was very wrong. Was he so shocked? Seeing the curiosity in Kuna's eyes, Luo Yun immediately realized that his reaction was not good and did not dare to stay too long. He coughed lightly and said he was going to find a doctor to change Robin's dressing. He ignored Kuna's shouting and stood up to leave. Advertisement. Kuna wanted to chase him, but her left leg was injured and she couldn't move. She could only watch Luo Yun escape, and one person stomped angrily in the courtyard. Today's things will not just end like this, Luo Yun, you definitely know something. Running away from the courtyard, Luo Yun sighed again. Today is really unlucky. Why are there so many things going on? Speaking of which, why did Kuna suddenly mention going to Wanakuni? 
Could it be that the chief master confided some secrets to Kuna? In this case, it makes sense, but his huge reaction just now was a bit troublesome. Kuna is absolutely he won't let it go, and it's really not easy to fool him. Thinking of this, Luo Yun felt his head hurt even more and sighed. I got the medicine from Koshiro and found an apprentice to deliver it to Robin. Changing the medicine was not possible for others, but it was easy for Robin. He had more than two hands. For the next half day, Luo Yun avoided Kuna. In addition, he also experienced and recalled some things and recorded them. Meeting Robin today, Luo Yun suddenly realized a problem. These memories were more important than he imagined. It was not just as simple as taking the first step. Just like today when he cheated on Robin. In order to prevent him from forgetting in the next ten years, he had to write it down. It's night in a blink of an eye. Kingdom of Goa, in the capital, the nobles living here are applauding and holding a grand banquet. One is that the celestial dragons from the Grand Line Holy Land Marijoys will come here in person tomorrow. Advertisement. 42 Sabo, the spark that ignited the revolution too. Advertisement. Because it is spotless, it is known as the most beautiful country in the East Blue, the Kingdom of Goa, which perfectly excludes unnecessary things, can be regarded as a successful example of isolated society. Another thing is that tonight the non-deterministic terminal outside the country will be completely destroyed by the fire, including those poor and unbloody people. Goa Kingdom will attract true spotlessness and become the most perfect country in East Blue. The fire was burning at the terminal of the undetermined object. The raging flames swallowed up everything, including the poor unruly people who lived by picking up garbage in their sleep. The orange-yellow fire lit up the sky as if it were daytime. In the sky, the dragon, suspended in the air with its feet on the wind, looked down at the scene of burning fire below, screaming, wails and curses. Various sounds reached his ears through observation hacky. Long frowned, and there was a trace of disbelief on his usually calm face. He never expected that the country he grew up in would turn into such a disgusting state. Advertisement. Looking down, across a thousand meters, through the flames, he saw his son Luffy below. Since leaving that day, several years have passed, and this is the first time he has seen Luffy, but now Luffy is in a very bad situation, and a group of pirates stopped them. As a father, Long naturally couldn't just watch his son die, just as he was about to take action, a wave of conquerors hacky erupted from Ace. The invisible conquerors was like the aura of the coming king, invisible but as heavy as a mountain, and all the dozen or so pirates around him were instantly stunned and fainted. Eh. A cry of surprise came from Long's mouth, the child his father brought back ten years ago actually awakened conquerors at such a young age. Only one king in a million can be born. It seems that his identity is not simple. After muttering to himself, Long turned around and left without any hesitation. He was so decisive. It was hard to imagine that this was what a father would do, just watching his son in danger. It's not that Long is so heartless, it's just that he saw Dotton's group coming from a distance. Long naturally knows these old acquaintances with his father, and Luffy's safety will be safe with them. Standing at the top of the capital city of King Goa, Long looked at the desperate people below and softly uttered one word. Wind. The dry and windless void was just right for the fire to burn. A strong wind appeared out of thin air. It was like a giant fist that shattered the burning flames, creating a way for people facing despair to survive. Advertisement. There is a road, hurry up, run, get out of here and go to the beach. People who were reborn in despair fled in droves along the passage to the seaside. Long's face had returned to its previous calmness. This country made him feel sick, and this further strengthened his goal. Ace, Luffy. Just as Long was about to leave, he suddenly heard a mournful cry, calling Luffy's name, and Long subconsciously looked to the right. There is the city gate on the south side of the city wall. It is closed tightly at the moment, and there are soldiers with guns guarding the surroundings. Sabo wants to open the city gate to rescue Ace, but he faces a merciless beating from the soldiers. There was also deep disdain and ridicule for his behavior. He actually tried to save some guys who were not even human beings. It was really a disgrace to the nobles. Go away, I don't know whose boy you are, how did your father teach you, and you actually did such a ridiculous thing? How can you save a group of guys who are not even human beings? They are not born aristocrats. This is what they do. Destiny, ha ha ha. Several soldiers laughed sarcastically. Sabo, who was lying on the ground, slowly clenched his fists with his hands and cried softly. His heart was filled with unprecedented anger and disgust. Why are they not worthy of being human beings if they are not nobles, and this is their fate? Advertisement. What kind of bullshit is this? Compared with those outside, the people in this town are the real garbage. Whoosh. At this moment, a gust of wind swept up the laughing soldiers and slammed them into the wall next to them. With a bang, several soldiers exploded like cannonballs, and blood and corpse fragments were scattered all over the walls and corners. What's wrong with you, young man? The dragon figure appeared in front of Sabo like a ghost, squatted down and asked. Sabo was already crying with grief. He looked up at Long, called Uncle, and then slowly climbed up with Long's help. Holding Long's arm, Sabo cried bitterly again thinking about the deaths of Luffy and Ace and the behavior of people in this town. The culprits of this fire are the royal family and the nobility. It is true. This town is more uncomfortable than uncertain terminal. It smells of human decay. I have no freedom at all when I stay here. As a noble, I feel so ashamed. The dragon was instantly shocked and stared at Sabo dumbfounded. He did not expect that the kingdom of Goa would now force even a ten-year-old child to speak like this. The country had reached such a hopeless point. But I don't have the power to change this country now, Long said slowly. Uncle, do you understand what I said? Sabo looked at Long in surprise. After a whole day, in this disgusting town, someone finally understood what he said. Advertisement. 42 Sabo, the spark that ignited the revolution too. Advertisement. Because it is spotless, it is known as the most beautiful country in the East Blue, the Kingdom of Goa, which perfectly excludes unnecessary things, can be regarded as a successful example of isolated society. Another thing is that tonight the non-deterministic terminal outside the country will be completely destroyed by the fire, including those poor and unbloody people. Goa Kingdom will attract true spotlessness and become the most perfect country in East Blue. The fire was burning at the terminal of the undetermined object. The raging flames swallowed up everything, including the poor unruly people who lived by picking up garbage in their sleep. The orange-yellow fire lit up the sky as if it were daytime. In the sky, the dragon, suspended in the air with its feet on the wind, looked down at the scene of burning fire below, screaming, wails and curses. Various sounds reached his ears through observation hacky. Long frowned, and there was a trace of disbelief on his usually calm face. He never expected that the country he grew up in would turn into such a disgusting state. Advertisement. 
Looking down, across a thousand meters, through the flames, he saw his son Luffy below. Since leaving that day, several years have passed, and this is the first time he has seen Luffy, but now Luffy is in a very bad situation, and a group of pirates stopped them. As a father, Long naturally couldn't just watch his son die. Just as he was about to take action, a wave of conquerors haki erupted from Ace. The invisible conquerors was like the aura of the coming king, invisible but as heavy as a mountain, and all the dozen or so pirates around him were instantly stunned and fainted. Eh. A cry of surprise came from Long's mouth, the child his father brought back ten years ago actually awakened conquerors at such a young age. Only one king in a million can be born. It seems that his identity is not simple. After muttering to himself, Long turned around and left without any hesitation. He was so decisive. It was hard to imagine that this was what a father would do, just watching his son in danger. It's not that Long is so heartless, it's just that he saw Dotton's group coming from a distance. Long naturally knows these old acquaintances with his father, and Luffy's safety will be safe with them. Standing at the top of the capital city of King Goa, Long looked at the desperate people below and softly uttered one word. Wind. The dry and windless void was just right for the fire to burn. A strong wind appeared out of thin air. It was like a giant fist that shattered the burning flames, creating a way for people facing despair to survive. Advertisement. There is a road, hurry up, run, get out of here and go to the beach. People who were reborn in despair fled in droves along the passage to the seaside. Long's face had returned to its previous calmness. This country made him feel sick, and this further strengthened his goal. Ace, Luffy. Just as Long was about to leave, he suddenly heard a mournful cry, calling Luffy's name, and Long subconsciously looked to the right. There is the city gate on the south side of the city wall. It is closed tightly at the moment, and there are soldiers with guns guarding the surroundings. Sabo wants to open the city gate to rescue Ace, but he faces a merciless beating from the soldiers. There was also deep disdain and ridicule for his behavior. He actually tried to save some guys who were not even human beings. It was really a disgrace to the nobles. Go away, I don't know whose boy you are, how did your father teach you, and you actually did such a ridiculous thing? How can you save a group of guys who are not even human beings? They are not born aristocrats. This is what they do. Destiny, ha ha ha. Several soldiers laughed sarcastically. Sabo, who was lying on the ground, slowly clenched his fists with his hands and cried softly. His heart was filled with unprecedented anger and disgust. Why are they not worthy of being human beings if they are not nobles, and this is their fate? Advertisement. What kind of bullshit is this? Compared with those outside, the people in this town are the real garbage. Whoosh. At this moment, a gust of wind swept up the laughing soldiers and slammed them into the wall next to them. With a bang, several soldiers exploded like cannonballs, and blood and corpse fragments were scattered all over the walls and corners. What's wrong with you, young man? The dragon figure appeared in front of Sabo like a ghost, squatted down and asked. Sabo was already crying with grief. He looked up at Long, called Uncle, and then slowly climbed up with Long's help. Holding Long's arm, Sabo cried bitterly again thinking about the deaths of Luffy and Ace and the behavior of people in this town. The culprits of this fire are the royal family and the nobility. It is true. This town is more uncomfortable than uncertain terminal. It smells of human decay. I have no freedom at all when I stay here. As a noble, I feel so ashamed. The dragon was instantly shocked and stared at Sabo dumbfounded. He did not expect that the kingdom of Goa would now force even a ten-year-old child to speak like this. The country had reached such a hopeless point. But I don't have the power to change this country now, Long said slowly. Uncle, do you understand what I said? Sabo looked at Long in surprise. After a whole day, in this disgusting town, someone finally understood what he said. Advertisement. 43 Sabo one who died for freedom. Advertisement. Keep in mind. The dragon nodded slightly, then raised his hand and turned it into a knife, knocking Sabo unconscious. He picked up Sabo, and the dragon put Sabo on a lounge chair in a nearby park and left the royal city. He raised his hand and looked at the sky that was illuminated by the fire like daylight. There was a stench in the air that was even more disgusting than the burning flames. It's time to get started. Ignite the spark of revolution. Day 2, the indefinite terminal that burned all night finally turned into ruins. The kingdom of Goa, known as the most perfect country in the East Blue, finally burned away its last flaws and became the spotless most beautiful country in the East Blue. The celestial dragons visiting the Holy Land Marie Joyce will arrive in the morning on a government ship. The entire royal city is active in a sea of laughter and laughter. Cross flags representing world government and colorful flags of celebration are hung everywhere and dance in the wind. Countless flags are floating in the sky. Flying balloons. Advertisement. The port is even more joyful. All the ships have been pulled to other places today. The entire port is spotless. Every five steps is a world government cross flag, and under each flag stands a guard with a gun. Soldiers. The nobles in the royal city stood in their respective areas according to their status. They all held small white cross flags representing world government in their hands. The breeze blew, and the entire port became a sea of flags. People dressed in the best and latest clothes, with excited and happy smiles on their faces, welcomed the arrival of the world's noble celestial dragons. Outside the high wall, which is only a few hundred meters away, are indeed the ruins after last night's fire. A large pit of 20 meters on the left and right has been dug, and underneath are all the corpses that were not completely burned to charcoal last night. The soldier holding the hand next to him glanced at the corpse in the pit, waved his hand, and said with disgust, How come these untouchables weren't all burned to ashes yesterday, and they didn't let us brothers do this unfortunate thing? We are all at the port. Just a few of you unlucky ones are here. That's right, it's our turn to do this unfortunate job, but speaking of it, there don't seem to be many corpses. The fire last night lit up the sky, whatever was left was basically burned to ashes. The streets in the royal city were deserted. In order to welcome the arrival of the celestial dragons, the nobles of the royal city prepared a grand celebration. Port? The high platform across the port in the middle was temporarily built in the past two days. It was covered with a thick red carpet. The celestial dragons coming off the ship would walk on the red carpet and enter the royal city. Advertisement. On both sides are countless nobles standing in their respective areas. The tailed beasts in the front are the royal families including the kingdom. They go to the back in order, and the farther back they are, the lower their status is. Sabo's parents took their newly adopted Staley, who came from a noble family, to stand on the second level behind the royal family, while Sabo was locked up at home, learning complete aristocratic knowledge, and could not come out until he became a true noble. 
Instead of those untouchables calling themselves brothers at the terminal of uncertain objects, it is simply a disgrace to the family. Looking at the newly adopted aristocratic son in the middle, Sabo's parents looked pleased, and were once again grateful for their decision to adopt Staley. This is what a noble should look like. At this time, Sabo had long since escaped from the home where he was imprisoned. He mistakenly thought that Luffy and Ace were dead. Sabo decided to carry the dreams of the three of them and go to sea to become a pirate. Sabo found a fishing boat from the backup port where the ship was temporarily placed. It wasn't that Sabo didn't want to find a big one, but it was just that he couldn't control it alone. Hanging up the pirate flag that had been drawn long ago, raising the sails, the sea breeze blew, the sails bulged, the fishing boat slowly sailed towards the sea, Sabo stood on the bow, raising a smile. He finally goes to sea and sets off towards freedom, at the same time, people stood at the port and looked eagerly. Finally, a black shadow appeared at the end of the sea level. As the distance got closer, an extremely huge three-mast sailboat flying the world government flag slowly sailed towards the port. Fire the cannon. The king shouted excitedly and ordered the cannon to be fired. Bang, bang. Advertisement. The sound of the cannon was like thunder, and the cannonballs were launched hundreds of meters into the air, exploding with a bang, and countless colorful ribbons scattered in the air. These shells are specially designed for salutes used in celebrations. The shells inside are not solid and are filled with colorful ribbons. After being fired, the timing mechanism inside the shells is triggered and the placed ribbons are released. People shouted excitedly and waved their white cross flags, and the entire port burst into cheers. What is that? The non-commissioned officer guarding the port was also shouting excitedly. Suddenly, he saw an additional boat on the sea. The sergeant was stunned for a moment, then quickly picked up the telescope in his hand and looked. A small fishing boat was flying a pirate flag, and a child was standing on it. The strangeness of this combination was unheard of. The celestial dragons were about to enter the port. The sergeant raised his hand and shouted before he could think too much. Come back quickly, it will hinder the celebration. But the sergeant's voice was suddenly covered up by the wave of cheers. Not only the non-commissioned officers were found on the small fishing boat Sabo, but also the nobles standing at the front. It's a kid, there's a kid on the fishing boat. Child? Could it be that he was kidnapped by pirates? Whose child is he? Advertisement. 43 Sabo one who died for freedom. Advertisement. Keep in mind. The dragon nodded slightly, then raised his hand and turned it into a knife, knocking Sabo unconscious. He picked up Sabo, and the dragon put Sabo on a lounge chair in a nearby park and left the royal city. He raised his hand and looked at the sky that was illuminated by the fire like daylight. There was a stench in the air that was even more disgusting than the burning flames. It's time to get started. Ignite the spark of revolution. Day 2, the indefinite terminal that burned all night finally turned into ruins. The kingdom of Goa, known as the most perfect country in the East Blue, finally burned away its last flaws and became the spotless most beautiful country in the East Blue. The celestial dragons visiting the Holy Land Marie Joyce will arrive in the morning on a government ship. The entire royal city is active in a sea of laughter and laughter. Cross flags representing world government and colorful flags of celebration are hung everywhere and dance in the wind. Countless flags are floating in the sky. Flying balloons. Advertisement. The port is even more joyful. All the ships have been pulled to other places today. The entire port is spotless. Every five steps is a world government cross flag, and under each flag stands a guard with a gun. Soldiers. The nobles in the royal city stood in their respective areas according to their status. They all held small white cross flags representing world government in their hands. The breeze blew, and the entire port became a sea of flags. People dressed in the best and latest clothes, with excited and happy smiles on their faces, welcomed the arrival of the world's noble celestial dragons. Outside the high wall, which is only a few hundred meters away, are indeed the ruins after last night's fire. A large pit of 20 meters on the left and right has been dug, and underneath are all the corpses that were not completely burned to charcoal last night. The soldier holding the hand next to him glanced at the corpse in the pit, waved his hand, and said with disgust, How come these untouchables weren't all burned to ashes yesterday, and they didn't let us brothers do this unfortunate thing? We are all at the port. Just a few of you unlucky ones are here. That's right, it's our turn to do this unfortunate job, but speaking of it, there don't seem to be many corpses. The fire last night lit up the sky. Whatever was left was basically burned to ashes. The streets in the royal city were deserted. In order to welcome the arrival of the celestial dragons, the nobles of the royal city prepared a grand celebration. Port? The high platform across the port in the middle was temporarily built in the past two days. It was covered with a thick red carpet. The celestial dragons coming off the ship would walk on the red carpet and enter the royal city. Advertisement. On both sides are countless nobles standing in their respective areas. The tailed beasts in the front are the royal families including the kingdom. They go to the back in order, and the farther back they are, the lower their status is. Sabo's parents took their newly adopted Staley, who came from a noble family, to stand on the second level behind the royal family, while Sabo was locked up at home, learning complete aristocratic knowledge, and could not come out until he became a true noble. Instead of those untouchables calling themselves brothers at the terminal of uncertain objects, it is simply a disgrace to the family. Looking at the newly adopted aristocratic son in the middle, Sabo's parents looked pleased, and were once again grateful for their decision to adopt Staley. This is what a noble should look like. At this time, Sabo had long since escaped from the home where he was imprisoned. He mistakenly thought that Luffy and Ace were dead. Sabo decided to carry the dreams of the three of them and go to sea to become a pirate. Sabo found a fishing boat from the backup port where the ship was temporarily placed. It wasn't that Sabo didn't want to find a big one, but it was just that he couldn't control it alone. Hanging up the pirate flag that had been drawn long ago, raising the sails, the sea breeze blew, the sails bulged, the fishing boat slowly sailed towards the sea, Sabo stood on the bow, raising a smile. He finally goes to sea and sets off towards freedom. At the same time, people stood at the port and looked eagerly. Finally, a black shadow appeared at the end of the sea level. As the distance got closer, an extremely huge three-mast sailboat flying the world government flag slowly sailed towards the port. Fire the cannon. The king shouted excitedly and ordered the cannon to be fired. Bang, bang. Advertisement. The sound of the cannon was like thunder, and the cannonballs were launched hundreds of meters into the air, exploding with a bang, and countless colorful ribbons scattered in the air. These shells are specially designed for salutes used in celebrations. The shells inside are not solid and are filled with colorful ribbons. After being fired, the timing mechanism inside the shells is triggered and the placed ribbons are released. People shouted excitedly and waved their white cross flags, and the entire port burst into cheers. What is that? 
The non-commissioned officer guarding the port was also shouting excitedly. Suddenly, he saw an additional boat on the sea. The sergeant was stunned for a moment, then quickly picked up the telescope in his hand and looked. A small fishing boat was flying a pirate flag, and a child was standing on it. The strangeness of this combination was unheard of. The celestial dragons were about to enter the port. The sergeant raised his hand and shouted before he could think too much. Come back quickly, it will hinder the celebration. But the sergeant's voice was suddenly covered up by the wave of cheers. Not only the non-commissioned officers were found on the small fishing boat Sabo, but also the nobles standing at the front. It's a kid, there's a kid on the fishing boat. Child? Could it be that he was kidnapped by pirates? Whose child is he? Advertisement. 44 Sabo 2 who died for freedom. Advertisement. Next to them, Sabo's parents were stunned for a moment. They didn't have binoculars in their hands and couldn't see the specific situation. When they heard the conversation next to them, Sabo's mother seemed to be sensing something. Her face instantly turned pale and she said that it couldn't be Sabo. Sabo's father smiled and consoled him carelessly. It's impossible. Don't think too much. Sabo is studying at home. Someone is watching him. How could he come out? On the ship, Sabo was excitedly stepping on the bow of the ship, holding the iron wastewater pipe in his hand, pointing at the sea in front of him and shouting excitedly. Here I come, the sea. In the welcoming team, the king was extremely angry when he saw the scene and immediately yelled at the sergeant next to him. What's going on? A damn fishing boat appears. I don't care what method you use, just destroy the fishing boat in front of you. Yes. The sergeant nervously accepted the order and quickly ran towards the cannon at the nearby port to prevent pirate attacks. The fastest way to deal with the fishing boat was to use the cannon to smash it into pieces. As for the life or death of the child above, the sergeant has no control over it. If he interferes with the celebration, he will definitely be caught by the king and apologize to the celestial dragons. Advertisement. Besides, it must be an untouchable child. If he dies, he will die. It's just the life of an untouchable. Driven by the sea breeze and ocean currents, the small fishing boat slowly approaches the government ship carrying celestial dragons. Looking up at the huge three-mast sailing ship in front of him, the huge ship was hundreds of meters long, like a hill, and an anchor was as big as the fishing boat at his feet. Sabo was amazed. He thought that one day, he would have a ship as big as this, form his own pirate group, and sail freely on the sea. But he had to stay away from this ship now. If such a big ship was hit, the fishing boat under his feet would be gone in an instant. However, as Sabo was turning the rudder and trying to get away, there was a sudden sound. Before Sabo could react, the next second, there was a loud explosion behind the fishing boat. The shock wave of the explosion knocked Sabo to the ground, and broken boards flew everywhere. Cabin. A large crater was made in the stern of the ship by a cannonball fired from an unknown source. Fire burned around the broken hull and quickly spread to all sides. Sabo climbed up from the deck and watched the fire burning. He quickly took off his windbreaker and waved it to put out the fire. On the government ship next to it, the hooded celestial dragons were holding a rocket launcher, with the crosshair pointed at the fishing boat Sabo was riding below. Untouchables are indeed rude people. Advertisement. As he said that, celestial dragons lowered his head and aimed at the fishing boat below again. The celestial dragons government personnel nearby saw Sabo on the fishing boat and couldn't bear to say, Saint Chermak, there are children up there. As long as the pirate flag is flying, no matter who is a pirate, what's even more hateful is that the untouchables actually swaggered past the ship. As soon as he finished speaking, Saint Humak pulled the trigger, and a ball of orange flames burst out from the dark muzzle. A rocket roared out and hit the fishing boat with a loud bang. The fire was soaring into the sky, and the small fishing boat could not withstand the two rockets. It exploded with a roar and was torn apart. The wreckage of the ship was floating on the sea. Sabo was blown away by the explosion more than ten meters away. He was seriously injured and passed out. He fell to the sea with a big splash. A splash of water, life, and death unknown. Snort. Saint Humak snorted, and finally left with satisfaction when he saw the fishing boat exploded and Sabo died. At the port, the nobles were shocked by the scene. All the nobles, including the king, turned pale. They were not worried about Sabo's life or death, but they were worried about whether this blind kid who ran away from somewhere would anger the celestial dragons, and then they would all be in trouble. Fortunately, after the government ship docked, the government officials who came down first did not say a word about what had just happened, which made many nobles heave a sigh of relief. Advertisement. When celestial dragons Chermak walked down, countless cheers rang out. Hundreds of white doves placed on both sides were released. Hundreds of white doves flew through the sky, balloons representing welcome slowly rose, and the salute roared again. Colorful ribbons were flying all over the sky. The entire port became a sea of celebration. As for the broken fishing boat on the sea and Sabo who fell into the water and didn't know whether he was alive or dead, no one cared about it anymore. It was just a flaw in this grand celebration that should not have appeared. When the celebration at the port reached its climax with the appearance of celestial dragons, a wind slowly turned on the sea, and a rotating Uzumaki appeared on the calm sea. Sabo flew out from the center of Uzumaki, dragged by the wind, and flew to the west. Forest. The moment Sabo flew away, two strangely dressed people standing on the deck of the government ship sensed that someone was coming to save Sabo. These two people are the CP0s who protect the celestial dragons. They are wearing white suits and white cloaks, with extremely strange ghost and plant masks on their heads respectively. The two of them looked at each other, jumped off the boat, put their feet on the sea, and flew dozens of meters away. If Luo Yun saw it from the side, he would definitely say, What a great Qinggong water floater, you should be rewarded. The government officials on the ship were curious when they saw this scene. They naturally knew the identities of these two people, and what happened could actually cause these two strong men to take action. Along the way, there was only one time when these two strong men were dispatched at the same time, but it was a pirate group with a bounty of 400 million. It only took half an hour for the two CP0 strong men to kill hundreds of people on the entire ship. Advertisement. 44 Sabo 2 who died for freedom. Advertisement. Advertisement. Next to them, Sabo's parents were stunned for a moment. They didn't have binoculars in their hands and couldn't see the specific situation. When they heard the conversation next to them, Sabo's mother seemed to be sensing something. Her face instantly turned pale and she said that it couldn't be Sabo. Sabo's father smiled and consoled him carelessly. It's impossible. Don't think too much. Sabo is studying at home. Someone is watching him. How could he come out? On the ship, Sabo was excitedly stepping on the bow of the ship, holding the iron wastewater pipe in his hand, pointing at the sea in front of him and shouting excitedly. 
Here I come, the sea. In the welcoming team, the king was extremely angry when he saw this scene and immediately yelled at the sergeant next to him. What's going on? A damn fishing boat appears. I don't care what method you use, just destroy the fishing boat in front of you. Yes. The sergeant nervously accepted the order and quickly ran towards the cannon at the nearby port to prevent pirate attacks. The fastest way to deal with the fishing boat was to use the cannon to smash it into pieces. As for the life or death of the child above, the sergeant has no control over it. If he interferes with the celebration, he will definitely be caught by the king and apologize to the celestial dragons. Advertisement. Besides, it must be an untouchable child. If he dies, he will die. It's just the life of an untouchable. Driven by the sea breeze and ocean currents, the small fishing boat slowly approaches the government ship carrying celestial dragons. Looking up at the huge three-mast sailing ship in front of him, the huge ship was hundreds of meters long, like a hill, and an anchor was as big as the fishing boat at his feet. Sabo was amazed. He thought that one day, he would have a ship as big as this, form his own pirate group, and sail freely on the sea. But he had to stay away from this ship now. If such a big ship was hit, the fishing boat under his feet would be gone in an instant. However, as Sabo was turning the rudder and trying to get away, there was a sudden sound. Before Sabo could react, the next second, there was a loud explosion behind the fishing boat. The shock wave of the explosion knocked Sabo to the ground, and broken boards flew everywhere. Cabin. A large crater was made in the stern of the ship by a cannonball fired from an unknown source. Fire burned around the broken hull and quickly spread to all sides. Sabo climbed up from the deck and watched the fire burning. He quickly took off his windbreaker and waved it to put out the fire. On the government ship next to it, the hooded celestial dragons were holding a rocket launcher, with the crosshair pointed at the fishing boat Sabo was riding below. Untouchables are indeed rude people. Advertisement. As he said that, celestial dragons lowered his head and aimed at the fishing boat below again. The celestial dragons government personnel nearby saw Sabo on the fishing boat and couldn't bear to say, Saint Chermak, there are children up there. As long as the pirate flag is flying, no matter who is a pirate, what's even more hateful is that the untouchables actually swaggered past the ship. As soon as he finished speaking, Saint Humak pulled the trigger, and a ball of orange flames burst out from the dark muzzle. A rocket roared out and hit the fishing boat with a loud bang. The fire was soaring into the sky, and the small fishing boat could not withstand the two rockets. It exploded with a roar and was torn apart. The wreckage of the ship was floating on the sea. Sabo was blown away by the explosion more than ten meters away. He was seriously injured and passed out. He fell to the sea with a big splash. A splash of water, life, and death unknown. Snort. Saint Humak snorted, and finally left with satisfaction when he saw the fishing boat exploded and Sabo died. At the port, the nobles were shocked by this scene. All the nobles, including the king, turned pale. They were not worried about Sabo's life or death, but they were worried about whether this blind kid who ran away from somewhere would anger the celestial dragons, and then they would all be in trouble. Fortunately, after the government ship docked, the government officials who came down first did not say a word about what had just happened, which made many nobles heave a sigh of relief. Advertisement. When celestial dragons Chermak walked down, countless cheers rang out, hundreds of white doves placed on both sides were released, hundreds of white doves flew through the sky, balloons representing welcome slowly rose, and the salute roared again, colorful ribbons were flying all over the sky, the entire port became a sea of celebration. As for the broken fishing boat on the sea and Sabo who fell into the water and didn't know whether he was alive or dead, no one cared about it anymore. It was just a flaw in this grand celebration that should not have appeared. When the celebration at the port reached its climax with the appearance of celestial dragons, a wind slowly turned on the sea, and a rotating Uzumaki appeared on the calm sea. Sabo flew out from the center of Uzumaki, dragged by the wind, and flew to the west. Forest. The moment Sabo flew away, two strangely dressed people standing on the deck of the government ship sensed that someone was coming to save Sabo. These two people are the CP0S who protect the celestial dragons. They are wearing white suits and white cloaks, with extremely strange ghost and plant masks on their heads respectively. The two of them looked at each other, jumped off the boat, put their feet on the sea, and flew dozens of meters away. If Luo Yun saw it from the side, he would definitely say, What a great Qinggong water floater, you should be rewarded. The government officials on the ship were curious when they saw this scene. They naturally knew the identities of these two people, and what happened could actually cause these two strong men to take action. Along the way, there was only one time when these two strong men were dispatched at the same time, but it was a pirate group with a bounty of 400 million. It only took half an hour for the two CP0 strong men to kill hundreds of people on the entire ship. Advertisement. 45 kill CP1. Advertisement. On the sea, the invisible wind dragged Sabo flying towards the forest to the west, and a hundred meters behind Sabo, two white figures swept across the water with their feet. Every time a foot landed, there was a roar in the void, and the air exploded. The two of them took advantage of the situation and flew out. The combination of Moonwalk and Xiao was perfect. Each sweep was tens of meters, and the figure flickered no slower than Sabo. The two CP0s are one tall and one short. The tall one is still very thin, and the cloak blows tightly against the body. It can be seen that the two figures are the same. The short one is very fat, round, and round like a watermelon. But the speed is not slow at all. The two chased Sabo all the way into the forest to the west, walking through the dense forest as nimbly as apes. Finally, they followed Sabo all the way to the end of the forest. They watched the person in front of them stop. Long raised his hand to stop the flying Sabo, but did not look at the two CP0s. The two CP0s looked at each other, with slightly angry expressions hidden behind their masks. The other party didn't take them seriously at all. He lowered his head and looked at Sabo first. Sabo was in a very bad condition. Although he was still alive, he was hit by the explosion and was seriously injured and dying. His face was covered with black matter and blood mixed with the explosion. Most of his clothes were torn, and wounds could be seen everywhere. Covered in blood. Fortunately, the dragon came to the rescue, otherwise Sabo would definitely die. Controlling the wind, he placed Sabo on a rock dozens of meters away. Only then did Long look at the two CP0s in front of him. Advertisement. The celestial dragons are really afraid of death. As soon as they leave the range of the Sabayati archipelago, they will take you CP0s, who are known as the celestial dragon's strongest shields, with two of them. It seems that this celestial dragons is more afraid of death. Who are you? Gao CP0 asked. Knowing these things and having the devil fruit ability, it seems that he is not from East Blue, the short CP0 analyzed. I'm sorry, I'm from East Blue and from this country, Long said calmly. 
The two CP0 leaders were slightly surprised. East Blue is the weakest of the four oceans. Ever since the death of Roger D. Roger, the Pirate King, East Blue has not produced a strong person with a name. But the person in front of him is not much different in strength compared to them, and he is also ranked as a strong person in the New World. No matter who you are, what is your identity? Your existence jeopardizes the safety of the Celestial Dragons. There is only one outcome. Die. The two CP0 ass had no intention of knowing the identity of the dragon. The moment the words fell, the short CP0 suddenly took action without any warning. He raised his feet and fired out two powerful tempest kicks. The two flashes of color were like slashes from long swords, tearing apart the air and even the earth, and struck the dragon with billowing dust and smoke. Advertisement. Bang. The dragon didn't make the slightest move, not even moving its footsteps. Then two muffled sounds were heard, and the slash exploded half a meter away from the dragon. Amamant Haki released. The short CP0 sounded slightly shocked. He didn't expect that this guy whose identity was unknown, Armament Haki, was so strong. The defense of Armament Haki when he was outside was so high, and he could easily block his Tempest Kick. At this moment, the high CP0 also knew that the dragon was difficult to deal with, so he whispered to his companions, Be careful, this guy is not simple, use Armament Haki and add Devil Fruit, let's join forces. No need. The short CP0 didn't accept it, and rushed towards the dragon with his feet shaved. As a CP0, everyone has the capital to be arrogant. Those who can become a CP0 are all the top strong people in the world. If their strength is put into the new world, even if they face the senior cotters of four emperors, they are inferior. Among them, the strong ones can even rival Admiral. Four emperors. It turned into an afterimage and disappeared. The short CP0 appeared above the dragon's head the next second. His right leg was chopped down vertically like a big axe. Iron body steel was activated. His right leg was as hard as steel. At the same time, armament Haki wrapped around the leg. This even real steel can be broken in half with one kick. Facing the short CP0 in close combat, Long finally made a move. Long quickly raised his hand, and Haki concentrated on the palm without covering it, and slapped the right leg of the short CP0 with his palm. Advertisement. Click. The short CP0's right foot made a slight sound of bones breaking, and then, a scream came from his mouth. With the blood spurting out, the short CP0 flew out like a kite with a broken string, and hit the ground heavily. There was a loud noise like a huge rock hitting the ground, the ground shook, and thick dust and smoke rose. The expression of the high-ranking CP0 standing next to him suddenly changed, and he said in surprise, it's not just a simple release of martial arts hacky, but also a high-level internal sabotage. Now Gao CP0 understands that the opponent is not to be underestimated. There are very few people who can master armament hacky and destroy it from within. There are even fewer people who can master armament hacky to destroy it from within. He asked in a deep voice, who are you? The short CP0 rushed out from the thick smoke and stood on the right side of the dragon. His white suit was stained with dirt, his cloak was turned into rags, and his right foot was shaking slightly. The contempt in his eyes was no longer there, but only deep fear. If he hadn't reacted quickly, his legs would have been disabled just now. This level of combat power was definitely at the four emperor's admiral level. You are definitely not a nobody on the sea with your level of strength, the short CP0 said. Long took off the mask on his head, revealed his face, grinned and said, leader of the revolutionary army, Durag Long. Advertisement. 45 kill CP1. Advertisement. On the sea, the invisible wind dragged Sabo flying towards the forest to the west, and a hundred meters behind Sabo, two white figures swept across the water with their feet. Every time a foot landed, there was a roar in the void, and the air exploded. The two of them took advantage of the situation and flew out. The combination of Moonwalk and Xiao was perfect. Each sweep was tens of meters, and the figure flickered no slower than Sabo. The two CP0s are one tall and one short. The tall one is still very thin, and the cloak blows tightly against the body. It can be seen that the two figures are the same. The short one is very fat, round, and round like a watermelon. But the speed is not slow at all. The two chased Sabo all the way into the forest to the west, walking through the dense forest as nimbly as apes. Finally, they followed Sabo all the way to the end of the forest. They watched the person in front of them stop. Long raised his hand to stop the flying Sabo, but did not look at the two CP0s. The two CP0s looked at each other, with slightly angry expressions hidden behind their masks. The other party didn't take them seriously at all. He lowered his head and looked at Sabo first. Sabo was in a very bad condition. Although he was still alive, he was hit by the explosion and was seriously injured and dying. His face was covered with black matter and blood mixed with the explosion. Most of his clothes were torn, and wounds could be seen everywhere. Covered in blood. Fortunately, the dragon came to the rescue, otherwise Sabo would definitely die. Controlling the wind, he placed Sabo on a rock dozens of meters away. Only then did Long look at the two CP0s in front of him. Advertisement. The celestial dragons are really afraid of death. As soon as they leave the range of the Sabayati archipelago, they will take you CP0s, who are known as the celestial dragon's strongest shields, with two of them. It seems that this celestial dragons is more afraid of death. Who are you? Gao CP0 asked. Knowing these things and having the devil fruit ability, it seems that he is not from East Blue, the short CP0 analyzed. I'm sorry, I'm from East Blue and from this country, Long said calmly. The two CP0 leaders were slightly surprised. East Blue is the weakest of the four oceans. Ever since the death of Roger D. Roger, the Pirate King, East Blue has not produced a strong person with a name. But the person in front of him is not much different in strength compared to them, and he is also ranked as a strong person in the New World. No matter who you are, what is your identity? Your existence jeopardizes the safety of the Celestial Dragons. There is only one outcome. Die. The two CP0s had no intention of knowing the identity of the dragon. The moment the words fell, the short CP0 suddenly took action without any warning. He raised his feet and fired out two powerful tempest kicks. The two flashes of color were like slashes from long swords, tearing apart the air and even the earth, and struck the dragon with billowing dust and smoke. Advertisement. Bang. The dragon didn't make the slightest move, not even moving its footsteps. Then two muffled sounds were heard, and the slash exploded half a meter away from the dragon. Amamant Haki released. The short CP0 sounded slightly shocked. 
He didn't expect that this guy whose identity was unknown, Armament Haki, was so strong. The defense of Armament Haki when he was outside was so high, and he could easily block his Tempest Kick. At this moment, the high CP0 also knew that the dragon was difficult to deal with, so he whispered to his companions, Be careful, this guy is not simple, use Armament Haki and add Devil Fruit, let's join forces. No need. The short CP0 didn't accept it, and rushed towards the dragon with his feet shaved. As a CP0, everyone has the capital to be arrogant. Those who can become a CP0 are all the top strong people in the world. If their strength is put into the new world, even if they face the senior cotters of four emperors, they are inferior. Among them, the strong ones can even rival Admiral. Four emperors. It turned into an afterimage and disappeared. The short CP0 appeared above the dragon's head the next second. His right leg was chopped down vertically like a big axe. Iron body steel was activated. His right leg was as hard as steel. At the same time, armament hacky wrapped around the leg. This even real steel can be broken in half with one kick. Facing the short CP0 in close combat, Long finally made a move. Long quickly raised his hand, and Haki concentrated on the palm without covering it, and slapped the right leg of the short CP0 with his palm. Advertisement. Click. The short CP0's right foot made a slight sound of bones breaking, and then, a scream came from his mouth. With the blood spurting out, the short CP0 flew out like a kite with a broken string, and hit the ground heavily. There was a loud noise like a huge rock hitting the ground, the ground shook, and thick dust and smoke rose. The expression of the high-ranking CP0 standing next to him suddenly changed, and he said in surprise, it's not just a simple release of martial arts hacky, but also a high-level internal sabotage. Now Gao CP0 understands that the opponent is not to be underestimated. There are very few people who can master armament hacky and destroy it from within. There are even fewer people who can master armament hacky to destroy it from within. He asked in a deep voice, who are you? The short CP0 rushed out from the thick smoke and stood on the right side of the dragon. His white suit was stained with dirt, his cloak was turned into rags, and his right foot was shaking slightly. The contempt in his eyes was no longer there, but only deep fear. If he hadn't reacted quickly, his legs would have been disabled just now. This level of combat power was definitely at the four emperor's admiral level. You are definitely not a nobody on the sea with your level of strength, the short CP0 said. Long took off the mask on his head, revealed his face, grinned and said, leader of the revolutionary army, Durag Long. Advertisement. 45 kill CP1. Advertisement. On the sea, the invisible wind dragged Sabo flying towards the forest to the west, and a hundred meters behind Sabo, two white figures swept across the water with their feet. Every time a foot landed, there was a roar in the void, and the air exploded. The two of them took advantage of the situation and flew out. The combination of Moonwalk and Xiao was perfect. Each sweep was tens of meters, and the figure flickered no slower than Sabo. The two CP0s are one tall and one short. The tall one is still very thin, and the cloak blows tightly against the body. It can be seen that the two figures are the same. The short one is very fat, round, and round like a watermelon. But the speed is not slow at all. The two chased Sabo all the way into the forest to the west, walking through the dense forest as nimbly as apes. Finally, they followed Sabo all the way to the end of the forest. They watched the person in front of them stop. Long raised his hand to stop the flying Sabo, but did not look at the two CP0s. The two CP0s looked at each other, with slightly angry expressions hidden behind their masks. The other party didn't take them seriously at all. He lowered his head and looked at Sabo first. Sabo was in a very bad condition. Although he was still alive, he was hit by the explosion and was seriously injured and dying. His face was covered with black matter and blood mixed with the explosion. Most of his clothes were torn, and wounds could be seen everywhere. Covered in blood. Fortunately, the dragon came to the rescue, otherwise Sabo would definitely die. Controlling the wind, he placed Sabo on a rock dozens of meters away. Only then did Long look at the two CP0s in front of him. Advertisement. The celestial dragons are really afraid of death. As soon as they leave the range of the Sabayati archipelago, they will take you CP0s, who are known as the celestial dragon's strongest shields, with two of them. It seems that this celestial dragons is more afraid of death. Who are you? Gao CP0 asked. Knowing these things and having the devil fruit ability, it seems that he is not from East Blue, the short CP0 analyzed. I'm sorry, I'm from East Blue and from this country, Long said calmly. The two CP0 leaders were slightly surprised. East Blue is the weakest of the four oceans. Ever since the death of Roger D. Roger, the pirate king, East Blue has not produced a strong person with a name. But the person in front of him is not much different in strength compared to them, and he is also ranked as a strong person in the new world. No matter who you are, what is your identity? Your existence jeopardizes the safety of the celestial dragons. There is only one outcome. Die. The two CP0s had no intention of knowing the identity of the dragon. The moment the words fell, the short CP0 suddenly took action without any warning. He raised his feet and fired out two powerful tempest kicks. The two flashes of color were like slashes from long swords, tearing apart the air and even the earth, and struck the dragon with billowing dust and smoke. Advertisement. Bang. The dragon didn't make the slightest move, not even moving its footsteps. Then two muffled sounds were heard, and the slash exploded half a meter away from the dragon. Amamant Haki released. The short CP0 sounded slightly shocked. He didn't expect that this guy whose identity was unknown, Armament Haki, was so strong. The defense of Armament Haki when he was outside was so high, and he could easily block his Tempest Kick. At this moment, the high CP0 also knew that the dragon was difficult to deal with, so he whispered to his companions, Be careful, this guy is not simple, use Armament Haki and add Devil Fruit, let's join forces. No need. The short CP0 didn't accept it, and rushed towards the dragon with his feet shaved. As a CP0, everyone has the capital to be arrogant. Those who can become a CP0 are all the top strong people in the world. If their strength is put into the new world, even if they face the senior cotters of four emperors, they are inferior. Among them, the strong ones can even rival Admiral. Four emperors. It turned into an afterimage and disappeared. The short CP0 appeared above the dragon's head the next second. His right leg was chopped down vertically like a big axe. Iron body steel was activated. His right leg was as hard as steel. At the same time, armament hacky wrapped around the leg. This even real steel can be broken in half with one kick. 
Facing the short CP0 in close combat, Long finally made a move. Long quickly raised his hand, and Haki concentrated on the palm without covering it, and slapped the right leg of the short CP0 with his palm. Advertisement. Click. The short CP0's right foot made a slight sound of bones breaking, and then, a scream came from his mouth. With the blood spurting out, the short CP0 flew out like a kite with a broken string, and hit the ground heavily. There was a loud noise like a huge rock hitting the ground, the ground shook, and thick dust and smoke rose. The expression of the high-ranking CP0 standing next to him suddenly changed, and he said in surprise, it's not just a simple release of martial arts hacky, but also a high-level internal sabotage. Now Gao CP0 understands that the opponent is not to be underestimated. There are very few people who can master armament hacky and destroy it from within. There are even fewer people who can master armament hacky to destroy it from within. He asked in a deep voice, who are you? The short CP0 rushed out from the thick smoke and stood on the right side of the dragon. His white suit was stained with dirt, his cloak was turned into rags, and his right foot was shaking slightly. The contempt in his eyes was no longer there, but only deep fear. If he hadn't reacted quickly, his legs would have been disabled just now. This level of combat power was definitely at the four emperor's admiral level. You are definitely not a nobody on the sea with your level of strength, the short CP0 said. Long took off the mask on his head, revealed his face, grinned and said, leader of the revolutionary army, Durag Long. Advertisement. 45 kill CP1. Advertisement. On the sea, the invisible wind dragged Sabo flying towards the forest to the west, and a hundred meters behind Sabo, two white figures swept across the water with their feet. Every time a foot landed, there was a roar in the void, and the air exploded. The two of them took advantage of the situation and flew out. The combination of Moonwalk and Xiao was perfect. Each sweep was tens of meters, and the figure flickered no slower than Sabo. The two CP0s are one tall and one short. The tall one is still very thin, and the cloak blows tightly against the body. It can be seen that the two figures are the same. The short one is very fat, round, and round like a watermelon. But the speed is not slow at all. The two chased Sabo all the way into the forest to the west, walking through the dense forest as nimbly as apes. Finally, they followed Sabo all the way to the end of the forest. They watched the person in front of them stop. Long raised his hand to stop the flying Sabo, but did not look at the two CP0s. The two CP0s looked at each other, with slightly angry expressions hidden behind their masks. The other party didn't take them seriously at all. He lowered his head and looked at Sabo first. Sabo was in a very bad condition. Although he was still alive, he was hit by the explosion and was seriously injured and dying. His face was covered with black matter and blood mixed with the explosion. Most of his clothes were torn, and wounds could be seen everywhere. Covered in blood. Fortunately, the dragon came to the rescue, otherwise Sabo would definitely die. Controlling the wind, he placed Sabo on a rock dozens of meters away. Only then did Long look at the two CP0s in front of him. Advertisement. The celestial dragons are really afraid of death. As soon as they leave the range of the Sabayati archipelago, they will take you CP0s, who are known as the celestial dragon's strongest shields, with two of them. It seems that this celestial dragons is more afraid of death. Who are you? Gao CP0 asked. Knowing these things and having the devil fruit ability, it seems that he is not from East Blue, the short CP0 analyzed. I'm sorry, I'm from East Blue and from this country, Long said calmly. The two CP0 leaders were slightly surprised. East Blue is the weakest of the four oceans. Ever since the death of Roger D. Roger, the pirate king, East Blue has not produced a strong person with a name. But the person in front of him is not much different in strength compared to them, and he is also ranked as a strong person in the new world. No matter who you are, what is your identity? Your existence jeopardizes the safety of the celestial dragons. There is only one outcome, die. The two CP0s had no intention of knowing the identity of the dragon. The moment the words fell, the short CP0 suddenly took action without any warning. He raised his feet and fired out two powerful tempest kicks. The two flashes of color were like slashes from long swords, tearing apart the air and even the earth, and struck the dragon with billowing dust and smoke. Advertisement. Bang. The dragon didn't make the slightest move, not even moving its footsteps. Then two muffled sounds were heard, and the slash exploded half a meter away from the dragon. Amamant Haki released. The short CP0 sounded slightly shocked. He didn't expect that this guy whose identity was unknown, Armament Haki, was so strong. The defense of Armament Haki when he was outside was so high, and he could easily block his Tempest Kick. At this moment, the high CP0 also knew that the dragon was difficult to deal with, so he whispered to his companions, Be careful, this guy is not simple, use Armament Haki and add Devil Fruit, let's join forces. No need. The short CP0 didn't accept it, and rushed towards the dragon with his feet shaved. As a CP0, everyone has the capital to be arrogant. Those who can become a CP0 are all the top strong people in the world. If their strength is put into the new world, even if they face the senior cotters of four emperors, they are inferior. Among them, the strong ones can even rival Admiral. Four emperors. It turned into an afterimage and disappeared. The short CP0 appeared above the dragon's head the next second. His right leg was chopped down vertically like a big axe. Iron body steel was activated. His right leg was as hard as steel. At the same time, armament hacky wrapped around the leg. This even real steel can be broken in half with one kick. Facing the short CP0 in close combat, Long finally made a move. Long quickly raised his hand, and Haki concentrated on the palm without covering it, and slapped the right leg of the short CP0 with his palm. Advertisement. Click. The short CP0's right foot made a slight sound of bones breaking, and then, a scream came from his mouth. With the blood spurting out, the short CP0 flew out like a kite with a broken string, and hit the ground heavily. There was a loud noise like a huge rock hitting the ground, the ground shook, and thick dust and smoke rose. The expression of the high-ranking CP0 standing next to him suddenly changed, and he said in surprise, it's not just a simple release of martial arts hacky, but also a high-level internal sabotage. Now Gao CP0 understands that the opponent is not to be underestimated. There are very few people who can master armament hacky and destroy it from within. There are even fewer people who can master armament hacky to destroy it from within. He asked in a deep voice. 
voice, who are you? The short CP0 rushed out from the thick smoke and stood on the right side of the dragon. His white suit was stained with dirt, his cloak was turned into rags, and his right foot was shaking slightly. The contempt in his eyes was no longer there, but only deep fear. If he hadn't reacted quickly, his legs would have been disabled just now. This level of combat power was definitely at the four emperor's admiral level. You are definitely not a nobody on the sea with your level of strength, the short CP0 said. Long took off the mask on his head, revealed his face, grinned and said, leader of the revolutionary army, Durag Long. Advertisement. 46 kill CP2. Advertisement. Revolutionary army. The expressions of the two CP0s changed dramatically at the same time, and the short CP0 cursed loudly in the next second. A bunch of idiots can get such important information wrong. Although the revolutionary army is not a large organization yet, the ideas of the revolutionary army are very dangerous and will shake the rule of the world government. Therefore, CP Cypherpole is also extremely concerned about the organization of the revolutionary army. CP0, as Cypherpole, the top secret directly under the world government, naturally knows about the revolutionary army. However, in CP Cypherpole's information about the revolutionary army, it is judged that the revolutionary army is a small organization with not many personnel and not many strong people. Isn't he called a strong man? The guy in front of him who claims to be the leader of the revolutionary army is definitely a four emperor's admiral level fighter. How could an organization established by such a strong man not have other strong men? With the power of such a powerful person, there are few in the entire world that can match it. If you go to the new world, you might be able to become another four emperors. If the person in charge of the statistics revolutionary army were in front of the short CP0 at this moment, he would definitely slap him to death. Advertisement. Such a powerful force and the spread of such dangerous ideas are enough for the world government to take the highest level of vigilance. The two CP0s glanced at each other subconsciously, and both understood the meaning in each other's eyes. This kind of strong man cannot be solved by the two of them working together, and the current situation is not good. Since the other party is the leader of the revolutionary army, the target must be Saint Chermak. They must ensure the safety of Saint Chermak. If something happens to Saint Chermak, the two of them simply cannot afford it. There is only one way before them now, leave. Gao CP0 took action, and Gao CP0 raised his hands and swung them down suddenly. Sickle, whirlwind slash. When his hands slid over, the air quickly compressed under an unknown force, compressing into invisible wind blades. In an instant, dozens of wind blades as tall as a person were formed in the void. These wind blades were slashed simultaneously under the control of high CP0. Xiang Long. Devil Fruit. Observation Hacky felt the invisible wind blade flying past, the dragon's face changed slightly, and one of them also had Devil Fruit ability. But what surprised Long was not this, but that the opponent's Devil Fruit ability seemed to be related to the wind. This was really interesting. Advertisement. The wind blades swept across the sky, kicked up the dust on the ground, and formed billowing smoke. It was so powerful and terrifying that it was enough to break mountains and break rocks. Walk. After releasing the wind blade, the two CP0s did not stop at all, and immediately turned around and fled towards the port. Here, countless wind blades struck, and the dragon was stunned for a moment, and then a meaningful smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. The dragon gently raised his hand and uttered a word. Disperse. A breeze blew through the wind blade in the dragon's palm. The seemingly ordinary breeze blew through the wind blade, which actually melted like white snow in spring and turned into air again. Stepping on the strong wind, the dragon quickly caught up with the two CP0s who were trying to escape. The high CP0 noticed the dragon coming from behind, and had no time to think about how the dragon could so easily deal with the wind blades emitted by his kamae tsu fruit. He jumped with his feet on the ground, turned around suddenly in midair, raised his hands with high CP0, shouted, cross wind slash, crossed his hands and slid down into the air in front of him. The surrounding air suddenly surged rapidly, and two huge wind blades of more than 10 meters were formed in the blink of an eye, killing the dragon. Wherever they passed, two deep ravines were cut on the ground, like two ferocious scars. The sharpness of the wind blades can be imagined and no, it's really rare that someone is playing tricks in front of me. Facing the attack of two giant wind blades, Long said something lightly. Instead of retreating, he stepped on his right foot, and his speed suddenly increased. He raised his right hand, and a rapid whirlwind visible to the naked eye condensed in the palm of his hand. Advertisement. With one palm shot, Armament Hacky was released at the same time, and the rapidly growing whirlwind in his hand formed a giant palm print out of thin air that emitted a faint black light. Bang! The two giant wind blades were directly smashed to pieces by the giant palm, but the light of the giant palm dimmed a few minutes, and the power of the giant palm, which was much weakened, continued to blast towards the two CP0s. Feeling the attack coming from behind, the two CP0s spun in the air and took action at the same time. They waved dozens of tempest kick slashes with their legs in midair, smashing the armed giant wind palms. Bang! Bang! Continuous explosions resounded in the forest, the earth trembled, dust and smoke rolled, rows of trees fell, and countless birds in the forest started up, flying into the sky like a black cloud. When the dust and smoke dissipated, the ground was crisscrossed with ravines, and a huge deep pit emerged, with broken trees stacked on top of each other. Three figures flashed in the pit, sometimes colliding and sometimes separating. Every time they collided, there was an explosion in the air, and a large pit collapsed on the ground. The dragon raised his hand to fight off the short CP0. At this time, the high CP0 attacked from the left. He slashed at the dragon with two wind blades. Unfortunately, the dragon's armament hacky had already reached the extremely high level of destroying it from the inside. With a look, armament hacky was unleashed. Blocking the wind blade, he stepped on the void and approached the high CP0, and the strong wind flowed around his palms. The dragon raised his hand as a sword and cut down the high CP0 head on. Gao CP0 quickly used the six styles iron body. Steel, and at the same time armament hacky burst out and condensed in his chest, but he still underestimated long strike of the palm blade. Advertisement. 46 kill CP2. Advertisement. Revolutionary army. The expressions of the two CP0s changed dramatically at the same time, and the short CP0 cursed loudly in the next second. A bunch of idiots can get such important information wrong. Although the revolutionary army is not a large organization yet, the ideas of the revolutionary army are very dangerous and will shake the rule of the world government. Therefore, CP Cypherpole is also extremely concerned about the organization of the revolutionary army. CP0, as Cypherpole, the top secret directly under the world government, naturally knows about the revolutionary army. 
However, in CP Cypherpol's information about the Revolutionary Army, it is judged that the Revolutionary Army is a small organization with not many personnel and not many strong people. Isn't he called a strong man? The guy in front of him who claims to be the leader of the Revolutionary Army is definitely a four emperor's admiral level fighter. How could an organization established by such a strong man not have other strong men? With the power of such a powerful person, there are few in the entire world that can match it. If you go to the new world, you might be able to become another four emperors. If the person in charge of the statistics Revolutionary Army were in front of the short CP0 at this moment, he would definitely slap him to death. Advertisement. Such a powerful force and the spread of such dangerous ideas are enough for the world government to take the highest level of vigilance. The two CP0s glanced at each other subconsciously, and both understood the meaning in each other's eyes. This kind of strong man cannot be solved by the two of them working together, and the current situation is not good. Since the other party is the leader of the revolutionary army, the target must be Saint Chermak. They must ensure the safety of Saint Chermak. If something happens to Saint Chermak, the two of them simply cannot afford it. There is only one way before them now, leave. Gao CP0 took action, and Gao CP0 raised his hands and swung them down suddenly. Sickle, whirlwind slash. When his hands slid over, the air quickly compressed under an unknown force, compressing into invisible wind blades. In an instant, dozens of wind blades as tall as a person were formed in the void. These wind blades were slashed simultaneously under the control of high CP0. Xiang Long, devil fruit. Observation Haki felt the invisible wind blade flying past, the dragon's face changed slightly, and one of them also had devil fruit ability. But what surprised Long was not this, but that the opponent's devil fruit ability seemed to be related to the wind. This was really interesting. Advertisement. The wind blades swept across the sky, kicked up the dust on the ground, and formed billowing smoke. It was so powerful and terrifying that it was enough to break mountains and break rocks. Walk. After releasing the wind blade, the two CP0s did not stop at all, and immediately turned around and fled towards the port. Here, countless wind blades struck, and the dragon was stunned for a moment, and then a meaningful smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. The dragon gently raised his hand and uttered a word. Disperse. A breeze blew through the wind blade in the dragon's palm. The seemingly ordinary breeze blew through the wind blade, which actually melted like white snow in spring and turned into air again. Stepping on the strong wind, the dragon quickly caught up with the two CP0s who were trying to escape. The high CP0 noticed the dragon coming from behind, and had no time to think about how the dragon could so easily deal with the wind blades emitted by his kamae Ditsu fruit. He jumped with his feet on the ground, turned around suddenly in midair, raised his hands with high CP0, shouted, cross wind slash, crossed his hands and slid down into the air in front of him. The surrounding air suddenly surged rapidly, and two huge wind blades of more than 10 meters were formed in the blink of an eye, killing the dragon. Wherever they passed, two deep ravines were cut on the ground, like two ferocious scars. The sharpness of the wind blades can be imagined and no, it's really rare that someone is playing tricks in front of me. Facing the attack of two giant wind blades, Long said something lightly. Instead of retreating, he stepped on his right foot, and his speed suddenly increased. He raised his right hand, and a rapid whirlwind visible to the naked eye condensed in the palm of his hand. Advertisement. With one palm shot, Armament Haki was released at the same time, and the rapidly growing whirlwind in his hand formed a giant palm print out of thin air that emitted a faint black light. Bang! The two giant wind blades were directly smashed to pieces by the giant palm, but the light of the giant palm dimmed a few minutes, and the power of the giant palm, which was much weakened, continued to blast towards the two CP0s. Feeling the attack coming from behind, the two CP0s spun in the air and took action at the same time. They waved dozens of tempest kick slashes with their legs in midair, smashing the armed giant wind palms. Bang! Bang! Continuous explosions resounded in the forest, the earth trembled, dust and smoke rolled, rows of trees fell, and countless birds in the forest started up, flying into the sky like a black cloud. When the dust and smoke dissipated, the ground was crisscrossed with ravines, and a huge deep pit emerged, with broken trees stacked on top of each other. Three figures flashed in the pit, sometimes colliding and sometimes separating. Every time they collided, there was an explosion in the air, and a large pit collapsed on the ground. The dragon raised his hand to fight off the short CP0. At this time, the high CP0 attacked from the left. He slashed at the dragon with two wind blades. Unfortunately, the dragon's armament Haki had already reached the extremely high level of destroying it from the inside. With a look, armament Haki was unleashed. Blocking the wind blade, he stepped on the void and approached the high CP0, and the strong wind flowed around his palms. The dragon raised his hand as a sword and cut down the high CP0 head on. Gao CP0 quickly used the six styles iron body, steel, and at the same time armament Haki burst out and condensed in his chest, but he still underestimated long strike of the palm blade. Advertisement. 46 kill CP2. Advertisement. Revolutionary army. The expressions of the two CP0s changed dramatically at the same time, and the short CP0 cursed loudly in the next second. A bunch of idiots can get such important information wrong. Although the revolutionary army is not a large organization yet, the ideas of the revolutionary army are very dangerous and will shake the rule of the world government. Therefore, CP Cypherpol is also extremely concerned about the organization of the revolutionary army. CP0, as Cypherpol, the top secret directly under the world government, naturally knows about the revolutionary army. However, in CP Cypherpol's information about the revolutionary army, it is judged that the revolutionary army is a small organization with not many personnel and not many strong people. Isn't he called a strong man? The guy in front of him who claims to be the leader of the revolutionary army is definitely a four emperor's admiral level fighter. How could an organization established by such a strong man not have other strong men? With the power of such a powerful person, there are few in the entire world that can match it. If you go to the new world, you might be able to become another four emperors. If the person in charge of the statistics revolutionary army were in front of the short CP0 at this moment, he would definitely slap him to death. Advertisement. Such a powerful force and the spread of such dangerous ideas are enough for the world government to take the highest level of vigilance. The two CP0s glanced at each other subconsciously, and both understood the meaning in each other's eyes. This kind of strong man cannot be solved by the two of them working together, and the current situation is not good. 
Since the other party is the leader of the revolutionary army, the target must be Saint Chermak. They must ensure the safety of Saint Chermak. If something happens to Saint Chermak, the two of them simply cannot afford it. There is only one way before them now, leave. Gao CP0 took action, and Gao CP0 raised his hands and swung them down suddenly. Sickle, whirlwind slash. When his hands slid over, the air quickly compressed under an unknown force, compressing into invisible wind blades. In an instant, dozens of wind blades as tall as a person were formed in the void. These wind blades were slashed simultaneously under the control of high CP0. Xiang Long. Devil Fruit. Observation Hacky felt the invisible wind blade flying past, the dragon's face changed slightly, and one of them also had Devil Fruit ability. But what surprised Long was not this, but that the opponent's Devil Fruit ability seemed to be related to the wind. This was really interesting. Advertisement. The wind blade swept across the sky, kicked up the dust on the ground, and formed billowing smoke. It was so powerful and terrifying that it was enough to break mountains and break rocks. Walk. After releasing the wind blade, the two CP0s did not stop at all, and immediately turned around and fled towards the port. Here, countless wind blades struck, and the dragon was stunned for a moment, and then a meaningful smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. The dragon gently raised his hand and uttered a word. Disperse. A breeze blew through the wind blade in the dragon's palm. The seemingly ordinary breeze blew through the wind blade, which actually melted like white snow in spring and turned into air again. Stepping on the strong wind, the dragon quickly caught up with the two CP0s who were trying to escape. The high CP0 noticed the dragon coming from behind, and had no time to think about how the dragon could so easily deal with the wind blades emitted by his kamae itsu fruit. He jumped with his feet on the ground, turned around suddenly in midair, raised his hands with high CP0, shouted, cross wind slash, crossed his hands and slid down into the air in front of him. The surrounding air suddenly surged rapidly, and two huge wind blades of more than 10 meters were formed in the blink of an eye, killing the dragon. Wherever they passed, two deep ravines were cut on the ground, like two ferocious scars. The sharpness of the wind blades can be imagined and no, it's really rare that someone is playing tricks in front of me. Facing the attack of two giant wind blades, Long said something lightly. Instead of retreating, he stepped on his right foot, and his speed suddenly increased. He raised his right hand, and a rapid whirlwind visible to the naked eye condensed in the palm of his hand. Advertisement. With one palm shot, Armament Hacky was released at the same time, and the rapidly growing whirlwind in his hand formed a giant palm print out of thin air that emitted a faint black light. Bang! The two giant wind blades were directly smashed to pieces by the giant palm, but the light of the giant palm dimmed a few minutes, and the power of the giant palm, which was much weakened, continued to blast towards the two CP0s. Feeling the attack coming from behind, the two CP0s spun in the air and took action at the same time. They waved dozens of tempest kick slashes with their legs in midair, smashing the armed giant wind palms. Bang! Bang! Continuous explosions resounded in the forest, the earth trembled, dust and smoke rolled, rows of trees fell, and countless birds in the forest started up, flying into the sky like a black cloud. When the dust and smoke dissipated, the ground was crisscrossed with ravines, and a huge deep pit emerged, with broken trees stacked on top of each other. Three figures flashed in the pit, sometimes colliding and sometimes separating. Every time they collided, there was an explosion in the air, and a large pit collapsed on the ground. The dragon raised his hand to fight off the short CP0. At this time, the high CP0 attacked from the left. He slashed at the dragon with two wind blades. Unfortunately, the dragon's armament hacky had already reached the extremely high level of destroying it from the inside. With a look, armament hacky was unleashed. Blocking the wind blade, he stepped on the void and approached the high CP0, and the strong wind flowed around his palms. The dragon raised his hand as a sword and cut down the high CP0 head on. Gao CP0 quickly used the six styles iron body, steel, and at the same time armament hacky burst out and condensed in his chest, but he still underestimated long strike of the palm blade. Advertisement. 46 kill CP2. Advertisement. Revolutionary army. The expressions of the two CP0s changed dramatically at the same time, and the short CP0 cursed loudly in the next second. A bunch of idiots can get such important information wrong. Although the revolutionary army is not a large organization yet, the ideas of the revolutionary army are very dangerous and will shake the rule of the world government. Therefore, CP Cypherpole is also extremely concerned about the organization of the revolutionary army. CP0, as Cypherpole, the top secret directly under the world government, naturally knows about the revolutionary army. However, in CP Cypherpole's information about the revolutionary army, it is judged that the revolutionary army is a small organization with not many personnel and not many strong people. Isn't he called a strong man? The guy in front of him who claims to be the leader of the revolutionary army is definitely a four emperor's admiral level fighter. How could an organization established by such a strong man not have other strong men? With the power of such a powerful person, there are few in the entire world that can match it. If you go to the new world, you might be able to become another four emperors. If the person in charge of the statistics revolutionary army were in front of the short CP0 at this moment, he would definitely slap him to death. Advertisement. Such a powerful force and the spread of such dangerous ideas are enough for the world government to take the highest level of vigilance. The two CP0s glanced at each other subconsciously, and both understood the meaning in each other's eyes. This kind of strong man cannot be solved by the two of them working together, and the current situation is not good. Since the other party is the leader of the revolutionary army, the target must be Saint Chermak. They must ensure the safety of Saint Chermak. If something happens to Saint Chermak, the two of them simply cannot afford it. There is only one way before them now, leave. Gao CP0 took action, and Gao CP0 raised his hands and swung them down suddenly. Sickle, whirlwind slash. When his hands slid over, the air quickly compressed under an unknown force, compressing into invisible wind blades. In an instant, dozens of wind blades as tall as a person were formed in the void. These wind blades were slashed simultaneously under the control of high CP0. Xiang Long. Devil Fruit. Observation Hacky felt the invisible wind blade flying past, the dragon's face changed slightly, and one of them also had Devil Fruit ability. But what surprised Long was not this, but that the opponent's Devil Fruit ability seemed to be related to the wind. This was really interesting. Advertisement. The wind blades swept across the sky, kicked up the dust on the ground, and formed billowing smoke. It was so powerful and terrifying that it was enough to break mountains and break rocks. 
Walk. After releasing the wind blade, the two CP0s did not stop at all, and immediately turned around and fled towards the port. Here, countless wind blades struck, and the dragon was stunned for a moment, and then a meaningful smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. The dragon gently raised his hand and uttered a word. Disperse. A breeze blew through the wind blade in the dragon's palm. The seemingly ordinary breeze blew through the wind blade, which actually melted like white snow in spring and turned into air again. Stepping on the strong wind, the dragon quickly caught up with the two CP0s who were trying to escape. The high CP0 noticed the dragon coming from behind, and had no time to think about how the dragon could so easily deal with the wind blades emitted by his kamai itsu fruit. He jumped with his feet on the ground, turned around suddenly in midair, raised his hands with high CP0, shouted, cross wind slash, crossed his hands and slid down into the air in front of him. The surrounding air suddenly surged rapidly, and two huge wind blades of more than 10 meters were formed in the blink of an eye, killing the dragon. Wherever they passed, two deep ravines were cut on the ground, like two ferocious scars. The sharpness of the wind blades can be imagined and no, it's really rare that someone is playing tricks in front of me. Facing the attack of two giant wind blades, Long said something lightly. Instead of retreating, he stepped on his right foot, and his speed suddenly increased. He raised his right hand, and a rapid whirlwind visible to the naked eye condensed in the palm of his hand. Advertisement. With one palm shot, armament hacky was released at the same time, and the rapidly growing whirlwind in his hand formed a giant palm print out of thin air that emitted a faint black light. Bang! The two giant wind blades were directly smashed to pieces by the giant palm, but the light of the giant palm dimmed a few minutes, and the power of the giant palm, which was much weakened, continued to blast towards the two CP0s. Feeling the attack coming from behind, the two CP0s spun in the air and took action at the same time. They waved dozens of tempest kick slashes with their legs in midair, smashing the armed giant wind palms. Bang! Bang! Continuous explosions resounded in the forest, the earth trembled, dust and smoke rolled, rows of trees fell, and countless birds in the forest started up, flying into the sky like a black cloud. When the dust and smoke dissipated, the ground was crisscrossed with ravines, and a huge deep pit emerged, with broken trees stacked on top of each other. Three figures flashed in the pit, sometimes colliding and sometimes separating. Every time they collided, there was an explosion in the air, and a large pit collapsed on the ground. The dragon raised his hand to fight off the short CP0. At this time, the high CP0 attacked from the left. He slashed at the dragon with two wind blades. Unfortunately, the dragon's armament hacky had already reached the extremely high level of destroying it from the inside. With a look, armament hacky was unleashed. Blocking the wind blade, he stepped on the void and approached the high CP0, and the strong wind flowed around his palms. The dragon raised his hand as a sword and cut down the high CP0 head on. Gao CP0 quickly used the six styles iron body, steel, and at the same time armament hacky burst out and condensed in his chest, but he still underestimated long strike of the palm blade. Advertisement. 47 A Brief Introduction to Wanakuni 1 Advertisement The palm blade split open the defense of the high CP0 armament hacky, tearing apart the skin as hard as steel, and blasted the armament hacky inside, destroying it from the inside. There was a muffled bang in Gao CP0's body, a big hole exploded in his back, and blood and flesh flew everywhere. Gao CP0 let out a shrill scream and died on the spot. When the dwarf CP0 saw his companion being killed, his liver and gallbladder were torn apart. He still had no desire to fight again, so he turned around and ran away. However, both of them were no match for the dragon. The dwarf CP0, who was left alone, was quickly overtaken by the dragon. Even if it tries its best, it is no match for the dragon. A few days later, the five elders in the Holy Land of Marijoys received shocking information. The two CP0s who were guarding Saint Chermuk were killed in the Goa Kingdom of East Blue. The entire forest at the scene was destroyed, leaving only the bodies of the two CP0s. The identity of the opponent is temporarily unknown, but his strength is definitely at the four emperor's admiral level. Since then, CP Cypherpole, which is affiliated with the world government, centered on the Kingdom of Goa, has begun to investigate the major incident of the death of two CP0s, and the power of the revolutionary army has gradually emerged in front of the world government. Facing two CP0s, Long showed terrifying strength and killed two CP0s. But the dragon did not continue to attack the celestial dragons, but took Sabo directly and flew in the direction of Shimatsuki village. The other side, Shimatsuki village, Luo Yun was looking at the map in his hand, frowning and muttering. Advertisement. Why is it so far? Ever since he learned that these two days were the period when the non-deterministic objects were burned and Sabo was seriously injured by shelling and fell into coma, Luo Yun had the idea of finding the location of the kingdom of Goa. But there were too many things going on in the past two days, and I was caught off guard. Only then did I have time to find the dojo apprentice Ike and steal the East Blue map collected by his father for a silver coin. Originally, Luo Yun thought that Shimatsuki village was not far from Goa Kingdom, because according to time, dragons traveled very quickly between Shimatsuki village and Goa Kingdom. But Luo Yun forgot that dragons can fly, and the speed cannot be deduced according to common sense. When he got the map, he found that the distance between Shimatsuki village and Goa Kingdom was not ordinary. We have to pass through more than 10 small islands and towns in the middle, and it takes about a week if the journey goes smoothly. Why are you looking at the map? Zoro came over at some point and leaned his head over with a curious look on his face. It's nothing, I just want to know more about the surrounding situation. After fooling Zoro, Luo Yun rolled up the map and returned it to Ike. He had to return it overnight to avoid being discovered by his father. Picking up the map, Luo Yun suddenly thought of something. He looked at Zoro strangely and asked, No, aren't you practicing your sword at this time? Why did you come back? Almost forgot. Advertisement. Zoro raised his hand and patted his head. When he entered the door, he saw Luo Yun reading the map so seriously that he almost forgot about the important matter. He said quickly, I'm here to tell you that Kuna is looking for you all over the Taoist temple. She looks very angry. I advise you to find a place to hide as soon as possible. You didn't tell me earlier. Luo Yun shouted, picked up the map, turned around and ran out the door, reminding Zoro as he ran. Don't tell Kuna that you have seen me. If she asks you, just say you don't know. Yeah. Kuna's voice suddenly came to mind, and almost at the same time, Luo Yun stopped, raised his head, and slowly looked at Kuna next to him with a calm and indifferent face. He immediately smiled and said, What is that? Kuna, I was just going to find you. Didn't you just say not to tell me where you went? 
Kuna said softly, gently raising the long sword in her hand, and the blade of the sword was pressed tightly against Luo Yun's neck. Luo Yun clearly felt the chill coming from the sword's blade, and quickly raised her head higher. Luo Yun, who was ruthlessly pointed out, smiled and discussed, Well, can we put down our swords first? We are all brothers in the same sect. There are many bad swordsmen and swordsmen. Why don't we find a place and have a drink? Order some hot tea and let's talk. Advertisement. Kuna did not agree immediately. She tilted her head and looked at Luo Yun for a while, then put down her sword and said, If you fool me again, you won't just stop at the neck next time. Don't dare, don't dare. Luo Yun quickly kaido, the coldness on his neck disappeared. Luo Yun breathed a sigh of relief, feeling as if he had walked through the gate of hell. But he couldn't help but curse in his heart. Kuna, a woman, is not only cold and strong, but also a serious lunatic. If a smarter person hides when he sees that he doesn't want to talk, they will ignore it. Of course, this does not mean that Kuna is not smart, Kuna is very smart. But once something gets her attention, this woman will be extra serious, a kind of seriousness that no one can stop. This is not the kind of seriousness that doesn't hit the wall and never look back, but the kind of seriousness that knows what it is doing. Even if you take it seriously, Kuna's behavior still calls her a madman. The moment he went out, if he hadn't reacted quickly enough, his head might have really disappeared. Thinking about it, Luo Yun still has lingering fears. Because of such a thing, if he cuts him off with a sword, what is it but a lunatic? Putting away the sword with her backhand, Kuna took two steps forward. Seeing that Luo Yun didn't follow, she turned around and said, Why are you still standing there? Find a place to talk to me. Sticking out his tongue at Kuna's back, Luo Yun followed. Advertisement. 47 A Brief Introduction to Wanakuni 1. Advertisement. The palm blade split open the defense of the high CP0 armament hacky, tearing apart the skin as hard as steel, and blasted the armament hacky inside, destroying it from the inside. There was a muffled bang in Gao CP0's body, a big hole exploded in his back, and blood and flesh flew everywhere. Gao CP0 let out a shrill scream and died on the spot. When the dwarf CP0 saw his companion being killed, his liver and gallbladder were torn apart. He still had no desire to fight again, so he turned around and ran away. However, both of them were no match for the dragon. The dwarf CP0, who was left alone, was quickly overtaken by the dragon. Even if it tries its best, it is no match for the dragon. A few days later, the five elders in the holy land of Marijois received shocking information. The two CP0s who were guarding Saint Chermuk were killed in the Goa Kingdom of East Blue. The entire forest at the scene was destroyed, leaving only the bodies of the two CP0s. The identity of the opponent is temporarily unknown, but his strength is definitely at the four emperor's admiral level. Since then, CP Cypherpol, which is affiliated with the world government, centered on the Kingdom of Goa, has begun to investigate the major incident of the death of two CP0s, and the power of the revolutionary army has gradually emerged in front of the world government. Facing two CP0s, Long showed terrifying strength and killed two CP0s. But the dragon did not continue to attack the celestial dragons, but took Sabo directly and flew in the direction of Shimatsuki village. The other side, Shimatsuki village, Luo Yun was looking at the map in his hand, frowning and muttering. Advertisement. Why is it so far? Ever since he learned that these two days were the period when the non-deterministic objects were burned and Sabo was seriously injured by shelling and fell into coma, Luo Yun had the idea of finding the location of the kingdom of Goa. But there were too many things going on in the past two days, and I was caught off guard. Only then did I have time to find the dojo apprentice Ike and steal the East Blue map collected by his father for a silver coin. Originally, Luo Yun thought that Shimatsuki village was not far from Goa Kingdom, because according to time, dragons traveled very quickly between Shimatsuki village and Goa Kingdom. But Luo Yun forgot that dragons can fly, and the speed cannot be deduced according to common sense. When he got the map, he found that the distance between Shimatsuki village and Goa Kingdom was not ordinary. We have to pass through more than 10 small islands and towns in the middle, and it takes about a week if the journey goes smoothly. Why are you looking at the map? Zoro came over at some point and leaned his head over with a curious look on his face. It's nothing, I just want to know more about the surrounding situation. After fooling Zoro, Luo Yun rolled up the map and returned it to Ike. He had to return it overnight to avoid being discovered by his father. Picking up the map, Luo Yun suddenly thought of something. He looked at Zoro strangely and asked, No, aren't you practicing your sword at this time? Why did you come back? Almost forgot. Advertisement. Zoro raised his hand and patted his head. When he entered the door, he saw Luo Yun reading the map so seriously that he almost forgot about the important matter. He said quickly, I'm here to tell you that Kuna is looking for you all over the Taoist temple. She looks very angry. I advise you to find a place to hide as soon as possible. You didn't tell me earlier. Luo Yun shouted, picked up the map, turned around and ran out the door, reminding Zoro as he ran. Don't tell Kuna that you have seen me. If she asks you, just say you don't know. Yeah. Kuna's voice suddenly came to mind, and almost at the same time, Luo Yun stopped, raised his head, and slowly looked at Kuna next to him with a calm and indifferent face. He immediately smiled and said, What is that? Kuna, I was just going to find you. Didn't you just say not to tell me where you went? Kuna said softly, gently raising the long sword in her hand, and the blade of the sword was pressed tightly against Luo Yun's neck. Luo Yun clearly felt the chill coming from the sword's blade, and quickly raised her head higher. Luo Yun, who was ruthlessly pointed out, smiled and discussed, Well, can we put down our swords first? We are all brothers in the same sect. There are many bad swordsmen and swordsmen. Why don't we find a place and have a drink? Order some hot tea and let's talk. Advertisement. Kuna did not agree immediately. She tilted her head and looked at Luo Yun for a while, then put down her sword and said, If you fool me again, you won't just stop at the neck next time. Don't dare, don't dare. Luo Yun quickly kaido, the coldness on his neck disappeared. Luo Yun breathed a sigh of relief, feeling as if he had walked through the gate of hell. But he couldn't help but curse in his heart. Kuna, a woman, is not only cold and strong, but also a serious lunatic. If a smarter person hides when he sees that he doesn't want to talk, they will ignore it. Of course, this does not mean that Kuna is not smart, Kuna is very smart. But once something gets her attention, this woman will be extra serious, a kind of seriousness that no one can stop. 
This is not the kind of seriousness that doesn't hit the wall and never look back, but the kind of seriousness that knows what it is doing. Even if you take it seriously, Kuna's behavior still calls her a madman. The moment he went out, if he hadn't reacted quickly enough, his head might have really disappeared. Thinking about it, Luo Yun still has lingering fears. Because of such a thing, if he cuts him off with a sword, what is it but a lunatic? Putting away the sword with her backhand, Kuna took two steps forward. Seeing that Luo Yun didn't follow, she turned around and said, Why are you still standing there? Find a place to talk to me. Sticking out his tongue at Kuna's back, Luo Yun followed. 48 A Brief Introduction to Wanakuni 2 Advertisement Zoro watched Luo Yun leave with a look of sympathy, and silently mourned for Luo Yun for half a second in his heart, no more. Luo Yun and Kuna left one after another. Zoro did not stay in the room anymore. He ran outside to practice swordsmanship with his wooden sword. Now was the best time to catch up with Kuna and Luo Yun. Here, Luo Yun followed Kuna to the reception room of the dojo. Kuna walked straight to the tea seat in the middle and knelt down to sit down. Luo Yun followed closely and walked to sit across from Kuna. He didn't expect that Kuna actually found a place to drink tea and chat with him. Kuna opened the bucket next to him, which contained fresh mountain spring water brought from the back mountain every morning. During this period, he and Zoro carried it on their backs, fetching water and doing weight-bearing training at the same time. He scooped up a ladle of mountain spring water and put it into the kettle, lit the charcoal inside, and started to boil the water. At the same time, Kuna picked up the tea set, cleaned it, took out the tea leaves and put it into the teapot. The water was just about to boil at this time. Luo Yun didn't speak, just watched quietly. When Kuna poured the tea into the cup in front of him, Luo Yun picked it up and took a sip. It was bitter at first, and then a refreshing fragrance left an aftertaste in his mouth. Advertisement. Your tea art is still so good. This is not Luo Yun trying to flatter Kuna, but a compliment from the bottom of his heart. Influenced by Koshiro, Kuna not only excels in swordsmanship, but also in tea art. The same water, the same tea leaves, and the same tea set, but the tea brewed by Kuna is better than ordinary people. Kuna poured herself a glass, and was not affected by Luo Yun's praise. She looked calm and said, Now you can tell me about Wanakuni, and how do you know? When he followed, Luo Yun knew in his heart that he couldn't hide. He wouldn't let it go unless he told Kuna. He didn't hesitate when asked at this moment. This is all what I learned from a pirate I met before traveling in East Blue. He turned out to be a great pirate famous in the Grand Line. He once competed with the pirate king G.O.L.D. Roger for supremacy, but was defeated by Roger, and lived in seclusion in East Blue. Kuna was shocked. She didn't expect Luo Yun to be in such a situation. Even though Kuna had lived in Shimatsuki village all year round and never left, even a three-year-old child knew the name of pirate king G.O.L.D. Roger. That kind of man could dominate the sea. Above him is the pirate king recognized by the whole world. A pirate who can compete with Roger, the pirate king, must be a great pirate who shocks the world. No wonder Luo Yun knows a lot of information about the Grand Line. It turns out this is the case. Seeing that Kuna had no doubts, Luo Yun breathed a sigh of relief. This was his last minute excuse. Advertisement. Immediately feeling confident, I continued. When I asked someone once, among all the adventure places you have been to, which place impressed you the most, they mentioned Wanakuni, so I remember it very well. Actually, I don't know much. I can only tell you what I remember. I don't know whether it's true or not. Before speaking, Luo Yun had to check with Kuna first to see if what he said was false. But by saying it this way, it would not appear that he knew a lot, so he would give himself some room in advance. After glancing at Kuna, she still didn't speak. She just looked at him and made a gesture of listening quietly. Luo Yun didn't know what to say. It was really rare for Kuna to look like this. Damn it, now was the time to lament this. Wanakuni is located in the New World in the second half of the Grand Line. It is a powerful country, but this country is closed to the outside world, never receives outsiders, and does not join the world government. Therefore, the clothing and customs of this country are very different from the outside world. Different. In addition, we generally call people who use swords as swordsmen, but in Wanakuni, they use the word samurai to call swordsmen. When she heard the word samurai, Kuna's calm expression finally changed, because in her memory, her father once mentioned the name samurai. At that time, she was wondering what the name samurai was, but it turned out to be this meaning. Kuna now finally understands. Advertisement. Doesn't that mean that my father is probably from Wanakuni, but why did he leave the Grand Line and come to East Blue? In addition, Wanakuni is a country with peculiar geology. There is no open sea coast, and only cliffs and waterfalls are natural barriers around it. It is difficult for non-Wanakuni outsiders to enter Wanakuni. This is why many people have only heard of Wanakuni over the years, but they have no idea about this country. Maybe there are too many, and there are even no records of this country in many related books. Due to the isolation of the country, this country only exists in some people's mouths. Kuna was listening intently when Luo Yun suddenly stopped. Kuna felt itchy and curious, and asked, why didn't you say anything? That's all I know. Luo Yun shrugged and smiled bitterly. Of course, he knew more than this, but the rest of the series of things that happened to Kojiki Odin and four emperors Kaido of the Beasts were all after Roger's death. If he goes further, it would be contradictory, and it would not match up with the time he mentioned before that he lived in seclusion in East Blue after failing to compete with Roger for the great pirate dominance. Ordinary people may not notice this, but Kuna is smart and may very well notice it. When the time comes, he will tell him not to tell, and how to explain how he knows. If he doesn't tell Kuna, he will never be spared. Kuna may really he cut himself. Advertisement. 49 Ivankov and the Bear? Advertisement. Speaking of which, Mr. Oda's update is really slow. Wanakuni has only seen half of it before he gets it, so he doesn't know what will happen next. Real. Kuna looked at Luo Yun sideways, her expression clearly showing that she didn't believe Luo Yun's statement. Really. Luo Yun nodded and said, I told you this, why are you hiding it from you? This is all I know. After hesitating for a moment, Kuna did not continue to press, not because she believed Luo Yun, but because she knew that she would not get anything out of her if she asked again. She didn't know anything about Wanakuni. She could only listen to what Luo Yun said. She didn't know whether this guy had deceived her. The conversation changed and he suddenly asked, Since Wanakuni is closed to the country, will anyone from Wanakuni leave Wanakuni? Advertisement. It's definitely possible, Luo Yun said. 
The country is closed to outsiders only because it's difficult for outsiders to get in, but some people can still get in. Wanakunis can't get out, but it's inevitable that some will want to come and see the outside world. There was one on the original One Piece ship. A powerful samurai from Wanakuni. Kuna did not answer, but was thinking in her mind. Judging from the current information, it is very likely that her father is the samurai who left Wanakuni. But according to what my father said, Wanakuni is now occupied by a group of powerful enemies. My father failed as a member of the resistance and fled here. In other words, Wanakuni has undergone huge changes now. It seems that the only way to know the specific truth is to go to Wanakuni. In the future, she must go to see, go to the new world, and personally go to Wanakuni to find out her life experience. Luo Yun didn't know that so many things that happened by chance made Kona more and more determined to go to see. In addition to his dream of becoming the world's greatest swordsman, he also wanted to pursue his life experience. Afterwards, the two chatted casually, and Luo Yun found an excuse and ran away. Kuna knew that she couldn't ask anything, so she didn't stay with Luo Yun anymore. After leaving Kuna, before Luo Yun could take a breath, Koshiro asked Ike to find Luo Yun. When Luo Yun passed by, Koshiro was finishing talking to the village chief, and the village chief was about to leave. Luo Yun said hello to the village chief, and then followed Koshiro back to the room. Koshiro returned to the room and sat down, raised his hand to point to the seat in front of him, and said, sit. Luo Yun sat down on his knees, and Koshiro said, I have nothing else to do with you this time. I just want you and Zoro to deliver the food to the deserted port in the back mountain at night. Advertisement. Okay, master. He was originally responsible for buying and delivering food, but he didn't expect that the person following him would turn out to be Zoro, but he thought that Kona was injured in her right leg and had difficulty moving. Glancing at Luo Yun's arm, Koshiro asked, how is your arm? Fortunately, it's not a big problem. After a few days of rest, you can start training, Luo Yun said, shaking his arms. That's fine, Koshiro said, and then added, in this period of time, your Itoryu swordsmanship has improved a lot, and you have almost mastered what I taught you. After you have mastered it, you will still have Zoro and Kona. Same, study alone with me for one hour every day. Thank you, master. Hearing this, Luo Yun's eyes lit up and he was extremely excited. All along, the swordsmanship that Luo Yun and Zoro have learned are the swordsmanship that ordinary apprentices learn. This does not mean that Koshiro hides his clumsiness and does not show his powerful swordsmanship. It is true that the talents of the apprentices in the dojo are limited, and ordinary swordsmanship is enough for them to specialize in. Learning powerful swordsmanship based on their talents is just a waste of time, and will put the cart before the horse. Therefore, only Kuna in the dojo received additional instruction from Koshiro, while Zoro and Luo Yun joined the dojo. They had not mastered simple swordsmanship, so how could they learn more powerful swordsmanship? Advertisement. It wasn't until today that Koshiro felt that Zoro and Luo Yun had met the conditions to learn more advanced swordsmanship, so he brought it up. After leaving Koshiro's room, Luo Yun came outside the dojo. Everyone had packed the food. Zoro had been sitting on the carriage in front. When he saw Luo Yun coming out, he glanced at him but did not say hello. When Luo Yun saw the scene, he knew that Zoro was still angry about what happened yesterday, so he didn't say much. He smiled and said hello to several apprentices who were going to deliver food with them, and then got on the carriage. Then he looked at Zoro and said, What's wrong, you're still angry, as for that? Didn't you say that you are not young anymore, but you are still angry about such a little thing? Only children can do that. No. Zoro finally opened his eyes and glared at Luo Yun, then closed his eyes again, this time turning half of his body to the left, far away from Luo Yun. Luo Yun smiled at the behavior of Zoro, a child. Zoro was already a child now. He shouted, shook the rope with both hands, and the carriage moved slowly towards the back mountain. Go. The two carriages drove towards the back mountain one after the other, and it was already midnight when they arrived at the back mountain port. There were few stars in the sky, and the moonlight fell on the white earth, covering the snow-white earth with a layer of bright silver gauze. This port has been abandoned for many years. It is called a port, but it is actually a U-shaped bay sunken inward. The wooden boarding point on the edge of the bay looks dilapidated, and I don't know if it can be used. Advertisement. 49 Ivankov and the Bear? Advertisement. Speaking of which, Mr. Oda's update is really slow. Wanakuni has only seen half of it before he gets it, so he doesn't know what will happen next. Real. Kuna looked at Luo Yun sideways, her expression clearly showing that she didn't believe Luo Yun's statement. Really? Luo Yun nodded and said, I told you this, why are you hiding it from you? This is all I know. After hesitating for a moment, Kuna did not continue to press, not because she believed Luo Yun, but because she knew that she would not get anything out of her if she asked again. She didn't know anything about Wanakuni. She could only listen to what Luo Yun said. She didn't know whether this guy had deceived her. The conversation changed and he suddenly asked, since Wanakuni is closed to the country, will anyone from Wanakuni leave Wanakuni? Advertisement. It's definitely possible, Luo Yun said. The country is closed to outsiders only because it's difficult for outsiders to get in, but some people can still get in. Wanakunis can't get out, but it's inevitable that some will want to come and see the outside world. There was one on the original One Piece ship. A powerful samurai from Wanakuni. Kuna did not answer, but was thinking in her mind. Judging from the current information, it is very likely that her father is the samurai who left Wanakuni. But according to what my father said, Wanakuni is now occupied by a group of powerful enemies. My father failed as a member of the resistance and fled here. In other words, Wanakuni has undergone huge changes now. It seems that the only way to know the specific truth is to go to Wanakuni. In the future, she must go to see, go to the new world, and personally go to Wanakuni to find out her life experience. Luo Yun didn't know that so many things that happened by chance made Kona more and more determined to go to see. In addition to his dream of becoming the world's greatest swordsman, he also wanted to pursue his life experience. Afterwards, the two chatted casually, and Luo Yun found an excuse and ran away. Kuna knew that she couldn't ask anything, so she didn't stay with Luo Yun anymore. After leaving Kuna, before Luo Yun could take a breath, Koshiro asked Ike to find Luo Yun. When Luo Yun passed by, Koshiro was finishing talking to the village chief, and the village chief was about to leave. Luo Yun said hello to the village chief, and then followed Koshiro back to the room. 
Koshiro returned to the room and sat down, raised his hand to point to the seat in front of him, and said, sit. Luo Yun sat down on his knees, and Koshiro said, I have nothing else to do with you this time. I just want you and Zoro to deliver the food to the deserted port in the back mountain at night. Advertisement. Okay, master. He was originally responsible for buying and delivering food, but he didn't expect that the person following him would turn out to be Zoro, but he thought that Kona was injured in her right leg and had difficulty moving. Glancing at Luo Yun's arm, Koshiro asked, how is your arm? Fortunately, it's not a big problem. After a few days of rest, you can start training, Luo Yun said, shaking his arms. That's fine, Koshiro said, and then added, in this period of time, your Itoryu swordsmanship has improved a lot, and you have almost mastered what I taught you. After you have mastered it, you will still have Zoro and Kuna. Same, study alone with me for one hour every day. Thank you, master. Hearing this, Luo Yun's eyes lit up and he was extremely excited. All along, the swordsmanship that Luo Yun and Zoro have learned are the swordsmanship that ordinary apprentices learn. This does not mean that Koshiro hides his clumsiness and does not show his powerful swordsmanship. It is true that the talents of the apprentices in the dojo are limited, and ordinary swordsmanship is enough for them to specialize in. Learning powerful swordsmanship based on their talents is just a waste of time, and will put the cart before the horse. Therefore, only Kuna in the dojo received additional instruction from Koshiro, while Zoro and Luo Yun joined the dojo. They had not mastered simple swordsmanship, so how could they learn more powerful swordsmanship? Advertisement. It wasn't until today that Koshiro felt that Zoro and Luo Yun had met the conditions to learn more advanced swordsmanship, so he brought it up. After leaving Koshiro's room, Luo Yun came outside the dojo. Everyone had packed the food. Zoro had been sitting on the carriage in front. When he saw Luo Yun coming out, he glanced at him but did not say hello. When Luo Yun saw the scene, he knew that Zoro was still angry about what happened yesterday, so he didn't say much. He smiled and said hello to several apprentices who were going to deliver food with them, and then got on the carriage. Then he looked at Zoro and said, What's wrong, you're still angry, as for that? Didn't you say that you are not young anymore, but you are still angry about such a little thing? Only children can do that. No. Zoro finally opened his eyes and glared at Luo Yun, then closed his eyes again, this time turning half of his body to the left, far away from Luo Yun. Luo Yun smiled at the behavior of Zoro, a child. Zoro was already a child now. He shouted, shook the rope with both hands, and the carriage moved slowly towards the back mountain. Go. The two carriages drove towards the back mountain one after the other, and it was already midnight when they arrived at the back mountain port. There were few stars in the sky, and the moonlight fell on the white earth, covering the snow-white earth with a layer of bright silver gauze. This port has been abandoned for many years. It is called a port, but it is actually a U-shaped bay sunken inward. The wooden boarding point on the edge of the bay looks dilapidated, and I don't know if it can be used. Advertisement. 50 The Burning Revolutionary Flame 1. Advertisement. That was not what everyone was concerned about. When they arrived at the port, they found that there was no ship docked here, and everyone was a little confused. Zoro searched around, turned around, and said, You must have remembered the wrong place. Go away, how could I remember wrongly? This is the only abandoned port in the back mountain. It must be here, but why is there no one there now? Could it be that it hasn't come yet? It shouldn't be. Luo Yun was also confused. Logically speaking, Long and the others would not even follow the most basic concept of time. This is not the style of a boss at all. Just when everyone was wondering, two men in black robes, one tall and one small, walked out of the forest nearby. Everyone was stunned and looked at the two people who suddenly appeared warily. The incident of Luo Yun and others being robbed while buying grain happened yesterday, and it is still vivid in our minds. Now, two people suddenly appeared, and everyone was extremely nervous. Except for Zoro, this guy felt excited when he saw the two people coming out holding long swords in their hands. Advertisement. Zoro has always regretted not following Luo Yun to buy food so that he could have a chance to fight. Now someone is really robbing the food, which is what Zoro hoped for. But this is obviously not someone who robbed food. The two people who came out looked like one was taller and the other was lower. In fact, the lower one was much taller than ordinary people. The moment he saw the two of them, Luo Yun recognized that the lower one was Ivankov. His big face and explosive hair were so special. Put it down, it's them. Luo Yun raised his hand to stop everyone from moving and walked up. Ivankov saw Luo Yun with bandages wrapped in many places on his body and his left hand was hung. He was shocked. How could he be like this after not seeing him for two days? He asked aloud, Kid, what's wrong with you? You're hurt like this. This is what happened to the people who robbed the grain yesterday when I was buying grain, Luo Yun said. Ivankov didn't know what to say for a moment. He was injured because he wanted to buy food for them. Ivankov felt a little embarrassed. He hurriedly groped around on his body, trying to give Luo Yun some money to buy some delicious food, but after stroking around, there wasn't even a hair on it, so he took out a sheepskin picture from his pocket. Advertisement. After thinking about it, he lowered his head and handed the parchment map to Luo Yun, saying, This is a treasure map that was found from a group of pirates two days ago. Here it is for you, kid. When you grow up and become stronger, you can go to sea. Go find this treasure. Treasure. Luo Yun thought to himself that Ivankov was really stingy. He just used that treasure map to deceive him. The most indispensable thing in the pirate world is treasure maps, but there are a few of them that are real. Maybe Ivankov has this treasure map in his hands somewhere. They are all sold wholesale in every town, so it would be better to get some real money than to get a treasure map. Seeing that Luo Yun didn't answer immediately, a flash of embarrassment flashed across Ivankov's face, thinking that even though he was such a majestic ladyboy, no one would accept his gift one day. Fortunately, even though Luo Yun thought so, he still took the treasure map and said thank you. He couldn't let the situation continue to be so embarrassing. The embarrassment was relieved, Ivankov coughed lightly, glanced sideways at the bear, and motioned to the bear to give him something to express his gratitude, so as not to make others think they were stingy. But what kind of character is a bear? Even Ivankov's expression did not change at all, and he ignored Ivankov's gesture. Ivankov is so angry, 
This bastard Xiong doesn't give any face at all. It's not good to have an attack in front of so many pirates now. Ivankov can only suppress it, but he thinks that he must teach Xiong a lesson later. Maybe, he should. After taking the treasure map, Luo Yun stuffed it into his pocket. Ivankov notified the hiding revolutionary army ships that a three-mast sailboat with a dragon head on its bow sailed out from the corner of the harbor entrance and docked in the harbor. There were many revolutionary army soldiers and cutters gathered on the deck, all uniformly wearing gray coats. Except for a few people, the rest all wore black top hats with goggles. Advertisement. At Ivankov's greeting, the ladder was lowered, and more than a dozen revolutionary army soldiers came down the stairs to carry the food on the carriage. There were a total of 4,000 kilograms of grain in the two carriages. These revolutionary soldiers who came down were all good hands. Each of them could easily get on board carrying a hundred kilograms of sacks in one hand. At this speed, two round trips would take less than ten minutes to complete. Looking at the food being transported, Ivankov nodded and said, at this speed, it will be done soon. It's just that where did the dragon go? Why haven't I seen him come back yet? As soon as he finished speaking, a strong wind blew up, and everyone's clothes were blown up. Luo Yun was blown backwards uncontrollably by the strong wind. He was okay, and the other apprentices, including Zoro, were blown backwards by the wind. The strong wind came and dissipated just as quickly. When the wind dissipated, there was already one more person among them. Long, wearing a dark green coat, stood in the middle of the crowd. Everyone stopped moving when they saw the sudden appearance of Long. Soon after Long's words to speed up the movement, the revolutionary army soldiers continued to be busy. Hey, Long, you left alone again. You can't do this again next time. Even if you leave, at least let us know. Also, you are so slow. How long do you want me to wait? Ivankov complained loudly when he saw the dragon. I'm sorry. Long said. Ivankov was still going to complain, but suddenly saw Sabo who was seriously injured on the dragon's hand, and Ivankov stopped abruptly. Advertisement. 50 The Burning Revolutionary Flame 1. Advertisement. That was not what everyone was concerned about. When they arrived at the port, they found that there was no ship dock here, and everyone was a little confused. Zoro searched around, turned around, and said, You must have remembered the wrong place. Go away, how could I remember wrongly? This is the only abandoned port in the back mountain. It must be here, but why is there no one there now? Could it be that it hasn't come yet? It shouldn't be. Luo Yun was also confused. Logically speaking, Long and the others would not even follow the most basic concept of time. This is not the style of a boss at all. Just when everyone was wondering, two men in black robes, one tall and one small, walked out of the forest nearby. Everyone was stunned and looked at the two people who suddenly appeared warily. The incident of Luo Yun and others being robbed while buying grain happened yesterday, and it is still vivid in our minds. Now, two people suddenly appeared, and everyone was extremely nervous. Except for Zoro, this guy felt excited when he saw the two people coming out holding long swords in their hands. Advertisement. Zoro has always regretted not following Luo Yun to buy food so that he could have a chance to fight. Now someone is really robbing the food, which is what Zoro hoped for. But this is obviously not someone who robbed food. The two people who came out looked like one was taller and the other was lower. In fact, the lower one was much taller than ordinary people. The moment he saw the two of them, Luo Yun recognized that the lower one was Ivankov. His big face and explosive hair were so special. Put it down, it's them. Luo Yun raised his hand to stop everyone from moving and walked up. Ivankov saw Luo Yun with bandages wrapped in many places on his body and his left hand was hung. He was shocked. How could he be like this after not seeing him for two days? He asked aloud, Kid, what's wrong with you? You're hurt like this. This is what happened to the people who robbed the grain yesterday when I was buying grain, Luo Yun said. Ivankov didn't know what to say for a moment. He was injured because he wanted to buy food for them. Ivankov felt a little embarrassed. He hurriedly groped around on his body, trying to give Luo Yun some money to buy some delicious food, but after stroking around, there wasn't even a hair on it, so he took out a sheepskin picture from his pocket. Advertisement. After thinking about it, he lowered his head and handed the parchment map to Luo Yun, saying, This is a treasure map that was found from a group of pirates two days ago. Here it is for you, kid. When you grow up and become stronger, you can go to sea. Go find this treasure. Treasure. Luo Yun thought to himself that Ivankov was really stingy. He just used that treasure map to deceive him. The most indispensable thing in the pirate world is treasure maps, but there are a few of them that are real. Maybe Ivankov has this treasure map in his hands somewhere. They are all sold wholesale in every town, so it would be better to get some real money than to get a treasure map. Seeing that Luo Yun didn't answer immediately, a flash of embarrassment flashed across Ivankov's face, thinking that even though he was such a majestic ladyboy, no one would accept his gift one day. Fortunately, even though Luo Yun thought so, he still took the treasure map and said thank you. He couldn't let the situation continue to be so embarrassing. The embarrassment was relieved, Ivankov coughed lightly, glanced sideways at the bear, and motioned to the bear to give him something to express his gratitude, so as not to make others think they were stingy. But what kind of character is a bear? Even Ivankov's expression did not change at all, and he ignored Ivankov's gesture. Ivankov is so angry. This bastard Xiong doesn't give any face at all. It's not good to have an attack in front of so many pirates now. Ivankov can only suppress it, but he thinks that he must teach Xiong a lesson later. Maybe, he should. After taking the treasure map, Luo Yun stuffed it into his pocket. Ivankov notified the hiding revolutionary army ships that a three-mast sailboat with a dragon head on its bow sailed out from the corner of the harbor entrance and docked in the harbor. There were many revolutionary army soldiers and cutters gathered on the deck, all uniformly wearing gray coats. Except for a few people, the rest all wore black top hats with goggles. Advertisement. At Ivankov's greeting, the ladder was lowered, and more than a dozen revolutionary army soldiers came down the stairs to carry the food on the carriage. There were a total of 4,000 kilograms of grain in the two carriages. These revolutionary soldiers who came down were all good hands. Each of them could easily get on board carrying a hundred kilograms of sacks in one hand. At this speed, two round trips would take less than ten minutes to complete. Looking at the food being transported, Ivankov nodded and said, At this speed, it will be done soon. It's just that where did the dragon go? Why haven't I seen him come back yet? As soon as he finished speaking, a strong wind blew up, and everyone's clothes were blown up. Luo Yun was blown backwards uncontrollably by the strong wind. 
He was okay, and the other apprentices, including Zoro, were blown backwards by the wind. The strong wind came and dissipated just as quickly. When the wind dissipated, there was already one more person among them. Long, wearing a dark green coat, stood in the middle of the crowd. Everyone stopped moving when they saw the sudden appearance of Long. Soon after Long's words to speed up the movement, the revolutionary army soldiers continued to be busy. Hey, Long, you left alone again. You can't do this again next time. Even if you leave, at least let us know. Also, you are so slow. How long do you want me to wait? Ivankov complained loudly when he saw the dragon. I'm sorry. Long said. Ivankov was still going to complain, but suddenly saw Sabo who was seriously injured on the dragon's hand, and Ivankov stopped abruptly. Advertisement.